Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Collegiate Esports National Competition. Today, we have two amazing regions that we are revisiting for our virtual event. We saw these two regions live, the Midwest and the Southeast region of the CENC. We were there live in South Bend and Kimmesee, Florida, where we played Overwatch and Rocket League in the later part of 2021. Now, starting 2022, we are revisiting those regions for Valorant and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, it is so great to be here and welcome everybody. Let's take a quick second and just, let's get it hype here. Let's get it hype. Let's wake up this morning and get it going. This is gonna be some fantastic Valorant that we're about to see. 16 of the top colleges, eight colleges, excuse me, in both the Southeast region and the Midwest. So if you're on uh, eSports U, twitch.tv slash eSports U, you will be joined over by Caster Camel and Dan Dryad for our commentary on the day. If you're over on twitch.tv slash esports U2, you can enjoy some of Catinator 3K and Spicy Pyro. Those will be your casters for the day over there. But we have some amazing action um, today so far. We have Super Smash Brothers later in the day. We start out the mornings with Valorant. And we have some amazing prizing too, which I just want to go over really quickly. We actually first place for both regions and both games will achieve $1,000 in cash money and qualification to our major final nationals in Atlanta, Georgia, first week of May, 2022. So a lot here at stake for these top colleges. And I just wanna give a round of applause for all the colleges competing, playing, the coaches, the directors that have made this all possible. And of course, Esports U, CSMG, the Collegiate Sports Management Group, and of course, the Collegiate Esports National Competition. I am your host for the day, Paulie Hype, and we will have so much action as we go on through the day. But without further ado, I would love to throw it. If you're watching Esports U, remember, that'll be the Midwest region for the entire day. And let's enjoy some Dan Dryad and Caster Camel. If you're over on the Southeast region, that'll be twitch.tv slash Esports U2. And that will be, of course, Catnator 3K and Spicy Pyro. So without further ado, I would love to throw it over to those guys and enjoy some casting of some top collegiate Valorant. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you, Paulie, for that introduction. The CENC Midwest Invitational here. Camel with Dryad. I'm excited for the collegiate games we got today. It's going to be six in total, and I uh, can't wait to get started. Absolutely. A lot of good matches that we're going to have today, and it's only one map for all of them, one opportunity to take those victories. But because of that, we're going to have six of them, so a lot of possibilities again. So you take that victory in that group stage, that can be so difficult to make it to tomorrow. Yeah, every win counts for these teams, and we will start on the day with Ohio versus Buckeye here. It's going to be an exciting match for sure. And like you mentioned, best of one format. We're just going to be waiting on the map info here. And once we know that, we'll direct it over to you guys uh, as soon as possible. But regardless, Dryad, you know, what are you expecting from these games? Are you expecting them to be close? Uh, you know, what are you uh, looking to see from these teams? Absolutely. I would love to see those maps being closed. And, and I think we definitely have the possibility to make it happen. But because we expect that really high level of, of competitive gameplay, I think we're not going to see any crazy maps, right? I don't think uh, even the possibility of something like a fracture, maybe a breeze is even questionable. And I think we rely a little bit more on those maps that we had in Valorant for longer that allow teams to prepare a little bit better for a tournament like this one. So maps like Ascent is one of the classics that we can see the most. Icebox as well very uh, is one of those maps that you know exactly what agents people are going to be playing. So it can be a little bit easier to predict and to plan accordingly for a match like the ones that we kind of have today yeah absolutely so we just did get word that uh it is going to be icebox so definitely yeah. some staple picks on that map you know you have uh the sage almost a guarantee for getting onto those sites getting that wall up and getting that plant down so it'll be interesting to see you know how these two teams you know decipher what agents to pick you know chamber has also becoming more of an option for teams right. as the agent has been played more and more uh in vct and the other uh major tournaments here so i'm excited to see if maybe a chamber gets locked in as well 
Yeah, absolutely. And I would love to see a chamber in something like Icebox. And like you said, a lot of teams are, st are starting to play him a little bit more, starting to feel a little bit more comfortable because you can also get so much done in an eco round, right? That is what his kit is about. So it is so nice to see that possibility. But And it would be nice, again, because Icebox is a map where you know there's always going to be that double duelist, that Reyna, that Jet and then the viper everything in that map always looks pretty much the same both for attack and defense there's not a lot of variation so when you start bringing that variation here and there in tournaments like this one then it opens up the possibilities for what you can do next yeah you know especially considering this is the best of one you want to put your best foot forward and you know if you have a certain strategy or a trick up your sleeve now is the time to do so get those wins and try and make your way out of the group stage and move on to day two, which is tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, regardless, just waiting here on the, uh, I think just waiting on the teams now, just uh, to get them ready. You know, it's early in the morning. We got to give them some credit here. It's for early. Hopefully they're warmed up. I mean, really, hopefully they're warmed up. That, that's kind of the question I have. I mean, are you even warmed up? Are you ready? You have to get up at 9, 8.30, get the warm up in? I don't know. It's going to be tough. That That is one of the things that I was thinking about. It. It's definitely something that can affect teams, right? There, there's some teams that, the the first matches that they have they're ready to go they have their coffee they're prepared but there's some others that start to feel better and better uh the more that we see them play right so maybe those matches towards the end of the day that we're gonna see today are going to be a little bit more intense but that doesn't mean that the first one that we're gonna have isn't gonna be a good one no, absolutely i'm excited hopefully we do get to see some some good first games here but it looks like we're just waiting on side selection here from both of these teams and once that is underway, we'll get right into Agent Select and see what these teams have crafted uh, for Icebox here. But yeah, regardless, excited to see what happens here. Six matches for today. Uh, as we guys, or as you guys know, the winner of this tournament will be moving on, guaranteed a spot in that CENC main event in Atlanta. It's going to be exciting to say the least. So, you know, as we've been saying, as we've been preaching since the start of the stream, you know, these matches are very important and you know, moving on to that day two is so crucial. Absolutely. And and you want to take the small victories right from the beginning. You want to feel the confidence that you can make it to tomorrow, that you can make it to Atlanta when that comes to play. So it is a lot of pressure where you have to take those wins one by one. And it starts small, it starts with the first round with those pistol rounds that can make a lot of gain, give the teams a lot of momentum. And then it builds into how do you win that first uh, map that we're going to see from them and how are you going to continue winning without being exhausted because that is also one of the factors that can happen, one of the many things that can happen uh, for the mentality. And I think the mentality of players is one of the main things in Valorant, right? Yeah, for sure. I was, that, that's my next point, actually, you know, fatigue and how that's going to affect some of these players. You know, six games is a lot of Valorant, but it looks like the ready checks are going out. So hopefully we'll be able to get into the game soon. But yeah, fatigue definitely going to be potentially an issue, but it looks like we are going to get into agent select here. So we'll see if these teams are primed and ready for their first game of the day. And uh, Dryad, I'm excited. Let's get into Icebox. Absolutely. And, and again, I don't think we're going to see any surprises, maybe one even. That would be the most that I would expect when it comes to the compositions here. Icebox, one of those maps where... There's not a lot of variety on, on what to play and what works out and what doesn't work out. It just seems like just the way that the map is and the way that the composition was figured out so many months ago was perfect and no one has tried to change it. So, yeah, of course, there we see the, the Reynas being locked in, the Viper as well that can control so much space. We talk about the Viper's Pit and the value that it can get to any team. Uh, which is absolutely insane. So taking advantage of that from the beginning is going to be nice. I see maybe hinting towards that chamber, but we'll see. Mm. Well, looks like he'll swap off last second. Definitely looking to match with the Sage. We'll see what happens, though. As, you know, Sean, he's teasing us here. Not sure what he's going to go for, but regardless, as we've been seeing, as you mentioned, the double duelist, the Viper, the Sova, pretty standard stuff. Now just waiting on Sean's selection, does end up going for the Sage, doesn't want to go for the Chamber. It's too early in the morning. He can't hit those uh, Sheriff headshots. <laughs> it's a little too early. So yeah, no Chamber, but it would it it makes sense. Again, going with a Sage, you don't want to not have a wall to work with, right? It just seems so difficult, especially when you're going towards that, that B plant and you need a wall to feel safe to make sure that no one's going to hit you from all the different angles that the defense can do so. So... 
the Sage is going to be very nice coming in for Sean. And yeah, like you said, it's going to be a mirror match. Everything expected, everything for that information. And of course, everything for those pistol rounds that start building the momentum and start giving us an insight on how aggressive teams like to play here. Yeah, definitely, we'll see their tendencies here. We will make sure that the graphic above is changed. It might be a little confusing, but we do have Ohio versus Buckeye. We'll hopefully get that graphic fixed up for you guys in the stream. But regardless, we're going to see the ghosts here. Big Daddy Ganas going to go for that Sheriff. Just try to maintain some of this ground. But so far, it looks like a 3-2 split. But the bomb's going towards B, so it looks like mid's going to be a diversion for the start of this game. An interesting way to start it off right away from mid to be one of those entrances that are a little bit difficult. We already see that Reyna getting taken down. The numbers starting to go for the side of the defense, and they haven't even rotated fully yet. Now the plant's going to go down, but so far Anas gets one more, and here comes Sean peering around the corner. Will he be able to find the shots? He does, and the spike has already been planted. The defuse is going to come out. Does Micah have the lineups here? It's going to be a really awkward spot. There's one snake bite. Oh, Does Sean have enough time? He's sticking the defuse and he's got it. Chop chops. Takes down Mike in the end. He's good for three, but regardless, it will be Buckeyes winning that first round. And that is where you see already the value of a stage, the value of a wall that the defuse is sticking. And there it is. The pros don't fake right away to start it off just immediately getting the kill seeking the advantage going for the defense and not letting it go until it was done so the defense here being able to take the advantage very, very nice to see allowing them fun. to go into a little bit of that transitory round where they can buy those specters they have the marshal as well towards vent here we go it's gonna be an a push here the bomb over towards a of one and two members over in mid and b so it's going to be now Chuck watching over mid, regardless of us. He's already able to take down. He's one shot, bro. And that's the Reina gone. That's one of the entries on this Ohio squad gone. It's going to be very difficult now trying to get onto one of these sites. Yeah, it gets a lot more difficult. So that information once again has to take place, has to gain anything because not even the, the gun power is going to be available for the set of this attacking team. So playing passive for Ohio, playing for that information, trying to get one pick or two, messing the economy as much as you can is kind of the best thing they're hoping on the second round. Let's see the diversion, the distraction towards B. Chuck the human will hear this defuse once it goes down to the plan, excuse me. So now we'll go down here from a more. There's one more snake bite here. It's going to be towards that spike, but not going to find too much value as Ohio will get that plant down once again, looking for that plant money. And now we able to play for a line. This purple guy will dash away to safety. He's going to be running for the hills for the time being. And still, Chuck the human. With this specter, Chop Chops, he's good for one on top of Purple Guy. That's a great kill and a great frag to help this defense one here. It's going to bolster the defuse as well. Kame gets good for two. And it's going to be Micah now with these headshots flying in. But he's in a whole world of trouble, Dryad. He drops. And it's going to be two rounds in a row, but definitely expected to the gun advantage. Absolutely. And uh, again, everything that you can hope for on the side of Ohio in that second round was maybe get one pick or two. Anything else is a difficult situation. But looking now at the economy looking now at what's ahead of course we know that the rifles are going to start taking a role in this game and start taking a, a part into what ohio can do and that is the advantage that they can take but that means probably a rush as we see them all looking towards that a site and on top of that taking those gunfights from the Standing distance ahead. this is the round that counts for ohio here they have the gun advantage for the time being. They have these Vandals and Phantoms in their toolkit, and they will look to flood their way towards A, but there is a Viper Wall ready, and Zed already takes down an Os. Kame trades it back. It will be for the time being a 4v4, but already a decent frack, considering, you know, the gun disadvantage and Kame trying to go from downtown. Can't find the shots. Uh, th that is why you benefit so much from taking those gunfights from a distance if you are on the side of Ohio, right? You have the rifles, you can shoot, you can guarantee that the kill is going to happen a little bit easier for you. The engines are already coming in, and the wall as well for to get the plan done. Well, the wall will go down. Chuck still anchored around. There's going to be Chop Chops bringing out the Protractor, takes down more. He's got this Recon Dart along with the drone. So much utility still for Chop Chop to find a sniff out these members of Ohio. Enemy look to 
Gains some intel on top of the site. They get so much value. Sean's gonna be good for one. He's one shot, bro. Able to trade it back one to Smith to safety. But he's gotta be careful. Kame will take him down. Now it's gonna be the lineups here from Zed. Does he have one more in his toolkit? He does not. He only has the drone, so no more stalling here for Zed. He's gonna be having to force the Pierce way out. He's gonna look for the shots, but the defuse is already coming in. No more utility for Zed to work with, and just another stick. It's now the third one that we see. That is definitely a pattern that we have to keep an eye on, right? The minute that they start defusing, they don't let it go. And it's been three rounds now, even with a member alive, even knowing the possibility of that Soba for the of Ohio having lineups, it didn't matter. It was going to be Bokkite sticking to that defuse and making it happen, pushing us to a 3 to 0 where now it is them who have the better economy to work with. Now they even have an operator in the hands of that jet, and we know how that works. Well, I will go for the judge, so I wonder if they're going to try to burst onto one of these sites, pop that micro spin, but this wall, you know, it's early in the morning, Dryad. Let's get those walls out of the way here, but here we go. Here comes Michael. He's immediately taken down. Sean's good for two. He'll take his way back here, but he's going to go for three, just barraging every single member of Ohio we can get his hands on right now, and the recon dart will come in as well. And already, this attack is going to be potential formality. One is good for headshot, bro. Regardless, that's going to be it for the time being. One of the worst places where you can lose the spike, right? There's nowhere to go. There's two entrances, and on the other side, it's just the defense getting the kills, taking the advantage. All thanks to Sean in the 3k that he was able to get towards the beginning. That was only set left remaining, and they know exactly where he is. They're going to get him right away. Pushing, pushing us to a 4 to 0. As we see Bakai getting ahead. It would in denying every possibility that this attacking team wants to bring to the table. Yeah, and this, you know, starts to become a snowball effect, you know, on Icebox here, where you see now the economy for this defensive side. If Big Daddy and Oz can land these op shots, it's going to be hell for Ohio to make their way out of this attacking side with, you know, maybe four rounds here, because they're going to buy on this round. If they lose here, it's going to be rough for the next couple of rounds. So Buckeye... Gaming in a really good spot going into this fifth round. And let's see if they can take advantage. They do have two ultimates to spare here as well. They have the revive as a good agile free card just in case one player goes too aggressive. Also, the Viper's Pit available for this out of Ohio would be nice. After they're able to plan, they use that Viper's yeah. Pit. They deny so much visibility, so much space on the defense where even that defuse is going to cause them a lot of damage taken while they are inside of the Viper's Pit. So it seems like that is a possibility. As everyone on the side of Ohio is heading towards B, no one flanking, no one lurking, everyone just ready to go and ready to get the kills out. It's going to be a bit of a cookout here over towards B as the Viper Spit will be initiated and the spike is down and now everything is in the hands of Ohio. They have this Viper Spit, they have all the autonomy on B site and there's no flank really to be had right now for Buckeye so they're going to rely on the entry here. Chop Chops has the Owl Drone. If he's able to attack Micah that could be absolutely massive to start this attack, but it will be destroyed for the time being. It will be a good mark, and here come the shock darts raining into the back of yellow. Chuck is going to be good for one. Chop Chop's good for one more. They're going to start rifling onto the site, but it's traded back well by Ohio. And this could be a chance here for Purple Guy to get things going. Chuck the Human, he's going to be concealed inside of the Viper Spin. He's good for one. He's good for two. He'll stick to the fuse, but he gets sprayed through, and Zed now will be good for one. And the spike will detonate. Chuck Guy Gaming, no time there. And Great play by Ohio. They get the Viper's Pit down dry on the rest of history. Yeah, and we saw both of the Viper's pit co Pits coming in, and that, that was really nice on the side of Ohio. The first round that they were able to win, and in a way where they were just rushing into the B-side, using the Viper's Pit and gaining value out of it right from the beginning. Even when the defense knew, knew that someone was going to play towards that yellow, that is so, so common. The information wasn't there, the kills weren't connecting, and the visibility again is denied in a way where it's so difficult to get anything done. But luckily for them, you get that ultimate out of the way, you now you can phase ultimates that are a little bit more predictable, a little bit easier to work with. Even when we talk about uh, what comes next, that Hunter's Fury can deny a plant, can deny a defuse, and that is one of the things that I'm looking at as we see there is going to be a disconnection coming in on the side of the defense. And it seems like it's going to be that jet. Not good. Not good. Hopefully it's not over on the East Coast. I mean, you know, yeah, there was a big storm. So maybe he's at his home right now, but hopefully he's okay. 
Looks like he has reconnected here, so Anas will be back, and I'm sure we'll start this game momentarily. But finally, Ohio get a much-needed round, and they put the economy. It's not great for them yet, you know, due to the fact that Buckeye were able to get so many kills in that last round, uh, but still definitely uh, a way for Ohio to get into this game and really start to uh, gain a bit of flow in this game. They have four ultimates to use here. They have that Hunter's Fury uh, from Zed, and as we know, he does like to play these lineups, so I'm sure he has something up his sleeve, but Anas immediately, instantaneously takes down Purple Guy, and any semblance of an attacker from Ohio that starts with that jet dash is going to be no. Yeah, and it's a good way to, to come back as well. Yeah, he was disconnected for a second, but now he's ready to go in the res as well. He's ready to go for the side of Ohio, going back online. Uh, once again, a 5v5 where that information is going to be crucial. And I don't think anyone wants to get close to the operator again. So that rotation slowly taking place and going towards B. There's no one really there, though, besides that Viper on the side of the defense. See how many kills Chuck can find here. Already, Recon Dart will be flying down. forward. Now Micah will just play for the cavalry to come in. The bomb will be now moving over towards B as we see Purple Guy moving his way towards mid. That could be something that really influences how this round pans out. You get mid that really creates space and creates a flank that the B site has to worry about. The spike will go down and now it's going to be a lineup game. Purple Guy good for one on top of Kamei. That's one of the main duelists here for this BGC side gone. And now the lineup starting to flood in from both sides just playing for this utility dryad waiting and prowling for their opportunity. Those lineups can always be so nice, and we saw it right there. A trade, a little bit of unexpected to start it off, but the kills now for the duelists are going to connect right on. He's on one shot, and there it is connecting with that Reyna. Only one member alive on this defensive side, knowing exactly where the enemy is going to be, but nothing else for Chop Chops can be done as he gets taken down. He had to push forward, or he was going to get taken down defusing the spike. And one way or the other was not the perfect result that they were waiting for. Now Ohio gets another round. I mean, they didn't use Lanter's Fury. They still have, you know, ultimates available. Yes, they did invest that revive, but, you know, it was for a good cause. And they ended up picking that second round win up for themselves. But now, so many options for this Ohio squad. They still have key ultimates here for their roster that they can use to potentially bolster this attack and look for... Another play here, but fortunately, for the BGC side, they do have a revive and the defensive Empress available here. So potentially, if Anas can find an op kill, it could have been big. But now Purple Guy has this op, so that's a good counter Dryad to try and deny some of this long raging gauge that BGC had. Definitely not the first time that we see the operator, but this time he doesn't get the immediate value that it did on the last round. So that means. A little bit of information, a little bit of intel that is going to be required if this attacking team wants to push that operator, wants to get some value, wants to get that kill onto that jet. And last time it didn't work out, it seems like this time they don't want to risk it. And once again, it's going to be a rotation towards B, but the Viper on the side of Bakai playing a lot closer, playing towards that snow snowman and just waiting to see they know exactly where that's coming from. Only one snake bite here for Chuck to work with. He will destroy Kinder, but not fast enough. And now he's going to get rained down with utility. 16 HP for Chuck the Human. And wind will kill him now. He's got to be so, so careful. In Ohio, they already have the plant down. They have the Hunter's Fury available if they want to go for the post plant. And the onus now, Dryad, sits on BGC. It's such well-played post plant by Ohio right now. Oh, but that first kill already, this Reyna has been on fire since that last round, getting so many kills, and now trying to do it again, playing towards that Hello, It's another one, but the trade is going to connect right away, and it's a 4v3. The defense doesn't have the numbers, but we see that, though. The kills once again coming oh. in, and Kamek giving another chance. Emperor is getting so much value, and again, is the DP sticking and making it work. Over and over again, this is insane what we're seeing on the defensive side. Bokai are so good at taking control of that space, retaking control of that space that they lose. And with that, just denying any possibility, even with lineups, to deny that diffuse. At some point, Ohio's going to know. I mean, they're not, they're not faking anytime soon, Dryad. At some point, they're Ohio's, not. Gonna, Ohio's gonna be like, all right, well, guys, like, we can't, we can't just bank on them just not sticking it because we've seen Sean on multiple occasions 
hold that diffuse. He is content with just saying, yeah, I'm going to risk my life for this. And once again, they pick up that it round works. now. They, and they, it works. It's just insane. <laughs> what, what, just high IQ plays, Dryad, all the way. It is, it is absolutely insane. It's so rare to see something like that happening. Like, sure, maybe you see it once in an entire map, but multiple times now. It is so crazy what this team oh, is able off. to do. And because of that, they're getting ahead, right? It's been three rounds like that now. And that means three rounds out of the five that the setup Kai has won has been just because of that defuse, just because they are sticking. That means a little bit of changing has to take place on the setup of high to take the advantage and that means a very very slow round for them now methodical pace here from ohio for the time being it will be potentially an a-sided push and now chuck he's gonna hear a lot of noise he's gonna hear this leer as well knows something is brewing over towards a and they'll call over the cavalry for the time being but it's not a lot of toxic left and actually it's gonna be a rotation and you know drive there's still plenty of time here 35 seconds they can make it over to that opposite site if they want to and another rotation is like it's taking left. place of the defense. But you're still playing default. You're still all across the map. And they get that first pick. That is going to be very nice for them to continue getting that momentum. Knowing that now there's no more possibilities. And the side of Ohio, they can't run anywhere else now. Yeah, I mean, DGC called Ohio's bluff. They should have enough time here. But the Hunter's Fury is going to be coming down. 70 HP on Emer. He's going to be taken down from downtown. Chop Chops. Oh man, he is feeling it right now on this Sova. Now here come the lineups here from BGC. Trying to dissuade Ohio's push. There's the cloud versus Anas. Will he stick this to the He's good for one with this half? operator. It's just going to be half though in Kamei. He'll be good on one top of Zed. Now Anas will continue the defuse and there's just yeah. nothing that Ohio can do. Once again, it's going to be another situation where potentially they tried going for an A fake try it looked like. But I mean, Chuck was all over it. Everyone was all over it. Kamei was all over it and BGC win their next round. This time around, it just seems like the side of Ohio was waiting for someone on the defense to peek them so they could get that kill. But that wasn't really the case this time around. No one was peeking. No one was getting those kills. And that means that they have to push one side. And because they were running out of time, 30 seconds for them to work with, it was just now or never. Everyone going in, pretty much running to make it work. And it didn't even work the way that they wanted to. So again, the advantage continuing to go for the side of Ohio. And probably a faster round, it seems like, on A side, which we also haven't seen a lot of. Crucially for Ohio State, they were able to keep that operator. And now A will be the target. Anas should have heard that zip line here, so he doesn't know at least one is over towards A. And this time, Ohio, they're going to put all their eggs in this one basket over towards A. Makes sense. They're on a save. There's not really much they can do if BGC plays their cards right as Anas. As the daggers as well has all of the utility he could ever want and more. And now Emer will go for the plant with that sage while you know you're guaranteed that plant. And now they're gonna play for the post, but they have a ton of utility to work with Triad. Let's see if they can make it right. That was really nice just to the operator going all the way back just to keep the numbers advantage or the same amount of numbers at least going for both of the teams and this time around for Bokai as they all push together try to force a defuse again that can happen and running him the first kill they're already here but it's going to be a fake one they're expecting a hunter theory they have to move away and Cam and the meantime is going to get two hatches right into the enemy team one member alive only for Ohio and the defuse is taking place has to run away Seems like can't get away with their life, but not with the round seven two that we have right now. And Bokai absolutely on fire right now, unstoppable team. And I love the way that they're making it work. Right, it's not only about the really interesting new pieces that they're having, but also the way that they're playing together as a team. One of the main factors in how you win or lose a Valorant game, especially one like this one. Again, only one map, only one opportunity, and that means that. We saw the, the Jet on the side of the defense. She knew exactly where the team was coming from. So she decides to back up with the Operator and get value just playing all together as a team for that retake. Work out perfectly for them. Now it's another round for Ohio. Let's see what they can do here. Big miss there from Purple Guy. But if you're, you are an Ohio fan, you're picking at straws. Or I guess the one you know bright spot is you are able to keep that Operator. But Purple Guy has not found much success. BGC are not giving him... The opportunity to go for these op shots, but now B will be the target. It's this poison orb will conceal the aggressors here in Ohio that trying to get something done. They probably can maybe get a flank off. A frag there could be big. He will take down Kamei. 
And now Ohio will get this plant down in a 5v3. This is definitely winnable for Ohio with all the post plant they have, with all the utility they have. They have Micah's Viper Spit as well, just in case. And Purple Guy with this operator just hawking down on this spike. I'm really surprised they didn't use the Viper Spit already, right? You would expect it right as the plant yeah. is coming in, but you see that hesitation. They have the numbers advantage, and maybe they can think they can get away with it if we have to see, because the damage that can come in for Zeta Buckeye is something that we've seen over and over again. Round after round, there it is. Sean oh. already getting two kills, making numbers even in time, being the biggest enemy in here to work with. The trades are coming in, the rest is going to connect, but... Like on the other side is going to make sure that nothing else can happen. Sean with the 4k, but time again, the biggest enemy seems like it's not going to let it happen just by about one second. And finally, Ohio is going to get the clutch, it's going to get another round. Yeah, it feels like all their round wins are due to this post plant, you know, utility based situations that they put themselves in and once again zed remains the last one alive he's just able to hold his shock darts for such a long time and it allows so much time to be chewed off the clock for bgc and they just didn't have enough in that last round there so will be a pretty awkward buy you're just gonna see one specter should be a nos buying uh buying up here but regardless we'll just go for the sheriff so he has the uh, daggers available and he'll look to go aggressive with these and try to save up the economy just with these last couple rounds in the half and a very early buy per spit means that everyone in the numbers advantage is going to face towards that eight side and already taking one down, taking that jet down, denying any other possibility. Once again, the res coming in. You already know that it's used. You already know the location of that one. And again, with that buy per spit towards that B side means that, I mean, for the side of Ohio, you just have to go towards A. There's pretty much no other possibility unless you also want to risk your life on the other side. Cam is waiting for that. Has him popping off. Can do it again here. Absolutely. No flank to worry about, fortunately, for Ohio State. The drone will come in. And we'll get a bit of intel. Now, Anas is going to be trying to crawl his way back onto the site. He will spot one. This is the dagger. Oh, no. That's absolutely awful. And now it's going to be Purple Guy getting one kill out of it. Kameh just trade it back, though. And now, Anas is right on top of so many members. And Micah is going to be good for one now. Concealed and lurking inside of this Viper's Pit. So much to work with now. And one shot bro will aggress forward. Kame also has the Sage Ball to worry about. So many pieces of equipment here used right now for Ohio to try and work around this site and get this bomb down. They do indeed, and now so much time on their side as well. Oh, and they can't see each other. Oh, and now oh, it's get spotted. Kame with the three K can get a little bit more, and Sean is oh. going to allow that to happen as well. Four in the hands of Kama on this Reyna, being able to guarantee that round for the defensive team. Almost running out of time again, but this time around making it happen, taking us to eight rounds, one by the side of Bakai, and that was so nice Last play. They were the not stage. pushing in all at the same time on that Viper Spit, but trying to get some information, and those openings that were everything that the defense needed. We saw that late rotation as well for the Viper, of course, on the defense because she was towards the east side, not letting the Viper, her own Viper, Viper's pit down. And then she makes that late rotation, but it ends up working out, giving a little bit more information, using those lineups exactly the way the defense needed to on the side of Buckeye, guaranteeing a pretty nice lead into the second half. But we have one more to go on this first one, and it can be Ohio taking us to four rounds going on their way. I just want to get the Castro Curse out of the way early drive. You know, we have a lot of games today. You know, I said Ohio was going to win that round. Didn't happen, thought for sure, especially in the Vipers. <laughs> they had so much to work with, but was not meant to be, and now it'll look to be... It was close. Decided, but it was close. It was close. We'll give them credit. Right. It was close, but now they go towards B. They couldn't go here last time due to that Vipers pit, but this time it is all open, and it will be now open season here for Ohio. They will place down the spike, and, you know, this is their MO. They run away here. They will look for these post plants and look for these utility options is now Chuck. No Viper Spit available for him as well, so he'll not be able to get out of this site, but Chop Chop has all this utility to play with. Still the recon art as well to gain some vision here towards the back of site over towards yellow. Yeah, you can just know everyone's playing yellow every single time and everyone playing so careful here, but that doesn't matter. Sean and Kemet once again popping off 3k, make it four, make it look easy for this Whoa. team make it look easy for this stage and you know, a flawless round going on for the defense a nice way to end up this first half a very very clear dominance for them and how comfortable they feel on the defense that just came to getting those kills at the end of the day you can get the information like we saw with chop chops 
that knew that they were two plays playing towards yellow, but at the end of the day, the ones that are getting the kills, the ones that are really guaranteeing the advantage, has been Sean and has been Kame. This Reyna and the Sage, which is a little bit of a weird combination, right? We always talk about the Reyna and the Jed more than anything, but this Sage is definitely one of those battle sages. It goes in, gets aggressive, gets the kills, and has absolutely no fear, knows that she can take those duels, and she does it. BGC, say to hell with just waiting for these post plants. Let's just burst right in front of them to go for the kills, and they do just that and find themselves now 9 3 up over Ohio. And now Ohio just clinging onto this 9 3 curse, hoping they can get some frags here, and it will be one shot. Trying to gain some footing here on towards A, but they'll be forced off the site for the time being, and now it's going to be a rumbling now for BGC. They already get the plant down, and the wall is well for confirm it, Dryad. And Right now for Ohio, they have to wait by their time for the rest of the members to come over. A lot of utility being used very early on in those walls again, making everything in the visibility much more difficult to work with. But a 5v5, pretty nice for this pose and already the first kill coming in for this attacking team. Dead and that information getting denied one way or the other. And both of the lineups as well, both of the lineup possibilities, the Viper and the Sova getting taken down early on. And playing for oh. those picks gets half that is pretty nice already knowing the one is going to be playing under but can with the three k can he make it four of course he can 10 to 3 attacking team taking the advantage once again on this pistol around second pistol around going their way and just taking that control from the beginning again those lineups got denied from the beginning and even the wall that got shot down didn't do much in the way the defense was expecting to I thought, I thought, Dryad, we would get to see just him sticking it out right in front of him. Just saying, yeah, I'm just going to do it right in front of your face. You're not doing anything. But it wasn't meant to be. He did get half, but yeah, half. That, not meant to be. And now Kame, I mean, he's force buying here a phantom with full shield. And Micah, he's walking right into the rampage in Kame. But for the time being, he will back away to spot him out. The purple guy now with this shorty did get a ton done. He will. Press on. the orb, and now Sean, wrong place, wrong time, but chop, chop, <laughs> watches it. Great communication there, but BGC, and that will be taken. And now one shot for over the sliver of HP. Chop, chop's gonna look to bring Thank out you. the protractor once again, but not gonna be a math major this time, and we'll go down. One Spike, enemy and now remaining. BGC, all oh. control in a 5v2, and it's just an earthquake now on top of a dry at 11 to 3, and BGC in full control. The absolute mental game that side of. Okay is playing is insane. Even buying that Phantom, having no fear second round and getting away with it more than anything it just shows the, the confidence and the performance that this team knows that they can get. They've won already both pistol rounds. They need only two more to take the victory off this map, off this match. So might as well force, might as well get away with things like that one that shouldn't be happening. They shouldn't be getting away with. But the force, the full force by now, ideally for Ohio, should put a challenge into what we saw, into the Phantom that we saw in that round two that's still alive. But oh, already as I see that though. A first pick coming in for Cam, and that is exactly what we would expect from this player. This time, Micah, not so lucky, not so fortunate to get out alive, and now the drone will be used to try and advance forward. They did not spot that Sage, I don't believe, so that'd be a good piece that Ohio can maybe work towards. It's, looks like the spike is going towards A, so this is all just a ruse, Dryad, as A will definitely be the target, and nobody is over towards A. It's going to be a ultra marathon to get back. Oh, and look at that rotation taking place. No one to Rosé, like you said, to the plant. Should be going down comfortably as the rotation for the defense is going to be taking place. No one flanking, no one doing any crazy rotations as well. So that means that they have to play together. They can trade each other very well. This is something that they have already proven they're very good at. But Jed immediately taken down by Zed. That means that the opening is right in the hands of Ohio. Big possibility for them. Just with that number, that 43 that we have right now. They just don't know where the rest of the team is. Himself in a really decent spot. It'll be good for one. Can he find Purple Guy? He cannot. Purple Guy dashing away to safety now in a 3v1. It's going to be so difficult for Chuck. He's got no snake bites to work with. And one shot, bro. We'll just stick to the fuse. He does have time, though. He will go for one more. The Please. fuse isn't coming in time. Oh, my <laughs> word. Wow. Chuck barely does not win that round. It was close. I thought for sure. 
I thought for sure the diffuser come in. It does inevitably in Dryad. I mean, Ohio barely get away with that one. This is one game of defuses, of crazy defuses that we've seen. It is insane the way that they're making it work and the way that it just seems like every time someone can get their hands on the defuse, they make it happen no matter what. Now that means that Ohio gets another round because it's their fourth round and they have a long way to go. But it's a nice way to start it off, just keeping some of those rifles, keeping some of that economy. As we know that Buckeye also has those rifles this time around to work with. And they are looking towards a very aggressive push towards B site. It's going to be the lone wolf here in Micah to watch over B. He's got this Viper Wall. He's got two snake bites to work with. And he might just give them the plant here and... Wait for the retake, but there's going to be one to buy some time. The wall is going to be down, and now they'll spray through. It's going to be forced to back away for the time being. The is going to be good for one and good for two. Oh, my board. Bring out the vac bands. He's just too good with it. And now with two frags and a bag of chips here dry, they're just going to back away to 5v3. Everything going BGC's way. Embarrassing. Oh, on the other side, though, uh, kill a little bit unexpected, and the jet getting taken down, and this attacking team means uh, the numbers advantage is now not so much. Still very much able to make it work. That blade storm for purple guy coming in, playing for that information, trying to get and trying to spot anyone peeking after that blow, but it seems like it's not going to be the case because can another has got a one to how many is he gonna get 4k for this player and now pushing us to match point for two twelve that we have right now and in dominance all in the hands of this reina pretty much in the collaboration with the rest of the team but 25 kills the camera has right now and so many possibilities to get this over with come on had to drop a 30 bomb here. Let's see if he can get the ace and just round it out. Clearly had a balanced breakfast, Dryad, because he's just playing better than everyone else in this game. He's gotten the food inside of him, and he's got the fuel ready to compete here today. And clearly he has come ready to play now with 25 kills here to his name. 12 to 4 for BGC so far, and they've had full control every which way. But finally, a bit of stronghold here on the defensive side. He's one shot for a will take down one, looking for two, and... Barely seeing the headpiece there of Sean. He's gonna be forced to back away for the time being. No more martial shots in the tank. He's gotta reload. It's gonna be command. Good for one. We'll dismiss away to safety. Chuck rifling his way inside, and there's the Reina gone and dusted. Both duelists are out. Between the plant going down for BGC, potentially their final round here on Icebox. Three members alive in the meantime for the set of Ohio it means that they have to play together. They have to trade each other if anything to have a chance here. But the economy, not the best. Being able to pick up a rival is going to be massive for the set of Mica. He's trying to spot and does spot one of the members trade once again coming in. This is exactly what they have to do at least to guarantee a chance into this round, into this map. One last opportunity for Ohio. And it seems like it's not going to be possible as long as this Reina is alive. Has been unstoppable. Does it again. Another 3k that we see for this player. A nice way to end the 13 and 4. Giving that very, very well-deserved victory. Yeah, tuck that one away with extra pillows and blankets, Dryad. Clearly, BGC were the better team today. And in that best of one, they come out on top. But regardless, I mean, great showing uh, from Kame. Clearly, the MVP of this one leaps and bounds over everyone else in this lobby. And for, you know, the opposite side in Ohio, it just never really felt like they were able to take control. There were some exchanges in that post plant where they were able to, you know, buy enough time in the first half. But when it came to defense, they just had no match. Absolutely. I mean, the Reina was insane, but also the defuses that we talked over and over again, because that is not something that should happen. And also not something that happens very often in any game, not even run games, not even any level of Valorant. And we see defuses like that one. Everyone has some lineups to work with. Everyone is able to at least trade it. But the way that it went down gave such a big advantage for this team towards the beginning that Ohio had nothing else to do especially even jumping into that that second half where things became a little bit more difficult to work with and the economy was just not going their way well looks like we're gonna go to a quick break potentially try to get an interview here for you guys but in the meantime we're gonna go to a quick break when we come back more valorant action coming your way stay tuned
Welcome back, everyone, to the CENC Midwest Invitational here. After that first game between Buckeye Gaming and Ohio State, we have an interview here with Kame. I'm excited, to say the least, to get some insight on that game. We're going to bring him in right now. What is up, Kame? How's it going? Love the shades, dude. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. You know, after that first win, we saw a lot of uh, pretty interesting plants, diffuses. I mean, there were some sticks, you know, there were some uh, some fakes for the most part. But did you have any strategies going into that game? We saw a lot of post plants and a lot of, you know, ways you guys were using that utility. So tell us about that. Yeah, honestly, we were pretty worried about this game. Uh, so we came in switching our comp up just because we wanted to see how things would be different, especially Ohio is kind of an unknown quantity for us. So... We swapped our comp up a bit, tried to flank a lot, which sometimes didn't work on defense. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how we played. And we knew wall plant would be pretty, pretty strong. And like you said, it kind of worked out most of the time. Yeah, I mean, most of the time, and you guys were able to take the advantage from the beginning on the first half and the rounds that we're getting uh, right after just based on that. But Tell me a little bit, you said you change your, your composition for this one because we were talking about it towards the beginning. There's not a lot of variation towards Icebox, but do you think your team can pull off something else? Um, maybe that we haven't seen. We talked about the Chamber a little bit towards the beginning. We didn't really see that possibility, but even coming into the matches that you have remaining today and the ones that you can potentially have tomorrow, how do you feel about that variation in Icebox? Oh, yeah, we'll definitely change it up, but... I'd rather not leak our strats. I don't want to get okay, too much no, info. Okay, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Kameh. We understand. Don't worry. Don't worry. So, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of games left to play, and uh, you guys have a lot of games off stream and on stream. You know, who do you guys think is the biggest, uh, you know, threat to you guys? If you do, you know, consider anyone a threat to you guys in this group, you did mention that you, um, you know, were scared of, or potentially like you had to change your comp going into this game. Any other teams that you're worried about? From our group, we've heard some decent things about Ball State. Not really sure about Minnesota, but overall, we're looking forward to uh, meeting Illinois at some point. We uh, play them in a different league, and we kind of want to give them some payback, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, and the last question. So you had a really good performance on that, Reina. And tell me a little bit about that. Is that just, again, it just goes back to the, the composition that is good in Xbox and what works for you, but... Are you usually uh, the one helping your team out the most with the kills while everyone is trying to get that information for you? Or do you think it kind of depends on the map? It definitely depends on the map, but I'm usually supporting our main duelists. And this match was just kind of, uh, they are giving us a lot of space and we were taking complete okay. advantage of it every single time it felt like. So I'm going to give most of the, uh, the kudos to my team for helping support me. Well, absolutely. It was a team effort. Kame, thank you so much for this interview. If you guys want to check out Kame, there's his Twitch below. Uh, definitely an exciting player to watch, no doubt about that. But we will be going back to a break here. And next, we will have, I believe our next match is uh, Butler versus Kentucky. So we will get to that game momentarily, but stay tuned. Shots he does, and the spike has already been planted. The diffuse is going to go down it's so far, and Oss gets one more. And here comes Sean peering around the corner. Will he be able to find the shots he does? And the spike has already been planted. The diffuse is going to come out. Does Micah have the lineups here? It's going to be a really awkward spot. There's one snake bite. Oh, does Sean have enough time? He's sticking the diffuse, and he's got it. Chop chops. Takes down Micah in the end. He's good for three, but regardless, it will be Buckeyes winning that first round. And that is where you see already the value of a stage, the value of a wall that they use you sticking. And there it is, the pros don't fake right away. 
to start it off, just immediately getting the kills, taking the advantage, going for the defense and not letting it go until it was done. So the defense here being able to take the advantage. Okay, pretty nice to see. Allow to go down so far and off gets one more and here comes Sean peering around the corner. Will he be able to find the shots? He does and Spike has already been planted. The defuse is going to come out. Does Micah have the lineups here? It's going to be a really awkward spot. There's one snake bite. Oh, does Sean have enough time? He's sticking the defuse and he's got it. Chop chops. Takes down Micah in the end. He's good. It sits on BGC. It's such well played post plant pile high right now. And making it work over and over again. This is in for Rockai as they all push together. Try to force a defuse again. That can happen. And ready him there for kill. They're already here, but it's going to be a fake one. They were expecting a hunter theory. They have to move away. And Cam and the meantime is going to get two hatches right into the enemy team. One member alive, only for Ohio. And the defuse is taking place. Has to run away. Seems like a slow one to let it happen just by about one second. And finally, Ohio is going to get the clutch. It's going to get another round. No, everyone's playing yellow every single time, and everyone playing so careful here, but that doesn't matter. Sean and Kemet once again popping off 3k, make it four half. That is pretty nice. Already knowing that one is going to be playing under, but Kemet with the 3k, can he make it four? Of course, he can. 10 to 3 attack. And now Sean, wrong way, wrong time, but chop chop, watch it. He's gonna be forced to back away for the time being. The maze could be good for one and good for two. Oh my lord, bring out the back bands. He's just too good with it. And now with two frags and... Exactly what they have to do, at least to guarantee a chance into this round, into this map. One last opportunity for Ohio. And it seems like it's not going to be possible as long as this Reyna is alive. Has been unstoppable, does it again. Another 3k that we...
Welcome back, everyone, to the CENC Midwest Invitational here. The teams are ready to go. We have Butler versus Northwood here. Excited, to say the least, Dryad. And it's going to be Icebox again. You know, you said uh, in our break here you want to see Icebox. <laughs> you get more Icebox. So here you go. Yeah, because I, 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 I was thinking about it, you know, like, if we're gonna have only one map today for all these teams for all these matchups, so might as well, might as well go to Icebox. So why not, right? It just makes sense, and it is one of those maps where again you know what the enemy team is most likely going to be playing, or for the most part, you know what is going to be what they're going to be playing besides maybe one change or two. Uh, so so it's a nice one to know more than anything the play style because if everyone is playing the same, but we're going into a mirror match, then you can. Think of more than anything the way they're rushing into sites, the way that you're controlling those sites, and I think that is what makes the difference the most in a map like this one. Yeah, absolutely. We will see these two teams just getting their ready checks out, and we'll be all set and ready to go. But yeah, like you said um, previously in our previous game, there's not much diversion, you know, from what comps you can really play on this map. You know, we did see the hover uh, from Sean with that chamber earlier in the day. We'll see if potentially. Uh, there is a chamber onto this map, but we will be going into Agent Select here. We're getting the ready checks here. So Dryad, I mean, you know, over under on the chamber. What do you think? I So again, I think chamber is one of those agents that is really good. And I think we're going to start seeing more and more uh, the more that we see Valorant this year. And yeah, there it is. It's going to be locked. So the question is, how do you capitalize? How do you justify capitalizing uh, with chamber and his abilities over everyone else that is pretty much standard so it seems like instead of arena it is going to be the chamber coming in for this team on the defense and that is one of the things that makes sense right everyone talks about it chamber sometimes plays like a duelist because he's always looking for those kills that is literally his kit it's all dependent on getting kills and then getting value out of the guns that he gets so it plays a little bit more of a duelist but more of a passive duelist and it's going to be coming in on both sides. So I expect not a lot of rotations. You know, the rain does usually like to go in, like to get value uh, just from going from catching the enemy off guard, especially with the Leer. But when you have a chamber, you have to play back. You have to play almost like you have an operator to get value. And I think that is something interesting to see and one of the possibilities as, if, as we start seeing more and more of this agent. Hmm. So it looks like Northwood will opt in for no Sage for their composition. I feel like the chamber is enough there. Of a Sentinel, they're gonna pick up the Raze as well here for Tyler. And I think Raze is especially one of these duelists, you know, no Reyna, uh, no, uh, you know, no Reyna here. So you're gonna go for the Raze instead. It's definitely one of those picks that really, um, you're gonna have to frag out. You know, a, a Raze that's on the bottom dryad, it's not a good sight. And you know, we saw previously uh, performances, you know, from the duelists that weren't up to par, but, Hopefully, you can see Tyler, if you are a fan of his, pop off on this race pick. As if you are able to gain space, if you are able to get those double satchels on the side, it can be so easy to gain control of one of those areas. I want to see how much value we can get with this race, though. Again, like mm -hmm. you said, you can get a lot of things done, and race is one of those agents that can get up top of those, on those boxes, which gives her a lot of mobility, a lot of unexpected kills that she's able to get and catch the enemy team off guard but overall i think the raise is just so much stronger in closer maps where in something like a split where we see her often or even a bind where it's a little bit more likely that we see this agent but in the hands of tyler i want to see more than anything his own performance with this agent the the own his own personal take on the way that you can use her ability to get a little bit more as the attacking team is ready ready to go but i see coming in hot two kills and a good way to start it off for the even deny that immediate push that was about to take place first you gotta pick up one more and now this attack from northwood has been stopped for the time being and potentially thirsty on the flank he'll be good for the final kill on drakius no way drakius has a chance there in butler off the back of Icy in those first two frags, pick up round one. Very nice for this chamber. The opening picks were everything that the team was hoping for. The headhunter can get so much value, and we see it right there, right? That is one of the reasons why you can justify in a composition like this, in a team like this one already, you can justify bringing in a chamber over a Reyna because it's just going to go in with the headhunter, get two, and open up the fight, deny that rush that was about to take place. 
for the side of this attack. The team and now changing things around, but the attacking still should be very fast in that A side. There's no chamber to worry about, but there is Firsty, who is good for one, but does immediately get traded back to the Benji there, being there in time. Tyler, good for one more, and right now, they are stampeding onto the site as Northwood getting three quick kills. Icy is going to be good for one. That's a good trade, but still, the plant will go down, and Spike now planted. Northwood in a man advantage. Let's see what they can do. And Icy Here. trying to take that high ground that's advantage and trying to get those picks, but... Getting that information is going to be a lot more difficult. Taking those duels one by one is where the difficult might standing. come in. Good lineup there. The trade is going to connect right on time, and only I see it remaining. We already saw what he's capable of doing. Fuck one, one, and it immediately goes in. Has to reload for a second, but might be able to get away with this kill. No, nope, not going to be possible. On the other side, one chamber gets the other, and the attacking team because you one one. A very interesting way to start off this match. Already very, very intense. This, you know, is a big round for Northwood. They stop what would have been Butler looking to bonus on that next round. So now, good situation here for Northwood. They're going to be able to buy up here. Drakeus and Ferbza along with Dip. Be able to pick up those Vandals and Phantoms here. So that could potentially stop their advance. help to advance this attack. But regardless... Will be three over towards A, and once again, Icy for Butler is here. Let's see if he can make do from round one and gain some more footing here with that Sheriff that he has. It's, 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 when the encounter can work out really well, really good away as well as Icy does get taken down. Numbers advantage going in for the kind of attack of him, but the plant is one are down already. Benji on fire, three kills. Now those chambers he would get is one remaining. remaining. Let's get a butler. Seems like it's not going to be possible to get anything else done. And just with the economy, just with a couple of those rifles, the attacking team taking the advantage. And looking like a very aggressive team already. Yeah, this team gets on the site quick. They really like to push the pressure and make Butler work for these kills and will be now icy already having that tour de force after three rounds that's pretty crazy let's see if he can make do uh, he will be able to save that's good for the economy and now with this tour de force you gain so much footing and you have you know certainly the best gun in the game so far right now at least there's no operator northwood side so you want to play let's let's see if icy play. Can get things done it will be using that ultimate that's for the force to see if he can get any value out of it we hear the shot but no kills connecting just yet and we can expect things to happen differently this round we see everyone of this attacking team across the map not rushing in that a again and already the opening pick the dip is able to get might be the entrance that they were waiting for into the beast side we haven't seen yet it seems like everyone is still spread all across the map trying to get that information playing for picks more than anything to take another round Looks like they're going to use this tour de force as almost a distraction, a bait, if you will, as Butler have three members over towards A, and that's going to be the rotation from Benji. And Butler are aware of it. You know something is brewing here, and now Dip is in a really decent spot. If he can get things going there. in this flank position, it could be major, but for the time being, the spike has to go down first, and Drakeus will do just that. Tyler will loft over a grenade to the back of Snowman here to try to gain some value. No damage for the time being, but still Dip in a really decent spot. Icy is going to be good for one, and Firms drops. That's the Sova gone. No more darts here for the host plant. Tyler will be able to take out Deathless. Dip weaves his way through traffic. He's good for one. Finds Icy. And now it's going to be a 4v2. One here. enemy is lurking in the shadows. Benji takes out one. He takes out two. And that op is doing wonders for Northwood here on round four. A tour the four is getting so much value as we expected. The value that this agent is able to bring to the table is insane and bringing new possibilities for a map like this one. Three to one that we have right now on this attacking team that looks on fire. We even saw Viper's Pit coming in so early just because he had it available. They got it after planting on Spike and might as well take the advantage of it right away. That way they have more possibilities to deny the visibility the more rounds that we see coming in next. And that means that on the side of Butler, they're going to be forcing this round. Yeah, plus he's got a Bucky and I understand the mindset, you know, Northwood is going to play aggressive, potentially could look for some cheese kills, but he's already got a sliver of HP and Smiley is going to be good for one. Deathless trying to maintain some control and footing on the site, throwing down slurs, but it's just a death ball here from Northwood already. Icy drops and now Deathless appear around the corner. He doesn't Player's expect dead. one coming. The timing, they're not on this side, and Tyler will be good for one more. And now it's a 3v1. 
It's going to be so daunting for Smiley here to make his way to sight. Let's see if we can do it, but it's a 1v3. It's going to be so difficult, and Dracius has his number, and Smiley leaves the bullet short. It's going to be 4 to 1 here for Northwood. Smiley also had an interesting rotation there. It seems like this Viper wanted to go on the flank, was able to get one of the players on the attacking team on that mid rotation, but nothing else was able to get done as by the time that he was there and he was ready to flank, everyone on the defensive team was already taken down. Everyone on the side of Butler didn't have any other chance into that one. So now we see this attacking team getting ahead more and more and just the rotation of the ultimate team so nice, including the place time that is already available and already going in trying to get some kills. Wanting those kills indeed. He's got the blade storm popped and that boom bucket of red. It is safety. So you know nobody is directly on top of the site, but here come the remaining members of Butler. It's gonna be Tim. Para shooting up top, but he doesn't find much luck, much success with these daggers for the time being. Benji gonna be good for one, and that's it. Floating over, he'll find AC and dashes way back to safety. What a play at a tip. But here comes first, he's trying to mash it. Can't even just that, he's got a couple daggers left, but it's too much to deal with. And Dip now will go for the plan. It's gonna be deathless in a 1v4. It's gonna be such a difficult task at hand. He'll try to spray through, use the whole clip to get it by the kill. And we'll get sprayed through the wall, Tyler. Great intuition there. And another round win going the way of Northwood. Another very no nice round going in for this team and the Blade Summer coming in for both sides, making things so much more difficult because any positioning was at risk, especially as we saw it for the set of the defense. That means that they we we're able to force that round, but this time it has to be a save. There's no other possibility. And even the save round is looking risky for what can come next. The economy is not looking good at all on the side of Butler. So one pick or two can do everything for them now. Yeah, Northwood go back over towards A. Each side is giving them massive upside but they're gonna go back over towards a smiley they're like a decent frag on top of benji that's a decent pick to start potentially the exchange here but tyler will be good for one takes down the sage it's gonna be now traded back and forth everyone exchanging blows here as now firms up will walk right into the barrel of firms deep and he'll drop down now is drakeus is good for two great transfer there for drakeus and now this one the 2v2 down. advantage still plenty of time on the clock even for a rotation dryad it is definitely a possibility, but we have to see how the duels are going to take place. Two members alive on each side in the rotation seems like will be taking place slowly, just denying any information that Butler can get. Because, like I said, it's a safe round for them, and one or two picks could have done everything, but they did already more than that. So, massive possibility they were able to even pick up some rifles, and it seems like they can get really close to each other here towards mid. Oh. Going all the way back on the defensive side, left. and Dip is going to look for them. It's the mind games here. It's the rotation game on point. As now Dip work his way inside. The timing is there. What a shot Ooh. by Dip, and he evades detection there. It'll die. Is now Smiley is gone there. Last player Breaker standing. Down 13 seconds. Mr. Ford, Spike he's going to play B. time right now. It's going to be really good dropping now. Dip in a 1v1 isolated. He finds the kill, and Mr. Forrest drops. In the nick of time, dip though, in clutch situations, Dryad, that shot was so crispy, the Colonel would be honored, what a play. It's really like he thought he wasn't gonna get it, but it just happened <laughs> right when the, you needed to be, because we saw a dash, and it's it just the timing was a little bit messy, but it worked out, right? So, that is all that matters right now, is that Norwood continues to take the dominance, is a 6-1 to one that we have right now, it's another round where they can buy, and a good possibility the Butler has there, but the possibilities once again always get denied when you're expecting at least to another really quick one that can aim towards A, and it's definitely going to be quick already. The first kill coming in, Sage getting taken down in that rotation on the flank. He can play. What is Tyler doing? What? Odin Gamer, now he's gonna pop the satchel to look for the shot. He'll just fire, but maybe we'll look for one more kill with the pistol. He does, and fours drops. And like we talked about, the raise you can go onto these sites so quickly. He's able to get so much done and dip. Finishes off the round. It is all Northwood right now. Odin Gamer Dryad. What a play by Northwood. Tyler made the whole round for him look like a montage. That was insane. Just going in with Yon and getting the kills. And it is not even 
the the villains always have towards the beginning and it's not even information it was just the confidence playing through going in and being able to guarantee crazy stuff like that one but and good way to start it off a good way to keep it going only one round of butler has been able to get and that was a pistol round everything else is not looking good and just because they don't have the economy, they have to be extremely careful now. Pushing in, though, and not getting the value of it. Butler put all their eggs here towards A. They wanted to arrest four, and now fours will stop the Hunter's Fury. Not going to get much luck there. The shots are going to be raining in from up. First, he is going to be good for one. Benji trampling his way inside. He's going to be finding that Sova, and fours drops. Just the close plant gone. Deathless, only a judge to his name. It's in a great spot if he can... Get around the corner first. He good for three. Really carrying the load right now for Butler, but a rotation is imminent. Standing. And it's going to come in, and Tyler is right in the right spot. He takes down first with that Odin being a thorn oh, in Butler's up. sides. And right now, North would have a plant. They have a 2v1 as well. It's be a winnable situation for Butler, but it's going to be tough. Welcome it is to insane the way that Tyler is playing here. He looks so confident in everything that we see him do. It's like he just knows that the side and everything that he's doing will go his way. But it's not guaranteed just yet. The possibility that Butler has here that they have to face a Viper's Pit first. They have to take those duels one by one to guarantee any possibility here. You see them slowly going in. That jet all in her hands the lineup i think it's a little bit more difficult tyler taking the jet down is the 1v2 that will be over as soon as it started three kills and tyler is able to get eight one for northwood and the momentum that continues to go for this team they have absolutely everything they can dream of they have their rifles they have a heavy shield they have all the utility they can expect and the uh, the ultimate as well i know there's for the force that is going to be available and might as well use it right if you are performing to this level you don't even have to save it or any eco round you can just get value out of it whenever absolutely fortunately though icy does have a total force of his own let's see if he can potentially use that as him make his way over finds the shot on top of first he is revealed he's got to be careful 50 hp here on dip He's trying to prance his way out of this one. He's got top to his name. Does he find the shot on top of Smiley? He does not. He's got a reload. Where's the no scope? It's not there. Oh, man. Smiley barely gets that kill to Dip. Dip was going for it. You gotta love the aggression from Dip. He is able to find one, but Icy, with this sort of force, he's able to find Tyler, one of the hot hands for this Northwood squad. And the numbers might be difficult, but it can be a possibility here for Butler. One of the biggest possibilities that they have so far, actually make it work but again trying to still trying to get some information doesn't connect the kill that is massive that information has been revealed on the other side and menji already getting a kill into the sova information is going to be the nine and one and three you would not a lot of health to work with if you're on the side of buster if you are the camber just hoping to get a kill or two hoping that they're going to walk into your cross here but not going to be the case this time around or all the rounds that we saw before Snorwood is looking on fire and they're not planning to stop anytime soon Benji's jump peeking just right in front of Forrest I mean that's just the way that this game has been going Dryad for Northwood and you know no save to get onto these sites it's very interesting that Northwood you know they've constructed this composition with no sage no wall to really gain any you know easy plants on the site like butler have and they're still making it work they're still getting these round wins pretty convincingly and it's because of him it's because of tyler going for such oh. aggressive plays but icy picks him out of the sky and takes down tyler there and butler in a 5v4 potentially can win this round position before and dip takes some pay takes down fours firms up first his way inside it will be a trade though for smiley but dip parachutes up top from the rafters, it takes down Smiley. A good trade there, and now a 3v2 spike is there. Four Dip is trying to get the dagger shaking over standing. Firmsy. Firmsy's right there with him. And a 2v1 here for this game. He's got the Tour de Force. Does he have time and decide he does not first? But really feeling it with those shots with that Vandal. It's a 3k at the end of it all. Last round in the half. The one that they definitely needed to make things a little bit more even. Still a massive difference, but a 9-3 wouldn't be bad for them at all. And it's gotta be catching them unexpectedly right what we saw for north but there was just them going in from different places being able to take those picks and to take down the enemy one by one wherever they were wherever they were, they were towards mid towards a tube or 
that east side that we saw the most that was getting value, but now I think they're going to play more careful. We want to give them another round. We want to get these double digits as soon as possible, and the Viper Spin will be coming in. It's at a deep as nine, the entrance, or at least nine of his villains. Spotted Dip is gonna be good for one on top of Deathless. Mercy still inside of the Vepers Pit, but he will be taken down. Firms up with that Hunter's Fury is good for one, and that's the jet gone here. It's gonna be a good out of jail three card protection. <laughs> they're just about to send Dip out to get it leaves, Ryan. What's going on? They're betraying their team. <laughs> No, look at the confidence as well. Just to get the kills is Miley though on the other side, being able to get two, three members of life for each side. But so much damage. Double taking on the side of Butler. Make it four and can even get the ace though. Not even sure what the plan there for Northwood was, but regardless, Dip now gonna be able to run for the hills. It's the last round, I assume we'll just try to wrap around. The bomb is so far away from here. He's got an op to his name, and that's about it. So Butler will be able to hold off and stave off this Northwood assault. It's about 30 seconds nine left. rounds in a row, just about, and it will be a nine at three curse that Butler have to hold on to. Same as last time, Dryad. Same as the last map we just saw between Buckeye and Ohio. Let's see if potentially there's a kill towards that opposite side dip. Is he gonna be in the right spot to see the shots coming down? Would it be good for one? That's about it. But try it. I mean, still a decent half for Northwood. All said and done. Absolutely, a very good round and a very good half, more than anything for them. Just to take the advantage as much as they can. Try napping him. Not gonna work out. Look at that. It's an ace actually working out for Smiley. And size. yeah, in, in round where they're able to highlight themselves a little bit more, but around those a little messy. We're not gonna lie. We definitely saw all the craziness that was taken plays towards that A side. And again, it is a 93, a lot of different possibilities, but that pistol round is going to be crucial if Butler wants to come back. The pistol round and then the following round can do miracles for them and they definitely need some early picks to take the advantage like that one. If they want to deny Northwood from taking the victory, from taking more than anything in those double digits where every single round after that becomes terrifying. Now let's see if Butler have any different strategies that they're going to impose here against Northwood. It's going to be an uphill climb from here. This round is a great way to start off this momentum building process. Let's see if Northwood can kind of snuff out this aggression. It will be the shock darts raining down from Northwood. And it is first. With this Sheriff, Icy going to be good for one in the back half. Drakeus drops. And now Icy, he's got control through the kitchen. And that might allow rotation to come through as well, Dryad. A little bit of damage that is taken for both of the teams, but able to heal right back up. And Butler taking a rotation, playing towards mid. Mercy does get taken down though, so the numbers will continue to go towards nerf, but not really a surprise here as the planet is trying to go in. Yam is trying to connect as well things to that raise, and the pink show is still available, but not used just yet. <laughs> Smiley gets a one two for one exchange there, and he's gonna look for three, and he's on the nuts flank right now. He'll try for the flick, but he doesn't have enough the bullets. Oh, so unfortunate, but Mr. Fours has his teammates back there, and be a good start for Butler. Northwood, they had a chance in mid there due to the Tyler kill, but didn't end up really culminating into anything, and Butler crucially win this pistol round and can start building on this economy and potentially looking to make a comeback. It's going to be difficult, but it's possible. And I'm looking and smiling in the possibilities. As long as Slayer is able to get kills, there's still a chance for them because he's been popping off in the last couple of rounds. He got an ace even and, and on that first half. So the momentum might be going towards them. Maybe they're feeling it a little bit more into this one, but it's all going to matter and just depending on what goes on into the second round, right? It's gotta be all about getting just getting value out of the economy that you, you just spent to get anything done. And it's already one chamber getting the other. I see this time around not being able to get the opening pick, but already getting taken down. But this back, so Smiley is gonna be good for one first seed, perhaps another. Smiley's got an inkling of suspicion that there's more members here as Benji can look to run for the hills. Only a pistol to his name and no sheriff bullets. 
left in the chamber. Here is now Benji gonna brawl here with Firsty. He doesn't really have any teammates, so looks like he's just gonna play for time, wait for Drakey's to come over, but it's only a shorty drive. It's gonna be so difficult for Northwood to even make the round of the site, even with all the utility that they do have. It's really just not enough, and Butler are gonna hold these angles. They have the gun advantage, and there shouldn't be really any way that Northwood can get onto this site. It's gonna be difficult. Tyler's gonna press his way forward. does find the shots on Mr. Forrest. Benji takes down Smiley. First, he's gonna be good for one with that Marshall. Then she's gonna pop here. First, he's good for one more. Look for the no scopes. Deathless is there with him, and Tyler drops. It's a lot closer than it looks, Trav, but five to nine. Butler slowly but surely making their way back into it. They're making it work now. Another round going their way. Still a long way to go, but the economy can make it possible. Yeah, it's going to be a force coming in for this team of Butler. They know. They have to do this. There's no other possibilities. They have to win those duels, and that means that that gun power can do everything. Those rifles can do everything. So force coming in kind of for both sides and giving everything that they've got as an attacking side is going to spread all across the map and more than anything mid to B. It seems like it's going to be one of the possibilities. But first, you're already taken down. He was popping off on the last round, and now you're not going to count with him alive. That might make things difficult here. Five. You know, Smiley is one orb away from that Viper's Pit. That could be massive, but right now, Drakeus is going to be denied a bit of vision here. That Poison Orb doing a great bit of job there. Drakeus will be forced to back away, but you see over towards A, Icy is watching over here. for a flank. Nobody really creating space, but Dip taking a very aggressive angle through mid. He'll spot Smiley here. Does Smiley have a suspicion of mid? He's going to look around the corner. Dip going to take a look over two. Poetry in motion for Dip. He finds three. And Dip to shredding through everyone and Butler. And right now, it is all Northwood on this round. Dip knew that there was something going on, that there was a weird rotation happening. Again, after the other, make it three kills and give the numbers advantage. Give all the kills. Give the round for the side of Norwood. They were waiting for it on the second half. They finally get it. And now, this is where they started to shine their nose into what we saw towards the beginning of this map. It was getting the economy and being unstoppable with it. Forcing the enemy team and forcing Butler into a safe round over and over again. Will be with an awkward buy here for Butler. Five to ten. Have the Viper's Pit available for Smiley to get this fast one on, but Firmsa, an immediate kill there on Icy will stop any sort of rotation. Spike down, attacker spawn. Here, but in the meantime, it is all Northwood on this round and taking every kill they can. There. No, really quick one. Almost making it happen now. 11 rounds going in for Seven Norwood and with the potential to get to that match point into this one. Ultimate available is going to be the showstopper and a couple others that are about to be ready. Maybe an orb, maybe a kill can guarantee that. And those two ultimates that can be available on this defensive side are absolutely massive. We, we are talking about a tour the course. We're talking about a blade storm and those when we've seen them in the hands of Dip and the hands of Rip and we need them we can do so much more. Dip gonna be good for one once again. Icy dropping so early on for Butler. And now it's gonna be a rotation ensuing here. Let's see how A pans out for Northwood. Already getting that early frag. Butler does have the Viper's kit available, but they're playing so aggressively forward as Northwood Drakeus gets one more kill and they're just playing with their food dryad couple more to work with though and anything can happen we've seen oh, they're slowly oh, waking up slowly standing. feeling better about the tree it is going to be interesting that viper on the other side of the defensive side getting three kills and it seems like throughout, throughout this entire match has been all about who's able to get the Can most triple kills or even four even an ace that we were able point. to see but it seems like overall has been happening more for the set of work north within all their players than anyone yeah. else it's been a moment for them to pop off to Lost highlight her. what they're able to do against the enemy right now it is the dip and benji show along with tyler i mean three players here nearly tyler almost has 20 kills really just goes to show the you know, level of consistency that these Northwood players have, and really it's a collective effort from each and every single member of this Northwood squad. And with this operator available for Dip, he'll look for an aggressive play, but 
at Smoke Orb. We'll deny it for the time being. He is confident, though. It's oozing in his veins. He will be decayed for the time being. It's going to be such a timing factor for Dip. Oh, my word. I see right there in front, but he will look to go through mid instead. And he'll just buy his time for the moment. Has that operator, has those daggers. Doesn't want to die too early on, especially with that early pick as well. And a man is Well, and that kill is not going to connect. One of the players is going to be spotted. Not really expecting the chamber to be so close yet. Going to wait for him to peek. Not going to the king can get a kill, and that is exactly what is going to happen. Dip making it look easy with that bleed storm. Good for two. Can get a little bit more. He will another as well. Numbers the gear to victory. Win. That is going for the Tarimoku as to take their first victory here on stream 13 to 5. Wow. I mean, what a play at the end of that game. Uh, just Jet Def. Jet Def at the end of the day there, Dryad. And, you know, another Icebox map that, you know, turned into a bit of a uh, blowout towards the end of it. Yes, there were spurts there for Butler, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, Northwood, you know, they were pushing up on defense so far forward. You could tell that they knew what they were doing. You could tell how confident they were. But regardless, great game from both sides. And, I mean, anything you want to mention? Because Sage was not picked by Northwood, and it just didn't matter. Yeah, I think more than anything, this is a, this is a weird case, right? Because we saw a lot of different agents coming in. But I think the only one that was really highlighted based on utility was the Chamber. I think the race was just Tyler getting the kills with the rifle, right? It wasn't a difference that you can tell. Maybe this agent can be better. Maybe this agent can is it's better or worse than someone else. It was, I think, just the confidence coming in for Sarah Norfolk that allowed them to take the advantage from the beginning to hold it all the way until the end. No, absolutely. We'll go into a quick break. When we come back, Buckeye versus Minnesota. More Val in action with me and Dryad. Don't go anywhere. They are stampeding onto the site as North. Now it's gonna be a 4v2. Drakeus lurking in the shadows. Benji takes out one. He takes out two. And that op is doing wonders for Northwood here on round four. Being Benji, gonna be good for one. And now Dip floating over. He'll find Icy and dashes. Game on point as now Dip worked his way inside. The timing is there. Tyler doing what? Odin Gamer. Now he's gonna pop the sack. They're still coming in. Getting taken down in that rotation on the flank. We can play. What is Tyler doing? What? Odin Gamer. Now he's gonna pop the satchel to look for the shot. Will miss fire, but maybe we'll look for one more kill with the pistol. He does and fours drops. And like we talked about, the raise, you can go onto these sites so quickly. He's able to get so much done and dip. Finishes off one of these sites. It's very interesting that Northwood, you know, they've constructed this composition with no Sage no wall to really gain any you know easy plants on the site like butler have and they're still making it work they're still getting these round wins pretty convincingly and it's being over firmsy firmsy's right there with them and a 2v1 here for this game. he's got the tour of force does he have time and decide he does not first he's really feeling it with those shots with that vandal it's a three k at the end of it all last round in the half one that they bring is in the pink show still available but not used just yet <laughs> Smiley gets a two for one exchange there, and he's gonna look for three, and he's on the nuts flank right now. He'll try for the flank, but he doesn't have enough oh, bullets. Oh, so unfortunate, but Mr. Fours has his teammates. Northwood can get onto this site, it's gonna be difficult. Tyler's gonna press his way forward, does find the shot, but Mr. Fours has angle through mid. He'll spot Smiley here. Does Smiley have a suspicion of mid? He's gonna look around the corner. Dip can pick up the for two. Poetry in motion for Dippy finds three! Throughout this entire match, it's been all about who's able to get the most triple kills or even four even an ace that we That's were able point. to see but i'm not really expecting the chamber to be so close yet going to wait for him to peek it's not going to the king can get a kill and that is exactly what is going oh. to happen dip making it look happen dip making it look easy with that bleed storm good for two can get a little bit more you will another as well numbers the gear to victory that is going for the time
has been stopped for the time being and potentially thirsty on the flank. He'll be good for the final kill on Drakeus. No way, Drakeus has a chance there in Benji there being there in time. Tyler, good for one more. And right now, they are stampeding onto the site. Now it's going to be a 4v2 here. Drakeus lurking in the shadows. Benji takes up one. He takes up two. And that off is doing wonders for Northwood here on round four. Benji going to be good for one. And now Dip floating over. He'll find Icy and dashes. Game on point has now Dip. Work his way inside. The timing is Tyler doing what? They're still coming in. Getting taken down in that rotation. On the flank, he can play. What is Tyler doing? What? One of the rings and the pink show is still available, but not used just yet. <laughs> Smiley gets a two for one exchange there, and he's gonna look for three, and he's on the nuts flank right now. He'll try for the flank, but he doesn't have enough oh, bullets. Oh, so unfortunate, but Mr. Fours has his teammates. Northwood can get onto the site, it's gonna be difficult. Tyler gonna press his way forward, he does find the shots on Mr. Fours. Press angle through mid, he'll spot Smiley here. Does Smiley have a suspicion of mid? He's gonna look around the corner. Dip gonna take a look over two. Poetry in motion for Dippy Fox three! Throughout this entire match, it's been all about who's able to get the most triple kills, or even four, even in the A's that we were able to see. But it's not really expecting the chamber to be so close yet, going to wait for him to eat. It's not going to be the king who can get a kill, and that is exactly what is going to happen. Dip, making it look, happen, dip, making it look easy with that bleed storm. Good for two. Can get a little bit more. He will another as well. Number two, victory. That is going for the time. been stopped for the time being and potentially thirsty on the flight he'll be good for the final kill on Drakeus no way Drakeus has a chance there and Bungie there being there in time Tyler good for one more and right now they are stampeding onto the site as well now it's gonna be a 4v2 here Drakeus lurking in the shadows Benji takes up one he takes up two and that op is doing wonders for Northwood here on round four Benji gonna be good for one and now Dip floating over he'll find Icy and dashes game on point is now Dip Work his way inside. The timing is. What is Tyler doing? What? They're still coming in. 
getting taken down in that rotation on the flank he can play what is tyler doing what Constructed this composition with no sage, no wall to really gain any you know easy plants on the site like Buffalo have, and they're still making it work. They're still getting these round wins pretty convincingly, and it's beating over Firmsy. Firmsy's right there with them. And a two v one here for this. Game. He's got the tour de force. Does he have time? And decide he does not. Firmsy really feeling it with those shots. That vandal. It's a three k at the end of it all. Last round in the half. One of the rings and the pink show still available, but not used just yet. <laughs> Smiley, it's a two for one exchange there, and he's gonna look for three, and he's on the nuts flank right now. He'll try for the flick, but he doesn't have enough the bullets. Oh, so unfortunate, but Mr. Forrest has his teammates. Northwood can get onto the site, it's gonna be difficult. Tyler gonna press his way forward, he does find the shots on Mr. Forrest. Of angle through mid, he'll spot Smiley here. Does Smiley have a suspicion of mid? He's gonna look around the corner. Dip gonna get the look over two. Poetry in motion for Timmy by three. Throughout this entire match, it's been all about who's able to get the most. Triple kills, or even four, even an ace that we That's were able to see. I did not really expect the chamber to be so close yet. Going to wait for him to peek. It's not going to. The king can get a kill, and that is exactly what is going oh. to happen. Dip making it look happen. Dip making it look easy with that bleed storm. Good for two. Can get a little bit more as well. Another as well. Numbers guarantee victory. That is going for the.
Welcome back, everyone, to the CENC Midwest Invitational. I'm Camel. Next to me is Dryad. Finally, the Icebox streak ends. We're going to bind here between Minnesota and Buckeye. It will be Minnesota on defense, Buckeye on attack to start things off here. Bind, definitely an interesting map, to say the least. Maybe we see that raise again that we saw earlier on Icebox in that previous map. Raise definitely more known to go to that bind. Definitely a decent pick over there. Anything else you're expecting or uh, hoping to see? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing that came to mind when I heard Bind was that race, just because you can get so much more value out of using your utility properly. And I'm thinking something like Kuka um, can be really nice just to have that race there, take control as much as you can, and even showers as well. So Bind is one of those maps that enables you to do a lot of that, use a lot of that utility. And besides that, I think an Astra is always nice to see. We haven't seen it today, of course, because we were only seeing icebox twice in a row but astra for me one of the better smokers that we have just can get so much value with that utility too and deny the the plant deny the the fuse as well and that is to me what is going to be key as we see all the matches that are that we're going to be missing today yeah, absolutely. That Astra, if it is, end up, you know, being picked can be so influential with those divides. And uh, we will see if, you know, uh, it'll, it'll, it is only the third game of the day. So I don't think fatigue is going to set in quite yet. Potentially when we get later on in the day, that becomes more of a factor. But looks like we are going into draft here for the agent picks. I'm excited to see what we do end up witnessing on bind here for Minnesota and Buckeye, who we saw earlier in the day. Uh, anything you're expecting to see change from Buckeye Gaming? Though they did have a pretty convincing win against Ohio, but any changes or adaptations you're expecting? I think I expect as much aggression in terms of play style. Obviously, we talked about it a little bit already in terms of compositions. We know for sure that it's going to be different here in Vine compared to what we saw in Icebox. So more than anything to me, what is going to remain consistent, consistent for this team and knowing that the, the victory that they were able to take already is just going in, having the confidence, knowing that they can guarantee kills very early on and just make it work in any way possible. And Kama now switching into the sky, pretty much expected. Um, and it is one of those possibilities, right? A lot of those Reyna mains, they like to play that sky and that gives them a little bit more flexibility for maps like this one where the Reyna is a little bit less viable and you want to rely more on a duelist like we talked about the rays being effective the astro as well to deny a little bit of information for the enemy team and then you have that sky, sky that initiator that is probably if not the easternmost initiator that we have right now um to get some information early on communicate with the rest of the team and make those rotations happen as soon as possible We'll see if those rotations come in. Love this pick, though, pick though for Kame on this sky. Uh, the way he plays Reyna so aggressively, you know, having his own flashes to work with, having that dog as well to scout would be massive potentially for Buckeye Gaming here as they start on attack. And we'll set the pace here for the course of this first half. It looks like it's going to be three over towards A. Not KJ, you know, setting up on A, it's going to be difficult to press forward onto that site. We'll see if Buckeye Gaming have any rotations or any plays up their sleeve. Try to get onto one of these sites, but it looks like the Boombop, pretty standard stuff. Just gonna try to scout out Hookah. That early information that is always nice to have in those pistol rounds as we jump into the third match on stream today and try to get some kills on the way for both of the team's information given. We know those almost going to be long, especially in this attacking side as they try to push in. A little bit of damage that was taken early on by Frostbite, but shouldn't affect this player too much. Just playing all together, playing as a team before guaranteeing those kills and it seems with us out of this attacking team, everyone's stacked towards that long positioning and they want to get those trades going as soon as possible, less than a minute remaining for them. A very slow, steady pace here for Buckeye Gaming on this pistol round. Not looking for anything too crazy or hectic to start things off, but this flash will be the go single. Frostbite saw one, but Kame saw him two, and Frostbite's taken down. That's a great pick to start things off, and now it'll be a flooding, a monsoon of offense for Buckeye Gaming here as they Take the site, take two kills with them, and now put themselves in a 5v3 advantage, Dryad. 
The pistol round that can be so intense as it's starting to shape out. There's three members live on the side of the defense. They have to play fast. You don't have a lot of time as well. And the Sage hiding right on top of that spike. You get that trade going on, but it seems like it's not even going to be necessary. There it is. The same aggressiveness that we saw early on coming in for this attacking team is going to be alive once again and just all playing together guaranteeing that sean is already going to get a couple kills going on for him sean able to flank from that ct position and caught minnesota with their pants down and that will be the first round over towards buckeye gaming and see the specter full by coming out here for buckeye gaming clearly confident and uh, it'll be interesting to see how aggressive they do like to play this one we saw in that first round uh very slow methodical pace and when we saw in that previous game, we saw of them on Icebox, they played these bonus rounds, they played these you know buy rounds very aggressively, very quickly. We'll see if that pace continues or if they change things up. There's always a possibility for a change, especially when teams can become more and more predictable as the rounds go by, but I don't think Kame has any idea. The cross are on the complete opposite side and not even the trade is going to be a possibility. The share being a good for two, the information is going to connect right as well, knowing that someone else is looking towards that long and that means that the defense is going to have the numbers to work with as the rotation tries to take place. No, it's going to be so or is that B where the spike wants to be planted, but it seems like it's going to be hard still just to make their way in. Big here for Abstract, he can't find one, and that's going to mean the site will be contained for BGC, but there is a flank emerging right now for Minnesota. Potentially two free guns for them as well. Frostbite will watch over. Sean could be good for one on top of Cobalt. Only has 40 HP to work with. Will drop down to Baby Soap. The rifles in, some bullets inside, takes down Sean and Oz. It's going to be good for one. Chop Chop's good for one more, and now it's all on Frostbite's shoulders. Only 48 HP. He's got a flash to work with. We'll throw it towards the left and meander his way over towards the right. 22 HP for Frostbite. In the nick of time, he won't have anything left to say. And Chop Chops gains that last kill. And it was a decent attempt from Frostbite. Those two frags were massive, but Minnesota could not convert. A lot of the, the economy that was lost, though, for the side of yeah. Buckeye. So that is where you take advantage if you are on the other side, right? That you don't want to buy if you're on the side of Buckeye, but you also don't want to save. So it's this weird situation where you have to force, but it's going to be risky. And it is taking those sacrifices just because you suffer so many losses. At least keeping three of those specters alive for that third round is always ideal. Not really the case this time around. So those ghosts are going to be alive and trying to get more from the distance or trying to get as much as they can while we have those specters playing a little bit closer and personal to what the defense is trying to bring to them. No Gambi. It's got to be careful here with Frostbite. And Oss is going to be good for one. Abstract immediately drops. And he'll back away from Hooker for the time being. Still two over towards A and rotation is a possibility as well if they want it but it looks like for the time being they are content with b but they have this teleport to work with as well dryad that tp that we haven't seen just yet but it's so early in this map that maybe it's a strat that they're keeping for that mid round and that is exactly what's going to take place frostbite good for another one camera already does get taken down doesn't know but definitely suspects that there's someone so in that long position you're just waiting to use that tp I like this positioning as well on the side of the defense. Not everyone rotated. Everyone was waiting for surprises like this one. 60 HP to work with. And Baby Soap does get taken down. The plan will be going down. And that is a 3v3 as everyone from the defense is able to come back to this positioning to A. And try to get once again those kills as soon as possible. I won't have that Viper for that post plant. Game be going to be good for one. Takes down an OS. And now Buckeye Gaming in a 3v2 here. Making a 2v2, Chop Chops, he's good for one with that ghost, and now it's going to be Cobalt. Looking to make a grand entrance onto the site, but he can't find him for the time being. Chop Chops goes to the revive, the defuse has to come in eventually, and here it does. Cobalt, good for one, step faster in the defensive line, holding down for Frostbite's defuse, but he is taken down. Chuck the Human, just going to play for time. They did get half, though. Cobalt, fake. he's got the shot, he's got the kill, but doesn't have enough time on the clock. It's going to be so, so close, but he does. One second left there and a great round for Cobalt, great round for Minnesota, bringing them right back into this game.
A really good round, almost playing for time perfectly for this Rabakai, but just one or two seconds that really make the difference. They're waiting uh, just to get that final kill. And that first half that they were able to get in the defuse did everything for them to get that one. And still, it's very risky for both of the teams. You're suffering a lot of losses early on. And even though that was expected on this Rabakai, knowing that they were only having specters and ghosts to work with want to obviously get as many kills as possible especially early into the round to get that information going on but the rifles this time around on both sides that is going to make things a little bit more even oh, Amalus has to walk through this astro smoke if he wants to make his way over towards gambi and he is lying in wait with this judge waiting to pounce on any member of buckeye gaming that comes forward but the spike has been left behind and spawn and Buckeye Gaming, they understand that, you know, it's not going to be easy to get onto one of these sites. There's so much utility to play with. There's so much utility to work through on the side of Minnesota. So they're leaving the spec behind, wanting to burn some of this utility on Minnesota and try to alleviate the pressure once they do inevitably get onto one of these sites. That information so far, not the greatest, but the Seekers are going to help with that a little bit more as they have to at least shoot them. And that's still information given for the Sky to work with. We see the Viper and all that utility going on. The stopping as everyone is going in. The possibility for the judge is not longer there. The trades with Cam is able to be to get two kills right there. Four members alive for the Zarabakai. They can get more and they will only one member alive for Minnesota. Only this Killjoy. They know exactly where she is after hearing that TP there. Might even try to contest it. Just pushing a little bit more aggressive and this positioning is impossible to get that enough look at them you cannot possibly get those two headshots in time <laughs> oh my it works but yeah it's so difficult to move your cross here right when you need to and there it is another round going in for Savakai. i love the way that they played that one yeah, decent attempt there from Davy Soap, but like you said, you know, it's almost inevitable there. It's so difficult, um, especially with two people watching that same angle. And now, this is potentially, you know, where this save comes in from Minnesota. BGC can try and gain some footing and try to gain multiple rounds in a row. They were able to pick up those first two. Crucial Minnesota stop. That makes this 3-1 to one here, but the buy is in BGC's favor. And... They're going to have to rely on Frostbite to get two more dinks with those headshot sheriffs because uh, unfortunately, BGC, they have so much advantage with these guns, but Gambi has these daggers. He can be a difference maker in this round. When this blaze term that is playing so aggressive immediately going in, but no kills oh. yet. It does get taken down. Trick the human knew exactly where this jet was going to be. And with that, it's going to be once again Bakai taking the advantage, taking the man advantage so early on. As we see them slowly but surely trying to push from showers and the seekers available and ready to use whenever. It's going to be a massive undertaking here for Baby Soap, but he's got a sheriff, he's got the swarm grenades, he's got a bit of time to buy here, and he's going to be able to spot one. There's the shots on Chop Chops, and it's a great kill to start things off with the plant. will go down, and Baby Soap. We'll swerve around the corner. Here comes Abstract skirting inside. Only a pistol to his name, though. There's just not much he can do. Sean has the shots and he has the kill. Abstract will fall. And now Baby Soap, slowly but surely, pushing onto the site. But he's got 34 HP. He's got to be careful to run for the hills. But only 21 HP. Frostbite long for the world. Same with Baby Soap. And the rest is history. And Os claims two kills at the end of it. BGC, 4-1 to one after a very convincing round with that gun advantage they make do. A very late rotation from Frostbite too. He was stuck on the other side of the map and making that rotation when everyone from his team was already taken down. Made the possibilities of where he could be coming from much, much less. So the attacking team once again for Barkai was able to predict right where the enemy team was coming from and how to get the kills right on. So another four spy that we're going to be seeing here from Minnesota. Not ideal. But it's what you gotta do to take advantage. You start getting those rounds as soon as possible. As we see the rotations of those ultimates to continue you know, to be one of the biggest highlights that Bakai is able to get here. A big engagement here for Gambi and Sean. And Gambi doesn't fancy his chances. Will dart away to safety. He knows he's on defense. Doesn't have to play for any sort of aggressive angle if he doesn't want to. And for the time being, Spike's still left behind, and this is the strategy that BGC have been employing so far in this game, and it's worked wonders, and there's going to be the flash for Flash, and Frostbite 
for the time being. Can't really see much, but now the stars will go down. Still a bit of a diversion over towards Showers, and it's leaving two, three members over towards A and allowing the spike to potentially go towards B. Yeah, there's no one there. The showstopper is going to connect right into the Astra, and with that... The entrances, especially towards the elbow, they are going to get denied. The spike hasn't been planted yet, though, and Sean was expecting Frostbite to be pushing right from there. But just fear to deny that plant, it seems like it might be working out. Has to move a little bit more. The plant has not been down 30 seconds remaining. Now they're going to try it again. Now they're going to be able to connect it. And that information that is given thanks to that Soba is there. So now the question is, how is the defense going to push here for this pose? They lost two members early on so they have to play together here yes. actually they'll just save i mean the yeah they're just gonna, gonna save. save yeah it makes sense you know three alive here they have a lockdown that's really just about it and they don't really want to try to make this any harder than it is so they're going to save these three guns smart here from minnesota and they will understand when they are beat and we'll leave that turret behind towards ct just in case they can see and look for some exit frags if gambling can get one or two could be big for them but now come out. We'll be around this corner. Gamby gonna hear it, but Kamei is able to take down Gamby. Baby Soap good for one, but they both end up dropping in the save. Plus <laughs> for nothing. Hungry for those kills and not really working out for Minnesota at all. At that point, it's just better to run away with the guns. And it was risky. Again, I mentioned it before that round. They were completely forcing into that round. Uh, and they could have gotten away with it. I mean, even if they save those three guns, that is pretty good to work with and then you can figure out what to do with the other two members but now only one of those rifles alive and there's going to be light chills coming in not a lot of possibilities besides hiding in those corners hoping to get a kill or two but even with a judge they haven't been able to get it so what chances do they have here into a safe round where even the ultimates are not going to benefit them too much right we talked about what ultimates can give you kills and of course there's going to be that blaze storm and maybe that show supper, but we already see, uh, saw it being used on the other side. So again, the possibility is suppose this defense gets denied, and they have to play this extremely careful to get a pick or two. There's the seekers. There's the drone. We'll spot a couple. They have the seekers. They have the flashes as well. And once again, BGC, they're leaving one over towards A is almost a diversion for Minnesota. But eventually, they have to understand that. One might have to just rotate over and you can leave that KJ on an anchor. It's not the end of the world. I want to survive it. on its own, but here comes the slow warp to the top of there. So that's the thing, but here we go. Here comes Kamei, gonna be able to take down Frostbite and an is gonna be good for one more. Gambi drops in this divide, working wonders for BGC, slicing the map in half. And they're able to get the spike down as well for the time being. BGC, full autonomy, full control in a 5v2. One of the strongest ultimates just to deny information. It is insane what a cosmic divide can do. And we saw it right there. The spike planted, not even able to hear it. And now maybe Soba has a risk to take here. Knowing that the wall is going to be watched. There's not even possibilities to go in. Only a sheriff to work with as well. And the lockdown continues not to be used as the kills are doing everything. For Bakai once again. We saw in the first match of the day, we continue to see these players, everyone being highlighted for them as it is just playing for picks and working out exactly the way that they wanted. The economy is looking amazing for them. And this has to be around for Minnesota. Finally, Gamby able to pick up this operator on defense with the jet. It's a staple. You have to get kills with this operator. You have to try to create some space and alleviate the pressure from Minnesota because right now it has all been BGC the whole way through and they have a Viper's Pit as well. They have this revive just in case and Cobalt gonna look to play aggressively but he gets taken down and Oss is good for one more and now a 5v4 but traded back immediately. Gambi makes doing the promise and gets a kill there with that operator even things up here at 4-4. Four to four. And the operator can be nice at least to create a little bit more space to work with on the side of the defense so like you said this has to i mean it, 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 this is the biggest possibility for a comeback right now in this sort of minnesota especially in this first half is to get the kills coming in and the operator is going to help a lot but frostbite already taken down that initiator that goes down and that means that the viper pit is going to come up online and available as the damage is going to do everything enough to deny a little bit more of space but again 
And over and over again, we continue to see the trades are doing everything for Bokai to keep the numbers advantage for them going on. Oh, it's a great Vipers hit. Fake here. Baby Soap, though, fortunately was there with the rotation. They understood that no one was on B, and that's going to be the cage out lockdown used. The plant should go down from Chuck the Human. He does have plenty of time, but the question is, can he get out? And he won't be able to. Baby Soap right there with him. Checks him out, takes out Chuck, and out. A lockdown will be used. Nobody will be detained. The defuse is going to get half at least. Or maybe so. Going to get barrage with bullets and pelted down. Sean's good for one more. That half? Yeah. Going to spray standing. his way outside. Can't be abstract. Immediately get two more. And it's all going to be on Kame. He can only watch his Minnesota. Will finally win a round here and make this two to six. And they pick up that operator crucially for Gambi. Definitely needed that operator, definitely needed to keep that online. So it's nice to see Minnesota continuing to be on this game, continuing uh, to perform and to do a little bit better compared to what we saw in the earlier rounds. And that is where it shows how those rifles and those operators can do so much. That first pick that we saw coming in for that jet did so much. And now it is enabling them to work a little bit better for that information, right? That cosmic divide going to be available. And on top of that, you have those seekers that you can use very early on into the round. Just to at least create that hesitation of, uh, does the, this attacking team want to go into the same site again? Or do they want to change things around? Ooh, Sean. Almost saw stars there, but he is able to get out of there. Just fine. Minnesota have to rely on Gambi here with this operator to... Gain some frags here now abstract. For the time being, we'll peer his way out. Baby Soap gonna be good for one. Here comes Chop Chops. He's taken down. Good trades though, all around for BGC. And now Chuck. Maneuver his way on towards the site. Cobalt gonna be good for one. And Os is dropped. This guardian Ooh, for Cobalt doing yeah. absolute wonders. And it might be a timing here. Chuck Gamby from downtown. Parachutes up top and takes down Sean. But Chuck on fire right now. His barrel is absolutely smoking and now first fight. He will pop the Seekers. He understands it's such a big round to win. And the spike hasn't even been planted yet for Chuck. He's got to get over there and get the spike down. He's got 43 seconds. Potentially, he can get there over. But Frostbite's going to be a timing game here. Concealed in the shadows. Frostbite, he's got a flash ready. Chuck turns the blind eye. Frostbite, one more. He's so blind, he's got freaking flyer miles on him. And Chuck remains composed and takes the kill there on Frostbite. 4K for the Astra. Chuck the human. No, Chuck the god, Dryad. How does it make it happen? Flash 2, right? That was insane to get the kill towards the end. It seems like even in that 1v1, he didn't have the advantage. Those stars worked out nice, but he had to move close. And he had to get the spike, and that put him in a risky positioning where Frostbite was almost able to capitalize from. But too far still, even in that 1v1, didn't make it happen. And now is forcing a save into what minnesota can do next i love to see the effort everyone being able to be highlighted on this out of buckeye it's been the duelist has been the controllers has been everyone playing together to make this victory especially or at least on the first half work out the way that they want to absolutely good frag there from frostbite will take on chop chops but it's immediately transferred back over towards kame who Gains that kill, and now Chuck doesn't turn the corner. Gambi gonna be good for one. Anas, he'll barely be able to take down Gambi the next time. That smoke not gonna be able. He popped up. And now the plant will go down over towards A. It's gonna be a 3v3. There is the divide available, and I wonder if they will end up going for that. But Kame gonna be good for one. Cobalt dropping. That's the Sova gone. That's the intel. That's the utility to get onto the site. Gone's gonna be so difficult with a controller and a sentinel getting onto the site for Minnesota. Like I said, the numbers are going to be around the same, but getting the kills, especially with the damage ready into Kame, can turn things to be a little bit more risky. Minnesota has a big chance here, but with the economy only classic to work with, it is not going to be possible. Eight to two, and Bokai continue being dominant, continue being on top. Even on the interview that we had with Kame, he said it. He didn't know about the performance that Minnesota could have compared to the other teams as they were expecting so now they're starting to figure things out now they're starting to figure out their play cell of the enemy team and even as they're figuring out they continue to be in top and that does so much for them oh, Kame, sitting at nine five and five has had a great game so far in the sky has been able to facilitate bgc's pushes and bgc we're seeing two different styles you know from bind uh starting on icebox they played very aggressively and very committed 
to one site after the other, but this time they're leaving the spike behind. They're burning utility. They understand that on this sort of map, they're not going to have the luxury of uh, going aggressive and they're going to have to wait things out for the time being. Gamby, though, with this operator, can he find success that he did previously? It really rides on getting an early frag, gaining that man advantage. But even if you do, Dryad, there's a revive available. There's a cosmic divide available. Even if Minnesota gain a kill, there's so many tools for PDC to work with going into this next round. It's interesting to see the Sage 2 playing all the way back with Spike. Doesn't want to risk the Spike going down. Doesn't want to risk it. So he's going, she's going to let the team get the rest of the information before deciding if A or B is going to be safer for them. And for that, one pick at least is going to be needed to give that confidence. Those are the tactics he has been able to get over and over again. It seems like even contesting Hookah is not going to be a possibility. So much utility used there, especially from that Killjoy. They got in line revealing that someone is looking to a short. But the kill is not connecting. Yeah, the operator doesn't get any value. Was not expecting so many members to come back right from there. And the pain chills to the backside, creating a little bit more space. But the kills now, Baby Saw Baby, able to be good for one. Needs a little bit more to work with. Sean, he's already made his way on top of the site. He's so aggressive here on A. He's been the lone member. They had him with the blind light, but they didn't save onto him. And now it's going to be Kame. Good for one more. Sean really adding insult to injury here and punishing Minnesota. And now two to nine for BGC, really Last making do on this first half of play and really dominating Minnesota to start. There. Sean, we saw him popping off on the first map that we were able to see from him, and he's able to do it once more. That snake fight worked out perfectly just to create a little bit more space, just to create that hesitation, and then just with the rifle being able to guarantee that very nice. It might be a similar scenario too as that first map that we saw from them, a 9 to 3, but it's all going to be defined by what Minnesota can do here on this defensive side. And the economy is not looking ideal for them and saving and is just buying as much as he can into this last round to get anything done. Yeah, four ultimates as well on BGC. There's so many tools here. No seekers, unfortunately, but they do have the two flashes as well. And there's going to be the ghost signal. The showstopper going to be used for Anas. He's in the back of sight. He's going all the way forward. He really wants a kill, but he can't find anything. And now he'll just maintain control, maintain posture on the site. The bomb will be planted down. And this wall doing wonders here abstract. He's got to be careful. We'll be taking a rain of bullets and a rain of terror for Chop Chops. And there's the Viper Spin initiated. All control here for BGC. And now Sean in his playground. Let's see if he can make things happen. Yeah, it's all about the kills now. And the Viper Spin denying a little bit of visibility is going to work out though on the other side. Because Brokha is a fire cannon. Good for two. Needs a little bit more. One more kill at least. And they know... They have a suspicion exactly of where Jet can be. Now they definitely know playing to where Kuka Night Flash and he has to run away. The dash doesn't even work out the way that they wanted to. Another one though that he's able to get, but the time is running out. The DPS is not going to happen. The attacking team will be getting away with this round as well. You know it is not going to be Switching like side. that first map that we saw for Bokai, but even better. Double digits already for the side of Bokai. Well, on the side of Minnesota, only two rounds that they were able to get there. Man, oh man. BGC come out of this next game with a vengeance. And they are ruthless here on bind. 10-2 to, to start things off in the first half. And looking to make this one a quick show indeed. As right now, they have a couple of members over towards B, a couple over towards A. It looks like it's going to be a stack for Minnesota on this B site. They're going to have potentially maneuvering after the fact, but actually they're just trolling me dry. It. Okay, it's going to be two over towards A, two towards B, three towards B, <laughs> excuse me, and the spike going to be left behind. So Minnesota, you know, taking that same strategy BGC did, you know, waiting out, trying to buy some time, burn some of this utility and make it easier to get onto one of these sites. But Gamby needs that pick on Chop Chops, can't find it, 22 HP, but he's got that sky healing, which will top him off for the time being. Sky healing always nice to have, especially early on before the fight even starts. So you know that you can use it knowing that there's nothing else at risk. As Chop Chop still knows that there's someone there trying to go in and the Astra trying to help out as well for scale though. On the other side and playing towards long, it's going to be Kami oh getting and denying that information from the Silva. And there it is, a little bit more of healing that this guy is able to get before the push that we can expect for Bokai any minute now. They're going to have to wait on this guy to work 
its way over towards B, but the smokes will be planted. They still think someone's in Hookah, but Chop Chops has moved over outside of this window area, but he's going to get sprayed through, still holding his ground, still waiting, lying in wait. Kamei going to be good for one on top of Frostbite. He sees the turret down. He knows that KJ is in oh. Hookah. Oh, man, 79 HP left. on Chop Chops. He's got the heal as well. 30 seconds for Minnesota. As soon as they move down, that's going to be the go signal. Chuck is going to be able to take down Gamby through the smoke. Great intuition there. He's going to spot the barrel. Chop Chops is good for one. Can he find two? The jump shot not going to be there in time because Chuck got it first. And a flawless round for BGC. Really just attacking and just destroying Minnesota in this game. Oh, the patience as well that we saw on the defense. Chop Chop, she's knowing that he was at risk playing there. You saw the turret going down and then you start sweating about what can be done or if you can have someone else from your team shoot the turret so your location doesn't get revealed. And it worked out exactly the way that they wanted to, at least good for one. And the rest of the team was able to clean up the mess that was left behind. 11 rounds now. Going for the set of Bakai. Only two more to go, and this is just the beginning of the second half. Let's see what Minnesota try to accomplish here. Going towards A, the spike is over in that general direction. The Viper Wall can be primed. The stars will be issued, and now so many different options for BGC to play around with and work through inside of these smokes. Abstract will do the same. Now, Baby Soap just waiting for his opportunity. Cobalt has the Spectre, could make some noise. If Sean gets too close, it's going to be a timing game over towards Showers. And it will be Cobalt who wins that one out over towards Sean. And that's a great frag for Minnesota to try to get onto one of these sites. But still, Anas holding down Showers with the Sheriff. He is spotted. And that'll force the disengage and potentially an A site take. And that kill that can do so much for Minnesota. At least they get a little bit of confidence back. But so much damage that was taken early on by a couple of their members makes the way to go in a little bit harder. They have to get one more to guarantee that a push that you mentioned and that means that utility is not going to be there and on the other side chuck human able to get that kill means that we're going to be even and the damage is mostly going for a set of minnesota the flash can be used there for kame he's got one in a couple of seconds here can be gonna be good for one kame stampeding his way inside will be good for one but here comes the cavalry. It's going to be Minnesota gaining a ton of footing on towards A, and they have plenty left. of time to get this spike down. It's going to be all on the shoulders of Chuck. Let's see what he's got. No stars available as well. It's going to be so difficult to maneuver his way out of the site, but here he goes. He's got a Spectre in hand. We'll spot Abstract. We'll look for the shots. He'll maneuver his way inside of U-Haul now. And Nine bullets. Spike ticking. It's going to be tough. He's got the time, but let's see if he can do it. Nine bullets, and you're not really sure where he is now. Definitely spotted, has to reload and try to get those kills. But they're playing so close together that it's impossible. Jed with the three kills as well. And Minnesota gets another round, but it was not the best one for them to get, right? Because the economy is still not working out, and the, the win condition for this team, the comeback condition for Minnesota has to be winning on those rounds where both of the teams has rifles. So. We haven't seen that yet. We have to wait a little bit longer for that one. And it seems like Bakai, I like the way that they respect the enemy too. Even though they have the advantage, they know they don't want to make any crazy mistakes that is going to cause them more losses. So that means a safe one for them and they have no, not even skill to work with. Now baby, so will be good for one. Sean though does trade it back. It's a good frag for BGC, but as a result in much. And now Frostbite just galloping his way inside, takes down Chuck and... It's already two only alive for BGC4. Hungry, hungry attackers here for Minnesota. Really looking to make do towards B. As Gamby will lurk around the corner. He's got the flank here. This is going to be a long, long, slow, arduous journey for BGC. And they have a flanker to worry about as well. Potentially if they can sniff it out in time. Looks like they're thinking about it. Here's Chop Chops. Around the corner, oh my word, Gamby, Gamby, what do you have in store for us here? Oh my word, oh. it's gonna be, it's gonna be a scary movie, Dryad. Oh my god, get out the popcorn! Here he comes, here oh. comes Gamby. Here he's gonna knife one. He takes out one, dashes. He'll look for two. Oh my word, Gamby trades it back. I'm not. Hey, we love to see it though. Great plan of Gamby, but he's traded back with BG6. Yeah, the patience. So I think the dash was the biggest mistake. Could have got them both in time, but now nothing else can be done. And for the side Buckeye, all you can do here is. Just try to get in, maybe a pick or two, maybe 
Luckily, try to get anything else because seeing a life is also going to cause damage to the year that is getting taken down. At least not given the economy of uh, that the enemy team got in the kill though. So that is just something to work with. And uh, again, I like the way that Baka is respecting the enemy though. They know that there's a massive advantage that they have. So, but even then, that doesn't mean that they're going to make mistakes. That doesn't mean that they're going to force where they don't have to. And that was a full save, like I said, no shield to work with. So they were already not expecting to get a lot of kills done. But now their rifles are available. Rifles are available for a BGC. Let's see if they can use this advantage that they have now acquired against Minnesota. There's the jet knives available, potentially. They want to go for that route from Minnesota if they want to get onto one of those sites in that manner. But Chuck holding down Hookah. Right now it's going to be a slow-paced affair here for Minnesota. Understanding that they aren't in a gun advantage. They have to play this one slowly and work for picks. This is the biggest chance here. And this is a crucial round. You don't want to take Buckeye to match point. So... The initial picks are going to be essential for Minnesota to get anything done. And look at how careful they're playing as well. Slowly pushing towards A. Everyone playing together, but only the sky on the other side. Trying to get some information, trying to distract what can happen to the B side. And even denying that full rotation that can take place. So far, it's playing very nice. Just three members into the B side can have a good opening into the A for the attacking team. Nos now knows at least one or two members is over towards left. showers and Sean is in a decent spot. The recon art will not be giving vision to over towards Sean. He is good for one. Can't find two. Gambi trades it back. And now it's going to be a flooding, an earthquake here over towards A. And it's going to be trades back and forth for both sides. The plant, though, still hasn't gone down. 15 seconds for Minnesota to work with. And now 14. Make it lower and lower as here comes Minnesota trying to get this plant down. They will left. inevitably do just that. Baby Soap throws the flashes coming from heaven. And now it's going to be a barraging here. For BGC with this retake, they're going to be able to get onto the site with those flashes. Now Cobalt puts himself in a very advantageous situation. He's going to venture onto the site, but Chuck the Human sifts him out, takes down the kill on the Sova. Maybe so, no utility to work with. He'll work his way out of the smoke, but he's immediately taken down. And it's going to be a flustered Minnesota Dryad losing their 12th round and putting BGC on match point. Minnesota had a very difficult task here too because the spike was planted very late into the round and everyone for the side of the defense was already rotated and they already knew where the spike was getting planted. So that meant that for the attacking team for the side of Minnesota, the two last members left, they didn't have anywhere to run, they didn't have anywhere to hide. So they had to play towards lamps and that was exactly where the defense was looking at. They were just expecting them to peek to get that kill over with, to get their round over with, and now pushing us to the match point, knowing that there's only one more to go potentially. And there's even some ultimates that can be available for this type of to get this over with. Oh man, Anas, he's feeling it with this judge concealed and shrouded in mystery inside of this poison orb, and the baby soap is none the wiser. It will dissipate. This is gonna be so, so careful for Anas. He hears the noise, Sean. Takes down Baby Soap, folding up like a lawn chair there. And now 4 to 12 here for BGC with a man advantage. And Anas doesn't know where one is. Cobalt's right in front of him. That boom bot will be a good bit of intel as now he knows someone's over there. There's the grenade bouncing off the wall trying to dissuade Cobalt. He's going to waltz away to safety over towards U-Haul. And for the time being, BGC have thwarted off this A push. And a rotation could be a possibility. Still plenty of time for Minnesota, though. There's time to work with, but... The kills have to do everything. The sneakers are going to come out, trying to reveal if there's a rotation taking place or not. And that is going to give the opportunity even for a flank coming in for the side of the defense. But we haven't seen it yet because Minnesota hasn't been able to take control of any space of the map, any area of the map. Everything is still left. controlled by the defense. And that is how they are still staying on top of their game and how they continue to take advantage round after round again there's only one more to go that information is given him i know that there's two there and the guiding light makes things difficult flash twice and a wall is not ideal doesn't work out get good for one can make and make it two and the rest of the team is going to be there right to support him right when he needs a minnesota only one more member alive that turns into zero and another very very convincing victory 13 to 4 
for Buckeye is able to see on top. It's able to take that victory. Yeah, great showing there from BGC. Once again, showing out in this type of way in a really dominant fashion uh, in this third game of the stream. And Dryad really showing that they can play multiple styles. And we saw it on the Icebox, uh, Icebox game. They were able to play more aggressively. In this game, they were playing more back and more cautious, waiting for their opponents, waiting for Minnesota to make the wrong move and buying time buying time for that utility to be used. And once it was gone, they were just able to waltz onto the site and take stuff for free. And Dryad, I mean, that's really it for BGC. Just confidence and it's probably going to be moving all the way into these next couple of games because they are really feeling it, it looks like. Yeah, they are looking really good. Definitely one of the teams you want to keep an eye on if you haven't faced them yet. And everyone is playing at the same time, right? So it's hard to keep an eye on all the teams and what they're playing and how they're playing to study them. But it's going to be good, I think, uh, as we see Bakai moving on because I definitely expect them to play tomorrow too. So making, uh, just studying them as much as you can if you're on the other side and trying to see what you can do but they have so much variety for me they have so much flexibility and not it, it something that we saw not only in the way that they can play both aggressive and passive but also the different agents that they're able to play and they look really good with we'll see if buckeye gaming can continue that trend like the top pool a but regardless our next matchup will be kentucky versus iu in just a moment we're gonna go to a quick break when we come back more valorant action coming your way stay tuned shoulders only 48 hp he's got a flash to work with oh perfect the left and he enters his way over towards the right 22 hp for frostbite in the nick of time he won't have anything left to say if chop chops faster than the defensive line holding down for frostbite to use he is taken down chuck the human just gonna play for time they did get half though cobalt he's got the shot he's got the kill but does he have enough time on the clock it's gonna be so so close but he does one second left there and a great the viper and all the utility going on the Stopping with everyone is going in. The possibility for the judge is not longer there. They trade the canvas, they will be to get two kills right there. Four members alive for the setup. Okay, they can get more, and they will only one member alive for Minnesota. Yeah, when this place combat is playing so aggressive, immediately going in, but no kills. Oh. Yeah, it does get taken down. Goes down, maybe so. Swerve around the corner. Here comes Abstract skirting inside. Only a pistol to his name, though. There's just not much he can do. Sean has the shock. He has the kill. Abstract will fall. And now Baby so slowly but surely pushing onto the site. But he's got 34 HP. He's got to be careful. We'll run for the hills. But it's 21 HP. Frostbite long for the world. Same with Baby so But the rest is history. And Oss claims two kills at the end. It showers him. It's leaving two, three members over towards A and allowing the spike to potentially go towards B. Yeah, there's no one there. The showstopper is going to connect right the top of there. So that's the thing. But here we go. Here comes Kamei. Going to be able to take down Frostbite. And Anas going to be good for one more. Gambi drops in this divide. Working wonders for BGC. Slicing the map in half. And they're able to get the spike down as well for the time being. BGC, full autonomy, full control in a 5v1. Oh, maybe Soba has a little risk to take here. Knowing that the wall is going to be watch there's not even possibility to go in only a sheriff to work with as well and the lockdown continues not to be used as the kills are doing and the defuse is coming in half at least or maybe so we're gonna get barrage with bullets and delta down sean's good for one more that half yeah. gonna spray his way outside can't be abstract immediately get two more it's all gonna be on kimei he can only watch his minute his way on 
down toward the site. Cobalt can begin to one and Oss is dropped. This guardian Ooh. from Cobalt doing absolute wonders. There might be a timing here. Chuck Gamby from downtown. Paris. Shadows, Frostbite, he's got a flash ready. Chuck turns a blind eye. Frostbite, one more. He's so blind, he's got freaking fire miles on him. And Chuck remains composed and takes the kill. They're on Frostbite. 4K for the Astro. Chuck the human. No, Chuck the god. Orange. The kill is not connected. Oh, yeah, the man. operator doesn't get any value. Was he's not been the lone member? They had him with the blind light, but they didn't save onto him. And now it's going to be Kamei. Good for one more. Sean really adding insult to injury here. Rifles initiated. All control here for BGC. And now Sean in his playground. Let's see if he can make things happen. Yeah, it's all about the kills now, and the Viper's 59, a little bit of visibility is going to work out, though, on the other side, because Rakai is a fire, can be good for two, and he needs a little bit more, one more kill, a lead, than they know, they have a sufficient... Stops, he's got the heal as well, 30 seconds for Minnesota, as soon as they move down, that's going to be the ghost signal, Chuck is going to be able to take down Gamby through the smoke, great intuition there, he's going to spot the barrel, Chop Chops is good for one, can he find two, the Jump Chop not going to be there in time, because Chuck got it first. And means that Utila is not going to be there, and on the other side, Chuck the Human able to get that kill means that we're going to be even, and the damage is mostly going for Zeta Minnesota. Flash is being used there for Kamei. He's got one in a couple of seconds here. Gambi going to be good for one. Kamei stampeding his way inside. It will be good for one, but here comes the cavalry. Oh. It's gonna be it's gonna be a scary movie, Dryad. Oh my god, get out the popcorn. Here he comes. Here comes Gamby. He's gonna knife one. He takes down one dashes. He'll look for two. Oh my word. Gamby trades it back. I'm not. Play so far is playing very nice. Just three members into the B side can have a good opening into the A for the attacking team. Now knows at least one or two members is over towards showers and Sean is in a decent spot. The recon art will not be giving vision to over towards Sean. He is good for one. Can't find two. Gamby trades it back. And now it's going to be a flooding, an earthquake here over towards A. And it's going to be trades back and forth both sides. The plant though still hasn't gone down. 15 seconds for Minnesota to work with. And now 14. Make it lower and lower as here comes Minnesota trying to get this plant down. They will inevitably do just that. Baby soap. Notice the flash is coming from heaven. And now it's going to be a barraging here. For BGC with this retake, we're going to be able to get onto the site with those flashes. Now Cobalt, himself in a very advantageous situation. He's going to venture onto the site, but Chuck the Human sifts him out, takes down the kill on the Sova. Baby Soap, no utility to work with. He'll work his way out of the smoke, and he's a meat poison orb, and Baby Soap is none the wiser. Anticipate. So, so careful for Anasi. Here's the way Sean takes down Baby Soap. Both of them with a launch here and there, and now 4 to 12 here for BGC with a man advantage. One is Cobalt's right in front of that boom bot will be a good bit of intel as now he knows someone's over there. There's the grenade bouncing off the wall trying to dissuade Cobalt. He's gonna waltz away to safety over towards U Haul and for the time being BBC have warded off this A push the rotation could be a possibility. Still plenty of time for Minnesota. Yeah, whoa, it's not ideal. It doesn't work out get good for one can make and make it two. And the rest of the team is going to be there right to support him right when he needs a Minnesota. Only one more member alive that turns into Hero and in more predictable as the rounds go by, but I don't think anyone has any idea. The crosser on the complete one. Chop chops good for one more, and now it's all on Frostbite's shoulders. Only 48 HP. He's got a flash to work with. His way over towards the right. 22 HP for Frostbite. In the nick of time, he won't have anything left to say. And Chop chops faster than the defensive line. Holding down for Frostbite's refuse, but he is taken down. Chop the human just to play for time. They did get half though. Cobalt take. He's got the shot, he's got the kill, he doesn't have enough time on the clock, it's gonna be so, so close, but he does, one second left there. And he's the Viper, I know that utility going on, the stopping as everyone is going in, the possibility for the judge is not longer there, the trades with Cam is able to, to get two kills right there, four members alive, for the Zarapokai, they can get more, and they will only one member alive for Minnesota. When this blaze from Best Flame so aggressive, immediately going in, but no kills oh. yet. It does get taken down. The plant will go down. Baby Soap will swerve around the corner. Here comes Abstract skirting inside. Only a pistol to his name, though. There's just not much he can do. Sean has the shock. He has the kill. Abstract will fall. And now Baby Soap slowly but surely pushing onto the side.
sight, but he's got 34 HP. He's got to be careful. We'll run for the hills, but it's 21 HP. Frostbite long for the world. Same with Baby Soap, and the rest is history. And Oz Flames 2 kills the lead. Showers, and it's leaving two, three members over towards A and allowing the spike to potentially go towards B. Yeah, there's no one there. The showstopper is going to connect right the top of there. So that's the thing. But here we go. Here comes Kamei. Going to be able to take down Frostbite. And Anas is going to be good for one more. Gambi drops in this divide. Working wonders for BGC. Slicing the map in half. And they're able to get the spike down as well for the time being. BGC, full autonomy, full control in a fight. Maybe so bad. It's a little risk to take here. Knowing that the wall is going to be watched there's not even possibility to go in only a sheriff to work with as well and the lockdown continues not to be used as the kills are going to be used to get half at least or maybe so we're gonna get barrage with bullets and pelt the town shots good for one more that half yeah. gonna spray his way outside camping and abstract immediately get two more and it's all gonna be on kimei he can only watch his minute way on towards the site cobalt could be good for one and os is dropped this guardian Ooh, for cobalt doing yeah. absolute wonders there might be a timing here chuck gambi from downtown paris shadows frostbite he's got a flash ready chuck turns the blind eye frostbite one more he's so blind he's got freaking flyer miles on him and chuck remains composed and takes the kill they're on frostbite 4k for the astra chuck the human no chuck the god a triad or Kill is not connecting oh. again. The operator doesn't get any value. Was hey, he's no in the lone member. They had him with the blind light, but they didn't save onto him. And now it's going to be Kamei. Good for one more. Sean really adding insult to injury here. The fight was initiated. All control here for BGC. And now Sean in his playground. Let's see if he can make things happen. Yeah, it's all about the kills now, and the Viper Spit denying a little bit of visibility is going to work out though on the other side because Brockha is a fire cannon, good for two, and needs a little bit more, one more kill at least, and they know they have a suspicion. Top Shops has got the heal as well, 30 seconds for Minnesota. As soon as they move down, that's going to be the ghost signal. Chuck is going to be able to take down Gamby through the snow. Great intuition there. He's going to spot the barrel. Chop Chops is good for one. Can he find you? The jump shot not going to be there in time because Chuck got it first. And, and that means that Utility is not going to be there. And on the other side, Chuck Human able to get that kill means that we're going to be even. And the damage is mostly going for a set of Minnesota. He's got one in a couple of seconds here. Gambi gonna be good for one. Kamei stampeding his way inside. Will be good for one, but here comes the cavalry. Oh. It's gonna be it's gonna be a scary movie, Dryad. Oh my god, get out the popcorn. Here he comes. Here comes Gambi. Here he's gonna knife one. He takes down one dashes. He'll look for two. Oh my word. Gambi trades it back on top. Play is so far is playing very nice. Just three members into the B side can have a good opening into the A for the attacking team now knows at least one or two members is over towards showers and sean is in a decent spot the recon art will not be giving vision to over towards sean he is good for one can't find two gambi trades it back now it's going to be a flooding an earthquake here over towards a and it's going to be trades back and forth both sides the plant though still hasn't gone down 15 seconds for minnesota to work with and now 14 and lower and lower is here for minnesota trying to get this plant down they will inevitably do just that maybe so knows the flash is coming from heaven and now it's going to be a barraging here or BGC with this retake, we're gonna be able to get on the site with those flashes. Now Cobalt puts up in a very advantageous situation. He's gonna venture onto the site, but Chuck the Human sifts him out, takes down the kill on the Sova. Baby Soap, no utility to work with. He'll work his way out of the smoke, but he's a meat boy's Norman. Baby Soap is none the wiser. So, so careful for Anasi. Here's gonna win Sean. Takes down Baby Soap. Holds up like a lawn chair there, and now 4 to 12 here for BGC with a man advantage. Cobalt's right in front of that boom bot will be a good bit of intel as now he knows someone's over there. There's the grenade bouncing off the wall trying to dissuade Cobalt. He's gonna walk away to safety over towards U Haul and for the time being, did you see him sort of off to say plus the rotation? Could be a possibility. Still plenty of time for Minnesota. Yeah, whoa, it's not ideal. It doesn't work out. Getting good for one hammock and make it two. And the rest of the team is going to be there right to support him. Right when he needs in Minnesota. Only one more member alive that turns into zero and another.
Anarchy. A finals. A couple notable colleges in that event, and of course, there's an EDU event in general. So the same sort of general competition. That's the main stage of collegiate esports association. So they came through all the way to finals, won it out. So this is a team that definitely has some talent, but they do have a little bit of a wrench in the plan. Yeah. They're playing with Patty, who was a gold player, Rocket League captain, filling for this team, mm -hmm. stepped up to the call when a player had to unfortunately unenroll from the university to step up to the position. Can they still find the same success? Honestly, I mean, despite being a gold player, rank doesn't always mean everything. If you mm -hmm. have coordination mm -hmm. with your team, if you can be a supporting character, uh, elevate the players who are maybe better out fragging than you are. And plus, uh, with our insider info, we did hear that Patty does tend to hold up quite well in these oh. high elo lobbies, in these scrims. So maybe they're an up and comer. Maybe. Maybe this Rocket League captain will make a swap over to Valorant in the new future if they're able to climb these ranks. But going into things, Age of Select is over and we're going to see quite different compositions coming out on both sides. Actually, the first Sage in, that, that we've seen today. Yeah, that it is. Uh, definitely an agent that is pretty good for, for new players to the game. And as Patty being a player that is stepping in, filling in, helping the squad out. has been. I'm not sure how long has been around actually messing for the team, but... Sage is an agent that solidly one-dimensional. The wall placement can be a little bit interesting, but that's more when you get into maps like Icebox. Uh, definitely are some creative options with the wall, so I'm interested to see what Shadow's actually been able to work with. But nonetheless, if he's been holding up, I think we still got a game on our hands. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see how, obviously, Patty is going to be on the support character to help out the rest of Chow in here and gonna be a full C blitz coming out really fast take with these two duelists a fast take in site just like that secured plant has gone down for challenge now they have all this utility to still utilize for that post plant wall will come up as well so we will get that utilization from the sage early we'll, we'll follow CT make that rotate we we'll take just a little bit harder for FSA town will spot Kaiser out towards long that'll be Kaiser winning that duel the sky to come through Patty will have a quick trade on to Jay paranoia coming through the one pick also pretty darn interesting. Patty and also combined for two. 
Caster shots found, but nothing quite connecting. There we go. Right click on Danae. Looking for more, but Astral going to be the one to win that out. Done. Welcome back, everyone, to the CENC Midwest Invitational. We're almost halfway there, pretty much halfway there in the day. We have Northwood going up against Indiana. It's going to be on Bind. Uh, so we're just getting the repeat maps dry. It's, it's our lucky day. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. A good map, too, for different possibilities. I think the last match was really a lot of different agents being played. Uh, but more than anything, all the highlights that we've seen have really been just getting those kills and being able to frag out and really pop off like we've seen over and over again. But now the good thing is that we get to see a team that we haven't seen on the stream before, and that is going to be Indiana. So I'm curious to see what they're able to do, right? Every time we, we get a new team, is a lot of question marks that we have. And as our rounds go by, we start to answer them slowly. So it, it is nice to see what they can do and how far they can get everyone playing against each other. And we, we talked about it. We are right halfway through. So this is when teams can start to feel better about their gameplay start to feel worse right many different possibilities and, and the confidence and the the mental that plays into valorant like we talked about it looks like from what we've known of northwood and what we saw on icebox benji you're gonna go back towards that chamber and the only change i believe is drake is on viper on that icebox game so he swaps over to the astra here for bind and tyler on that uh, raise what we saw him you know be able to do was pretty incredible in that icebox game but it's going to be countered with a raise of indiana's own as memphis will be able to pick that up and as we add into here i'm excited to see as you said indiana first time on the stream how they compare to northwood and it's going to be northwood starting on that defensive side so we'll be able to see if this chamber can get the value that it needs on defense Absolutely. And it's nice to see the raise in a map that it makes a little bit more sense, right? Especially in the hands of Tyler, the way that he was using his utility, the way that he was using those naturals, it really seems like he has a very, very clear understanding on how to play raise and how you can get value with raise. And now in a map that is truly enabling him to do that, this is one of the players that we have to keep an eye on. On top of that, I just think overall, the, the composition coming in for Nerglet just seems to be a lot stronger, right? you have also the chamber and we've talked about what he can do as well multiple times and it's just a very well and full compositions against maybe even a viper that some teams are very hesitant to bring to the table especially here in vine double controller here for indiana we'll see how they pan out going starting on this attacking side as that dart will gain a great deal of intel as ferb's up Along with Benji, will be forced to back away for the time being, but Smart Punch taking a lot of space up towards Long will be jousting with Benji, but with that Sheriff, it's not a 1v1 you want to take. And now Tyler propped up here, but Dips has Memphis's number. It's a great Sheriff kill to start things off, and Indiana. That's one of the many members, and Smart Punch dashes to the TP, but he still gets taken down. Ferbs uh, continues his aim and gets that kill, but it's straight back immediately. And now a 4v3. And it seems like everything is about to go down here. The spike is going to be planted. No one around to deny that possibility. So it means that Indiana can't get in that better positioning. Just try to play. Just to try to maybe use some lineups before that information that we see the drone trying to get early on and spotting at least one member to her slam to make things difficult. Get stunned. Get taken down the drink and once again working out perfectly. But now it is Norway who's shining a little bit brighter with this come around on the other side. It is going to be the Viper fighting for her life, but it's not going to be possible as this first pistol round will be going for the side of Northwood. Gets half, oh, half to get the other half, and there it is. That one victory that they are able to get, that starting of the momentum that can continue to build for them. Northwood going to give that plant over towards Ferbs. I try to get that Hunter's Fury on the lock as soon as possible, and... It's a great round win, and it's off the back of a couple kills there from Ferbs are really making do 
on that first pistol round, and now we see it's going to be potentially some specters here in the sheriff. Tyler going to go for the Ares, and I'm going we haven't up. seen much of the Ares as of late after the the changes. You know, yeah. it's been definitely an interesting gun to say the least. You know, it had you know about a week or two of just you know you had to play it or you were trolling, and now it's kind of fallen off. I mean, what do you think about this one going for Tyler? Yeah, absolutely. Not the best one, but I think in the hands of Tyler, he can do too much. We already saw him in the last map that we had the chance to, but they had audited an N on race, which is a very interesting combination, but he was able to make it work, right? So, if anything, in the hands of him, I feel a little bit more hopeful of what can be done. But yeah, not the greatest gun to use, especially into the second round, where we know that the Spectres into a team that just won are going to be the default here. A lot of slow pushes that are taking place in the meantime for instead of Indiana, that's right? There's four members live, and no one wants to push, especially into this gun. Oh, Ted, does he have the angle? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, the patience. Enemy. The patience is massive Down from Dip, and he gets the flank. And Flawless. Firms are going to add insult to injury. Dracius is there as well. We what a play him. out of Dip to hold his nerve, wait for multiple members, and then take the shots. Yeah, that is insane. The patience that this player have are it's so insane. We usually see the minute that you see the enemy team, you're trying to shoot, you're trying to get the kill. But now, just playing careful and knowing that the numbers can do so much once you know there's at least two to guarantee the kills. And giving that information for, to your team, that is so helpful every single That's time. So that nerf was... This time around, going with that second round, trying to get the third one as well. And I think you definitely have a possibility to do so, right? Vine is one of those maps with, where there's a lot of angles that are Locked very inside. close. And that is when this factor can shine a little bit more. It can do a little bit more and can even catch the rifles off guard. As Norwood tries to hit the economy gaining me once more time. And Northwood continuing with these flank options. You see two potential conservators here for Northwood. As Dimp has made his way all across, and now Drakey is gonna brawl here. Tyler, Get out of spot here. the elbow, Spike gonna take planted. down Polly. It's a great kill there, and now a 5v3, making a 5v2 is right now. Last it is all standing. going the way of Northwood. Tyler, gonna be good for one more. Now Smart Punch all alone in U Haul. It's gonna be good for one, it's good for two. Smart Punch, what do you have in store for us here? It's a 1v2 situation. <gasps> he's got all the utility left in the world, but Dip, he's got his number objective there for Dip, and he makes it. Happens there for the third round. Tyler will give the defuse over. It's gonna be three in a row for Northwood despite the other fans. They're picking up some new guns and they're gonna feel confident going into round four. The rivals being picked up as well. Looking nice for charges. Northwood. We already saw what they're capable of doing, and this time around it might be even no looking better for them. It's a little question that we have yet, but what they did on the map that we got the chance to see them was just messing with the economy of the enemy team every single time. So now, they're starting to do it again. They're starting to look strong and forcing a half by coming in for the side of Indiana, where nothing really feels right. We have those light shields, we have those specters, but you're going to face so much more pressure coming in for Nerfwood, now even with a blade storm. Smart Punch takes a massive angle. He can do some damage. He's good for one, but the blast back takes down Smart Punch as Tyler disintegrates the jet. Now it's going to be a 4v4 situation. Tyler spotted. He's going to make his way out of there. He'll get one out on his way out. Memphis drops. And now Drop will go for the plant. There's the grenade being thrown inside. Tyler will spray, but regardless, plant is down. Now it's going to be up to Indiana to play for this post plant. They have the soap, they have the fire, they have the Astra. A lot of ways to buy time, but they're not going to be. But good luck for one on the right click. He'll fucking volley through the wall. Dip is absolutely insane right now. Looking for one more kill. He wants this 3k. He'll look for the fuse instead. He's just going to hold it down. There's the pull in. Won't even get half an opt. There's one alive. Does he spot Tyler first? He does not. And Dip. Insane plays on this jet. Playing with so much confidence. Tried. You can see it right there. Playing towards left as well. Play the jet. Ultimate can be so risky. We see a lot of players even trying not to use the ultimate in that area because it's so close, but rather just using the rifle or whatever it got they have in the classic to make it work. But Dip just makes it look easy with that bleed storm connecting one kill and knowing that the sheriff on the other side with the information gain was able to get the other through the wall that is absolutely insane seven and one this player is right now and it it was map where last time around we saw some highlights for him way. but it seems like it was 
came and went really fast. Now, it is all about him and what he can do just to start it off as the blink storm now is on the other side. Over. We'll find Drakeus, but can't find the shots. One, One HP. HP on Smart Budge. Oh my word, he's got to be so, so careful. One bullet. One stray shot will take him down. No healing on this Indiana side, mind you. So, Druff will go for the plant. Once again, they will use the closer, but Dip able to find Smart Punch. In the nick of time, the time is not on his side. And now Dip will use that to work his way in. Let's see if he smokes and help him out. Memphis going to be good for one. He's got 60 HP to work with. There's the Kubot as well. The Shock Dogs won't find their target. Here's Memphis peering around the corner. He's got the blast back as well. So much time to buy. He's going to be close back. Looking around the corner. It's going to be good for one. Good for two. Druff finds one. Benji, though. He's going to trade it back. Now with 22 HP. He's got nothing, though. And will be Druff. Clean that one out against Benji. Four to one here for Indiana. Finally scraping together a round. It's so risky too, though. 73 towards the end of the last member alive to make it work. And it could have worked. It just seems like the reload wasn't on the side of the defense for the first time. So that is going to give Indiana the first round here on Bind. It is four to one. They still have a lot to go to try to catch up, but it is definitely possible, especially now that they can buy. We talked about it. It was a half buy that we saw from them last time. They were able to make it work. So that means that the economy is going to shine a little bit more this time around. His dip is looking to play aggressive with the operator. I think he's going to get spotted and he will get spotted right away. But no one close enough to contest it. Will just be a full play over towards B as Polly is in the area over towards showers. That could be something of note as three members actually working their way inside of A site. So we're gonna try to make some noise over towards A, but the spike is implanted at B for the time being. Indiana have three ultimates to work with as well. They have the divide, they have the hunter's fury, along with that showstopper. You want to fight us. Those double blast packs. He will look to go inside, but Dip, he's just playing clay pitches at this point. He's got another kill on top of Memphis. Has not been having the best game, and that's going to really make it difficult now as Drakeus takes down Druff, and just like that, two quick kills with the spike will still be planted for so it's good money, but is it going to be anything for Indiana to do this season? Last player standing. Oh, and shot across the other side. Indiana, only one member alive. And the DPs, you know that they're going to be sticking it to until the end. Viper on the other side. At this point, just gotta save your gun. Nothing else that can be uh, any other possibility is not what they get. Their fifth round. And now they have even a little bit of the extra economy to work with if they need it to even if they lose the next couple of rounds they should have enough to make it work they should have enough to still continue to buy rifles and again this is the momentum that you want to stop as soon as possible for indiana but it just hasn't been possible i think we talk about the information that the team is able to get and it seems strong enough but at the time of getting picks and at the time of playing for the post that is when they're having no difficulty tyler up a bit more than he can chew there, and Ted will be good for one. Getting sprayed through his Ted, 75 HP. Memphis also very low as well. Drinky is going to scurry away to safety and will look for the concuss as well. Oh, work his way around the corner. Will be able to take down Memphis. Great frag there for Drake. He has to trade things back and even things up at 4 to 4. And the divide will be used as well to try to stop this A push. Four members alive and four on the other side. Nor would they have the advantage just because of the control that they have. As they see that though, two kills coming in. This jet being able to get the opening that the team was waiting for. And everyone else in the defense, the last two members playing on the other oh, side of this crossing. The visibility is not going to be there. Three kills coming in for Smart Punch. Can get one more. Dip is playing carefully towards them. Spawn! Oh. His Doba Boo whiffs! Is not able to connect the shot as they say that though the classic is going to help that happen just in time. The drone doesn't get the information that they needed to, but they don't need it anymore as well. Dip be careful. Oh, the one is not going to connect with the operator. Now, another round going in for the side of Indiana is a 5 to 2 and a good way to continue going as many rounds as you can. That is the one condition for Indiana, just getting as many rounds as possible into this first half, knowing that this is one of those maps that the defense uh, can do so much better on. Yeah, and 
now it's going to be the double up set up for Northwood. They have Benji's ultimate here. They're going to have him save. And it's going to be the Tour de Forest plus Dipsa. Potential up is he actually just going to go for a Vandal instead. Keep the credits. So it's just going to be one up here for the side of Northwood. But still so much value with this Tour de Forest. Can gain so much space. And looks like they will implant him over towards Showers and Tyler. My last round, you know, went very aggressively, and I think now he's going to be able to hold his nerve a little bit more. Maybe just was testing the waters, if you will, try it. But for the time being, he'll stay around you all, stay around Lamps, and try to avoid some vision as Benji able to do it. Here is that information coming in, and Tyler getting that first kill for the team. Needs a little bit more, but doesn't want to risk it, doesn't want to go in just oh. yet. The way that he uses his utility is just perfect. Those paint tools to guarantee that no one else is going to be pushing while he's reloading. And that means that three members alive, they either have to rotate or they have to risk it all towards the A side. In the meantime, the defense looking pretty comfortable with the last couple kills to get here. And they're not even rooting from B. They're staying, they know the possibility of that rotation for the attacking team. It can take place at any time. Well, they're gonna rotate it with them now. They have the TP available. Tyler with only 34 HP. It's gonna be a good kill for Polly. Benji with the op shot now, but 30 seconds left here for Indiana. When do they make their move? When do they make their mark? Still a couple members over towards B. Polly gains another kill on top of Glacius. The Viper Spit will be issued. Indiana want this round win. A lot being invested here, Tyler. Sort of Polly burns the ultimate only to die seconds later and Tyler with a 3k here will potentially give the win over to Northwood. They do. Druff can't find the shots and firms up. Rifles at home there. 6-2 for Northwood. So much invested Dryad for Indiana. I really don't know about the Viper's Pit though. It just so didn't so. seem like the yeah, just they didn't <laughs> seem like the timing was right. Ideally, you see it being used either right at the beginning or right after the plant. But none of those even happen. And so it was Here. a weird situation where it seems like it was used to gain a little bit of space, but it was too late, right? It was about 15 seconds remaining, and Northwood already had all the advantage, all the control of sight to make that work. So 62 that we have right now, and another round that can be going for Northwood to have space in the economy. Once again, it will be an A sided push so many difficult things to work through on these extremities they're gonna leave one member over towards b just in case a rotation or a flank does come in from dip we've seen that time and time again be difficult for indiana to deal with but they do have three ultimates don't have that viper's pit from Get last round but they do have the daggers along with the divide here a crucial 1v1 there towards hookah and it will Go the way of Dip, who finds the kill on top of Memphis. And now Smart Punch with these daggers, if he can get something going here. But once again, another frag. Benji, good for one more. And now a 5v3. So difficult for Indiana to work through these sites, but really not a lot of utility to weigh with. The, the Sova not really there in time to get anything done with those recon darts. And Tyler now will spot Smart Punch. He's good for one. Dashes away to safety. Benji drops, but so many trades away from the They're always on top of it. I was gonna say, Smart Punch last time didn't do so much with the Blade Storm, but this time around, changing things up. 19 HP though, and that situation becomes a lot more left. difficult when the rest of your team has already been taken down. All you can hope for is to get three. the kills. Oh. Thanks to the rest of the Last team, and now landing. three kills, but the trade's coming in. The spike trying to get planted is all going to be possible, and the fight for the Jets, who was able to get more kills, they were going to be even, but it's Northwood the ones being able to get away with that round, and that means that no matter what, they will be having the advantage as we jump into the second half, but we still have a little bit more to go here. This is so smart here from Northwood. The composition they've crafted and constructed. You're always going to have an op user here, whether it's Dip or Benji. Now Benji is going to be the run to go with this operator, and he has that get out of jail free card just like here. Dip. He's got that TP. So if he's able to find a kill here towards B, it could be massive. Let's look for the op shots. No wait for his moment. We'll take down Smart Punch and TP just like that. And already, that's your main fragger gone for Indiana. Yeah, not an ideal situation, of course, no stage for any of these two teams, and even the healing is extremely limited for anything that they want to get done here, so this attacking team has to come up with a strategy, it seems like all the rounds have been extremely slow playing for that information more than anything, but the information is not giving them the kills that they need, so 
going to be trying to go in. Memphis looking at the wrong side. Two kills coming in for both of the teams. But so much damage taken now on the side of Indiana. Barely any HP to work with. And three members Last full HP alive. And Div is the one that is going to end up with the suffering of the enemy. Eight to two. And Indiana, they have hope for just a couple of seconds. But he got shot down as soon as it started. So difficult right now for Indiana to really make their way onto one of these sites. They've never really had a chance. The economy has never really been in their favor over the course of this game. And Northwood have really put a stranglehold on this first half and are looking to continue this momentum and put themselves in a potential 10-2 situation after this first half of play. Benji has found success with this operator. Once again, it's just going to be a five sack over towards A. They understand that you can't peek over towards long. The operator is too powerful. They need to play smaller and more narrow angle strats. So they're going towards Walking A. Sight. I really just want to rush though, and it seems like that might be what they're going for. This is just a pick stole, but that is going to be enough. Tyler does get taken down. He was under that cloud. And with that, that opens up the opportunities, especially to play around lamps. If you get that spike planted on the other side, though, the drone is going to get some information. Oh, it's exactly where spike the enemy can be. Okay. Spike down, not be planted because the damage is already coming in. Once again, Nerfwood continues to be on Last fire, continues standing. to make extremely fast rotations, also, but only also. now one member alive on this chamber and only an operator to work with. One v one. He has to have the timing on his side, though, and. He'll burn the TP and potentially look to try and go for this 1v2. It's a winnable 1v2. He's Five got the operator. Planted. No teleport, though. No alarm bots here. And now Memphis will hunker down on top of the spike here. One over towards u Halt. Will he where Memphis is? Benji, he's got to get this shot. Will he check this right corner? That's the question. He does, but Smart Punch has his number. And it will be round win going Last the way of Indiana. In the finally... Half. After so, so long, three rounds in a row there for Northwood, and I think we need now it's going to be a trade back for Indiana, but like you've been mentioning, Dryad, the economy is so good for Northwood. Dip rebuys the op, and it's the same thing for Indiana. They have to worry about this operator time and time again. Even when we see some early picks coming in for the side of Indiana, it just it's such a fast trade that Nerfwood is able to get that the numbers end up mattering to none and the difficulty just increases more and more. It's going to be no stopper one against the other. Both of them are going to be abused around at the same time, but Tyler comes up on top and now Dev is going to play aggressive just because of that. Good for one and now three members alive. There it is, the advantage that indiana had just for a couple of seconds gets shot down over and over went again and now nerfwood they have everything to work with they have space and they have a potential plank even coming in though oh dip can't land the daggers and ted gonna be good for two here on this astra trying to buy time and space here spike still not down for indiana is northwood drakeus it's gonna be a timing game and drakeus doesn't spot Polly from the rear. Now Benji. Gonna be in the good for one here. Will find the shots, but takes too long. And Smart Punch reacts and takes down Benji there in the nick of time. Eight to four after the first Switching half. Sides. So it's not as bad as it is for Indiana. It could have been, you know, eight or ten to two. Could have been really, really rough for them. But Northwood's still a four four lead cushion. It's good, but it's definitely come back well for Indiana. Absolutely. It is it is very much a, a good possibility and a, a good chance here for both of the teams even to shine it's all down to the pistol round and what happens here it's those first four or five rounds they're always messy to see because no one has a better economy it's just fighting to get to the top finding to steal a couple of the guns from the enemy so those are the ones that are going to matter the most especially for the set of indiana to try to match up the score of their enemy and they have four rounds to go to do just that so in the meantime northwood looking towards that b side looking towards pushing especially from long as this uh, we see the spike going that way too really use this drone is almost a safety net here he's got no cloud burst has the dash at the helm and ready Tyler will be good for one on top of Druff, immediately traded back to Dip. And he finds one shot on top of Memphis. Drakeus will be good for one. Finally, Memphis drops. After a rain of bullets hits him. And now it's going to be a 4-2. Already bomb is planted. 
And now Northwood take their positions and take their angles. It's going to be so difficult for IU to get back onto the site. In the end, both of them playing in that same area too. So no opportunity for flank, no opportunity to catch them in different parts of the map. And now even revealing exactly where they're going to be located after that shot. Everyone, everyone playing outside, he like the strategy for is that Northwood, they're not making any mistakes. They're, they're not laughing where they standing. don't have to. And only one member alive now is Smart Punch versus the world and it seems like this time around is not going to be possible to take the victory for the set of indiana again this was a pistol round that they definitely needed but they're not able to get away with it yep now you're gonna see the buy come in and potentially dip here let's see refunds this is gonna be going for a full force vandal here with the half shield it makes sense he's been feeling it this whole game the aim definitely has been on point with the daggers and now we'll force up in this vandal and it's only pistols right now for indiana and they're going to be in for a rude awakening here, here. for northwood and their attack is a looks to be the target fortunately though majority of the indiana defense is on a but let's see if they can stave off this aggression as it's going to be a lot to deal with in a short amount of time and going in with that information knowing that there's no one up close to his lumps but having to back half so much damage that was taking things to those paint shells, making the situation so much more difficult. The first kill coming in two with the dart. The last dart being remaining. able to connect to two. Bros up against another one. And only one member alive. This is a disaster for Indiana. The last chance that they have remaining. It starts to fade away. Double digits. Now for Nerf, what that was such a nice kill that is where we see the use of utility and it is Watch something here. that i've been waiting for more than anything it's not only about the kills but it's about the damage that you're able to do to the enemy with the utility and with the agent select that starts right from the beginning and that is a really good way to see that shine yeah and that damage sticks so there's no sky there's no sage on either side so no real way to get that health back up once you do get hit by that utility you know, it sticks, and we saw Ferbs in there with that double kill, with that shock dart. Take flight. Uh, it rains through here for Northwood, now leading 10 to 4. Looking to really put a name on this group, and there will be another A push here. If an A broke, go fix it, right? And once again, they go for the same time. Tyler is going to lunge his way inside, but he's immediately taken down. Smart Punch will be good for one, and finally, Indiana, stave off a bit of this aggression. What a good again? Smart Punch. Again, Smart Punch. He's living on the edge, Dryad. He's living the highlight. Every single time, that is so difficult. He always takes so much damage, either early on or in the most unexpected ways possible. He's always fighting for his life in any every, every way possible. And this time around, it just seems like Indiana might be figuring out what to do, how to solve this issue. A couple kills coming in. There it is. The 1v2 is very much doable here. But Indiana has to play extremely careful. The spike has not been planted and is right in the middle of side. Not an ideal situation to deal with if you're a dip. But hopefully, he's just waiting for someone to peek exactly where the cross here is. Even left. though it seems like that is not going to be the case. Will pop the cloud burst down. He's got to find the spike. He can't find it right now. He's trying to work all the way around the side. He does spot one. Three around the no corner. Polly, a barrage of bullets. Dip, fancy chances. Will go aggressive. He doesn't spot the corner. And Polly, right there in time, gains the shots and gains the kill. There's a definite 1v2 possibility for Dip, but it's just unfortunate the way he was holding that angle, that corner. Polly got his number. Absolutely. But even then, I mean, Look at the economy for yeah. the, the side of Indiana. I mean, it's still not looking good. Everyone in the entire lobby is struggling to get anything done to be able to buy all the abilities that they want to. Even some light shields that we see being bought to ensure that their rifles are going to be brought to the table. And that means that Northwood nonetheless can take the advantage very early on. They have been doing it most of the rounds. They still have double digits. They can get over with this as soon as possible. That is what they're hoping for. Some information is going to be revealed. Someone playing the worst for time. Even denying the wow. jump. That was a beautiful kill. That was a beautiful coordination of utility to make that work out. Tyler, he didn't want to go to the dentist, but he had to. He had to die. And just like that, he drops an outdrop. Concealed in the shadows here the smoke. Oh, man, he's going to be for a big, big surprise. Here he comes, he gets rained down with bullets. And drops to be good, and now he's smart punch. Good for two 
this judge. Gondrakis dashes away, but Tyler last player standing. And now Benji from the flank, Polly has no idea. It's going to be a timing game here. And now Benji slowly but surely Ooh. lurking his way around the corner. The defuse will come in. There's another fake. He'll spot the barrel. He'll find the shots. Oh my word, it's going to be so close. Benji by the skin of his teeth able to take down kill. 30 HP to spare dry. It was close, but it's all calculated. Absolutely, it was very close. He almost went for a second, just because of the rotation that we saw into around that box. But we're able to make it work. Eleven rounds now. Finally, going for a set of nerves with it. Two more that are going to be needed. I don't think throughout this entire tournament that we've seen today, we've seen a victory that has gone closer than the the loser winning more than five or six rounds. Mm -hmm. So I want to say we were able to change things around here. The placement coming in for the defense, hoping to do just that, hoping to get the sixth round under the belt for the side of Indiana. But the information once again going to take place first as we see Nerfle pushing in from long. Get out of my way! Orb, get those daggers, but smart punch. Takes down Benji. He was the lurker over towards A, and it's a great piece of information now for Indiana. Dip! way inside he's got all pieces of utility to play with can he make his mark no flashes to work with for northwood so dip he's gonna have to do it all by himself but tp is a possibility but smart punch is watching over the teleport so northwood what kind of pincer do they have to make a decision now with only 55 seconds they have plenty of time to go for rotation but the pace they're playing and it seems like they're looking towards b as a target dip still trying to sniff out where these members are actually are there's pretty much a commitment here on this side and dip is able to go in they don't know exactly where he is but look at that everyone watching goes on top gang and one does just that the rest of the team on the side of nerf will be cleaning up everyone else on site and that means that for the side of indiana both of them are going to be playing towards hookah the blades it. from still going to be available the cosmic divide coming in is going to make things even more difficult the opportunities to go in are just not going to be there and because that the rotation has to take place but the time is running out they can't even hear it it's really going to be on smart punch he's got the daggers he's, he's got a dash i believe and he'll go to use one the up. doesn't spot him in time will get taken down though as paulie last player standing good for one, but he has such little hp but now it's going to be a 1v1 here with the timing is on Polly's side. He's got seven HP to play with Drake. 21. It's going to be so, so difficult. And Polly gets around the corner. Does he have enough time on the clock? And it looks like he should, I believe. Clutch. The time he does. 0.57 oh, clutch there for Polly. Needed that round win. It was so, so crucial. He finds those shots. Here's where Drake is and gets his number. Right when they needed to, and another round for Indiana. So they're they're getting better. They're figuring out the enemy, but it always seems like it's not one of those clean victories that we've seen mostly coming in for the side of North. But it is very risky. They suffer a lot of losses to make it happen, or they're just fighting against time to make it work. So now, it is what Northwood can do just to get this over with, and it's got to be a safe Standing round for ahead. them. So we cannot expect too much besides maybe a couple picks going in which every single time they've been able to do you want to play let's play great kill there now it's gonna be the chamber will pop there. here for the side of northwood this is gonna be a big investment here for benji if he's able to find a frag over towards a that could be the ghost signal to make their way onto a but like you said it is a save so just looking for frags here just looking to put a dampening the indiana economy and indiana just content here with watching these angles in the 4v5 they have all the control in the world and as long as they don't make any over aggressive plays drive they should be okay with just holding these sides down it is all they can hope to do in a round like this one especially coming in for nurse but they've been doing so good but they don't want to give more rounds to the enemy so that means playing extremely careful and they've been doing so but now you gotta get to another level of how careful you gotta be watching every corner hiding in every corner possible let's see the jet is doing towards the a spotted but not taken down good opportunity to keep it. the kills are just coming in from the other side no one is able to take this jet down fighting for her life and being able to get away with the two members alive for nerf with no kills that have been coming in for them i say that though two 
right on time. Their rifles left. are going to get picked up, and the spike is going to get planted. This is a winnable round for Northwood right now. If they get this spike down, they have the showstopper for Tyler as well. Now a 2v2 standing. here. Drakeus gonna be good for one. Pauly, great intuition there. And Drakeus, he's spotted. He's a sitting duck here for Pauly right now. A 1v2 for Drakeus. Does he spot Druff around the corner? He does not. And Druff takes the kill, silences Drakeus, and gives Indiana their seventh round win. Good thing to get right on time and another one else with nine those rifles that are going or that we're going to potentially go for the center of north so that means that as the full buy coming in is a force Thanks. essentially because the economy is not looking too great for them now and look at the ultimates pretty much every single ultimate available coming in for the set of indiana and this is how they continue to take advantage denying that plant would be absolutely massive just using the hunter's fury and just continuing to create that space into even the night that space with the cosmic divide like we've seen them do a couple of times pit as well if want to block off one of these sites later on in the game as well but looks like the drone will be summoned over towards long and gonna try to spot a couple of members they do they spot smart punch as well that's crucial he'll be forced to back away and the showstopper will be initiated here comes tyler Hop, skipping and jumping over to the site tip will take out one smart punch for another one he's been transferred back and there's tyler we're gonna wait make his way inside but for the time being it's gonna be a 4v3 chaos right now on b site for the time being northwood has the control and there's the hunter's fury coming out from drop Hunter Fury coming in, but doesn't get anything. Doesn't even get that information. 30 HP to work with. With the Sova, so much damage coming in. The Viper that you mentioned will be online and available. Just to that to go inside for this defense, but it's not going to work out. The Sails are coming in. Div gets three. Can't get another one on the other side, though. The Viper almost makes it work for it of Indiana, but this time around. So close, but so match far, point. it is 12 rounds now going for Northwood, and this is match point. Northwood want to top the group. They want to go to that main event in Atlanta. They want to really put their foot down on this game in Indiana now. Only two alts here, Memphis and Ted. They have the divide. They have the showstopper there to potentially block off one of these sites, but... Right now, it is all north where they are feeling it dip once again, one orb away from that ultimate. So I assume we're going to see the same play as last time where they send that drone out and try to gain long, but already you see a couple of players on drone. Indiana understand that. And they're going to take, try to take at least some footing over towards long, but once again, this drone can be able to get vision. And that orb will be taken. And once again, Dip will have this ultimate for this push. And there's the Hunter's Fury as well. Oh, the Hunter's Fury can be good to get some information. Does he seem like it's going to hit? was hoping this one was playing towards Spike that left B. side of the map. Now it's still coming in. Only with the Spectre to connect the Indiana fighting to on this map. And making it work. The Showstopper does get another one. Spike on the floor. And no one can push in without taking some damage. Without last having to phase the potential death here. 50 HP for the last member alive on the side of Darkwood. It seems like it's not going to be possible unless everyone is trying to take the duel one by one. And of course, the side of Indiana is not going to make that mistake. Now, Ferbs, uh, he'll try to admit himself towards B, but I don't think that's a ride that you want to take, my friend, is he'll potentially look for the save. He's got the TNT and a recon dart in a dream. He'll fire it away. We take it down for the time being. Memphis, though. 30 seconds so the left. smoke dissipates. It's going to be... There's chaos here for Firms. I will be good for one. Ooh, on top of Ted. Does he know that another player is there on the right? I don't think he does. He'll check the corner. He'll spray his way inside. We'll find Memphis. We'll find Smart Punch. But there's too many angles to watch over. And Smart Punch closes out that round for Indiana. 8 to 12 here. It's coming up on the comeback time, Dryad. Let's see what this economy looks like for Northwood. Let's see what they can buy. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be a pretty weird Walmart buy for, uh, for Northwood. A couple of guns, but it's like Drake is in Dipple Safe. Not a lot of money either, but yeah, a buy nonetheless, and a buy that can benefit them. We see Dip is going to just be using that blade storm, hoping to get some kills with it, and we can definitely expect him to do just that. 26 kills so far, so many of them coming in, but the blade storm can do it again. It has been the player that has been getting the most three Ks over and over again. So now with this, is going to help with the economy, but it's also going to help getting one or two kills that are crucial for this team and just crucial to continue getting this and to getting this victory over with.
big flank right now for Memphis, checking every angle, being extra careful here. You are divided! He'll work his way through Main. Looking. Oh my word, he hears so much noise. As soon as he turns that corner, he's gonna spot two. Ferb's uh, still in the Owl Drone. The timing here is absolutely excellent right now. It's Memphis, he muffs the first shot, but he is able to find one. Still good for Indiana. He's gonna have a 4v3 advantage. The ride will be summoned. Memphis is gonna be huge Fight on this backline attack. A. Tyler finally trades it back, but at what cost? The Cosmic Divide will be going down. I don't think they heard the TP though, just because it was going down right at that time. So dip stock in a situation, able to get away with that kill. Not even looking. Really nice reaction time for this player. And now Tyler is back. 30 trying seconds to left. As soon as possible, there's 30 seconds to work with. And in the meantime, the setup of Indiana is just coming back. Might be trying to take the heaven positioning. Get stopped just for a little bit. And now he's going to try it again. Yeah, the heaven is the best thing that you can do here. Gain the visibility of where everyone else is. QHP being able to run away just now, though. He stays alive. The 2 HP drop. They can find a shock dart inside of U Haul. It could be absolutely major standing. dip. Gonna work his way out, but he's immediately taken down. Oh no. Wow. Oh, Ted is gonna be the one. There's the sick. The defuse here. Tyler is not gonna be able to find drop somehow. The reaction times are too good there from drop. He is able to stick this defuse out. 30 over. HP to his name. Not a problem for Indiana as they win their ninth round here. Slowly but surely coming up. A nice cosmic divide coming in. It just forced the the last two members to push and to get out of lamps, but they knew that they, they were going to be looked at and taken down. So it is a difficult one to deal with, but again, it is everything that you can do. Almost took everyone down. At least some damage was given. And now a full safe round that it seems like we barely see coming in for Northwood just because of how dominant they have been now. They know when they have to respect the enemy. They know when they have to respect the boundary. So a save round here is going to be nice for them. Unfamiliar territory here for Northwood. I'm sitting in a pretty awkward position here. Like you said, up the economy. Not sitting as great as they would have liked. And now, they're going to leave the spec behind. Just look for some frags. Any kills here for Northwood is a there. bonus for them. For the time being, this gun advantage, Indiana University are... Content with waiting for Northwood. The Onus sits on Northwood there, and Memphis even spotted Firmza for a brief moment. It takes a hell of a lot of damage for that. No healing. That's going to stick for the rest of the round. 18 HP on Firmza. He'll still work his way through showers, but that one way is going to be difficult to work through as well. Because of the save round, everyone is playing even slower than usual, trying to get some information, trying, hoping that the defense is going to peek one of those corners so the attacking team of Northwood can take them down. 40 se 45 seconds remaining, and you can play slow, but only oh, so the slow. As the defense is also whirling the corners, we'll be able to get that first kill. The first block coming on their way. Down, and two more that the scope is able to guarantee you know, one member left. alive. And only one. Make it two kills that the side of Norfolk has been able to get. 11 18. Nothing else. Just get taken down. The defense now get their round in Indiana. Really putting up a fight against Norfolk, and now it is them who get to double digits. And this is where it gets interesting. It's gonna be I should play some finally a situation where both teams are sitting at pretty much full buys here. Memphis gonna go for the operator potentially, or he's just trolling me. Okay, cool. Thanks, Memphis. Oh, you're just right okay. Oh, he's just gonna sell it, <laughs> resell it. What are you gonna do, bro? He's gonna go for the operator though, so that's gonna be potentially an avenue here for Indiana to try to hold some of these angles. Smart Punch has the dagger result we saw. What he could do with those as well. So Northwood sitting in a pretty uh interesting position and Memphis gonna go for an aggressive play with the blast back and the op shot. Memphis, what a great play there, and it allows a man advantage for Indiana as well. It's gonna make the push so much more difficult for Northwood. Yeah, it's so much more difficult to work with when you lose a crucial member of your team. And this is a round that's needed to win this in a round where they're forcing everything. Memphis on the other side, expecting another push coming in. And no one even able to trade Memphis. Three kills now. What else can this race do for this team actually carrying this round? No, this time around doesn't get still not able to get that cross there right where they needed to. And now North with still two members alive. A lot of damage that was taken by Benji. 29 HP to work with. And now it's still a numbers advantage that is not really working out for this team of North. 
really the question is do they think someone's over towards you hall do they think a rotation comes in they have the teleporter as well there is one watching hookah so this is going to be a crucial engagement smart punch wins it out ng is going to drop and drakeus will peer his way on look for go for you all he will try for that 1v1 against smart punch but it will be null and void is now 12 to 11 just like that dryad one win away from Indiana taking this one to an overtime in the first time out we've seen all yeah. day. It's come. I, I mean, you know, I, I would have liked this like four rounds ago, but hey, nonetheless. Yeah, like four rounds ago, if not more to make it happen. But yeah, it is what it is now. It just seems like Norfolk had to take a break before they've been just going with what they felt was right, what they felt would get things over with and it just didn't happen and more and more rounds were going for the set of indiana because again they started to read and to predict what norfolk was going to do next and they predicted in a very very well manner even coming in with a 3k that we just saw with an operator which is bringing something that we haven't even seen much of before coming in from indiana but now they have the economy to bring this um this gun and now they have the, the economy to continue making it work so it is pretty much now or never right it's either overtime or it's gonna be the victory coming in for nerf with nothing else that can be expected from this round so nerf will taking this time out now is they got some time to talk about it and how aggressive they want to push i want to see a faster push where their trades are a little bit guaranteed yeah that's where they excelled when dip was making those engagements when he was getting aggressive when tyler was going for those blast packs on towards the site. That's when Northwood were at their best. And we'll see here Tyler with this showstopper. Potentially. You want to play? You know, Let's something play. Done here. But the Force will be popped here for Northwood. And uh, along with the showstopper from Memphis as well, just in case anything does go awry over towards A main. And he will just burn that over, trying to dissuade any pressure towards A. You hear that sound. You don't want to push up. So it will be a bit of just timing for both of these teams waiting things out they know how crucial and how important this round is dryad yeah it's again it is now or never for both of the teams to have a chance to continue being on this map continue fighting on this map to get this victory over with but it's gotta be slow it's gotta be for information oh! is, how does he do it he sees just a little bit of the jump coming in for dip and that is all that he needs to get that kill immediately predicted and now giving a massive advantage dip down it is such a disaster for northwood yeah, I mean, that's your main guy getting onto the site that's that jet dash gone it's any semblance of a clutch play gone and now benji with this tour de force has to find some sort of play but left. the vision dial is massive right now from this viper and with 30 seconds left the pace they're playing at dry they have to go now or never and tyler will pop it it's on his hands here he goes he'll make his way to the site but yeah, smart punch honest. immediately destroys it dissolves tyler's pressure and indiana trying to run away here with their tail between their legs 15 seconds ago Trump looking to buy time spike looking at great down, space 10, 10 seconds, seconds left, left. Here for they gotta get the spike down benji will have enough time and it's the same type of in. You don't have enough time, my friend. And Polly beats him to it. And we will go to overtime here with Smart Punch. Switching saving sides. that round for Indiana. Overtime. Able to immediately take down Tyler. Just destroys him after the showstopper was used. Absolutely insane what we're seeing on this matchup. Massive potential for all the teams. And for the two teams and specifically, we've seen, and I mentioned it, Throughout this entire day, all the matches that we saw early on, nothing got farther than a 13-5, 13-6. It was pretty much staying in that place. But now, it is Indiana going online, getting everything and fixing those mistakes that were committing early on. And it seems like it really, really worked out for them. But they have two rounds in a row now that they have to win and they want to make that whole comeback. Oh man, we saw Benji there. They did pick up the off dip, almost gets betrayed by his own teammate. Now Ted gonna take down Tyler already. One of the duelists gone here, and now Dip. He's got so many angles for one. We'll be good for one, we'll be good for two, but Smart Punch finally trades it back, and the hot hand for Northwood is gone. And now it's gonna be a 2v3 here. The plant is already down. Indiana have so much control over the site. And really, they can just pick and choose their battles as the spike is already down. The onus sits on Northwood. 
and with few members alive and an op to work with it is not ideal to see the duels that we know that Indiana is not going to make any mistakes here. They're not going to be peeking where they don't have to. They're not going to reveal information that they don't have to. And though we do see that Darth doing just that, the position has to change the kill coming in. They can make it happen. Only one alive, and he knows exactly where he is. Not able to connect it, though. The operator doesn't shoot fast enough this time around for Benji. And so it is going to be Indiana for the first time ever on this map, getting ahead 13 to 12. And they need one more to take the victory of this match. 12 to 7, now 12 to 13. Northwood have not seen a round win screen in a hefty amount of time, and Benji will go back to this operator even on attack, and he's going to be a glass cannon drive. If he dies early, it's just going to be so difficult for Northwood to get onto a site. Yeah, it is going to be extremely difficult, and you know that Northwood has to be fully aware of any dangers this time around especially as it's going to the attacking side where things get more difficult Astro winning on the other side of hookah waiting to get some kills and at least trying to get some information that utility for astra this is where it shines out the most is going to be expecting right to stand. Sees half of the body. He's built a little bit of pixel, and that is enough. Tyler does get taken down. Tyler hasn't been having a good time here. And that means a little bit of a flank that can take place now for the defense. That sits on dip. Intent. We'll place the stars down. Now dip. Will he turn right first? Doesn't spot the ass for the timing. He asks him for Ted, but he will inevitably be taken down. As dip is good for one. Now a 4v4 dryad with 42 seconds. Still plenty of time for rotation. Plenty of time for movement from both of these sides. Even though we haven't seen a lot of rotations, though, so that is where the predictability can come in. It can take, can play a role. Left. That's, th there's a lot of risk here, and the numbers pretty much even for both teams besides the damage taken for some of them. The spike is going to try to get planted. Farfunch immediately getting taken down. It seems like Norville is just shining a little bit brighter. I see that though, but Poli, good for two, can get more. Now it's a three v two and the spike gets done. The dozen time free kick coming in for Poli. Can't get things over with. And Benji only seven he has to drop oh. the only operator that he had and now has to peek, knowing exactly where the enemy is, cannot do anything, and cannot see them. A massive comeback, a massive win. victory coming in for the setup. Indiana, they started very slow, but they started picking up the pace and more that we saw from them. It was the first half that was 8-4. They were not winning. They were losing so many rounds, but they figure out exactly what they needed to do into that second half and even pushing that overtime that i'm sure northwood was not expecting yeah i mean great comeback from indiana go from 12 7 to 14 to 12. great showing out of each and every single player it was a collective effort drive and at the end of the day it just felt like you know northwood weren't playing to their strengths they weren't playing aggressively and it almost felt like they got a little bit more scared as that game went along it was very interesting to say the least, very fascinating play from both sides. But in the end, Indiana, first game on stream to make the group interesting. And now a lot more even as we head into our next match of the day, which if I can look at the schedule, will be Buckeye versus Ball State. So we see Buckeye once again, a very again. aggressive team in Ball State, uh, who we haven't seen yet. Yeah, it should be a good one too. And I'm so curious more than anything about the the, the more that we see here, right? I think a lot of players, especially around this time, right? Because the first matches that we saw were extremely, extremely early for some of them. And so the more that we see, the more that they start to wake up, the more they start to feel that momentum going on for them. As we saw in Indiana, I think that the comeback, that is not something that can happen in every scenario, every time, right? It is something that everyone is, is starts to really feel the momentum of the match of the comeback of so many rounds in a row that they were able to get so now it is about the teams that are remaining and how their matches that they were playing they had just played are going on just to keep that win streak going yeah, absolutely drive but well, we will go to a quick break when we come back more midwest valorant action coming your way don't go anywhere
Uh, very unfortunate, but King Blues was also low. That is 5 0 now for Clemson. FAU now gonna be on this save by here, this Eco Shorty coming up from Subwoo. And there's probably see that Blade Storm being popped right off the bat as well. And I was surprised not to see King Blues pop that Viper's Pit, but luckily they didn't consider the fact that it wasn't free. Yeah, a couple times uh, already today, especially with the uh, quarter forces, this time with Viper's Pit, so it's fortunate timing. Misfortune leads to fortune sometimes, and sometimes just get lucky with old timings and when they get popped. It's one of those times. Slow pop, trademark pop towards mid, so we'll pass it back away on that blade storm. We'll head back to the team over to the back of a site. They use been here plenty of times before they've had the numbers when it comes to holding the site and haven't quite been able to find what they're looking for. This time, to see if it's different with the blade storm. Yeah, you can see that FA is playing more for a retake kind of positioning right now. Playing farther back, mid, farther back in their sights, playing for those rotations. Yeah, drone's going to be able to clear out a lot of a site here, Recon. Getting a little bit of information, Snake Bite coming out to slow that plant as well, but the wall's going to go up and the plant's going to go down anyways. 5v5 on this retake, Blade Storm in Subwoof's hands, but not able to connect, unfortunately. 5v3. Peek the rafters for Jax, we'll find one Scarecrow, not even find anything as soon as he's able to come around all the way to the front site now, taken out from default finally after two frags come through. He has the trade there and has the last frag as well. We'll take Mox down to the top of rafter, 6-0 for Clemson now. I'd like to see some flank pressure coming out from FAU on the defensive side. We are going to see a timeout starting for now as FAU kind of debates their strategy going into this defensive round considering it is another buy for them and if they don't win this one they'll be stuck on another save slash uh, kind of a scuffed buy going out depending on what their economy situation looks like and i mean yeah i think the main thing i, I would say is i'd like to see a bit of flank pressure coming out from fau uh you can tell that Clemson isn't really worried about the flank at the moment. They don't really feel that pressure, so they're able to just kind of just focus on what's in front of them, the site that they're trying to take in general, as opposed to, you know, having a chip on their shoulder that they have to kind of look back on. So maybe some conditioning on those flanks, whether it's actually committed to or just breaking the chamber utility, would do very well for FAU in order to uh, maybe get into the heads of Clemson. Absolutely, and we'll hope that timeout does advocate for something of the sorts. Fibers Pit, as you mentioned, not popped prior, so could be used in this round. We'll see if it gets utilized or not. It hasn't been a ton of B presence, and that is going to be where the Viper Alley gets to do much more. So, honestly, I feel like still the same situation. If it gets popped B, I don't think they'll get the value that they'll be looking for. Yeah, but I mean, there are also four ultimates, almost all five available on the side of Clemson as well. So, it's going to be a pretty ultimate heavy round if they decide to invest to get this round under their belts as well so they get 7-0 but not paying quite as passively as before FAU is getting some earlier information this time around and that Hunter Series is actually going to come out and tag some up. We can step forward so we'll be able to find one still made now to trade be able to get forward to pipe the rest of the team going to be working the other side of things though had to be on secure and comes in on the rotate that was a nice rotation actually coming out beautiful yeah and then we are going to see the spikers pick coming out now try and secure this round for uh clemson here providing that cover but scarecrow has really nice position maybe able to get this flank off of the players that are going towards the kitchen for this retake no matter of where fau decides to check here scarecrow's been able to go all the way up to jump up we'll find one over here as well, looking for a second. Ooh. Has found second of hour going through as well to make sure still on 150 for this final peak. Looking weather stays a shot so much of the railing. You hate to see it, Subwoof took him so low, but the railing saves it. Can't save the ultimate though. That's wide open spaces for Clemson. Wide open on the score, 7-0. Seven 7-0 now on what looks like is gonna be a force up on the side of FAU, question mark? 
four ultimates online though. And Glue's still holding on dearly to that Viper's Pit. Um, this Eco Round might be the one to use it, to be honest. I mean, when you're on the uh, worst buy compared to your enemies, being able to kind of close it down to some more close range battles where your Eco Guns can do a bit more damage, especially with the Viper Decay. <laughs> Welcome back everyone to the CENC Midwest Invitational. Quick little interview here with Druff, who joins us after a pretty uh, crazy game uh, between you and Northwood and coming off of that 12 to seven turnaround. I mean, what's the mindset after that game uh, or after that, you know, last round you're up 12 or down 12, seven. How do you guys turn around, uh, you know, the comms? What's the mindset going into that? Well, we always thought it was winnable. We just had like a couple unlucky rounds that were like, if we do this better, if we calm better, you know, if we like play off our util better, we would have won. So like that's what we did. We just kept going to the plan. A lot of good calls from my IGL Ted, you know. Yeah, did, did you guys expect it to be this close, or were you expecting to start dominant from the beginning, and that was not not really how it turned out, and then you started to fix those mistakes as you went, or because uh, from what we heard from Northwood. They said they heard some things about your team, uh, but they weren't really sure. So how was you used to them before this match? You know, Northwood, you know, a lot of good players on the team. You know, we heard a lot about their good players on Twitter and stuff. So, like, we always thought it was going to be a competitive game. You know, we think we have one of the best talent rosters in the, like, collegiate Valorant. So, you know, it's good to go put up against them early season and show Absolutely. how good we are. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations, Druff, on that win. I mean, anything else uh, you want to you know, look forward to? Any teams you're looking forward to playing or uh, going up against in the uh, rest of the group stage? Uh, looking forward to Farm Butler, uh, Odin Val. Not a good player. <laughs> not at all. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. And I have one more question for you. Is there any reasoning behind uh, the bind? The, the bind that we want to? Is there any... What, what are your takes on it as a team? Because there, there's a lot of different conversations about bind, especially when you only have one chance here in a, in a tournament or in a stage like this one, there's only one map. So for it to be bind, why do you think that is? Uh, bind's like one of our most comfort maps. It's like our comfort map every season, usually. Cause we always do good on it. Like Ted's yeah. always got a good strats for it. We always, Memphis always pops off cause he's on raise now. Smart's always dashing the hall, getting judge kills. Like. It's our comfort map, usually. We've got a lot of other maps, sleeper maps, that people don't know about yet, so we're just excited to bring those out if they let us. Well, definitely excited to see what you guys have in store for us here in the CENC, and good luck to the rest of your tournament run. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, more Valorant action, more Midwest Valorant coming your way. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone, to the CENC Midwest Invitational after that interview with Druff. We have our next matchup here of the day. It's going to be Buckeye going up against Ball State. It is going to be Ball State starting on the attacking side, and we're going to be going to Breeze for the first time today in the stream. I'm excited to say the least, Dryad. Excited to see what Buckeye can do on Breeze, especially knowing uh, how they played. We've seen them a couple times before already very aggressive team but also a very well organized team who knows their strengths and weaknesses and can play and change on a dime yeah absolutely a lot of possibilities especially in a map like breeze about what they can bring this a map that we haven't seen today and honestly we don't see very often in map tools so it's nice to bring it to the table against a map that against a team that we actually haven't seen on stream before so i want to see what ball state is able to do i'm not really sure about their performance and how they've been doing but again it, it comes back to that conversation at this point if you are a team that already took three victories you're going to feel pretty good about what is left and on the other side if you're a team that has been struggling throughout the day that can affect this match as well so it's kind of in between for these two teams to see what is it going to happen and what is going to go down in breeze already lock-ins coming through pretty standard stuff i'm assuming we're going to be seeing a viper from both sides definitely a staple on this map and it'll be interesting to see also how the changes on this map will affect these two squads but already we're going to see another chamber and especially on breeze you can get a ton of value you know planting for cave looking for options with that tour de force uh, as well as on b It'll be interesting to see how Ball State contend here with BGC and if they decide to match the aggression or try to buy more time for themselves and play to their own strengths. Absolutely, and I, and I really like the Chamber. This is one of the maps where if I, if I think a map where Chamber can do good, it's got to be this one. It's got to be mm. on my top two, if not, I mean, the best map for him so far. You know that the guns are going to be great for the long distance that you have to take. And those duos are often from completely different parts of the map. Everyone is so far away from each other. Even if you're trying to flank, you know that it's going to be difficult to do so. So having a chamber is going to give a lot of control, especially towards mid on the uh, for the side of this team and everything else still looking pretty standard i would say even the the rain is really nice to see everything that is going to give you control of space that is so hard to gather sometimes in this map it's going to be interesting to see how mid control plays a factor as well you know if you gain control of breeze it really opens up the options going to a going to b so we'll see how these two teams play that one out but regardless just about ready to get into the game here we will send us in to game on Breeze here, and uh, we will make sure those icons up top are changed uh, momentarily. But yeah, Ball State going up against Buckeye here. Ball State starting the attack. They make it easy for us, uh, Dry. They have all the same uh, the same letters, BSC. They make it easy. I love that. Yeah, in the eyes one to see, and the the compositions overall are still looking pretty strong. So it's also another thing that. Feels really comfortable for everyone. I want to see the performance that we've seen over and over again coming in for Buckeye. And what they're able to do this time around. Sean not playing the Sage anymore, but instead is going to be playing that Sky. So that means a little bit more of an active role to guarantee the victory for the team. And he was able to do and to have that active role on Sage. So we can only imagine what possibilities he can bring to the table now. But it's on and this guy, an initiator, as the kills are already coming in, it's a trade. One gets the other in a 4v4, playing towards mid that we talked about, that control that is going to be crucial. And Gamma already also feeling pretty comfortable back on this right now. Looks like the rotation will come in. Nobody's actually over towards B, so... Okay, definitely gonna have to change that up around. You're gonna see the Sofa move through Nest. The B will be exposed, and Ball State should get this plant down, so that's good money for Ball State, but... Still in the 4v3 will be a difficult fight. Nonetheless, Swoody will go for the plant. They have been a post plan here planted. with the Sova and Viper, along with the Chamber as well, for a bit of long-range consistency here. But they have a flight to worry about as well. It's going to be Kamei moving through Elbow. 
working his way inside of the ghost here, but he's making a lot of noise, doesn't have any leers to work with, and the 32 HP on Sean, it's going to be a daunting task here. BGC gonna work around on the side. Ian in a great flank position, will be good for one, can't find two. Sean trades it back. It's gonna be Parker finding a kill on Kamei, and now Ball State in a 2v2 opportunity. Sean with six HP to his name, will be able to find a kill, and now a 1v1 here. Sean gonna propel himself up top. Spooty, does he spot the sky? He does, he knows exactly where he is. The time is not on Sean's side. We'll go with the views, we'll stick with that. Can he get all of it? He cannot. Spooty takes same and takes fire. 70 HP to his name, does not matter. Matter, false state, first round. And Sean had the right idea there, but only 6 HP to work with. Not ideal when you are trying to get a defuse. And even though he was able to get half, obviously there's so much more to get that dual one, to get that 1v1, to get that victory. So this time around, not an ideal situation, but it's slow start has never stopped any team, especially in a tournament like this when there's a lot more to go. And this is where you see those Spectres being bought, but even Spectres in a map like this one, it's hard to get value out of them sometimes. The drone is going to bait in a couple. BSU gonna really turn the tides here and really put the pressure down on top of BGC. And already two quick kills in Kame with 30 HP. Chop Chops, no dart. It's gonna be a full rotation. They know they can take any site they want. With the sky flashes up in 30 seconds, they will have the dog as well. So a lot for Ball State to work with going over towards B. That rotation that is happening fast and it is working out as well as fast as they can. Four members alive in the meantime. Well, the Reina took so much damage. I don't even think uh, they can use anything to heal themselves. So it's got to be the plan coming in any minute now. Let's see. We see a little bit of a flank coming in. Cameron, 38 B. Having a dream here, really. Spike planted. Yeah, that's the task indeed. It's Kamek. He's blinded for a brief moment here, but 30 HP. Doesn't have a healing as well, so it will be tough for Buckeye to get into the site. But, you know, credit this to BSU. They're playing aggressively. They know they have the gun advantage drive. And they take full advantage. They go over towards A. They find a couple kills there, and they understand that they can rotate. They have time, and they do just that. And now... With full control on the site, they will be able to back away for the time being towards BGC spawn and save their guns as well. But for BGC, down 2-0. Nothing too surprising for them. They just wanted frags. They'll get one, but that's about it. It is not the first time that we would see that. They're just going to jump right into where the spike is going to get down. And with that, just make sure that the economy is going to be the best they can in a scenario like that one. At least they were playing together. And... Now they can get to what matters the most, which is going to be those rifles that we start seeing that the side of the defense starts bringing to the table, even an off that they want to commit to. And I'm very curious about this one because on this jet, wait, for this jet, we haven't seen a lot of operator kills. We've seen one here and there, but nothing that has felt consistent enough. So this is a big risk that they're taking. And if you die with this operator on round three, puts a damper in the economy, but Kamei, right between the eyes, he finds Tien and takes the kill, but will waltz away to safety, and already, a good start for BGC, could have come at a better time, taking down one of the main members of this Ball State roster, and now, Ian, in a very precarious situation, Anas with this operator, does he even opt to check shoot? For the time being, though, he will just play this one slowly. It's going to be a mind game here for Ian. Does he check around the corner? Oh my god, he spots him. He's going to take aim and take fire. Oh, the Spectre, man. What a bad gun from Long Range. And Nos now with the Operator skill. He's got so much room to play with. And now Ian gets taken down from Chuck. And that's just unfortunate. It's just, just a Spectre. It's just a Spectre. spectre is so hard to get killed with, especially when you're so far away. That is so unfortunate. Tried spraying as much as he could. He did some damage, but it was lacking just a little bit towards mid, especially. And now, because of that, there's only two members live on this attacking team. They have to play together. The spike has not been planted. There's 30 seconds remaining. Everything seconds going left. against them as of right now. And uh, now we see those rifles and even the operator. As long as they're able to keep it, they have a big advantage here. And they're able to do just that camera force with the 3k to start it off to get the first round victory to his team to continue building more and more of what we just saw there well speaking of four spies here parker 
potentially look towards this operator here. And if he does this on attack, definitely will be interesting to say the least. But yeah, Anas keeps that operator crucially. And for BGC, you know, having, you know, being on defense for the first half puts so much, you know, pressure now on Ball State to make these rounds really matter because with the Jet, with the operator, you have so much control over mid, so much control over in these long angles that Breeze does provide. And that will be a kill going the way of Parker. Sean drops. That's the Sky Dawn. That's a big kill for Ball State to start things off. And the Ops in one side and the other side trying to get some kills. But the information, it is going to be crucial to make that happen. The so rotation is taking place. Everyone looking towards A on this attacking side. The Ops is not moving over and over again. He does it. How? Come and be able to get away with that kill. The chamber that had absolutely no idea. And with that, that means that the positioning wasn't the best for the defense, but they were able to get away with it. They have to push together. The leader coming in, blinding or trying to blame for just a little bit, but having to back up. And it seems like this one is going to be a save. Yeah, they knocked on the door, but that's about it. They have the operator. They need to save that for the next couple of rounds. BGC understand how really much they can do in this situation. A 4v2, the bomb will detonate. They'll look for some exit frags, but don't think they're even going to find any. They'll just save these guns out. BGC will drop 3-1. to one. And for Ball State, it, it's seeming like they're playing with so much more tempo right now than BGC. They're getting onto these sites a lot quicker. And BGC just look a little bit flustered. They look just not ready for it. And Ball State, when they're third round in a row here. 3 1 uh, we have for right now, but I expect the score for this one to be even and to match any minute now. We've seen what this Reyna is capable of doing on this defensive side. We've seen what Sean is capable of doing as well. So now, with those rifles, with the guns that they were able to save more than anything else, they can make something work out. The Empress, I would love to see at a point like this one where. You have just a little bit of extra confidence as a Reyna player. You get the confidence just to go in and to guarantee one or two kills. And that is just everything that the team is waiting for to get them into practice side as soon as possible. Oh, unfortunately, we'll be spotted in us. Takes down Parker, and that's the op user gone for Ball State for the time being. And they will walk back slowly, potentially looking for a rotation. They have that Viper moving towards B. Potentially could gain some ground if a kill happens over towards there. That could be the ghost signal for the rotation. But for the time being, a very slow, methodical pace down. for BSU. They understand that there's not really much they can do in this situation. But going for early, early engagements wasn't their forte as that chamber will drop. And Parker now, no operator. They'll be gone for the time being. 3-1 to one here for BSU still. And everyone playing this one very cautiously and slowly moving towards that. This attacking team, they have a Viper right oh, towards mid, but it seems like the defense is expecting just that first kill coming Spike in and a trade a. right after the operators, of course, doing miracles for both of their teams, but it's a three versus three and the rotation finally taking place left. in the sky, going from that B side to it seems like an A for the possibility of also that rotation taking place for this attacking team and it will go down towards B. Lineups coming in and just stopping that push for the defense for as much as you can for as long as you can because time is running out. There's 10 seconds remaining. The spike is going to be planted and now the Empress is going to come out. Last player standing. A bit of chip damage. TN's good for one, good for two, a 3k here for this jet. He is feeling it right now. Ooh, uh, BSU just set up an absolute wall right now on top of B. I mean, TN. I NT, let's let's throw that around. NT right now for BGC. NT on that push. It wasn't meant to be. Yeah, it wasn't the one. And that means the save coming in. But four kills really nice. What we saw for this jet and his love performances like this one. And too, especially in the duelist role, right? Not only it is expected, but it's also so nice to see. It's just like everything fitting right into you place. Want to play? And the way that you excited play. a composition like this one coming in for the side of Ball State. And a lot more possibilities that they have. As long as they continue having that communication that is really shining out a lot here. I've got your trail. Oh, does he spot Chuck? He does! Anas on this lurk here. Oh, look. 
to make his way over. He's got a dash as well. He will spot Parker for a brief moment. Spike Ooh, planted. Check this flank. Check the corner. Anas, he spots a plethora of Ball State members, but with only a sheriff to his name, he can only do nothing and just take pop shots for the time being. And now a 5v3 all in favor of Ball State. Everything going their way. You know, it is pretty much expected of where this jet will be coming from. Cannot even get one to end. Three kills can make another 4k here. But immediately shot down. Chop Chop also playing all the way back. And that spawn and trying to get one, two, even with that Marshall is not going to be the case. And once again, that tour the force, it can do so much. This is why Chamber is so strong in a map like this one. A lot of duels are from so far away that you use that tour the force and you know that you have a little bit of a bigger chance. It was even the mistake, even when we saw a couple rounds ago, the Spectre trying to get uh, one of the enemies from the other side, it just didn't really connect. And so when you have an agent as strong as Chamber to enable you to have guns like this one almost every single time, you have the advantage to shine a little bit more as we see the set of, uh, of Ball State continuing to do a 5 to 1 and a little bit unexpected too compared to the performance that we saw before from them and from the enemy team. See a very aggressive angle being taken right now for BGC. Two members up towards mid, and they'll look potentially for an elbow rotation. It looks like A will be the target for the time being. Now it's going to be Jaycorn with these flashes at his disposal. Ian waiting for a flanker from this hall's area to come through, but for the time being, one minute remaining. Ball State perfectly content with playing this one slow. Nobody over towards B for the time being right now. Completely exposed. And Oss takes down TN. That's the hot hand, the hot barrel for Ball State gone. And now a 5v4 in favor of BGC with the Viper Spit available. They could use that to block off one of these sites, but B is still the target and still exposed for BGC. The 45-5 that we have right now in Ball State still with the advantage just looking at those rounds, but it might be changing soon. Left. It's going to be a lot of potential that we already know Brock I has, but the question is how are they going to develop it, especially in a round like this one, the seekers are going to be used, have to be shot, their location is going to be revealed, or at least having an idea of where it's coming from. Yeah, and on the other side, three kills that he's able to get, only one remaining this time around for Bolstead, and time is running out, the plan cannot go down, and now the operator will be finalizing this round second going for this out of Bokai. This is exactly what I was expecting from them. It seems like they were slowly building and getting that momentum. And now they're able to continue and to even match the score, I believe. Just looking at how many kills Kevin has been able to get. Anyone have funds to spare? That works. Really feeling himself here. 10-3 on this Reyna. Now the economy back in a decent spot here. Let us hunt. For the side of BGC. Let's see if they can get something done here anas great picks with that operator has really allowed more spacing for bgc to work with ball state with three ultimates of their own will try to gain some space on one of these sites and play for the post plant they have not just fury they have that viper's pit as well so smoothie will use that aldrum that will be the ghost signal for tn he's got all pieces of utility to play with and here we go ball state will make their way on top of the site there's the recon dart going to the back of site as well and That'll be the rotation from B. It's confirmed day. The plant will go down. Let's see how they play this post plant out after this plant. This plant planted. Now the post is going to be interesting and already a first pick coming in for the defense. The operator playing toward, towards the double doors means that definitely is going to be at risk for being able to get away with their life and able to get another kill as well. Watching that no one is coming behind and that's giving a little bit more space of the defense to work with two members live in the meantime. Of course, it's had a full state and it seems like nothing can be done in DPS. It seems like it's about to do it. You're about to connect it and they do it again. Of course, the defense gets away with it. Three, two, five and Barkai, they are waking up again. Waking up there, pros don't fake and I'll just hold it down and now. We get the op over back to Anas and puts himself in a really decent spot with the daggers as well. And Chop Chops has his Hunter's Fury. Chuck has the Viper's Pit. So plenty of tools for BGC. And we saw there, you know, a very quick plant for BSC, but they weren't able to really get anything done after that. We saw Ian on the flank drive, but it was just way too late. 
Yeah, absolutely. Get it is a way. risky situation there, but now it is another round. It is the round where it might be an ultimate heavy one. The Blade Storm already coming in, trying to get some information towards mid, trying to get some kills even, but no one peeking in and definitely expecting it. See in that area, there it is, pushing right in for this defense, being able to get two kills. This Reyna does it again. Only two members alive, and Bossy, they have a difficult task here. They were aiming to go towards A, but now, look at that. They are going to be completely surrounded. What can they do? There's not many options here right now in a 5v2. It's going to be very difficult here with Anas watching over. It's going to be an off battle, Spike and Anas down, flicks spawn. up and takes Poison down off. Parker. And right now, Anas probably going to be parking his way on mid, and now Ian. A 1v1 here with Shop. He will find the kill. It's a great frag for BSU, but... At uh, what cost, right? You, you know, it's one to four here in terms of agents here. Three to five in the round score. It's going to be difficult for Ian. He'll plunge his way on top of Chuck. Takes out another kill. Spike is so far away. It's going to be so difficult to even get over there. It's going to be potentially a save. He's got 30 seconds to work with him. For Ball State, it's good frags, but right now, BGC somehow have ramped it up and are looking to tie this one up at five to five eventually. And there's no time to work with, and the operator will be guaranteeing the 3k. I like this performance. I talked about it. What can be done with this with this jet specifically with the operator? Because before we didn't see it shine too much, but now I like that he's proving me wrong. He's bringing something different, and he's making a, a difference, a massive difference for his team. Now the blizzard didn't get any value for the set of ball state the way that we're hoping for, so that puts things at a risk and it means a potential rush will be and can come their way Let's see if the rush is inevitable they will have a bit of intel due to that sky flash the bottom light does make at they least one cost. known and there's the dog as well everything being used there by sean all pieces of utility now an ass will spot that poison orb and there's a Bit of utility being used there by the Sova as well. The Shock Dart's raining over towards Ness, but so far, B is the target. And Ball State looking to pincer inside. Here. It's going to be Parker. Nowhere to working his run. way over. Maybe he can get a flank here. Kamei going to be good for one. Dismiss the safety, but he runs right into two members of Ball State. He'll get taken down. Parker's good for one more, and Sean will drop. That's the sky gone and dusted. And Ball State somehow, some way, will actually get this plant down. And Parker hit for three. Can he make it four? Enough, missing the off shot. He's going for one more. Can't find it there. And the time being, Ball State will get planted. this play down and have control and look for an impervious defense on this site. The op on the other side. The blister as well. That it seems like it's going to be necessary. Having no idea. The Parker was right here for almost getting the fifth. And it is a 1v1. Only 30 HP to work with for this Viper. Not so much. Has no idea where the Silva can be coming from. And with the changes of the map, it is yet another challenge to face for this defuse, for this defensive team that has to play. <laughs> now, wait, has no idea still where oh, that came from. Gets shot right through the wall. And it's a thrifty and a very unexpected one coming in. It's a 6 to 4 that we have right now. And I mean, mostly being able to get away with it. It was all oh, thanks to the to Parker, to the chamber absolutely popping up early on with that 4K that he was able to give his team. Just so unfortunate for Kamei. We saw there he dismissed right into two members of Ball State. And yeah. there's just not much you can do there. It's just unfortunate. The Viper Wall was there. And now for Ball State, they stop that barrage of attack from BGC after three rounds, six to four here, and potentially looking to add more to that list. And they're gonna set up five over towards me. It's only one member, Sean, and they'll spot a plethora, a handful I've of Ball State members. Trying. He has a blinding light available, but there oh, come yes. the Seeker. Sean is in a whole world Blinded. of danger. He's gotta be able to get out of this one alive, and we'll have eventually some backup, but it's not coming anytime soon. He's gotta be able to get out of there. Able to get out of there, but just in time, and the kill is already coming in. Sean does get taken down, and the Viper Spit is going to come up online. Five members live for this attacking team, and a really good post scenario that they have right between your eyes. Now, a little bit more is going to be needed. That information that they're trying to place, and the kill that doesn't connect, the end does get taken down. They start a disaster for this attacking team, the Hunter's Fury coming in as well. 
It is going to be good for one. Chuck, does he spot any of these members concealed in the poison? He does not. J Corn going to be good for one. J Corn taking out from the rear. Just not enough time for BGC, though. Swooty getting it done here. Doing his best. Hanzo impression raining down. Daggers raining down. Darts making it look Last so, so easy. The switch. And BSU 7 to 4 here. Looking to make this one an 8 to 4, but the economy is in favor of both sides. It will be a full buy throughout. And. There are a couple ultimates ready. That's we need to see spot. Kamei pop off once again on that Empress. We saw him do it before. Can he do it again? He has done it multiple times throughout the day. But yeah, can he do it again? That is the question. A lot of what happens in the round is defined by what Kamei and what Sean are able to do in the early round. So play, let me have, if I get him down, that possibly gets denied. Now, we're going to be seeing a tour de force. That means a little bit more. Uh, of the difficulty to commit to one of the sites as well but we see this attack team this time around they're gonna have no fear they're going to try to go in but that utility and no kill so far but now as we see that they're coming in the train is going to side sim impossible and four members life for this deck team going for the plant he might just do that Ahead. Maybe three as Jaycorn falls. Swooty in a pretty unfortunate position. He's got to back away to safety and does. In the nick of time and Emanas. With this dash, we will look for an acrobatic play indeed. He will spot out Swooty. Who now pelts the back of sight here. The snake bites come raining in. Oh, in the great right spot. They have no idea. Anas good for one. Can he spot Ian as well? Ian taking a hell of a lot of damage. He's got to be careful. And now Parker playing for this moment. Last down the spike. Here comes Parker raining down the off shots, but he can't find any kills. And Anas is good for three. Be chop chops getting the defuse. And at the end of the half, it's going to be five to seven in favor of Ball State. But BGC slowly but surely working their way back into this one. Switching Ball sides. State, yeah, having the advantage, but anything can happen now. This is one of those matchups that I realize it can be extremely close. Just looking at the performance that Buckeye has had throughout the day and the potential that they have to win those rounds, they were able to do just that. I think it's going to be extremely even, especially as we see the team now going into the defense where they have often seem a little bit more comfortable and where they can get things over with a little bit faster just based on the information information game that they're able to play so well this is the closest game we've seen all day at the first half five to seven yeah both these teams very evenly matched both these teams wanting to go to that LAN event that main event for cnc in atlanta both teams wanting that opportunity to show what they have and this pistol round so so important for bgc to look to tie things up at seven to seven there comes the dagger Wafted over the entire BSU lineup with TN. Gonna get a dink, gonna get a kill actually on Chuck. Like wow, TN really feeling it right now when he just sprays through the Viper's wall. You never know. Yeah, you never know what's gonna happen, but now a little bit more is going to be needed. The spike is going to be planted, and they know exactly where the team is going to be. At least one hiding behind pyramids just to get that plant done. So push is going to be necessary for the defense. The trades are going, coming and going at the same time. The damage it can connect it does a lot against two of the members of each team and the numbers again for this 42 that can keep the team alive doesn't do it this time around the defense the three members alive has one more to get sean good for two but that is all that he said and that 3k that we see parker able to get here is going to make things so much better for the season that you're going to feel so much more confident into the second half as we jump right into it Big around there for bsu and, and it looks like it's going to be a force for bgc potentially sean we'll go for the specter that's about it only one who could buy there so it will be potentially an avenue for kame as he's actually going to go and Go for this Bulldogs. This is a big risk here for BGC. And let's see if they can make do and let's see if Kamei can get something done with this longer range weapon. What can be done here, though? It's going to be a force for a couple of the members, which is interesting. The first time that we see a two of fours into the second round. 
the first time that we see it today and it is for a reason it is very unlikely to see things like that happening especially because not everyone is forcing here so it's gonna be kind of a never never situation for them to get value out of it they have no idea though that the end is going to be hiding there good for two down, right down. into their head and four members alive for the defense is going to go as planned for the team one more to get and shun against three members of the side of ball state i don't think it's going to be possible even the specter is not worth saving the location is going to be a reveal and nothing else not really any other hope for the sky it's thought it has to move 45 hp towards the end this is so unfortunate for bgc that drone didn't spot tn in that little corner that they added a breeze and it punishes them insanely hard. He gets two kills out of it. And that flash is well, really well timed from all members of the Fox State. 30 seconds things happen. Left. Now Sean only has one blind light. And he immediately is taken down and his lifeless corpse there is now BSU really putting the pressure on BGC right now. Nine to five after a force from BGC. Yeah, this is why those forces into the second round is are not good i mean unless you are unless the enemy team has double digits on you it's just not really worth it you risk so much like we see the teams doing now and now it is box eye in a massive disadvantage into what can happen next because they can't even count with the economy for this round so a full safe round that we're going to be seeing for them not taking any of their risks but i don't even know how how many kills they can get away with, right? Because it is Ball State really putting up a fight versus them. Well, right now, first time in this game, we've seen BGC move as a collective unit towards mid and Chuck. We'll take down Parker. That's a great start here for BGC, but how do they convert? How do they maneuver through Breeze? TN will propel himself up top towards Hall. Still a lot of intel left to be had here for BSU. They know if an inkling of suspicion, they could be a target, and they're going to wrap around. We'll be... Very interesting to see how BGC play this one out towards this rotation. It's only going to be Jake on here for the time being. I've got your TN behind him, but there's going to be the Seekers. That's going to be the go signal. That is a signal to go in the Guiding Light. Revealing that there's no one up close. They can take it from a distance. Also, doesn't hear anything. The Seekers as well going to reveal someone all the way in back of the side. But the spike is going to be planted. Going to give at least some comfort for this attacking team. As I see that uh, Sean does get taken down. And it's going to be an interesting flank coming in. Is this jet that no one is looking at? Has no idea where she is. And now making some noise in Cosmo live. Good for one. Makes it two as well. And the defuse is going to stick. We already know how this works. Actually, it doesn't even get half. Ooh. Doesn't get half. 12 HP on an ass. He's just going to spray through the smoke. Half for TN. Trying, trying to prolong to get? this round. Can he get the defuse off? So much time being burned up. Anas trying his damnness, but in the end, Ball State stay composed with their temper out. Double digits now going for Ball State and such a strong team as we see them performing better and better. They are making the right decisions, not only in the economy, but in those rotations that have to take place and when they have to take place. And that is the difference that we already see in a matchup like this one against Bakai. Bakai, a team that we saw twice today and they were popping off they were doing so well all in the hands of sean and kami but now they have another challenge and they're trying to figure out how to face it it's gotta be vying this round started off and the star ideally a comeback for them uh, tn with the daggers available could potentially aggress forward through mid he's gonna use jake horn with this blind and light we'll spot anyone though and that drone will force him to disengage immediately but kame takes down jake horn can he find one more tn gonna brawl with him but for the time being, it's just going to be a one for zero exchange going the way of BGC, and that's a good start to this round that they need it. They yeah, absolutely need it, but not enough just yet. Turns around, but it's a little ahead. too late, and the jet does get taken down. It's a 4v4, and again, that is what he said. A little bit more is going to be needed because you don't know what can happen in a matchup like this one. Everyone is just hiding in such unexpected places for teams that we've seen so many of them getting taken down because they're not shaking corners or just because they're flash when they're expecting it the least. So now, rotation once again towards A from mid. And plan that is trying to go down as the kills are going down too. No Parker. Can't find one there, and that 
Let's get into the plant. And finally, BGC can play to their hand and play for this post plant, but TN. He's able to spot Chop Chops. This could be absolutely major. Here's the shot. Goes. Someone is in that general vicinity. Finds the headshot and finds the kill on Chop Chops. TN really failed himself. He looks too aggressive. Find Kame. Pop the cloud burst down, concealing himself in mystery now. It's going to be TN with these daggers still available. Sean is looking for the flash. The timing for TN is oh. absolutely immaculate. He's got the sheriff. He's looking for the shots. He can't find the kill. The abuse is coming in. And what a play out of TN. Doing so much work here time and time again for PSU. Winning them this round. All the space that Tien was able to get was absolutely insane. No one could even peek the way that they wanted to because Tien was right in front of their faces and getting kills right and left. 21 kills that this player has right now and gives the 11th crowd to Ball State. Only two more that are going to be needed, a Blade Storm that is going to be available, and all the winning potential that they have, as this one is going to be yet another save for Buckeye. Save and a Nas. These We're daggers could potentially look to make an engagement happen, but it's so difficult for Ball State to really, or for BGC rather, to get really into these sites and Jaycorn. Rifle some bullets home on top of Kame. That's good for one, and that's the main man on this BGC roster, Gondrida. And it feels like when Kame gets things done, when he's able to find some of these good engagements, there's, there's not really much follow-up for BGC at all. Yeah, and the follow-up is going to be crucial for anything that can be done. The guiding light is going to be revealed someone there, but they don't know exactly where. They don't know that there's a blade storm right into mid right at double doors now they get an idea really good pick right there this guy does get taken down numbers advantage now still pretty even a 4v4 in the trades that are crucial another one with the blade storm and 70 hp should be more than enough to even get another one the spike does get planted and two members alive for the defense playing completely different parts one of them coming in the flank as who he is as well. He's got a recon dart. He's got two shock darts as well. But once again, this Ian flank is a little bit late, but he is going to be able to get here in time. Chop, chop, though. Will drop. It's going to be Swooty looking for one more. He's going to be right in front of Sean, right in front of Yellow here. It's going to be so difficult now for this flank to come Last in. Sean, he standing. senses it. Swooty going to be good for one more. Ian Last just going to go for the standing. stick. He's going to go for the defuse. And Nas, good for one. He's got the 3k. Does he know the defuse is happening? He's going to use all his mobility to get over there. He doesn't find the shots, and Ian should have enough time. What a play out of Ian. Goes to the flank, and it finally works out, Dryad. What a shot as well that they were able to connect right into the jet. It's so difficult in a situation like that. You know that she's altered and you know that she can do something crazy, but shutting down the possibility and also getting half of the spike defuse was everything that this team needed. They are playing perfectly round after round to take this victory. So now it is a now or never situation for what Bokai can do for ultimates available to use whenever they want and the one that they can capitalize the most out of is going to be the viper's pit and bsc guess right they're going to use the viper's pit on b and that's where each and every single trial. member of bgc is there's the secrets as well and they are just liberally throwing utility in front of b main and here's going to be the engagement bsu going to be in for one smoothie takes down chuck all right to the viper gone and just an osto he's made his way on the site he's in a great position chop chop Finally finds it has time to put it on and it will dissipate, but Smoothie standing. still takes down one more. Tia gonna be good and it's only one remaining chop the top drops win. and you can tuck this one away with extra pillows and blankets. Dry at 13 to 5. We're back to normal. Right, we're back to uh, normalcy here in CEMC. <gasps> 5 to 13 It's the only situation that we deal with. But once again, great showing there from BSU. Really propel themselves in a really good spot. And I mean, they're looking deadly. I mean, Druff said it in chat. They're looking dangerous. Yeah, they're looking really good. And and it is especially because we already saw Bokai in two other situations. We already saw them in two other matches. And Bokai was the one that was looking strong. So now when someone else is looking stronger than them, then you start questioning how the table is looking, how those group stages are looking for everyone here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, now one more match here for us here. It's going to be Northwood going up against Illinois. Haven't seen them on the stream yet. So this will be another first timer here for uh, one of these teams. So excited to see how Northwood are able to play out against Illinois. But regardless, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, the last game here for Valorant. Coming your way in the CENC Midwest Invitational. Don't go anywhere.
not on Sean's side. And to get all of these knocks, Foodie. The spike has not been planted. There's 30 seconds remaining. Everything seconds going left. against him as of right now. And uh, now we see those rifles and even the operator. As long as they're able to keep it, they have a big advantage here. And they're able to do just ahead because time is running out. There's 10 seconds remaining. The spike is going to be planted. And now the Empress is going to come out. Last player standing. TN's good for one, good for two, a 3k here for this jet. He is feeling it right now. It's going to be an out battle and an ass. Flicks up and for VSU, but at what cost, right? You know, it's one to four here in terms of agents here. Three to five in the round score. It's going to be difficult for Ian until plunge his way on top of Chuck. And Ball State looking to pincer inside. Can be Parker. Working his way over. Maybe he can get a flank here. Come Going to be good for one. Dismiss the safety. But he runs right into two members of Ball State. He'll get taken down. Parker's good for one more. And Sean will drop at the sky. Gone and dusted. Necessary. Having no idea. The Parker was right here in four. Almost getting the fifth. And it was a 1v1. Only 30 HP to work with. Chuck, does he spot any of these members in the seal? In the poison, he does not. J Corps gonna be good for one. J Corps taking out from the rear. Just not enough time for BBC though. Swooty gonna get done. Go in with that utility and no kill so far, but now as we see that they're coming in, the strings are going to side sim impossible. And four members line for the deck is going for the plant. He might just do that. Acrobatic play indeed. He will spot out Swooty. Now pelts the back of sight here. Snake bites come raining in. Oh, they know. In a great spot. They have no idea. Anas good for one. Can he spot Ian as well? Ian taking a hell of a lot of damage. He's got to be careful. And now Parker. Last player getting down the spike. Parker raining down the off shots, but he can't find any kills. Anas. It's good for three. Three shot drops. Game of the season. At the end of the half. It's gonna be five to seven in favor of Ball State, but does a lot. Can two of the members of each team and the numbers again for is 42 I can keep the team alive, doesn't do it this time around. The defense, three members alive, has one more to get. Sean, good for two today, and it is for a reason. It is very unlikely to see things like that happening, especially because not everyone is working here. So it's gonna be kind of a never never situation for them to get value out of it. They have no idea though that can is going to be hiding there. Good for two right into their head. And four members alive for the defense. It's going to go as planned for the team. One more to get and shun against three members of the side of Ball State. Or you know how this works. Actually, it doesn't even get half. It's a good half. 12 HP on an ass. He's just going to spray through the smoke. Half for TN. Trying to prolong this round. Can he get the defuse up? Time being brought up, and us trying his damn down two. Yeah, Parker, find one there, and that's going to be Clint. Finally, BBC can play to their hand and play for this post plant to TN. He's able to spot shot drop. He absolutely made it. Here's the shot to those. Someone is in that general vicinity. Finds the headshot and finds the kill on shot drop. TN. He looks to over us and find Kame. Pop the cloud burst down, concealing himself in mystery now. It's gonna be TN with the stagger still available. Sean, they like looking for flash. The timing for TN is absolutely immaculate. He's got some champions in for the shots. He can't find the kill. The views coming in. And what a play out of TN. Doing someone there, but they don't know exactly where. They don't know that there's a place from right into mid, right at double doors. Now, they get an idea. Really good pick right there. Foodie, gonna be good for one more. Ian, Last just gonna go for the stick. He's gonna go for the defuse. And Oscar for one. He's got the 3k. Does he know the defuse is happening? He's gonna use all his mobility to get over there. He doesn't find the shots, and Ian should have enough time. What a play out of Ian. Goes to the point that it finally works. Takes down Chuck already. The Viper gone. Does Anas, though. He's made his way on the side. He's in a great position. Chop Chop finally finds the attack. Time to finish on. And it will dissipate. But Foodie still takes down one more. Tia gonna be good, and it's only one remaining. Chop Chop drops. And he tucked this one away in extra collision.
Welcome back, everyone, to the CENC Midwest Invitational. About to round up the day, but a quick interview here with Parker of Ball State University after a pretty emphatic win over Buckeye. Uh, Parker, welcome to the stream, and uh, thanks for being on with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. So to start us off, uh, you know, have you been able to see BGC before? Did you have any prior knowledge of them going into this tournament? Uh, no, I think the only teams we played in this tournament have been like IU and Ohio, maybe UKY once in the uh, ECAC. Uh, Ohio's in our like main uh, league, uh, the ECAC or the ESC, sorry, which is basically the MAC conference, but for esports. So we've seen them before. Yeah, and how, how did he feel then about jumping in and playing matches with teams that you maybe didn't have a lot of information on? Was that something that you're comfortable on? Or was it kind of gathering information as the rounds went by and as you heard the results from other matches? Um, it's, it's certainly a bit, little bit of both. Uh, we did some VOD reviewing for Minnesota. Um, the VOD was uh, a little bit like old, though. I think they made a, a roster change after that, so we just had to you know adapt mid-game. Uh, but other than that, yeah, we were kind of just going into this uh, pretty dry, but uh, that's something we're used to, um, like, you know, scrimming all the time and uh, playing in tournaments. So you just got to kind of pick up on their tendencies, like in the first couple of rounds and then execute on that. Yeah, definitely. You guys did execute and you guys did adapt over the course of that game. And is there any other team, you know, in this group or the other group that you're, you know, uh, interested in fighting against or playing uh, as the bracket continues? Uh, we definitely want some revenge on IU. Uh, we lost to them, you know, by the skin of our teeth in the uh, battle for Indiana. Um, so we, we definitely want some revenge there. And then I'm pretty sure Northwood was the Overwatch national champions. So I think it'd be pretty cool to beat them as well. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of competition here. So what what about your team? Tell me a little bit about your team because I'm curious how, how long have you guys been together? How is how is the synergy do you think and how much does it play a part in your victory? So uh, two of us have been playing together for two years now, I think. Uh, That's me and Jake Horn. Um, we just got Ian, which is like our controller main uh, back in mm -hmm. the beginning of fall. And then um, actually we brought up two guys from our uh, like second roster uh which is uh corey and colin but that's like bsu swooty and bsu tn we just brought them up to our roster so uh, all things considered we're like a, a decently new roster but there's still like you know some synergy there absolutely definitely some promise with that roster especially with what you're saying if you guys have just started out definitely a lot of room to grow but parker thank you for being here does anyone else want to shout out before we uh head off uh, i just want to shout out dan marino he's the director of esports here none of this would have been possible without him uh, you know he got us uh like 12 30 80s in the middle of covid i don't know how he did it but we got him uh yep thank you ball state esports chirp chirp good guy dan trip trip indeed thank you parker for being here with us and congrats to bsu and well dryad one more game left to go here i'm excited to say the least we're gonna go to a quick break when we come back the last valorant game of the stream coming your way being on that eco that particular round but you know as you're saying they are struggling with map presence in general both on sites and in mid like you mentioned i do at least at the very least like that the barrier orb actually isn't going up right away in mid sage uh 
Kaiser there actually saving it um, for either another choke point or for a retake situation. And the reason why I actually favor that is because of the fact that UCFA is so aggressive. They just shoot down the barrier orb immediately, kind of negating the whole point of it. And the slows are luckily coming out, though. That paranoia hmm. is going to do early. work as well. Quite, yeah, burned early, especially with the slow, but at least not, uh, not a free entry into sure. mid as per usual. Sure. And Jay with that opening pick. Opening pick. For Jay, opening pick to B site for Star Potato, able to find Ritzy. Once again, that's the Sentinel taken out of this round, or the more heavy util based Sentinel, I suppose. Obviously, mm -hmm. Sage exists. I'm surprised like Helen's actually not calling for their team to rotate right now. I mean, after getting that. Oh, well, here the rotate goes, especially after getting that pick off of Casper. We're going to see. UCFA now moving their way to a free A site that has been completely cleared out by Kellum here. He's all the way up in spawn. Should be good for at least one, but hopefully doesn't over aggress a clean head tap. It's going to come through. Good for one indeed. Paint shells could be good for another because those are very low players. They're able to just barely dodge that shrapnel. Won't be touched by the initial nade. The repeaks definitely could be another story. This team not opting to save, they'll take the fights instead. Sniper to find the first, but instantly traded by Cloud. And looking to finish the job, and he's done just that. A 3k coming through. UCFA 5 0 right now. And as long as they keep working the map in such a way, they have so much like potential. They force players to pull into mid and pull off site because how aggressive they're getting in that direction with the lack of utility. I don't see a way this team gets beat, at least on the attacking set. Mm hmm but i mean it's this is gonna be tough i think i i am curious to see once we switch sides to know if ucfa will be punished for this kind of aggression on the defensive side in for case sure. they might over aggress during you know lurks or flanks or whatnot but before we get into that we're still on the attack for them that blade storm being popped early but annihilated by a kali kaiser though good for the trade so it's a 4v4 situation. Yeah, yes, very true. However, FSA kind of playing a bit more safely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not going to actually get that information that the spike is outside of A, and a rotation will be called towards mid. I've got your train. Yeah, fortunately, this Sage not looking for more there just in case they are stacked up too, which allows the spike to get recovered quite easily. Mm -hmm. And now the Seekers will come through towards B Heaven flashes there, force J away. And into B Heaven, UCFA are once more. One Seeker will get information towards Ritzy to the back of sight. Jay swung upon, grabs one, but instant trades that come through. UCFA will find two frags in the sight just like that. But I for through Nebula to grab another just for the homies. Guys are able to find a trade inevitably on the Star Potato. And that leaves a 2v2 after the res. Straight into the rock. No. Okay. Line them up. Take them down. UCFA 6-0 thanks to the showstop. No Rosa ults here. Only dubs. Okay, going in. To six and zero now, FSA. I believe if we could just pull up the buy screen or not the buy screen, the scoreboard real quick, get a bit of a peek over maybe what the buys and the ultimate statuses are looking like. Yeah, we have that neural theft and the from the shadows available on the side of FSA. But on this eco, like we won't see them coming out unless a cool thrifty is able to happen. Maybe convert the round by expending those ultimates. But UCFA now leaning towards the A site, looking to maybe take control of main here. The Leer is going to be going out, but Cloud is actually going to be good for one. That huge one, Cloud, looking for a second now to swing through screen. Playing with fire here. Rest of the team going to be rafters now. Great paranoia to come through to put Rudy down at the very least, but there's definitely help coming from May. May oh. won't matter as Jay's able to swing through. Slow is there, so Jay stuck for the meantime down towards hell. Casper isn't able to get away. TP out of danger here. Vanipe now making waves. Jay to catch another from hell will swing through with the newfound phantom. UCFA stuck very much split here, looking to get together once again towards hell. First pull to come through will give him like the first peek. That's Jay to fall. On towards screen, another heaven in the flank on the way, inevitably from Sage. There'll be no lurk utility since that Sentinel has gone down. Mm -hmm. Speaking about going down, the Sentinels. Ritzy will fall towards heaven into the 2v2. Yeah, unfortunately, Kaiser just wasn't able to be quick enough on that flank. Oh. That operator in hand is going to whiff this one QV2 situation. Thank you, 2v1. A star potato has one, and the swing will come through from the raise. It's 7-0 for UCFA. 
clean in house thus far to make it happen. A pretty dang good round for FSA too. It's been a struggle to see mm -hmm. them allocate resources mid round. The adaptation was very, very good. Able mm -hmm. to capitalize off the picks from Cloud. Jay was able to get down towards hell. It's unfortunate that UCFA, they get together, the duo makes plays happen and they somehow steal the round. Absolutely. And I mean, now the operator is in the hands of Star Potato. Converting that over from the defenders to the attackers might be good for one here, but nobody's gonna take the bait and peek B main early. That Empress is gonna be popped, and yeah, the paranoia gets extended pretty early, like you mentioned. And the Lear is gonna come out through mail here as Akali tries to take this space. Back to that original slow orb. We haven't actually seen this slow orb since pistol round. It's good to see it back. Casper will fall to Melek. Quick trade to come through. UCFA have made their way into heaven. Peek from Cloud. Kali's going to take that one away. Looking to pinch towards Sight now. As Ritzy on default box. Hoping a dream and will shut down just like that. A star Potato will take that one. Melek through for a second frag. He anchors towards heaven. Another on the way. Kaiser will peek. Gone. 8-0. Yeah, I... I mean, I think what Full Sail is really struggling with right now is playing as a team, to be quite honest. They are allowing a lot of 1v1 or 1vx situations to happen, not really playing for those trades, and their positioning makes it a little bit difficult to help each other out as well. Um, I did like the stack in Be Heaven there, considering the fact that they are used to UCFA, you know, taking that Be Heaven control kind of right off the bat. But unfortunately, the timing, the change in pacing did them dirty having that rotation being called off towards A as well. So some nice conditioning, a nice fake coming out from UCFA. And now more mid control is gonna be taken and they really just give it up for free. I mean, mm. split is called split for a reason. You're splitting yeah. through mid and you're splitting through A main. You can't give up mid control. Uh, there's, there's nothing to hold it. They tried to use bodies and that did not work out. They use the bodies aside instead and it's kind of the same story as it was the mid. The frags just come through for UCFA. I can't gonna grab another. I'm looking for three, but it will be a quick trade coming through from Niper. Always there for the support frag. It's been fantastic on the sky all map. Casper on the ropes. Heard. Nated. We'll step forward. Very low HP. Oh. The wall makes just barely <laughs> off. Pixels off. The swing and the frag. 9-0 for UCFA. Hey, Spicy, I think they might make it out. I'm not going to say anything quite yet. I, I don't want to jinx anything. Don't want to curse anything. And yeah, there I are hate, two you hate ultimates. Yeah, there are two ultimates on both sides right now. Star Potato has that Cosmic Divide available. Rudy with the choice. Welcome back everyone to the CNC Midwest Invitational, the last matchup of the day here. I am Camel, alongside me is Dryad. I'm excited to say the least for this last matchup of the day. It's going to be an interesting one. It does have uh, some, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? It, it matters for the group. It actually matters. So if uh, Northwood or Illinois wins this, or IU, excuse me, uh, or Illinois, yeah. Whoever wins this one does move on to that next stage of the bracket. So definitely an important game to say the least. Absolutely. It's going to be a good one to just to see what can be done in the early rounds. I feel like a lot, most of the matches that we've seen today has been a lot of dominance from the beginning and it just stays that way into the second half, right? So the more that we see those matches and the more that, you know, it's only one more to go for these two teams just to get it over with. It's how that is going to affect them and how close they can make that first half because to me that is going to be crucial just to guarantee what can happen next and who's going to take it. Again, there's a lot at stake for both of them. Yeah, and this is actually the first time. New map. New map. Uh, yeah. I mean, let's clap it up. New map. Let's yep. go. We did it. New map. We're going on a set. So uh, it's going to be a set with uh, Northwood, I believe, just to double check. Uh, it will be Northwood, I believe, starting on attack or defense, excuse me. So Northwood's going to be on defense here for ascent and you know with ascent you start to see astra more of a priority as you know it becomes one of the you know must picks on this map absolutely ascent gotta be one of my favorite maps to watch 
and you need to play it. I think it's such a good map for all the different possibilities. And I already see uh, Killjoy being locked by one of the sides. And the side of defense more than anything. That, to me, it is so nice to have on the defense a Killjoy. Just throwing the utility towards the B side. And it just makes it impossible for anyone to go in for a jet to dash in. It's just a complete nightmare. So that just forces that mid control, that A control more than anything for the attacking side. Where everyone is going to be spread across. Hopefully coming in on this defense. So overall, I think composition is looking exactly the same. Um, and, and pretty standard as well. Like you said, the Astra is also another one of those must picks into a map like this one. You just gotta have, it just has so much utility. It's one of the most complete agents that we have in the game. Absolutely. Very fast agent select there. Both teams definitely know what they want. And we'll see if Dip can get things done once again, be that magic that this team so desperately needs and we're actually going to see Ferbza on the Reyna so a bit of a shift here between that Sova over to a more aggressive agent like the Reyna I mean how do you expect that to change how he plays or you know if at all I mean I definitely do like the the Reyna quite a lot especially in a map like this one I think it's kind of a mix right there's there's maps where the Reyna is going to be really good there's maps where people are not going to play the arena as much but this one is right in the middle where it depends a little bit more on the player's performance but overall i think is a, is a good pick right you're not gonna have a sage you're not gonna have a sky so even a little bit more uh, of the devour that you can get can do so much for a duelist you continue trying to frag and trying to get uh some kills early on as we see this defense that wants to push very aggressively everywhere Already Northwood taking a very aggressive position through A main. The B will be the target. Fortunately, though, Benji is on top of B. Karisu trying to get a bit of intel. Can't spot anyone through the door. Tyler will be good for one. Tyler trades it back. Benji going to go for one more. Magic Beams drops, and it's going to be a monsoon of aggression here towards B, and it will finally be released as Karisu takes down Benji, and the KJ drops. That's the utility gone, and Drakeus will be good for one more. It's just chaos right now on B. One enemy remaining. An absolute mess and only one player remaining as we see on the side of Illinois. What can be done here? Good for one. Bossy Astra, but not able to connect the kill. The crouch messes up with the crouch replacement and does give the round for this defensive team of North with we've seen what this team is capable of doing. And and I like the, the changes that they bring now. This is once again a map where there's some agents that just are simply stronger. So I like to see also Tyler jump it into the Sova and seeing what he can do with it now. He's going to be in a pretty decent spot. This could be potentially a B play. And if they walk through main, he's got that Ares. He's got those darts for for intel. It could be big for Northwood if that does end up becoming the case. But for the time being, it looks to be a five stack towards mid. They'll use the recon dart to scout out. And they're going to propel themselves over towards Cat. And that looks to be the option. And there's going to be a lot of members here. Red situations and the Spectre is doing so much there Down for mid. the Astra. Good for two. The numbers advantage going for the side of Northwood again. In Illinois with two members where the enemy knows exactly what they're going to be located and making sure that no one's going to come behind them. No one's going to take them down too early on. Last but there's not standing. a lot of hope for this one. And yeah, it's going to be Dip getting the arena. One duelist gets the other, and we finalize with the second round. Very much a transition one over anything, and pretty much going as expected for Northwood. Absolutely, without this is the round that counts for Illinois. They have the gun advantage. They will be able to potentially try and gain some footing here in this game on attack. They're gonna. Hopefully get the spike eventually, but regardless, Illinois 2-0 down, looking to use this range advantage, use this gun advantage to gain some footing here in this spike. game on Ascent. Every round counts between these two teams, best of one, and both teams sitting at 2-1 and one here, tied in the group Ooh. stage. Trizu, 10 HP, a sliver of health down here, and it will be Delian moving forward, prancing his way on top of B main, they'll find two kills, both duelists gone there for Northwood, and that makes the defense a whole lot harder. So much harder. They were not expecting this Reyna to be so into that side and able to get two kills. But 10 HP going in for this jet and it's got to be a 
minute of our rotation that we saw now going back to b hoping that there's some more utility as we see all of the killjoy utility towards the east side towards tree so it means that the entrance for b should be a lot easier that information is going to be revealed that rotation now on the defense starting to take place Could be massive. He finds Spike one, can't find two. Lightest trades it back. It's a lot of KJ utility to go through. Here comes Poop and GJ trying to get the spike down. He does. He'll plant the back of sight. Now Northwood in a 2v4. Sentinel and a controller. Not a lot of ways to get onto the site, especially considering what the gun situation is. They will be able to pick up a Vandal for Benji. That's a bit of good news there. Time out. Play these He's gotta play this one so carefully. He takes down Krisu. He's good for one, good for two. Can't find three lightest. Transfers it back, and now it's gonna be a one v two. This is definitely winnable. He can't find the flick, and Delane is gonna be good for the three k. And I mean, great round there for Illinois. And it couldn't come at a better time. A good run for them, like you said, and it, it is difficult. I think. If you are that killed you, you want to play into the B side pretty much every single time. At least throw that utility towards that B side. And it's just one of those predictions that you have to make. You don't know where the enemy will be coming from. You don't know if they're going to be rushing a site or not. But it's just a, a better bet to throw that utility towards B as we see her doing. Uh, or as she, we saw her doing before. And as we see now, this attacking team of Illinois looking towards the uh, mid information at least mid gathering before I am we'll push forward through cat and see if the smoke is dead with this operator it could be massive but he looks the wrong way and magic beans he's got some right now in his pockets he's good for two and already illinois in a 5v3 look at a barrel over towards a the two duel is down this is a catastrophe so far for northwood but they can still make it where they still have a chance they still have a chance into what patient they want to make but that utility makes things a thousand times harder for them as they're trying to get in now they're trying to rotate their damage that they're trying to take as well everyone playing together and rip and know exactly when he looks in, he takes a little bit of damage just to Last down three kills standing. going for match beans down a and this is pretty much the end of the round one less chance tyler the one alive where he is can get a kill the leader and now he's going to try to spot where the last two members are going to be located no the one's his tail but with 50 HP, One things become so much harder. Good for one has to reload, and that causes him to get taken down. No bullets. And with that, this attacking team, they take another round. Great try there from Tyler. Almost comes out of that 1v3 alive. Just didn't have the mag there. And unfortunately, we'll be now 2-2 two two here for Northwood. Had a good burst at the start, Can I get but... This? They fall off slowly here, and now the ultimates start to become a factor, Dryad. We see, you know, Magic Beans has that lockdown, which, you know, like you mentioned, in the agent select can be so, so huge equal. for one of these sites, especially over towards A and B, can really make things happen and allow Delane, or Del yeah, Delane to get onto one of these sites easier. The delay can be so much better. It does get me down, and all oh, that kills you to lay down. Like you mentioned before, where you can get a little bit more value, especially in the defensive side. In the meantime, the Blade Storm is going to be active, it's going to be online for both of the teams in dip. Does get spotted, the turret is going to get shot down by one of their teammates, but the entrance to side has not happened yet. The Outrun though is going to spot, it seems like, this jet for a couple seconds going in the other way. It doesn't matter, still able to connect the kills. Resume. Breaks off from the team, the Lone Wolf here, now everyone is converging on top of the site. The Beast the paints the picture around for Burza, finds the kill. And will be Poop and taking out Dip as well, and that's both Duelists gone, only control here, the Astra Drakeus. The Sheriff to his name, and one bullet, he's got a man in front of he can pick that one up, but there's so many stars. Pulling them in! The like, trying to dissuade, moving forward, Drakeus, there's nothing left to lose, so he'll make his way inside, he's got the Sheriff to his name, that's about it. He'll look for the shots, but he gets barraged with bullets. It's going to be a bulldozing of attack here for Illinois. They pick up their third round in a row. They're looking to really build momentum. The momentum really does everything, especially in a map like this one. This is one of, of the maps that is the most momentum-based over any other one. So 
like I said, it is going to be very, very important what can be done here. Three ultimates for each side. Three ultimates available. A Hunter Spirit more than anything that I'm looking at coming in for both sides to deny the plan, to deny the diffuse. There's so many possibilities, even to get some information early on, even though we see some teams being hesitant about it. it seems like, at least for now, the Hunter Spirit is not going to come out. Massive amount of utility over towards A. That KJ will just be hunkered down on top of that site. No movement for the time being. And they will leave the spike back and dip. Potentially looking for an aggressive play over towards B. Be massive. He takes a rain of bullets and a rain of terror there. All from Poop and GJ. And now in a 5v4, you know, you don't have that jet. You don't have that duelist with you. No way to re get onto one of these sites. It's different for Northwood. If Drake is can maybe find a kill on Magic Beans, we'll spot him out. But that's about it as mid control. Look at the way of Northwood for the time being. The mid control pushing forward for the defensive side, but they're going to face the enemy right on their faces. Oh. Do get taken down right away. Both of the defense that was looking towards mid, they just pushed too aggressively. Now, on this attack team, they have all the initiation to go right in. Northwood doesn't have the numbers, doesn't have the advantage. You have to make the long rotation to make this one work out. See you later end up just saving this one away is too alive not really much you can do in this situation and illinois they've clearly figured something out dry they're playing to their tempo they're playing to their strengths and the rotations are really just what's allowing them to gain so much space in mid yeah. and it allows those rotations to be coming in so flawlessly and for illinois now in a 5v2 they're actually going to be looking to find these players and go for these kills definitely hungry for kills and Illinois, they're looking for the victory in every way possible. It can be a kill, it can be around anything. They are hungry to take it. So looking for it is the best chance, but they're not even close. Getting a little bit closer to this kill, Drake. And definitely predict that she's hell, but no one's going to risk their lives too much. Or at least they're going to do it together. Has the right idea, but doesn't really get the kill. So yeah, two rifles that instead of Northwood, they are able to keep us. Now it is four in a row that we see going for Illinois. It'll be a pretty awkward buy here going the way of Northwood. We got a Judge, a Guardian, a couple Vandals here, and Drake is probably just a Guardian as well. So there we go. Two Guardians here for Northwood, really trying to keep their distance from Illinois this game. Uh, unless your name is Dip, he's got that Judge potentially. Actually, just back over, going to the Marshall. So yeah, clearly Northwood want to play back. They don't want to be aggressed on, and... Uh, dip, you know, after that death towards B main, obviously he's readjusting, he's readapting, he doesn't want to play as aggressively forward. Now goes through mid though instead, takes down Magic Beans with that Marshall doing wonders. Firza trying to back him up as well, but Northwood playing a very aggressive angle towards main and Tyler. Friendly fire right now in his own teammate. The damage there, not the best thing to happen, but. The numbers are not too bad for any of the teams. There's about a minute remaining. The, the, the attacking team is still stands a chance to get that spike planted. And just gotta get close. So you left it on the floor in the meantime after one of them. Down. The drone is going to get spotted, but that location for the jet will get spotted too. Playing to the street. And another a little bit of information. Anything is going to be beneficial for this team that's sure that is heard on the other side though. Soon. Potentially, we'll look to brawl here with Drakius over towards CT. So, we turn the corner, take his shots, and dash into the wall. But it doesn't matter. Drakius drops. Tyler right there with him, though. It's a good transfer there for Northwood. Now, a 3v2 opportunity. 20 seconds to go, and Ruben GJ will have this site all to himself for the time being. We'll get the plant down. So, it's good money for Illinois, but. In a 2v3, definitely a difficult task, but if anyone can do it, it is these two players in Illinois. They have the divide as well, along with Hunter Spirit, to play for a post-plant scenario, and it looks like they're going to do just that. But he is spotted. Now the Astra lying in wait, waiting for the time to shine. He will spot the Soma out of the smoke. Tyler, though, crucially, wins that 1v1. Now Lightus, he's got to make a move. He's got to make his way out of the site. There's the Hunter Spirit, but he's just going to be taken down split from the wall. No release. The turret's there. Everything in the kitchen sink being used. And Benji gonna be good for one there lightest drops just not much you can do with a 3v1 like that yeah there's really not much that you can do especially even to use the hunter's fury it is such a risky positioning and you can even go back just looking at 
see the architecture of the map itself and makes it so difficult to connect the hunter's fury so it's not even the case has to cancel and still get the stake down running out of time more than anything but northwood being able to get away with that round to keep things close and this is what i wanted to see at first half where it just it continues to go back and forth no one knows what's going to take the advantage towards the end and even a potential leading us to a 6 6 to go into the second half. In this game, I mean, deserves to be close. Both these two teams sitting at 2 and 1 in the group. This game so crucial for both of these squads to try and make it out of the group stage. Let's see if they can do that. CENC Midwest Invitational here trying to just that is Illinois pushing on the attack here, but Ferbs and Wine, Drakius, a great position here in the smoke, but. He pushes out only a person who was named. Can't really get much done. Another smoke will be on top of it. Now Carisu, does he have any sort of idea? First is going to for one. Latest drops already. The Sova gone. Tyler takes down Magic Beans. Drakeus in a great position. Will spot the headpiece of the lane. He'll take one. Carisu in a position there. Finds the spray, but it's really just so, so difficult now for Illinois in this safe position. And that drone will spot out moving DJ, and it's all but over here. Tyler takes aim and takes fire with a free kick. Nice one going there for Tyler. I definitely like seeing him much more on the Sova rather than the race that we saw earlier on. He is just doing so much more for the team, getting that information actively and doing a little bit more of what is required to take a victory like this one. There's so much at stake again and everyone hungry for a victory like this one for a map where there's only one chance to take it all. So it's a four to four that we have right now and it's a full buy for both of the teams. This should be a good one. Should be a good one indeed. We'll see if... Northwood end up opting in for this lockdown and divide Illinois. Fight drop. The same thing. Have that divide, have that lockdown to get onto one of these sites. So let's see if Illinois decide to play this one more quickly, but for the time being, the spike is back over towards Magic Beans, and they're content with just burning some of this utility off Northwood and making them wait for the right engagement. Illinois prowling and biding their time. You're gonna see Kalisu take space mid and look for a play towards market. Here. This time around for the defense, no one is peeking, no one's playing too aggressive. They're just going to wait for the attacking team to push them first, at least for the first couple seconds that we have. Enemy now, kill. less than a minute remaining, Dip able to connect that just in time. An immediate reaction for this player, Looking for this jet vision. to make it happen, to make the numbers go your way. Now, Nerf would have what it takes, but a 4-4 four to four as the Astra does get taken down. Parisu, big frag there, but they're walking away from the Asian utility. I wonder if the divide's gonna come out. Yes, it does. Two ultimate teams here in Northwood. Do they counter with their own lockdown? That's the question. Five seconds remaining here. Magic Beans continuing to press forward, waiting to see if someone goes out on the divide. He actually gets spotted as well. He'll be in the new Do they check the backup site? That's the question. Magic Beans spots out Benji right between the eyes and takes off his beanie there, and it's gonna be easy right now for Illinois to make it Actually, Tyler, does he have something to say about this? Firmza as well on the rear. Looking to get things done, but the health bars aren't there, Dryad. The utility isn't there as well. It's going to be so difficult. They have to use these leers from Firmza to get onto the site. The leers are the only cans, but they get taken out immediately. And the kills can be connected with that they wanted to win. Good for one. But on the other side of the boss, and just going in together. That is a way that they took the victory for this one. The Lear created a distraction. And then we see the Reyna getting one right behind the box. There. Barely able to see a pixel of the head, but that is all that they needed. And that is the fifth round that goes for North, but very, very nicely done. Wow. Northwood really. BYB I mean, that was going to looking them like an Illinois Dragon round, but like you like... said, they push together, they use those leers, and Ferbs, uh, once he finds that kill over towards the Triple Boxes area, it's just easy pickings for Northwood, and they win their fifth round here and still have that lockdown. They still have that divide. Remember, they didn't even use Benji's lockdown. He ended up just dying in the back of sight, so they have a plethora of options here, Dryad, on this defensive fight. side to hold off Illinois. A lot of options to work with, and the information immediately denied the operator to start it up, and they want to peek it again. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Immediately backing up, the hunter's fearing on the other side. Gave some information, gets that kill too, and it is on fire. 
what we can see for Nerf within every single play on this round has been exactly what you needed to be. Good for one more Northwood doing everything right here in this round, but finally one enemy remaining. Have some kills. He's immediately Ace. taken now by Drakeus Benji. Good for the last. It's gonna be a team ace here for Northwood. Everyone getting involved and making this one real easy for him. Six to four here at the end of ten. Dip still with this operator, still a thorn in Illinois side. This is one of those matches where everyone is just extremely even. It's just a matter of that decision making for a couple seconds to guarantee who is going to take it. We look at the kills, and that is already a massive difference, right? All the other matches that we had today, there's, there's just one or two players that were popping off. They are, that are they, where they are doing a little bit more than the rest. But this one is just looking very even everywhere you look at, it, and it is so nice to see. That is why Northwood the started in a disadvantage they started getting rounds after they started finding their footing and now it is up to illinois to do just the same thing we'll see if they can do just that and in this timeout clearly have to be discussing what's going wrong here because you know there were moments in this first half where illinois looked to be running away with things and creating a sort of snowball but every which way north would have found counters and found advantages on ascent and but this time out right? I mean, you have to assume they're, they're talking about, you know, how to maintain, compose, and bring this to a 6-6, and then what to do after that going into the next half. Yeah, it is one thing that builds to the other in order to take that victory. But for Illinois, a small disadvantage so far, not too bad. Definitely possible here. It's just a decision-making when in terms of the economy. I can do a little bit more for them, and that is what we're hoping for. The awful that utility... But to stop and do a fast push, at least for this jet that was aiming towards, peeking towards air, immediately gets denied. But everyone on this attacking team spread across all the maps, spread across just to get some information. And this is nice to see from them. Illinois taking their time here with this push. They have the Empress available for delay, and that's the question of if he can get onto one of these sites and potentially get things done here but only one player over towards b but fortunately they have the lockdown so that's kind of why northwood are, are stacking towards a because they understand that if you know a push comes over towards b the lockdown can be used and they can just retake the site with ease so very smart here from northwood putting their eggs in both baskets and now Carisu gonna be spotted with that kg utility and that's a good bit of intel going the way of northwood they know someone is at least lurking up towards mid they're taking a lot of time to push immediately backing up after that information was given towards mid and what that is going to be 30, 30 seconds, seconds and left. there's no time to rotate this time around it's gotta be b and luckily for them there's no one in that area everyone else in the distance for nerf but they thought it was going to be an a push and now they're going to take longer to make that rotation the door is going to try to get closed it should be closed pretty comfortably as there's only 10 seconds remaining and the kills start to come up for never illinois Magic Beans actually pushed Spike out and found two it. kills. Great play to him, and now Furbza will transfer it back. He finds one. Furbza pops the Empress. This is his moment to shine here for Northwood. Trying to make something happen. There's the KG ultimate as well. Everything being used. Recon out will reveal Furbza. For the time being, he will be snuffed out. He's going to work around the corner. He actually reloaded during that time. Almost gets taken down. It's going to be tipped. Good for one. Here comes Furza. Out of the smoke. He'll be taken that down. Good for DJ's. Good for one. Here comes the kills flooding onto the site. It will be Illinois as the debris settles, winning their fifth round. Last round this is exactly in the what I expected from them, too. I expected this first half to be extremely close. After we saw the first one or two rounds, it was already an indication of what the six wear for them and how they're Boy, getting the person that they have for this match is a 65 it can be a 66 nonetheless it's extremely close probably one of the closest ones uh that we can have but we have to see and just look at what's left it's, it's going to be the Placing the lockdown more than anything that can create a lot of space for pushing the enemy to go somewhere else absolutely and now better to play with Tyler here, but Risu takes his head off and gives him a good haircut there, and now 5v4 once again for Illinois. They put themselves in these situations time and time again. They find an early frag, and they play methodically dry, and it allows the rotations to come in seamlessly. Everyone in the defense still 
watching out, not pushing, not making any mistakes just yet as they're trying to get some information. And it seems like at least towards the B, they're hungry to get that information. They're going to be pushing and potentially spotting one of these attacks. <laughs> Drops. More magic beans inserts himself on top of A, and now the spike will be planted. No doubt about that. Lightest will be the one to do it. The door will close. Potentially, the door closes on Northwood's opportunity to win this round in a 4v2 with the lockdown available as well. Dryad, so many tools here for Illinois to use. They can use that lockdown as well, even if Dip gets a pick here with this operator. So much room to play with. But can he find the op shots? Can he work around this? Benji is going to be spotted as well. And now Dip you thinks should one's run. under hell. Thinks they're everywhere here. And there's going to be the lockdown being Lacing used. And now it makes things grenade, so bro. difficult for Northwood getting onto the site. Benji is going to look to play linebacker. He's going to play keep away. He's good for one. He's good for two. He can't find three. But Dip, he's just going to stick to the views. He can't. The KJ ultimate's there. Oh, man. So unfortunate. Magic Beans. Uh. Plays it so well, and he'll shank dip at the end of it all. Six to six to round this out. Wouldn't have won it any other way, Dragon. Switching Both sides. So neck and neck. It is so close. Six to six. Magic Fiends was doing so much in that round. Not only getting the kills, but knowing exactly when to use the lockdown. Not too early, not too late. And guaranteeing that the defense, they had nothing to do. Even if they tried pushing long, it was so many different angles that they have to get. They had to get the kills from and that was just not possible so a 66 really showcasing how close these two teams are in in terms of skill and the potential that we have now into the second half and a and i want to say this is also one of the best maps to be to have a 66 score right because it is map that can be both attacker and defensive side Forces way inside along with the rest of the team here of North of a crazy. It's gonna be good for one on top of dip. Is traded back and is a start. Lofts over towards the site. Northwood getting a ton of ground here. And actually forcing back Illinois for the time being, but they're still confident. Still ready with these shots. Have a 3v3 scenario here for Northwood as they go for the plant. We'll look for what goes plant here. The pose is the only chance, but because so many kills happen early on, we saw four members of both of the teams already getting taken down. So a 3v3 is the only chance that we have here playing towards hell. Can be spotted, can be shot from heaven. And the situation just gets harder and harder to deal with. But it is the Asher, of course, that makes it look easy. Only a kill to remaining. Magic Beans, he was able to be highlighted before. Can he do it again? Not a lot of HP to work with. And completely surrounded. Nowhere to go. And Tyler will end up with the suffering once again. A 7 to 6 in Northwood. Once again, they get that pistol round. Magic Beans doesn't have any more of that magic in that pistol round, but still. Very, very close, and you know, we've seen even in that last half, Northwood got those first two rounds, and it didn't matter. It wasn't even a factor. Illinois bursted back and scored four times in a row, and now put themselves here in a 7 6 deficit, but still plenty of time here in this game to look for a bit of a save here. Looking for some marshals and sheriffs, and will play aggressively towards A, trying to guess right, but they don't, and it will be a mid push here for Northwood. All the control in the world for them as Drakius gets a pick as well. Sight. Very nice pick to start off this round. A round that can be pretty much just transitory for this attacking team as they have the specters, they have the space, and they're going to be planting the spike towards B to have everything they could need. And in the meantime, Illinois trying to catch up, trying to all be together before going in and hoping to get one or two picks. It's going to have to be for once again with these leers and gaining some entry. Onto this site, but every angle is how it's surrounded. Dip is gonna be good for one. one Continues the spray, he's good for two. Firms and Benji backing up his teammate, and right now with his all Northwood galloping onto the site with ease. It's a flawless here. They're gonna go up eight to six right now. Confidence oozing through their veins, Triad. What a round. One or two picks, but they can't even get that. It is the flawless coming in for the side of Northwood and a good way to start it off. But this is, this round three is where the trouble started for them into that first half. This is where they started losing. They couldn't win that third round with the Spectres. The rifles were just better and they couldn't get their pace back up after some other time. But now I want to see how they change 
things up, especially as they are attacking. They want to take these goals up close and personal, having those specters and guaranteeing that they can happen very early on for them. I learned that Owl Drone will spot one over towards Garden. That would be the ghost signal to move on to the site. Benji not here for this push, so it's be a four on four here, as both KJs are not even close towards the site. And right now, Ferb's a Getting harassed here, spray down the bullets. He's got to be careful. The plant will come in and will ensue. Potential post plan here for Illinois. A must win situation. And right now, the corners, the angles are so close. Dip is going to be revealed. His location is spotted. But right now, no push going to come through from heaven. He'll wait and move in under hell now. Eight to six here for Northwood. So much control over the site. They're waiting for the piece to come through here. He's getting swarmed and harassed by so many members of Illinois. And now, Dip, his location is known as well. Ben, he's going to for one. The frag coming in from Northwest. But can they find more? Hoop and GJ is getting so much film with disaster. The look for the red. Oh, he's not dead. Comes in from Benji. He can't find it. No, a 1v2 here for Dip. He's got the 3k. He's got no HP. Cow. The sick comes in. The updraft of parachute up top. From the top rope, he slips his way down. And Dip is good for four. Northwest. Wow, Northwood 9 to 6. Oh, my oh. word. And four kills that Dip was able to get. That is absolutely insane. What a player that he is for the team. The performance that he has on this jet, it just makes sense. It just puts his team on top over and over again in 9 to 6. A round that Illinois was supposed to get past those rifles, but now it cannot have them. They lost them completely, and it's got to be a safe for them. Really perfect scenario more than anything for Northwood, just to continue getting more, just to get those double digits in this round. Away on top of the smoke, he's got to be careful. He's work his way out, but he's spotted by that KJ turret. Takes one more shot, but takes a good bit of chip damage for his troubles. And now, nine to six here. A couple of ultimates here from both sides, but regardless, another easy push towards me. Do they spot the KJ in the back of sight? That's the question. Oh, and everybody sees it's gonna be Magic Beans getting one kill, but everyone all across the side makes things so much more difficult. The spike is going to get planted. Spike planted. But the defense is slowly pushing in, looking pretty way. comfortable to get something done. As one of them is to switch the other one, but that Blade Storm that Dib had was able to get from the last round after the 4K. It can do something. You just have to wait for the defense to take the first move. One enemy Massive remaining. Tyler gets so much information. And they spray through two Out and dip. Me. Easy shot there. Finds the tagger on to lane. Now 10 to 6 here at Northwood. Ascending up the mountain so far, Dryad. In the second half of play. Haven't lost yet. Four rounds in a row. This is totally different from the first half. As now, after those first two rounds, they play that bonus phenomenally. And they put themselves in a great spot going into this next round. Here. The thing is that if you are Illinois, what can you do, right? You have used so many possibilities, you use so many resources that have been wasted. It puts your team at right in so much more pressure for the, the upcoming Boy, rounds. The costume device that is going to be available just to create space to bring that distraction that they need, but that is not going to be enough. What they need right now is going to be fixed. The Emperor is going to try to clear into that one. Inside of wine it is taken down instantaneously along with the lockdown being used. Northwood primed and ready to look for this A site. Nobody seems to be close towards me. There's Hunter's Fury being used, and that's everything now in the kitchen sink for Northwood committing towards this push as heaven being barraged here with darts. Now Northwood's trying to get the plant down as well. Firmsa gonna be good for one more. He's getting a ton of chip damage on him. He's gotta be careful. The plant will go down eventually. Tyler is gonna be good for one more. Firmsa dismissing and tipping his way out of every single situation he puts himself in. He's so slippery, so slithery. It's now Northwood in a 5v2 advantage or just in complete control on the last player standing. And only one more member alive popping, <laughs> having hope. To get something done here, good for one. Dip does get taken down, but with that location, 
it just gets so much harder. They were about to surround him anyways. And that means that it is going to be the 11th round for Northwood. This second half has been all about them. All about them controlling the site. All about them getting killed. All about them being dominant and staying dominant in that position. To the point where Illinois, they have to either get a timeout as soon as possible. Or just go into the save round. Take the save round the best right way there. possible for what is to come next. Called them northwest before, but clearly they're heading west. They're looking for gold right now. They are clearly yep. in control of this game. 11 to 6 right now, and everything going their way. All the shots are falling, and this Astro Divide available as well. It's another opportunity, another pathway Northwood can look towards to get on a winning cycle. And if he dies, it can be major. Feeling safe. Oh, and there it is. The jet does get taken down. The utility going to stop everyone from taking Mark just for a couple of seconds. But everyone, you see the desperation coming in for the defense. They are pushing in. They're making they're going to be fine to be taken down. They're getting no value out of their movement. That's no one so far for Northwood has been taken down. And that is a 3k for a dip. He's hungry for more. He can get more. The Astro is too close, but the cross here so far, it doesn't matter. He makes it look easy. An immediate reaction again with 4 HP remaining. That is all that he needs for a clutch like that one. A flawless like that one for Northwood. And at 12 to 6, this is a match, match point. point. You know, credit to Dip. That's one of those kills. You know, when things are going your way, it's just going your way. And that's one of those shots where Dip finds that kill and just makes everything so seamless for Northwood and right now I mean everyone contributing right now Drakeus with Russell Westbrook numbers is putting up a triple double right now for us giving us 12 12 and 12 great scoreline for him but didn't even have to use that Astro if I dip can go towards B and potentially get that orb for the daggers and with the aggressiveness he's been playing at already I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for an aggressive play with those daggers as well as right now another mid push Right, and this has worked so well for Northwood every single time. Yeah, every single time is just all about the confidence team at this point and what can be done with it. The trade, yeah, it is going to connect right on. The numbers advantage will not be going for the set of Illinois. This is just not something Northwood wants to allow. So the trade is doing so much as everyone on this attacking team is aiming towards that B side. The defense, they don't know if when to rotate your is mid, but it makes it look easy. The flank gets denied. Magic Beans get taken down. The leader to make sure that no one is going to be peeking from market. Delian a little hungry for kills. Good for one, but a little bit more is going to be needed as the Empress is going to come out. But not knowing that the enemy team is going the complete opposite side to the make it three for popping, changing the story here. But it seems like it could have been the last round, but it could have been the victory round for Northwood. Turns out to be denied just by that patience that the Astra was able to use there. Astro Duel. I should play some Astro in this right reality. now. Delane not having the greatest of games, not really able to find some of these kills. So. He's got to step up, and he does just that right there. 18, 15, and 6 there on this Astro. Really, towards the end of that round, trying to make things happen. Gets that 3K and saves this game for Illinois. Remember, both these teams sitting at 2-1 and one in this group, so so pivotal. Now, if you do end up winning this game, you knock your opponent out. So now, for Dip with this Operator, if he's able to find a pick towards Cat, it could be massive. Could open up the space, but right now, Northwood not going back towards mid. They understand that last round kind of confirms that potentially it's not really the greatest thing to go to anymore, and they'll look to play this one a lot more slower and methodically, because they do have two ultimates to use as well. No more mistakes for Northwood. At least that's what they're trying to do, and is a good way to start it off. The jet for the defense being a little too much and does get taken down, so that means... On the other side, I'm talking about those ultimates. Is it going to be that Blade Storm coming in, trying to get some kills? And we already know what this jet or dip can do. We've seen so many highlights 4Ks, 3Ks, all over the place, all over this it? match alone. Just because of how well he's able to perform and jumping right into side and gets a first kill. The Reyna does get taken down. The operator is going to be. Ready on side to use whenever as a cosmic divide makes that visibility so much harder for this retake and there's only two members alive for Illinois. Oh, that's so difficult to push through the divide. Luckily though it does 
dissipate. So now it's been a little bit easier here. Magic Bean's good for one. He's straight back. Firms of drops. Last one standing here. It's the main man of the storm squad. He's in a 1v4. It's a daunting task. It's an impossible task. And Northwood win 13 to 7 after a bit of a scare. They come out on top. And now, 3 to 1 in this group stage, putting themselves in a really good spot. And congrats to Northwood once again. We cast them again and they get another dub. Yeah, and really nice to see them getting that victory and changing that, that pace into that second half. It seems like we we switched things around, right? The first and all the most of the rounds that we saw, most of the matches that we saw today, it was a very uneven beginning, uneven first half, and then a very uh, we see how that changes into the second half. But this time around, it was extremely close first half and then into the second it was all about northwood and what they were able to do how much of an advantage they took and i think part of it has to be dip he was doing an insane job with that jet not only just going in and creating that space for the team but the kills that he was able to get it just seemed like it was unfair to the enemy yeah absolutely and that concludes you know the cenc midwest group stages here for us and Six matches of, you know, pure entertainment, to say the least. Some of them were closer than others, but, you know, it was definitely all good Valorant teams, to say the least. And, you know, definitely going to be a toss-up for those other teams in that other group to see who comes out on top. I'm interested to see how uh, those bracket stages play out. It's going to be best of three tomorrow, guys, just to keep everyone posted at home. So tomorrow, uh, me and Dryd will go back at it here. More Valorant action. I'm excited to say the least. No interview uh, for this last game. So we're just going to be tuning off right here uh, at Caster Camel here and uh, at Dan Dryad as well. We've had a blast casting here. And uh, thank you to KTAD in the back for pushing buttons and our observer as well. Let me get your name. Hold on. I didn't look at your name. Wait. I'm sorry. Wait. <laughs> Cool Scoots, I love you, man. Don't worry. I'm sorry. Okay, Cool Scoots, thank you guys so much for being involved with us and uh, involved with us, and thank you for helping out in the stream and everyone in chat. Thanks for being here. Uh, but regardless, Dread, if you have nothing else to say, that can just do it. Yeah, we're ready to go. We're just ready for tomorrow. So, all right. Well, that's gonna be it. Everyone, have a great rest of your night.
Sports National Competition Midwest Region and Southeast Invitational. We just got done completing both uh, regions here for Valorant, and I just want to update you all on exactly what the standings are. So coming out of the Midwest Valorant, we have Pool A is going to be Ball State coming in first in that pool, and the Buckeyes coming in second. Over to Pool B, we're going to have IU, Illinois Illo University, in the first place slot, coming out with that upset over Northwood University, who got out of that pool, but they finished second. Over to the Southeast, Pool A, first place was Clemson Esports. Great job to them. Second place in Pool A was USF, University of South Florida. They will advance to bracket play tomorrow. For Pool B in the Southeast, there was both the UCF teams, have come out, and I believe, I think they did that also at our LAN event as well. Very quality college there, UCF. Knights in first and UCF Academy in second, um, which is fantastic stuff. Valorant just concluded as we'll have the finals tomorrow. Twitch.tv right here, twitch.tv slash esportsu. At the same time, 10 a.m. is when that starts. Um, and right now, we're going to switch it over, though, as we head on over to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, one of my favorites, if I have to say. Uh, there's going to be some exciting stuff as we have some fantastic casters for you. Coming up, if you are watching the Midwest Super Smash Bros., it's going to be Max Ketchum and Lyric of Wisdom. Over, if you're watching the Southeast, you're going to enjoy some Psy and Killer Miles. So without further ado, get ready for some Super Smash Bros. action right here at the Collegiate Esports National Competition. Over to the casters. <laughs> what is up everybody we're still getting some technical difficulties uh fixed out here um but i'm lyric joined here by max uh we here today are to bring you one of the two smash scenes uh smash streams for that uh for our crew battles today i love the college scene personally so i'm really excited to see some good old-fashioned crew battles i know max is also pretty familiar with crew battles in the uh, I know Max is pretty familiar with uh, crew battles as well, so I'm excited to see where exactly we are going to be able to kind of go with everybody from there as well. So once again, we are still getting some things kind of wrapped up on the backside here before we kind of bring it all back. So uh, I am Lyric. I'm going to be joined by Max as soon as possible, and then we're going to go on ahead and get started in production. If you could just like ring in my ear if my mic is okay, just want to make sure that I'm good too. Um, cool. All right. So yeah, once again, and uh, once again, we are going to be still bringing in everybody in, and we are super excited to see some Smash Ultimate today. Once again, you are on the first stream, so uh, twitch.tv slash esportsu. There is a second team, uh, there, there's a second stream, twitch.tv slash esportsu2 as well. So once again, we are just going to uh, fix up some things on the backside, and then we will be jumping right into the Smash action that we all know and we all love. So yeah, excited for it. Yeah, so we're gonna take a quick break just to make sure that um, all of our mics are good and we'll see you back here in just a couple minutes.
All right, folks, we are back. Um, after God knows how many tries, I, oh, <laughs> it appears my camera is frozen. <laughs> All right. Well, my expression that's frozen on your screen pretty much sums up my feelings about uh, what's going down. Not about the matches, though, just about the technical difficulties. So I hope you enjoy the still shot, but of course the games will be moving right along very quickly. Um, guys, just as a brief introduction to the event, we have a round robin collegiate 5v5 smash teams bracket. So um, if you guys have never tuned in before, these often get really hype. Uh, players yes. love to support their teammates, support their school, you know, showing school spirit in Smash Brothers, something that you probably never would have imagined 10 years ago, but now it's definitely like a, a real part of the environment here for everybody. So, Lyric, uh, we finally get to sit down and cast together after what, <laughs> I know. Like seven years of knowing each other. Yeah, it's very true. Honestly, Honestly I feel I like, like I've like dropped casting when you were like casting everything, and now we finally have a chance in this really weird, weird remote, remote world, world now, now because, because let's face it, we are going back into the Wi Fi era just like a little bit uh, um, to so finally just, just sit down and cast together. together. So, I'm really excited for this one. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a good time. And um, we have some familiar players here as well. I mean, mostly on the MSU squad, they are loaded up with players that regularly attend offline and I guess online events as well. But, you know, mainstream smash tourneys, so to speak. All righty, and we are going to be working on getting the arena, but some of the most popular players you may be seeing during this exact time is actually going to be two players that actually just won Max's tournament a couple of weeks ago in LNBM, specifically in the doubles category of Hawk and Linus, or what, Linus and Lucy. Um, two of my personal favorites. I know some people absolutely hate playing against them in doubles, but they are absolutely hype. As for years, um, a tournament called Showdown Battle Royale at the end of 2016, I want to say. It might have been the end of 2017. Um, but it was a Smash 4 tournament up in Michigan uh, is where I first saw these guys. And they mopped the floor with so many top teams <laughs> playing all heavies. They played like Ike and Bowser. Yep. Now they've also added some more characters to their roster. But Linus and Hawk have long been one of the best teams in doubles, period. But they're also very mm -hmm. strong in doubles. I watched, I believe it was Hawk clutch out a crew battle for his school just a few months ago, maybe uh, like mid-2021. So these mm -hmm. guys, they're they're definitely bringing the ruckus, but they've also got players like Daybreak and Dester yes. and Okoru on their team. So honestly, MSU has long been the strongest team in the Midwest in collegiate, and I think they're going to continue to show that today. I would love to see somebody take them out, though, and just put themselves on the map as a contender for that spot. It's definitely true. The thing is about Smash Ultimate, especially in a collegiate kind of environment still, is that there are players still coming in that absolutely know their fundamentals and they just haven't been to an offline tournament yet. We saw that a lot when we came back from Wi-Fi era with a lot of Wi-Fi warriors, quote, quote, coming offline. And I think college scenes are actually a great pipeline into the Smash Bros community as well, because you're able to find all these people, then you're actually able to travel together. It's one of my favorite things about playing a Smash, especially in college. I know Stony Brook University, where I went to for a semester, had an amazing scene. So I'm really excited to see all these collegiate players. I do not sleep on anybody, especially in a collegiate scene. You got yourself. Max, your camera's working again. I see I that. Refreshed. Let's yeah. go. There we go. Um, so as soon as we get this arena up, let's go on ahead and move it on over into the game, which is going to happen right now. All right. It looks like we have Hawk, a.k.a. Lucy, stepping up to the plate for MSU first. And then Northwood on the other side, it's going to be Higgs with Jigglypuff. My man Higglypuff out here. Um, <laughs> and wow, how cute. Hawk and Linus, they share a switch, of course, being the same brothers. So they're they playing from the same house. Do you think it was mom, mom it's my turn on the switch type deal? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like uh, either of them are just so comfortable with like knowing who should go in first or like which matches each of them wants to tackle. So by the way, worth pointing out, Hawk, uh, normally, he plays Ike in teams, and sometimes um, the Rob will come out, but it looks like this is his new character for singles, and I can't blame him. Ike is very strong, but Rob, character is a mess. Yeah, Ike is a little less reliant on singles as I'd like to think than Rob is. Rob, of course, with the boosters and the gas that you have, that you can recover from practically anywhere. 
Ike is pretty lean, linear. You either go straight to the side or you go straight up and down. So this is a really nice pick for Lucy, especially. I'm I'm enjoying it a lot. This is the up smash, unfortunately. The neutral between both players has been pretty good so far. Hex is doing a pretty good job not getting hit by any of the good Rob cheese. So let's keep going. Yeah, Higgs was uh, definitely getting kind of clobbered at the beginning of this match, but Hawk has since taken quite a bit of damage since. And I don't know, I mean, it is Jigglypuff, right? Any good hit is going to knock Higgs out of there. But we could see maybe some kind of offstage scenario. Puff really one of the only characters who actually has the juice to edge guard Rob. Yeah, for sure. Still, no stocks taken yet so far. Once again, this is a crew battle, so you want to get as far up as possible. Great neutral get up by Higgs, though. Higgs not falling for any of the typical, you know, Rob Gyro cheese, where, you know, Gyro can sometimes launch you into a Rob up smash, maybe even Rob back air. So far, things are looking pretty good, but that Rob Nair, if you hang out on that ledge for too long, is definitely going to snatch it up. Next, there goes that first stock for NW. It's crazy seeing a landing neutral air actually hit over the ledge like that. <laughs> and true. we've got Higgs and Northwood down one stock here. Like you said, Lyric, in the crew battle format, it's all about preserving your stocks, right? So each player here wants to make the biggest sweep that they possibly can just to continue the momentum, maybe take some ne uh, stocks off of the next player as well. Yeah, for sure. Looking good, 73. Gyro tap tosses have been going well so far. Unfortunately, two of the Zombears did miss. Two down tilts, unfortunately, not going out with a down smash. But once again, Hawk doing a really good job, or Linus, whichever one they're playing, it's Lucy right now, uh, doing a really good job of just keeping their first stock up there. Definitely going to take that stock. All right, up two already. MSU off to a great start here. And again, we have come to expect greatness from the school. They've been perennially very strong, even coming from Smash 4, even in Melee. These uh, <laughs> players have had really good results. So we'll see. Can Big Higgs do what he's got to do to take a stock off here, at least stop the bleeding just a little bit for his team? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely rough to go in first. There's a lot of pressure. You really do kind of set up how the crew battle is going to go, and especially if you're going to be a whole per whole player down at this start with three stocks left to go, it's definitely not going to be pretty. Lucy, unfortunately, not going to be able to take the stock yet with the Rob up air. Goes for the back air, though. Can't find anything. Honestly, one Jigglypuff back air, too, may actually do the trick as well. Yeah, Puff has a lot of good ways to kill you if you're in the air and if, if she's there with you. So we'll see. Maybe enough pressure can come uh, Hawk's way here, but I don't know. Puff is also incredibly frail, so we can see a lot of Rob's moves take it out right now. Okay, there we go. It's going to be a back here <laughs> to the face. Yeah, and with grab, unfortunate. Uh, Lucy looking for one of those Rob gyro toss kills. Not going to be able to find it, though. I like the way that Higgs, like, Pushed themselves forward twice with forward air, brought them back into the center of the stage. But here you are stuck on the ledge once again. Yeah, I, if I were if I were Higgs, I'd want to stay in the center of the stage. I wouldn't want to give Rob an opportunity to get something. Right, we see a lot of ledge play here. I mean, Puff, decent planking game. She can kind of stall out there and be unpredictable with her ledge grab timings and stuff. But you need way more than just patience off stage at this point. You need to just find one cheesy kill. Down air to rest is pretty much the win condition for Higgs here. Even though he wouldn't win the game <laughs> off of it, he would at least be able to reduce the lead that MSU is going to find. But no, it's looking like they're going up two stocks here. MSU, strongest team potentially in the whole tournament, at least based on what we know. But yeah. the most fun part of this is that we could see someone rise to the occasion, take them out, or, you know, maybe rival them with an undefeated record. Yeah, for sure. Once again, I, I really like the Rob pick from Lucy. Uh, it's working out really well. The Puff, to send Puff in first is definitely a statement. Um, may not be the strongest character in the meta, so I really want to see who's going to go up next for Northwood. Because once again, you know, you got four other players to go through. So I want to see, especially characters. Uh, but so far, a really good start for Lucy and, of course, the, the good team out of Michigan. So there's one other well-known Michigan player on the uh, the roster here, but not for MSU. It's actually for Northwood, and that would be Seth Sational, oh, who okay. has uh, pretty impressive tournament results across Smash 4 and this game as well with Captain Falcon. And I think he's been playing a little bit of Sephiroth. Um, I, I've seen he's changed his tag to Seth Sational on Twitter before. So one. not sure if that's going to come out. Not sure if they're even going to field Seth just yet because um, just, you know, in terms of notoriety in the Smash community, he is who I would guess to be their anchor. But they've also got Rage Link, Woods, Goon, and Underdog, who is the coach. Not sure if they'll be playing, but 
Um, yeah, I am very curious to see who comes out next. I mean, Linus, Hawk, Daybreak, Dilster, these are all players who have so hard. sensational <laughs> repeatedly in Michigan Smash tournaments. Yeah, this is also a really hard crew to go up against, especially first. Uh, once again, all four of those players are outstanding players. And I think Seth can actually do it. I think I played Seth at uh, Smash and Splash 5 a couple of years ago. Um, and they definitely played Shulk versus me. But I know they're a Captain Falcon main. Um, Sephiroth is such a weird character because I feel like everyone's hype for Sephiroth. I feel like everybody in their head knows how good Sephiroth is. And yet there's really only one that's running wild in North America. And that's Ned really doing the things that Sephiroth should be doing. So... I want to see another Sephiroth rise up to the occasion. I know a lot of people have Seph in the pocket, but it's got to come out to, to shine just a little bit. Yeah, he's one of those big question mark characters where it looks like he's got all the makings of a broken character, but, you know, it's just a little bit hard to deliver on that in tournaments, being light and tall and maybe having kind of a weird matchup spread where smaller characters just are really difficult for him to deal with. A lot of the good characters are small as well. Um, I don't know. Sephiroth should be broken. I kind of I should feel be. you on that, you know, <laughs> but uh, we need more than Ned to step up to the plate. We'll see if Seth Stational is going to do that. But you know what? I feel like in a crew battle, Sephiroth really can shine because yeah. as long as you win the first match that you're part of, if you've lost any stocks, you're going to come in with the wing at an earlier percent and Very true. potentially cause some, some mayhem. Yeah, for sure. Definitely the character and the player I would think would go out next, especially, I think, to kind of stop the bleeding. I think already if you're already down two stocks it's going to be a little rough especially with you know the lineup of people that are coming in after linus too so it's going to be going to be definitely interesting but let's see who exactly they are going to bring in uh we did have a spreadsheet sent over to us from another caster with all of the players on it too so um shout out to kill miles for that one because super big homie for it yeah Yo, facts. Thank you, Killa Miles, honestly helping us a lot with this little info dump that you provided us. And I agree, Lyric, that sending in Seth might be the play right here. I mean, or whoever their strongest player is, right? Like someone on this roster might actually be a sleeper yeah, that stronger. consistently, you know, whoops Seth in team practice. <laughs> um, but there's there's competing philosophies on how you want to structure your team order in a crew battle. Like obviously you can respond it with a counter pick every time after the first player. So um do you send somebody in very strong to like you said stop the bleeding or do you kind of just chip away at the bigger threats with your weaker players and then save the big guns for last there's no true right answer different um ideas and different setups will work for different teams and different matchups but right now all i know is that hawk aka lucy is out here doing big things with a big <laughs> boy true. rob and yep. someone's got to put a stop to it it's true. It's definitely, once again, Rob is one of those characters. Um, I don't want to say that Zombo really put Rob on the map. Uh, he did, though. Um, you know, at Smash World Tour last year with a lot of those, like, cheeky back air kills. So I really just kind of want to see, you know, Rob go up a little bit further in the meta. I know we also have 8 Man, you know, rallying with Rob through Wi-Fi tournaments still. Uh, but Rob is definitely one of those characters where, once again, if you live in Tri-State, you really know how good rob is especially because we have so many uh we have dill we have boost uh we of course have zomba but i want to see rob rise up in other places as well just a little bit more yeah uh, south florida being i think the other land of the rods oh true the man but also can't yep. forget about anathema who's been putting in hella work recently top eight at let's make big moves it's as well true. Uh, same tournament that hawk and linus were victorious and doubles in uh, yeah. By the way, worth pointing out that that grand finals was two sets of brothers, one twins and one not twins. So I guess yeah. the twins, twins have a stronger bond, but Quid and Charles <laughs> also um, are brothers and they met Linus and Hawk and Grands there. So just yeah. shows that, you know, not only in terms of doubles, but just having a consistent practice partner who lives with you and has the same interests as you and can push you in smash goes a long way in terms of improvement. Yeah, for sure. Um, we have two PR, or we used to have two PR players that were brothers and lived in the same house. And one was number one, I believe. One peaked at like twelve as well in Philly. So setting up the Terry. Terry is one of those. Max, I gotta get your opinion on on Terry here. Rage Link rocking the Terry, but Terry for me is one of those weird characters that I think is a little cheesy in terms of hitboxes and how quickly you can move out of. But I still don't think Terry is that high as a character on the tier list. 
Yeah, I kind of agree. Uh, he reminds me a bit of Smash 4 Ryu, where he can beat anybody, he can win any match, but should he is a different question. <laughs> I think Terry probably should lose the Rob matchup, right? You get camped out, you get spaced out by the normals, but you know what? Those moves are just fast enough and just strong enough, and Terry's recovery is just good enough that you can stay alive long enough to start killing people at 80, 90 percent. Even heavy characters like Rob will fold pretty easily. So we'll see what Rage Link is able to do. I mean, what a fitting name for a character that gets even stronger over 100 percent. We're going to see the Go Meter ready right here. Maybe not going to be a factor if Hawk is able to kill him fast enough, though. Yeah, for sure. Great air dodge out of the grab, though. Want to make sure, once again, that you're not getting buried by Rob. You have to mash out as hard as possible. And we almost saw Lucy get kind of snatched up by the by the buster wolf there but unfortunately once again this is one of those things that make terry kind of that mid-tier for me is that recovery is absolutely awful max yeah it's rough i mean if you're not ready to charge every rising tackle and you know use the uncharged variant to snap the ledge a little bit easier then you're gonna get cleaned up off the stage and that's exactly what happened to rage Link right there We've got hawk who started off in full stock below now shrinking the margins a bit here he's down by 120 but it's something that he can come back from especially with another edge guard okay there's the back throw let's see what he does off of this forward smash Ooh, like, looking yeah. for the spike, but not the right place to put it. We're going to see the crack shoot, get Terry back on stage, but right into some more pain. Yeah, no, I really like the down air attempt from Lucy as well. Like, that was pretty smart. Gyro's actually probably going to do it. Yep. That, that's a thing, man. I, I really think Gyro is one of the best projectiles in the game. Not only is it like a combo starter, but it really does aid Rob in fixing a lot of the combos that Rob could potentially drop. So. Once again, I like the way that Linus is also utilizing the platform on Smashville to kind of bait out space and try and see where Rage Link is going, but it just seems like Rage Link can't find a proper way in between a gyro and a laser. It's just really tough. And I would love to see him just get one stock here. We saw Big Higgs do the same thing last game with Puff. Just Closed it out with a back air before it got too hairy, but I don't know. If Hawk slash Lucy is able to walk away with another <laughs> two stock lead, I mean, it, it might just be time for Northwood to pack it up. Oh! God, that was yeah, the so lead, close. but it wasn't ready. Okay, that second stock finally going by the wayside. We've got Rage Link taking one. Yeah, for sure. That was totally terrifying. Down tilt. Oh, wait. He opted for the air dodge back, but I don't think he realized how far that would actually send him. Unfortunately, Rage Link falling, but one stock taken along the way is not too bad. It's better than no stocks taken, but man, it's now you're down a whole player <laughs> when you think about it. Yeah, exactly. And change 1.3333 players here. <laughs> um, so Northwood, I mean, they're going to have to rally up big time. Like I understand wanting to save Seth or whoever their actual strongest player is on the roster for the end, but man, Rage Link just uh, not being able to recover in so many situations there. Maybe a little bit new to Terry. It looked like he wasn't charging any of his rising tackles. Mm -hmm. At least one of them would have made it back to the ledge for him had he been charging. So I would love to see him just clean that up before he uh, comes back for his school's next fight. But yeah. um, it is a little unintuitive. You know, holding down while you're off the stage doesn't exactly sound like a smart idea until you realize you have to do it. Yeah, totally makes sense. So the remaining players, though, for Northwood are going to be uh, Goon, Woods, and of course, Substational. Uh, the Terry is such a, once again, such an interesting character for me, just because <laughs> Terry's so funny. It's just the way that he's able to act out of so many things when, you know, I, I talk about this like standard what Smash should be, right? If you attack my shield, I should be able to punish you. But Terry essentially says no to all that, all that mumbo jumbo. So once again, let's see who exactly they're going to be sending in. Uh, I really want to know who Goon plays. If you have a tag named Goon and you don't play like a funny character, uh, like maybe like a K rule or like a heavy, I'm disappointed. All right, or here it is. Se <laughs> Sephiroth coming into the arena. Oh, right. It, it wasn't a Sephsational. It was Sephiroth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, there he is. The man yep. of the hour. Potentially going with the character that his icon suggests, but potentially just sticking with Old Faithful and Captain Falcon, who I think is yep. a great pick for Cruz as well. Um, especially when you just need to take one stock off that Rob. Maybe yeah. just a quick stomp knee, <laughs> up air knee, nair sure. knee. Like you, you have so many ways to abuse big bodies with Captain Falcon. And Rob can have his way with you off stage as well, but I don't know. These are players who have undoubtedly played at local tournaments before. Um, again, both representing Michigan. I'm not sure if Seth has moved fully to SoCal, 
I know his brother, Extraordinary, did. Um, and I've seen him seen him in some brackets out there in SoCal. But either way, he, he was Michigan for the vast majority of his Smash career. And there's simply no way he avoided Hawk and Bracket every single time. There's just no way. Yeah, I'm interested to see if Seth is going to go Sephiroth here. I can't say that I agree with it into a character like Rob that's going to KO, KO you pretty early. But once again, like you said, Max, it's just one stock. You just got to get rid of it super, super quick. So let's see exactly how this one's going to go. And let's see what stage we're going to go to as well, because... Stage for Sephiroth, I think, is really, really important. You don't want to take Sephiroth to a big, like, you will, as Sephiroth, you want to go to a smaller stage because you know how big those up tilts and those up smashes are. They literally cover everything. Yeah, uh, I feel like any stage with walls is also very strong for Sephiroth. Yeah. Just able to stick himself into the wall and then come up and extend his planking game even further. I mean, you could do it on Smash Bowl and FD and oh. stuff, but yeah, like, <laughs> might as well throw all of that analysis out the window as we yep. have Captain Falcon stepping up to the plate here. This one's going to be a little bit more fun. Falcon's one of the, like, most beloved characters in every single Smash game. Super, super hyped. I want to see what extension Seth is going to do off of platforms, though, because I think Falcon movement is amazing, but I want to see him really utilize the platforms to get around Laser and Gyro, which is what we saw Rageling could not do last game. So let's see how this one's going to go. Already jumping to the platform right when Gyro comes down. Yeah, I think Battlefield's a great pick here. Extends Falcon's combo game, gives you some places to land that the Gyro won't be in your way, or that Rob's Laser can't get you. We'll see if Seth is able to play around that, but so far it's just been the Hawk Show. 65 unanswered. Finally getting some hits in, though. You're gonna see that rapid jab. Rob is now off stage. It could all end with a down air, but Hawk is gonna deny Seth that opportunity, just going way up north, taking the high road back to the stage. Seth doing a really good job of avoiding gyro so far, and even picking it up and throwing it back as well. Not letting Linus go in for anything, but here we go. A couple up airs going for the knee. Unfortunately, not gonna hit it. So close, so close. Uh oh, but gets back up. But now you're stuck on the ledge versus Rob, and this is. Not a fun time for anybody, but especially for Captain Falcon. Going for the up air, but good on Seth to avoid it all. Man, Seth almost hitting the touch of death there on Hawk. Would have been so decisive for a game like this and necessary, honestly. Oh, and on the missed tech on the platform on Rob the ass body that still didn't sweet spot? <laughs> I totally oh. can't believe it either. What a bummer for Seth. Ooh, going for the down smash there. I thought he was going to jump up back air. Going for the up air. Not going to be able to find anything. Nair on shield once again. I like the way that Seth is so prepared to deal with practically anything. He's really not forcing himself to, like, go in for anything. Ooh, okay. Man. Oh. oh, the dash grab range just so poor from Rob. Seth managed to avoid it right there, just barely. Oh, and the aggressive... Return to the stage. Pops up in the up air, shaking Hawk off his back. Oh my god, this delicate dance Ooh. in the neutral, and it's going to end with a runoff back air. Seth clutches it out 150%, but no fear whatsoever. All right, great stuff. Northwood hanging on here, now only down by two stocks. Thanks, yep. or sorry, only down by three stocks. Yep. Thanks three. to the efforts of Seth Station on his Falcon. Yep. So all that Seth needs to do is practically three stock the next opponent coming up to bat, and then they're back in this fully. Uh, once again, for Michigan State, now that Lucy has done their job, and great job, Lucy. Uh, you have Linus, you have Marcy. I, I love how they all entered under peanut names. That's so funny. Yeah, cute. yeah, guys, um, uh, don't don't be fooled. These are just Smurf <laughs> names. These, they are the, Smurf names. The actual oh. players are yeah. Linus, oh. Hawk, Okoru, Daybreak, and Dilster. Yep. Do you think uh, Linus is going, or yeah, do you think Linus is going in now? Um, just because he didn't leave the arena. So do you think they've like passed controllers? Do you think one of the brothers like unplugged the controller and the other one plugged in? It's so funny. You know, Lyric, I would believe it because uh, they are still in the arena for one. And two, <laughs> it's like, uh, at this point, you've you've carved a pretty significant lead out for your team. I don't think they're being ultra delicate with their picks. And these are all Michigan PR players. Like, yeah. um, you know, I think once they once they deal with Seth, it's going to be a little bit more of a, a downhill coast for them. So we'll see if it is indeed Linus stepping up to the plate. I think so. It is. It is. <laughs> it is, yeah. You know, Linus like uses... Well. He's got some weird characters up his sleeve. Like in doubles, you'll see Bowser or Cloud. But in singles, 
on our little info sheet it says rosalina and min min i've seen the rosa i've not seen the min min uh and i think it's also just so interesting that these two play a completely different array of characters for singles and doubles yeah no definitely weird rosalina is one of those characters that we primarily just see to buzz play all the time but there's a lot of good Rosalinas down on the local level, um, especially in NJ, we have Con Con. So I really want to see how this one goes. This honestly is like such a Smash 4 reminiscent matchup for me because I've, you know, we've seen Fatality versus DeBuzz all the time in that game. So I want to see exactly how this one's going to go. Small Battlefield is the pick. Uh, I think Small Battlefield is one of the best stages. Oh, but it's, I guess it's not the pick. Yeah, um, maybe a false start here. Yeah, probably. But Rosalina in general, what a what a strange character. Did not get picked up at all at the start of Ultimate. And now Dubuzz still kind of leading the charge with Rosalina. Now Sora too. Sora's in this game. Still can't believe it. Um, and of course the good old Pikmin. So let's see exactly where we're going to go on this one. Yeah, I mean, maybe it is still small battlefield and they were just not exactly ready to kick it off but <laughs> we'll see we'll see where it is um i do agree though i really love small battlefield as a stage and this is certainly a throwback this was my character falcon once upon a time in smash oh, 4 yeah. played played to buzz a couple times in the beginning of the game too Alrighty, let's see how this one's gonna go oh it, it's a music switch I too like Persona music. I, I'm down with the music switch. <laughs> All right, just gonna jump right into it though, just because once again, uh, both of these players are starting on their stocks here. Oh my God, the rap, <laughs> the Falcon kick into the the hug there. Jeez. Yeah, oh I'm like a B moves Falcon. Oh my God. <laughs> Jeez. How? Yo, Seth, something snapped, bro. <laughs> After after that first like 80% he took from Hawk, he's just been in demon mode. Yeah, for sure. Jeez. I mean, he's got a lot of like time to make up for his team. These jump up these are so good from Seth. I don't think Linus is expecting any of them here. Are you going for anything though? Gotta come off the ledge. Ooh, Raptor onto the stage and good old Nintendo Wi-Fi doing its good old thing. Yeah, and so those levers and pullers. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> It's okay. Uh, it's probably us just getting kicked out. Or the arena shut down. It's okay. I mean, we're not on an official Nintendo broadcast, so we don't have to, you know, pull any punches. It's it's no secret that uh, it's the struggle bus in online on this game. Um, but if the players were interrupted, at least we'll get to watch the match. And if they weren't, and it was just us getting kicked out, then hey, at least the match is still on rails. So, um, Nintendo. It happens. Fix yeah. it up, man. Fix it up. What, what Listen, the netcode on everything else for Nintendo has been pretty good. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard anybody complain about Splatoon netcode, if I gotta be honest. Or uh, Mario Kart. So, or Mario Kart, that's true. Uh, geez, I forgot about that game too. Uh, wow, I really just play Smash all the time. That's really sad. Nintendo has such a good library of games, and yet we just limit ourselves to one of them. Uh, but yeah, no, Nintendo netcode, everybody. That is the prime definition of it, just... You're, you're having a good time, you're watching around, and then boom, gone. Everything. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, hopefully that at some point gets resolved. We are paying for their online service now. So. <laughs> True. Uh, oh, I feel like Smash 4s wasn't that scuffed, man, and that one was it free. What's, been. what's going on? It definitely couldn't have been. I don't. I definitely don't remember it being too bad. But then again, there wasn't a huge online era in Smash Four as well. For being honest, you know, there was like the Four Glory memes, and that was really it. it wasn't anything too crazy. But now that Ultimate's really like it's really half online, half offline. It's really important to have stable arenas just like so. And yep, it was just us getting kicked out. So that's totally fine. As long as the players weren't interrupted, that's okay as well because we'll still have an avid like, or we'll still have a correct stock count at the end. So it's all about the waiting game here. Yeah, if you want to know my prediction, I'm going to guess that Seth won with two stocks. We'll see how that really comes Jeez. to fruition. If it does, you know, I mean, maybe Linus will just avenge his brother here. But yeah, I mean, Seth started off by zero to deathing him for one, yeah, and then true. was already putting in hella work on that second stock. Rosalina, I think, does lose to Captain Falcon in this game. Uh, in Smash 4, it was like a lot closer to even maybe the slightest bit rose of favor. But you have a lot of things going for you in that matchup. You can rush mm -hmm. Luma down so easily with Falcon. You have like seven moves that send her flying at 0%, namely dash attack. Uh, you can even do like the YOLO Falcon kick right into Luma and 
completely not care about getting punished afterward because you know you got the real target and then you just work on rosalina once you get back down to the ground yeah it totally makes sense it's just once again rosalina is one of those characters that a lot of people played him for and just like it didn't come over in this game i feel like a lot of the rosalina players or like those popular top tier players that were like oh i'll just play the characters that are really good they all play wolf now i mean wolf is easier to pick up and wow you were right okay all right, all right wait how many stocks though it it has <laughs> to be a two stock for how me to stocks? actually be right that's true that's true maybe it was last stock last hit we'll never know yeah they were going for a long time the match just finished and i feel like it's already been like two and a half minutes since we got kicked out so oh i see seth well wait, never mind we already saw the results i was gonna say seth just left the arena and yeah. hawk and linus are still in there but yeah okay so we know for sure at least that linus has been eliminated so that four stock lead that msu once had has now either shrunk to a two stock or one stock lead depending on what was going on with seth or or it could be dead even if he three stock but i have a feeling that there's a little bit more fight left in linus and he wasn't just gonna take that one laying down yeah totally for sure now that the twins are out though the you know the very prolific twins uh we have daybreak and okoru i will think that i would think that they're gonna send in daybreak next maybe he's the anchor though but for what i can see on the sheet that once again kilo miles did provide us uh he's got the dark pit down which is kind of funny because dark pit and the pits in general don't get much sunshine at all most of us know daybreak for the wolf yeah and the falco in smash 4 i think a lot of people forget that daybreak was actually the number one falco in north america in smash 4 and um i i haven't seen him use the character just yet in this game but i'm sure it's really good especially because falco is just straight up better in ultimate and then also we can't forget about dilster who for some reason has dk and ddd listed on our cheat sheet but <laughs> the heavy. what what you would really know dilster for is his lucina play and he That's was true. one of the strongest players in the beginning of michigan ultimate he's kind of taking some time away from the game uh i think also to focus on school because i've seen him in msu teams for like two three years straight now but yeah dilster is a menace as well so i would not be shocked to see him come out i think if you want to answer captain falcon though it might be smart to put in Okoro with Joker. Um, yeah, true. Just some of the freest edge guards in the game come in that match. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Drop down uh, from the ledge back air. Absolutely solid. Do you think the entire Michigan State team is all together and they're just using Hawk and Linus's account? Because they're not leaving the arena. So I'm just going to assume that's actually what it's going to be, which is actually pretty smart. And you were right, Max. Here comes uh, Okoro with the Joker. All right, yeah, and I think you were right, Lyric, and they are all under the same roof. <laughs> At the very least, the three of the players that we've seen so far, the Twins plus Okoru, are uh, here live. All right, Seth, are you SDing one more time or zero more times? All right, one oh, more time. Oh, okay. Okay, it was one stock. My prediction, officially wrong. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, you predicted that Seth was going to win, too. All right, let's see how this one's going to go. Once again, Joker is still one of the best characters in the game, even though everybody, for some reason, thinks that MK Leo, since he stopped playing him, that he's not as good anymore. But still, really, really solid. We're going to see a lot of these great kind of grab confirms off of it. But Seth can definitely give Joker if possible. But, ooh, throwing yourself off like that? Kind of scary. Yeah, I, I feel like with no Arsene and low percent, you can take a couple of risks here. Obviously, Falcon able to kill you at very low percents off stage with a spike. So I like Seth's gamble right there. Not going to pay off, but still, he's putting on a lot of damage here. And keep in mind, you know, even though the the stocks are in MSU's favor here, Falcon is just such a momentum-based character. You can get one opening and then your opponent respawns. They're still shook. They know they have their team on their back. I think Falcon's just really scary in a crew battle format. Yeah, very true. Almost came off in the ledge with the knee, but gonna be able to grab a Koru with, of course, that good old Falcon hug, as I like to call it. He's trying to hit the up smash there, not gonna be able to find anything. The standard run up, uh, dash attack there from Joker. Uh, dash attack so good on this character. Here comes the edge guard though. Koru can't really find anything. DBZ trade a little bit there. He really only needs one kind of stock here, but Seth doing a really good job of at least keeping it close. Yeah, this has been super back and forth. The dash attack on Falcon, not bad either. Almost killing off the top there at 130. Two of the burstiest characters Woo! in the game for sure. And the drop zone dare. All right, Okoru. I like that. No Arsene necessary. Just going to send Falcon out to his death. And that is yet another victory for MSU. They're now up, I believe, nine stocks to six. Ooh, jeez. 
Getting a little rough there, but once again, yeah, you were talking about Seth was doing such a good job because when uh, Okuru got Arsene, I thought it was going to be over from there, but Seth played around it really well. But unfortunately, of course, once again, Joker is still one of the best characters in the game. And just as you said a little bit earlier, all they need to do is just drop off the ledge and pick an option, pick your own adventure, and then easily comes right back up. So let's see exactly who is going to come out for Northwood. Of course, once again, we have seen Seth Sational, who is going to be kind of like our player of that team. We also do have Rage Link, who uh, played Terry, and we also saw Big Hig. So it's really left up to Woods and Goon, and we don't really have any information on them. So that's going to be the fun part of seeing which one they are going to play. Yeah, my favorite part of any tournament is always just getting to know more players, right? Yeah. Um, even beyond watching good gameplay, it's like catching someone at the beginning of their journey is just as exciting as watching the best in the world. So we will undoubtedly at least get some information on the rest of Northwood's roster here, whether they have what it takes to take down MSU. Uh, I mean, that remains to be seen. I'm not going to count them out. It's certainly possible, but MSU has just had the Midwest in a chokehold for like three yeah. years. I want to say literally since ultimate came out, these guys have been the team to beat. So, um, yeah, if anyone can stop them, that's super impressive. But even just holding a candle to them and putting up a good fight is very impressive as well. Yeah, true. Once again, if you are ever looking to get into Smash Bros, always look for your local communities, but also look for your college communities as well. It's for me, once again, I like went through college with the Smash community and it helped me create some awesome memories by traveling with my friends playing Smash in school. And also, of course, all studying together. You are still in school. Make sure you do do your homework and study um, and, you know, be a little bit responsible. But it's definitely a great camaraderie inside of the collegiate scene for sure. Yeah, I wish Smash was bigger when I was going to school, man. Yeah, um, man. Back in, you know, when I rode my Triceratops to class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like the only smasher or one of the only smashers at my school. You know, we had like one tournament and let's just say they didn't want to have another one. <laughs> after yeah, they showed right. Up. So it's so cool to see like full programs and varsity teams and events specifically geared toward the collegiate audience. So big shout out to CNC and, and any other groups that are doing stuff like this. You guys are making a serious difference in these players, uh, smash careers and just life in general. So it's it's amazing to watch this. I'm definitely a little jealous, but I'm happy to be here even <laughs> on the other side of the sticks. Very true, very true. All right, well, once again, one, while we are waiting for the next player to arrive, we are gonna cut to a quick short break. So once again, uh, if you need something to eat or drink, now's the time to go on ahead and grab it. And we'll be back with some more Smash action for you.
And welcome, welcome on, on back, back into, into the crew battle of the state versus Northwood. Northwood. We are joined by Max, and we are just jumping right back in once again. We have two Terry players, or is this just the is this just the replay? This. All right, this is, is live. live? Two Wait, I feel like this is so far behind. Wait, unless we're seeing the same exact matchup that we saw. Earlier. Oh, oh, okay, I see. The format is actually a bit different than. I was ready for. So it is a best of three, three v three. Oh, it's three v three. Okay. All right. Cool. I thought it was gonna be five v five. Totally fine. And of course, the good old Rob Gyro uh, side B rook history, uh, as we know, we love jab jab power down. All right. What an interesting format. I really do enjoy it though. Yeah. This is uh, kind of weird to see so many Terry games in in one day. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. <laughs> But That's a definitely a welcome addition. And I think Terry makes for exciting games. Right? Uh, I mean, he could get deleted from existence very quickly, or he can do the same to his opponents. And unfortunately, it looks like Rage Link is going to lose the first stock yet again. Yeah, Linus is going to be, or Lucy is going to be the one that takes us in here. So Hawk, so far, once again, going to be the one leading everybody in. Uh, let's see exactly how Rage Link is going to come around it, though. I think uh, the Northwood team figured out that Seth has got to be the anchor here. So I think they're going to leave him for end and let Rage Link go first here. So once again, the team on the Northwood side is going to be Terry Jigglypuff and then Captain Falcon Sephiroth, which is such an interesting roster. But here, uh, Lucy and Linus, of course, we, we know so far that it's Rob and, and Rosalina at least. So let's see what else is going to happen. Okay, and so far it's just been more of the Hawk show so far. This player is showing to be a very strong start for MSU and a back air closing out the second stock. Unresponded to here. I mean, Rage Link has got plenty of ways to kill Rob at 110, but uh, two of the most lethal ones, of course, is going to have to wait until he takes almost 110 damage to have access to them. Yeah, for sure. Okay, right, here we go. Once again, Terry just has such a hard time going around all these projectiles. Hawk really not going in um, and forcing anything, but the jab jab power dog not even gonna KO. Nice air dodge out from Hawk here. Looking for anything though. Oh, okay, almost had the kind of reverse Rob combo there with uh, Rage Link actually was the one to almost combo off the gyro. But once again, Terry kind of helpless off stage, but unfortunately from Hawk, not even going to be able to take that KO. Once again, up three stocks to one here. Let's see what the closeout could be or if Rage Link can get on the board. Oh, I thought we were going to see an up smash underneath that platform. Instead, just an up air, closing it out one interaction later. And Lucy, aka Hawk, twin brother of Linus, not just in the peanuts, but also in real life, is going to put MSU back on the board, starting off game two very strongly for their team. Just yeah. about as strongly as you can. A three stock is basically the same as a JV4 here in the crew battle format. He will be, uh, of course, restored to 0% and all three of his lives intact. Yeah, for sure. So once again, how I'm seeing the format now, it's a best of three and three players to three. So set one did go on over to MSU really quickly. And there goes one of your players already for Northwood. So you have two left and that's going to be the big Higgs. That's going to be Seth. And do you want to send Jigglypuff out again versus Rob? Or do you want to send the Captain Falcon in? Well, I believe it's you bring five players and you send in three. So I think oh, they do still true, have true, true. all of their options available to them. They can send in Goon or Woods, but maybe there's a reason that we didn't see them in game one here. And they fielded just their three strongest players across the board. I think you're right in that Seth should be the anchor for this team. Um, but, you know, will he be able to clean up the mess that's left for him if the other players aren't chipping <laughs> in and at least taking a couple stocks here? I mean, Hawk is looking unstoppable. Yeah, definitely. Once again, the most powerful twin duo, if I could just, you know, throw that out there, because it's probably true. The power, the most powerful twins in Smash Bros, uh, really kind of commanding and being the shining stars of this crew battle so far. Um, so I really want to see where else we're going to go, because realistically, the twins really won that for uh, Michigan in the first game. So let's see exactly how this one's going to go. I don't know about sending Seth out now, but it could also be another viable option. It did kind of work, but we'll see exactly what they choose. Yeah, I'm also curious as to what the characters of the other players are, right? We yep. know Falcon and Jigglypuff are still waiting in the wings, but Woods and Goon, they also could show up with something. Okay, no, it's, it's just going to be Seth. They're going to go yep. straight to Seth. Hope that he can pull some kind of miracle off here 
because yep. it's not just a matter of taking this three stock lead back from hawk it's a matter of trying to mow down as many more stocks as you can after that not an easy task even for a character like captain falcon who can touch of death you especially on these bigger characters uh i don't know i'm gonna need to see some unrivaled level of consistency with the thousand combos here yeah for sure all right battlefield is going to be the pick we talked about this a little bit earlier and how well seth was moving around the platforms but it doesn't seem to matter hawk already has a really great start on this game too like, oh my god goes with the falling down or the falling up air looks really good so far though seth gonna be able to kind of bring it back let's see exactly how this one's gonna play out yeah, don't want to forget that the first time these guys squared off in game one, Seth did take a bit of a beating at the beginning, but then once he found his footing, he absolutely destroyed Hawk's last two stocks. And he did lose one in the process, though, so he still has to somehow outdo himself from the appearance in game one. Really good mash out of these combos, too. Seth trying their best to at least land. You can't even land at this character versus Rob. Fortunately, Gyro not going to... Uh, Send right into the up smash, but here comes Seth with those up airs. All right, ledge pressure coming through here, but not getting all that much off of it. And if you have fought against Falcon before, you know what he's looking for. It's that down air, neutral air, or up air to start the combo, and then go into either more aerials or straight into the knee when you have enough damage. Oh, and he didn't believe enough in the hit confirm there, sticking a jab out just to try to keep the pressure going. Not aware of the fact that he landed the neutral air in the first place. So yeah, this is uh, just a couple lost opportunities for Seth here. And oh, I mean, this opportunity on Hawk's part as well, as the up yeah. B just completely whiffs, but no punish. Yeah. All right, looking for anything though. All right, great air dodge to the stage by Hawk too. Look for something. Seth, unfortunately, I saw him going down there for a knee, but the top of Rob is going to actually clip. Once again, this first stock is being really stubborn. 127% on both players right now for that split second at least. Ooh, okay. These drop down up keys, Max, are very creative out of Seth. I don't think Hawk can really get a feel on it, but up throw not even gonna take it yet either. Yeah, it's such a good mix up because Falcon's aerials are absolutely terrifying. You're looking to block that, avoid whatever he's trying to convert off of, and then suddenly he just pops you with the command grab. Even though it's a little slow to start, just because your your brain is conditioned to hold shield you're probably going to lose the interaction. Even if you try to mash something out, it might be too late. Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. Back air coming in all the way from cross stage. That's going to be Seth getting on the board here. They do have two stocks to go uh, before it gets a little bit even, but the up throw, once again, going to divide the gap just a little bit further. Here we go. Hawk, though, looking good on the rod, though. Yeah, at this point, no matter what, MSU is going to come out of this match with an advantage, right? There's yeah. going to be up minimum of one stock. So even if Seth just doesn't get hit for the rest of the game, he still has a lot of work to put in for his team. Oh, and he oh, falls just no. short of the ledge. Unfortunate SD. Looking for a downer out there, perhaps just a bit too brazen. And now Hawk, he can just coast here. Even Again, he can <laughs> run off the stage twice. And MSU is in a great spot to clean this one up. Yeah, for sure. All right, Seth, going to be able to start the combo at least. Ooh, okay, nice wait into the knee. And hold on, Max, hold on. There's All some right. life in Seth. That's what you want to see if you're on the Northwood team, of course. And Seth, a Raptor boost opening here. Oh, but he turns the wrong way for the jab. I feel like a lot more damage could have come out of that. Love the charge down smash, reading the late tech roll and everything. Okay, Seth. If you can kill Hawk right here and you go on the run of a lifetime, then guess what, buddy? Your school might still be alive. <laughs> it's very, very true. Trying to uh, Falcon kick the downer, but unfortunately, once again, you hate to see it. The air dodge off stage, trying to avoid the gyro, but instead, Hawk is just going to narrowly escape, really, with that one stock because that second combo by, by Seth was so cool. That was so, so sick. It really was, and, you know, society, if he finished that, we'd, we'd all be driving <laughs> flying Teslas and stuff, but yeah. um, sadly for Northwood, Seth going to give up that last stock. Kind of a spaghetti interaction right there, right? Yeah, you get clipped bit. by the little tap of the gyro and maybe buffer an air dodge that you pressed three hours before that, but such is the nature of the game, and we're going to see Hawk still hanging on, first man standing, I guess, for the MSU team. Probably not going to one player victory over this team but you know what he might like we've seen how strong this player is in singles and doubles now uh the twins are the real deal yeah for sure rob one of those characters uh for lack of a better word really kind of a tank 
um, when it comes to you know holding on to stocks for a really long time and that is the name of the game in a crew battle you got to be able to live forever and ko and rob can do both of those things so once again let's see who northwood is going to bring out is it going to be the jigglypuff is it going to be somebody else i would like to see the jigglypuff get around too why not get a little bit of a redemption uh but once again this is going to be the best of three three v three crew battle format which i kind of like as well i really like the opportunity to like kind of like take it like a normal set where you Get to go back in time and be like, all right, what did we do wrong here? Maybe is it our order? Maybe it's it the character matchups that we're doing and essentially try again. Yeah, and between teams that go back and forth and have like really close sets, it also gets super interesting because the order in which you play your um, each of the members of your team is really significant. It can turn the tides. I remember the last time I saw MSU in a collegiate environment, I believe they did go to like a second set of grand finals with the other Sheesh. team and it came down to... 99% sure Hawk on the Ike taking out um, <laughs> or rather going up against UT Dallas's um, Aikido snake player. Oh my God. So yeah, it, it was super intense. Like each team won one set in grands and, and it was just really sick to watch. So this is one of my favorite formats, man. Singles and doubles are cool, but collegiate crews and just crew battles in general are always yep. really fun to watch. I feel like the hype of crews has died throughout the years. I feel like, you know, Max, we're old. Uh, back in the day, crew battles were, like, important. Like, they were important. Like, you saw them at majors. They were main events at majors sometimes. And I feel like they really kind of have fallen off. But I still think the, the hype is still there. Once again, we are going to see Big Higgs on the Jigglypuff. Let's see if they can, you know, take down the entire MSU team. Because that's essentially what it's got to be right now, Max. <laughs> Yeah, if we see a Jigglypuff OCD this team, then I don't even know what to say. But I'll be very <laughs> impressed, for one. And um, maybe the tier list that I have saved on my desktop will change a little bit. So, for sure. last right, time see. around, this was almost a three stock. But Big Higgs was able to sneak one in there on line or on uh, Hawk. So, we'll see if it, it happens again. It was a back air in, like, the fourth quarter, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. wouldn't really do the team any favors, being that someone can just come in and kind of, like, revenge kill the Jigglypuff and, and take this one away. But, either way, off to a decent start here for both players. But, yeah, Hawk starting to break away after he lands that in there. Yeah, for sure. The thing is, though, you just got to take one, and then the Rob is out of here. So, once again, we're, we're always preaching it. Find a rest. All you need is one rest, and then Rob could easily get KO'd on a stage like Smashville too but Hawk gonna be able to find a down throw but not find much after it gotta watch that shield though that shield's getting a little small yeah and uh, most dangerous for a character like Puff who actually dies off the shield, right? doesn't matter <laughs> what percent she's at all right big Higgs unfortunately a 126 on their first stock here anything from Rob could realistically take it I even think a uh, Nair like probably from the midway could take it, but Hawk's still very content with some of these forward airs coming out. Ooh, okay, unfortunately, hitboxes don't line up there, but that back air is going to take that stock one for Big Pigs. Fortunately for Puff, even though she's super light, she kind of can draw out the match and stay alive for a long time just by playing very evasively. So I feel like if Big Higgs is willing to commit to a play style like that and just keep packing away at that last stock maybe he'll be able to pull this one off okay we've got an edge guard situation and Ooh. there it is the back hit of nair yeah all right two stocks hanging on here so Higgs is actually alive in a big way but it is still six stocks to two for the yeah. second game of the, the set yeah this is looking a little scary of Very course important. now i have a feeling if one twin went in i feel like the other one's gonna just switch into spot right now uh, we are probably going to see Linus come on in. And once again, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Rosalina Minmin is on the on the table for, for Linus today. Uh, we saw the Rosalina. I'm debating on whether we're going to see the Minmin or not, especially versus a character like Jigglypuff. I mean, if Minmin goes off stage and Jigglypuff throws out a Nair, that is a Minmin stock gone. So maybe Rosalina for a little bit more added safety, but we'll see. Yeah, if I'm Linus, I'm probably stick into the rosa for this matchup you have one of the best anti-airs in the game with that double up smash min min with a similar up smash but just doesn't have the same hitbox doesn't have the yeah. same strength and i agree that min min is kind of a liability off stage against puff you you really can die to something as simple as just sticking out an air and tether recoveries in general are really pretty easy to edge guard when you have a move like that even in ultimate when they snap so quickly so um they also have a koru in the house so 
Now that I see the Hawk and Linus chip re-enter the arena, I'm not sure. Is is that a Koru? Is that Linus? Who knows? Maybe the whole team is there, and it's just going to be someone that we're not ready for. Imagine they're all just, like, hanging out in the twins' basement. They're just like, yeah, give me the controller next. Like, just all yeah, hanging like, out. that's what the hangout spot. What is it? Who is this? I have to know who who is playing Mewtwo right now. I, I gotta know. All right, so we are going to see Linus pick oh, up Mewtwo. Oh, it's Linus, okay. I, I'm, so, it's so funny you brought this up earlier. They both play heavies and doubles, but in singles, Linus's lineups are all lightweights and or, like, normal weights. It's so weird. All long characters, too, right? Long. Rosalina, Mewtwo, <laughs> Min Min. And I guess that makes sense. You play Bowser and Cloud as your doubles characters. But, yeah, I think really what we're seeing here is just that the twins are good with every character or, like, a, a ridiculous amount of them. I kind of feel like Jigglypuff is kind of good against Mewtwo. I'm not going to lie, man. Um, being a light and tall character is a liability in general. It's going to make it a lot less precise for Puff to hit stuff like down air into rest or landing aerials and all that that some characters might naturally low profile. Mewtwo has no shot at that and no hitbox on his recovery either. You just stick the neutral air out in the two frame spot uh, at the ledge and it's curtains for him. Yeah, you see though. Sure. So far, Linus just, you know, an incredibly good player, and I don't think he's going to let this matchup scare him. Yeah, for sure. Higgs doing a pretty good job, though, of spacing right now with fairs and nares, as good Jigglypuff players do. Uh, looking for something off stage, though. I like the attempt to go off with Nair, but gotta watch Linus. One up smash could potentially do it from either character, or, or a back throw, really, Max. I mean, I almost saw that right there, too. So let's see exactly how this one's going to go. There's that up and smash. Probably the longest lasting Mewtwo versus Puff first stock <laughs> of all time. That's Two true. glass cannon characters. I mean, Mewtwo really, really the cannon. Puff just glass. But, oh, I thought we were going to see a grab there. But, no, Linus a little slow to forward tilt. Somehow nobody has died yet until, of course, the big purple foot comes out. It's going to be a down air off the top of the screen. Linus opening up big after the respawn as well. 50 damage. Oh, oh my is that God. death? Good oh lord. That was so, so close. Even with Rage, that wasn't enough, but still, that we had red flashes at 70. So let's see what Higgs can do. I feel like if they take out the, the Rage Mewtwo, it can go back to where it was before. But I definitely don't want to see uh, Higgs get hit by another F Smash from Mewtwo again. So let's see exactly how this one's going to go. Linus gets part of the rapid jab to come out, but pretty happy with the back air there. Yeah, it was so weird. It. <laughs> you see, like, all the setup hits of the jab miss, some of the rapid jab connects, <laughs> and then not the last hit. Ooh. Ooh! That was jab up smash? Okay. Yeah, that was dirty, looking like melee fox up in here right now. <laughs> True, true. And that, I believe, is going to be Michigan State moving in on over in Northwood. The Twins do it again, everybody. Uh, that's a two-man twin show. So good on uh, Michigan State for once again reclaiming their, you know, prominence and dominance in this in this crew battle so far. Yeah, wow. Such a good team, I got to say. And there's a reason why you've seen MSU carry so many high placings in collegiate circuits over the past couple of years. But you know what? Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And that's actually kind of one of the, the interesting things about the collegiate format, right? Is that within four years, all of those players will have graduated. So it's kind yeah. of <laughs> the responsibility of like the existing strong players to cultivate that environment and like train up the people who will go on to be their successors over time. And like, again, a lot of reason to like share the knowledge and continue passing down the gift of improvement. Yeah, for sure. Alrighty, well, I production, since I, I see you here, are we going to throw it on over into a break? All right, so we're going to throw it on over into a break, and we'll be back with the next group panel. See you later.
All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the CENC Midwest Invitational of 2022. We're here with some of the best collegiate teams in all the Midwest, which, by the way, is like 13 or 14 states. So that's how you know. <laughs> These guys are uh, certainly the cream of the crop. And we're going to have Miami University of Ohio going up against St. Ambrose right now. It's Multi versus Yagi to kick things off. DD versus Diddy Kong. And, oh, Lyric, I, I know you've been around for almost as long as I have at this point, and that's plenty of time to know that this matchup is god awful. In multiple games, can this can this go one way or another? I do think DDD is at its peak in terms of best the character it's ever been, but versus a character like Diddy Kong, who can, you know, command, grab onto you, land with the falling up air, this can be absolutely miserable for multi. So let's see exactly how Yagi's gonna be able to kind of close this first stock out at least. I know DDD, you know, we have a couple DDD players in Tri-State, and man, uh, DDD can cheese out a stock, but it's all about this bait and punish, and so far, it's really just Yagi sending multi from left stage to right stage. Nothing too crazy here. Yeah, and you see how rough even the, uh, the distance game is in this matchup, right? Gordo's getting sent back by Peanuts and Bananas alike. It is so rough for Diddy to generate any kind of pressure. Oh, unless oh, you just no. scare Diddy into missing his recovery right there. All right, Yagi crashing into the side of Pokemon Stadium. And this is actually where things might start to get out. Oh, Jesus Christ, that hit? <laughs> the top of the the top of the hammer, though. Oh, my God. Up smash. Going to even it back up. But man, DDD with Rage is so scary. Already at 60% basically off of that first interaction from Rage DDD. I love the way that Multi is using uh, the command grab, too. I don't feel like enough DDDs like, push momentum with side B because it actually has a very strong win box if you, like, move your character with it. So from what looks like Yagi really commanding first stock, now it looks a lot scarier with Multi just being able to do what DDD does best in this game and I believe is Ledge Trap. Yeah, it's certainly his best attribute and one of the best in the entire game at doing that. And inhale, yeah, now doub doubling as a projectile. He just spit the banana right back at Diddy. So Ultimate did do DDD a couple favors in matchups like this. <laughs> Still really rough on paper, but when you get the first stock, even if it's by way of kind of a lucky SD on the part of the other player, I mean, it's so hard to kill DDD. You can just trade over and over again, kind of recklessly throw hitboxes out and push that advantage in a big way. So we're seeing Multi do just that right now. Okay, he's off stage though. How are you getting back? Just as good as DDD is at ledge trapping, he's equally bad at getting off the ledge himself. It's very true. DDD is a big boy. Yeah, these side Bs are going to catch no matter where you are in the stage. So let's see how exactly this one's going to go. Great by Multi, going to be able to finally land. And listen, if you are DDD, you can live for a really long time. We saw this last game too, uh, where Hawk was and Linus were basically living forever on Rob. So a little bit of some some funny shenanigans going on with DDD hitboxes, but when is DDD not a funny clown in this game? Um, but Gordo spin back is going to take it in multi up two stocks already for their team. Oh, listen, let me tell you, that boy is not a quitter. That's one thing I know. <laughs> oh my God. The Gordo getting amplified in strength, I believe as well from the inhale. That just sent Diddy flying. No shot of survival there and multi clutching it out with a two stock, no less. I mean, he was getting beaten to a pulp at the very beginning, right? I mean, uh, Yagi just hitting with the bread and butter Diddy combos, dash attacking to whatever you want, banana and peanut as a wall just to prevent you from getting in. But man, all your plans, you could just throw them out as soon as the heavy character or the character that allegedly loses the matchup takes that first stock off of you. Yeah, for sure. This is a really good looking game so far. Jeez, it's just, once again, DDD is going to hold on to a stock for a really, really long time. And, you know, I never have seen a Gordo spit back actually like work like that. So uh, pretty good by multi. Let's see who exactly St. Ambrose is going to be bringing out now. Uh, we don't have characters for this squad. Uh, so I want to see um, who, I think it's Balan Pants because I don't see a double O. So the tag is Balan Pants and uh, Kyoka. I believe it is just a three-man squad. So let's see who their next player is going to play. Uh, but the Diddy was looking pretty good, but sometimes just this game is so funny and goofy with the way, you know, the big boys work. Yeah, they have that fear factor in a way that a smaller character who kind of chips away at you like Diddy Kong certainly does not, right? Uh, characters like Diddy, Sheik, Pikachu, those pixie types, right? They 
work the damage up over time and then close you out at a respectably high percent with a kill move or some kind of setup. Then you have DDD, who lives well beyond whatever range those characters plan on killing you at, can kill you at whatever percent he wants, and also just has giant hitboxes that you're bound to run into, especially online. I mean, let's not mince our words here, right? Like, DDD's fear factor probably triples online. And, and yeah. like, the ability to tilt another player, um, I think DDD is definitely one of the most mentally frustrating players to, or characters to fight against, and Multi doing a really good job of showing that. And that match, kind of just like a microcosm for how that matchup goes, like... Sure, Diddy is supposed to absolutely mop the floor with him, but it's not always going to play out that way. Yeah, definitely on Smash Wi-Fi too. Once again, we talk about this all the time. Wi-Fi and offline are just, they're they are two different metas. They're two different tier lists. And for me, it's really like the bottom like of the, the offline tier list kind of gets like flipped like this, where mm -hmm. the bottom technically goes on top and all these, you know, poor crummy mid tiers. Oh my God. <laughs> are now at the top and we talked about wi-fi DDD. let's talk a little bit about wi-fi zelda uh zelda my main of course and balan pants uh this matchup should go in favor of zelda just based off of the fact that ddd really can't approach when phantom's out but ddd does have some frustrating things on zelda like up air uh nair does do a good job of getting through too so i really want to see how balan pants plays zelda because i know you could play this character in two very different ways you can play very aggressive or you can play very passive so let's see exactly how this one's gonna go out yep we have multi still on the ddd Pants coming through with the Zelda. Uh, if if you had to describe this matchup, Lyric, how painful. would you? Painful for both sides, I assume. I think both sides is pretty painful. Once DDD does get in, and if they know exactly what they're doing when they get in, I think it's pretty easy. But getting around a lot of these projectile walls is just so rough, especially if the Zelda has a really clean chart of what projectiles to throw in. Phantom at any stage of its kind of formation here can do its justice. But DDD does have a lot of time to run off stage fair on Zelda too, because uh, Phantom actually takes a lot of frames to actually come out. But once again, we're gonna see this play style come out from Balan Pants, which is going to just be the, you know, the really passive aggressive Wi-Fi Zelda, uh, the flow chart of which, you know, B move they want to throw out first, but unfortunately it was the right call with the spot dodge, but DDD dash attack goes for a really, really long time. I feel like this is one of those rare matches where E gets pressed more than A. <laughs> yep, from both characters, really, yeah, when you really yeah. think about it. Especially Pants though, right now, he has just been non-stop throwing out Phantoms, Din's fires in the gaps, you know, trying to reflect Gordos, Neighbors love as well to reflect Gordos, and of course up B for that surprise kill, but Right now, it's looking like Multi is just keen to all of these little mix-ups, and as soon as he's able to close the gap and get into the close quarters combat phase of things, that's when I think DDD is going to excel a little bit. I mean, in terms of normals, you don't have a giant weapon like DDD's hammer as Zelda to contest with him. Oh my god, okay, sending out Phantom just enough. Yeah, you were saying this correctly, Max. It's just the fact that once you get into close quarters combat, it's so different, but Phantom can swing Gordo back if it does hit at the correct frame but once again pants is just it's just going in with their favorite moves we saw this a little bit earlier how they tried to do a little bit of the elevator if they had just turned around and actually back through that would have been it but unfortunately the pineapple gonna come out i pants i also feel you uh zelda's teleport while absolutely busted i think is programmed really weird where sometimes it will just not recognize the ledge so that's really unfortunate for pants here already on their last stock they could definitely take off multi here um, if they keep doing the same flow chart that they've been doing, because it is working, but unfortunately another DDD dash attack almost actually taking it. Yeah, and another one that missed right there, not gonna hit the two frame, but the lead traps are just so scary for multi. It's like, even if you do manage to properly recover, you still have to deal with these Gordos coming back. Zelda, not a character who's great at getting off the ledge herself either. Oh my God, look at all, <laughs> all the hitboxes <laughs> not attached to the characters coming out right there. Multi once again just throwing oh. themselves at the ledge. You can't hang out too long on the ledge as any character, especially Zelda when you're light. And that's Multi gonna be actually taking out another member of the St. Ambrose team, and they have one to go. But remember, if you guys are just joining us now, this is a very different uh format than your usual collegiate crew. It is 3v3 in a best of three. So this is just game one. So there is a whole nother game to go. It's just like playing a normal set, just with three 
three players in a crew battle format. It's very cool. I, I prefer this uh, format than the usual 5v5. Yeah, I kind of like it for sure. It's definitely a different take on things, spicing it up a little bit and cool for an invitational format where the goal is to showcase as many teams as possible. Also, I believe that each team is able to field any of up to five players. So, um, you know, it's not just going to be the same three versus the same three going into different games. We could see them switch their rosters up a little bit more just to, um, you know, properly answer each other. So uh, that said, it looks like Miami University is coming out pretty strong here. With DDD out of all characters, really. Like, we know Miami University, their captain, uh, Time Gear, is one of the best midmins to do it right now on Wi Fi or, and like a very famous midmin. And here is DDD kind of frontlining, frontlining literally everything. So I'm excited to see, you know, how this one's going to go. Uh, I really want to know who Kyoka plays. So you had. Um, God, I can't even remember the first character, but always seeing Zelda is always a good thing for me, but just so bad in the meta right now. So just looking at this team, you know, if we're already seeing a pretty strong showing from multi um, and time gear is a super strong player. It, the fact that this is only a three V three might mean that we have a team that can rival MSU here. And That's true. It, if that is the storyline to look forward to at this event, then I'm really really anticipating the showdown between those two teams um again msu kind of sitting on the iron throne of midwest collegiate smash for several years now especially in ultimate i mean they're good at melee as well but ultimate is really where their specialties lie and kyoka is going to come out with wolf okay maybe looking to put a stop to the ddd only has to take one stock here but you know i feel like time gears min min is just going to come out next one, yeah it's very very true it's all about the arrival of that character for me Wolf, though, a character I think that a lot of people have switched to in this meta. I mean, for me, uh, I've been playing a little bit of Wolf myself. The character is pretty intuitive. Um, and especially on a character like DDD, these Wolf Fairs and Mares are always going to hit. You know, DDD is a very big hitbox to kind of work with. So once again, let's just see Kyoka's strings here. So that's going to be the most important thing. Yeah, you got to make those hits count against a character like DDD. Otherwise, he'll just out damage him with straight stuff. You know, he doesn't even need to string four or five moves together to put the same value out as a character like Wolfwood. All right, here we go. Kyoka, once again, just kind of using the Wolf Fair to essentially space. Great uh, air dodge through, but once again, Multi doing such a good job as DDD commanding all space. Here comes Rocket Hammer. Not going to be able to take it, but unfortunately, Kyoka doesn't get the punish. So once again, just going from ledge to ledge here, that Gordo is such a pain to deal with on Wi-Fi and offline as well. Yeah, just a, just an irritating move in general. Sometimes it's like, oh, I can just swing on it for free and it gets sent back and DDD is such an easy character to beat. And then it hits at like some weird corner that you never expected and gets around your hitbox. Very true. All right, Multi though does take the first stop. Uh, the Wolf Bayonet actually hitting it back, kind of funny. But here comes here comes Gordo falling from the sky once again. All right, great grab though by Multi going for the up air. Unfortunately, not the correct option. Good, going to be able to inhale. Let's look. Unfortunate oh. once again, missing. Yeah, falling just short on that recovery there. I mean, that is Wolf's greatest weakness is off stage game. It's not all that bad but sometimes it's just not enough to get back. And now we have a EDD rocking the 140% near max rage. Now officially max rage at 150. Anything can happen here. But he is stuck at the ledge oh. and there we go. Stuck yeah. on the feet of Wolf. Yeah, jumping jumping on ledge is never like the correct option for me. Like I feel like a lot of people default to their up smash and with Wolf literally extending himself into the air uh that hitbox is pretty forgiving not even scoops at times from the sides uh so once again kyoka gonna be able to take down multi here but now you are a two stock or one stock can't even remember uh wolf going up against the rest of the team and we can only imagine who's coming out now and that could possibly be time gear yeah uh again a player who has a reputation around these parts but it's actually going to be Rin Rin with Snake coming out. So maybe saving time gear for the potential emergency situation. Also, being that this is the best of three, they might not want to show their big guns just yet. <laughs> very, very true. Uh, Snake Wolf is definitely one of those matchups as well that could go either way. I feel like if you do not know how to deal with a snake grenade, any type of 
any type of you know neutral with snake is rough and irritating and annoying and wolf does have you know reflector but when you're stuck between two grenades they're both gonna blow up and then you just get comboed into pieces so i want to see where we're gonna go for stage i feel like stage is gonna be really important here i would never take uh snake to battlefields but i have a feeling that's where we're gonna be going yeah also lyric on the real uh you gotta slide me the amazon link for those lights on your wall which ones? The ones the, these or the ones that were the, sent the, to me by Sheets? No, because oh, sheets, sheets literally sent you the Triforce ones. They sent me a birthday gift. <laughs> it like, was so cool, and that was in there. <laughs> you mean like the uh, competitors to my good friends over at Wawa? Yeah, no, I mean Pennsylvania, Jersey. That's like kind of how it goes. But right. uh, Sheets is like located like far out in Pennsylvania. I have no idea how they know me. I I just. I don't even know how they have my address. I'll be honest, but they sent That's me so it, random. So. But no, I did mean the other ones, though. Yeah, the Nano Leaf. These yeah, yeah. are the Nano Leaf uh, Rhythm Editions. I'll send them to you. Uh, they're yeah. expensive, though. But yeah, these are cool. Um, they're always my talking point. They're custom programmable, which means like you can change the colors. Uh, but you can also I just here's the shill, I guess. Um, if you have music playing, it'll react to the music. I was already sold, but now I'm like, <laughs> I'll pass it to you after. Yeah. All sure. right. Rin Rin though, Snake, once again, I hate Snake. Snake is such a boring character. I mean, you played Brawl Max, so you know what this character is really capable of. Yeah, hey, um, I, I, I made Snake for like the first couple months of Ultimate. You're terrible. Too, so you're terrible. I, <laughs> we might have some different opinions on the character. I, I personally right. love him. I think he's, you know, super creative and, uh, and expressive and, that's really like the best you can ask for with a, a zoner archetype. And he gets down and dirty up close. You know, he's got some of the best normals out there. Um, but I could understand why his opponents hate him. So <laughs> we'll Very see. True. We'll see if Rin Rin is able to drive that frustration through to Kyoka. I mean, he only has to take one stock at this point, right? So pretty favorable odds, if you ask me. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely one of those, definitely one of those uh, character matchups that once again, you just have to know. Um, I know for us here in Pennsylvania, we just don't have snakes, so it, it's kind of hard to see, but I mean, really, Rin Rin, three stocks, with Kyoka only at one, so gotta see how this one's gonna go. Yeah, Snake is scary enough when he has one stock and you have three, but now for yeah. you on the other foot, I gotta say, I'm feeling for Kyoka. This is, this is gonna be rough. Snake is such a difficult character to make comebacks against, and it's really just because he doesn't care if he gets hit in the process. He has a one-frame move that can hit both of you guys, and, uh, you know, when we're talking about a character like Wolf, there's a significant weight gap here as well. So, literally, Rin Rin can just press B every time Kyoka hits him for two full stocks, and then come back and hit one up to him. Yeah, that's very true. So far, Kyoka, though, doing not a bad job avoiding a lot of the snake grenades, rolling out a lot as well. Uh, so I feel like that's something that Rin Rin's going to be able to be able to kind of pick up. But they're already sitting at 106. And he's uh -oh. already stuck with the C4. So you know what <gasps> Rin Rin's looking for. And he's just looking for an explosion there. Man, we were talking about Fear Factor when DDD was on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, forget about the rest of the match against Snake, which is scary enough, but then when you have that c4 stuck on you oh my god it feels like you have no options like everything you do is incorrect and man that was a a pretty rough first game of the set here it looked like miami university was just the stronger team here we'll see maybe if a, a little bit of a better start can help i mean yagi was looking very comfortable in the dd matchup and then yeah. ever since that crash into the wall it was never the same that's very true so once again that is going to be game one I believe if we don't have any more players left um heading on over into uh heading on into the miami university of ohio uh once again being led by time gear we haven't seen time gear uh yeah but you brought this up earlier max i really want to see michigan state versus versus uh, miami university because it's a lot of zoners that are going to be on the screen but still once again time gear one of the best of the best right now in terms of their character yeah, also, I got an update. It turns out the coach for University of Mount Union is actually someone who I know from, like, way back in the day, from, like, Shuffle 2014. Really? And, uh, who? Yeah, yeah uh, his name's Derek, and he's their coach. So he, he was hitting me with some live updates. They were 6-6 six and six in stocks against MSU in Game 1. I'm not sure where that's holding at now. That was a couple minutes ago. But it looks like there might be a, a few teams who are able to step into MSU and give them a run for their money. So I don't know. All right. Well, once again, uh, 
we're definitely looking forward to it. I love how, I love how, once again, Smash community runs so deep. So ties literally run everywhere. Uh, this game can take you anywhere. It's been the only reason I've traveled, honestly. I've never like gone on like a real vacation. It's like, oh, there's a tournament in Vegas. All right, I'm going to Vegas for the tournament. Right. So we're going to see that same exact starting matchup uh, go again with uh, Zaki, starting with the Diddy Kong once again, going up against Multi. And let's see if Multi can have that run that they had last game. Yeah, for real. I don't want to say it was luck, but it was definitely a blessing from the gods. That's for sure. Wow, I'll grab you and I'll throw you. All right, kid. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if all that talk is going to be good for something or if this time around, Yagi is just going to like keep his head on straight the whole time. Carrying the forward smash right there, I like that. And I also like the down throw into late up air trying to get a follow up to another aerial off. Whoa! Okay. Okay, Captain Falcon. Jeez, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, shines of brilliance there, but Yagi got to be careful once again. This is exactly what happens game one. I know Max, you're kind of expecting something. I'm expecting something. Uh, Multi going out with a couple more inhales. I know it worked for them a lot last game, but there's a lot of ending lag on it too, and Diddy Kong is very quick to punish. So. Once again, the Nair forward air, so brutal. The Gordo hit into the dash, not gonna be able to do anything, but here we go. Yagi can potentially take this first stock, but great air dodge by Multi, gonna be able to return to the stage safely. Ooh, and the inhale, yep. Holding shield against your opponent's ledge option is generally very strong. But not when they have an aerial command grab like that. That said, Yagi does manage to take the first stock here. Oh, hit off the barrels? Oh, still alive though. Okay, I believe actually, uh, I, I know in Brawl this is a thing. I'm pretty sure it's persisted through the other games that you actually take less knockback or some kind of modified knockback when Diddy is on his barrels. That might have contributed to his survival there. Wow! Almost getting hit by the DDD forward smash. Wouldn't have killed, but still would have just sent a message. Yeah, very true. All right, Yagi doing a lot better this game. Stocks are even, of course, two to two. Once again, multi, I feel like they're looking for a little bit of a different movement option with the uh, inhale, but it's just getting caught so, so much. I do also feel like Yagi's doing a much better job getting around Gordos this game. Um, and the Diddy Kong's really shining the way, you know, the matchup should be. But once again, inhale gonna come through. Yagi going up there for a fair, almost gets a whole up smash into the face though. Well, Yagi has just been turned the wrong way for so many of these little punishes. I feel like all that missed damage is starting to add up. Yeah, maybe even an extra 10% would have killed EDD off the forward smash there. Let's see, banana in hand. No tech, <laughs> letting the, just laying down and letting the Gordo hit him, and then the up air afterward. That is, that's what happens against DDD, man. Like, Smash Brothers is not played in a vacuum. So what you should expect in these matchups, it's not always going to pan out. Now we have, yet again, even stocks beating the roll. Oh my god! How many forward smash attempts have we seen from multi this game? It's gotta be yeah, at least four or five. Yeah, no, it's definitely been a lot. Some of them have been a little wishful, as I'd like to think. Uh, once again, these inhales are definitely something this game. Uh, but percentages are basically even until that up smash connects. I like the way that Multi did throw the Gordo on top of the platform to at least be able to cover what's coming down. But once again, I feel like Multi's getting a little bit wishful with some of these, and uh, Yagi is really just punishing accordingly. But let's see how this ends, especially I don't think Yagi can take another back air to the face or a Gordo to the face either. And that is going to be Multi narrowly escaping now with one stock for Miami University of Ohio here. Some beautiful aim right there from Multi yeah. at the end, just sniping Diddy off the stage in the lower corner. Man, impressive stuff. I mean, who says the King's archery skills aren't on point, right? Very true. It's not just sitting in the throne room all day being lazy. So, uh, wow, pretty solid opening there for Miami University yet again. And it looks like we're going to have the Zelda step right back up to the plate. And that is, of course, Mr. Pants. So the pants. we'll see <sighs> if it's going to work out. Yeah, for sure. Max, do you wish they still had Gordo dashing? Remember that from Brawl? What was where that? You, or the Waddle dashing? It's called Waddle dashing, right? I where kind you, like, of threw, remember it. Where you like threw Waddle D and you could like project yourself across the stage? Really? You don't remember? No, I I don't remember that. Are you that. kidding me? Yeah, I'll have I to show like it to I... you. Maybe it's another Smash game that runs off of Brawl that I'm thinking of that you could do Gordo, uh, Waddle oh, dashing. Oh, right. Super Smash <laughs> Brothers Brawl, of course. Yeah, right. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Project Mayonnaise, because it's not a real Smash game. Yeah, uh, so we're going to see Zelda. Uh, we're going to see uh, Zelda come back again. Once again, the momentum of that match actually slowed down quite a bit when we saw that. But 
you know, it's only one stock this time, so it could potentially go in the way of um, pants here, but we'll have to see. Yeah, this is one of those matchups that I, I feel like Zelda should win as well, but like <laughs> matchup knowledge, player skill differences, like so many things factor into the actual outcomes. It's not just like you can hard counter pick somebody and expect to walk away completely clean. We'll see though, if Pants can bring the Zelda back to some greater success, I feel like there was just too much of a reliance on the B moves before, right? Like the Din's fires, not the biggest threat out there, right? Doesn't occupy too much space on the screen. The yeah. Phantom does, and I think it's a great tool when you're an advantage, but to just throw it out in neutral is a little risky, uh, just because there is that delay before the arc launches. Yeah, so let's see how this one's gonna go. I do want to see Pants use a little bit more Nehru's love, but not so obvious with it. When you throw yourself using Din's fire off the like off the ledge, you're putting yourself at the mercy of really ledge trapping here. Once again, there's a lot of ending lag on a lot of things that Zelda does. So I want to see a couple more like aerial plays on Nair and up tilt too. Up tilt will scoop DDD from pretty far away as Zelda. Uh, so once again, I really want to see just a little bit more aggression from Pants, but doing it really smart. Running up and grabbing two on DDD, the elevator always looks good, though, um, would also help. But that Zelda's dash attack is very deceptively strong, Max. It can actually KO you at, at the right percent and at the right angle. Yeah, and a pretty quick move, too. A little little burstiness to it, just to get you right in there. Yep. I think that's a tool we might need to see a little bit more of, especially if Multi is just comfortable tossing these Gordos out. You do have to challenge that aggressively. It can't just always be projectiles versus projectiles. Yep. I like the way that Pants did hold shield there, uh, expecting the Gordo to come out, but unfortunately not going to do anything. Rolled back into the corner, and the, the Gordo was there to chase, but once again, Multi just going to have their way off stage just a little bit looking for something the extender is going to do it oh okay oh my <laughs> god actually stuck gordo into the wall i don't think i've ever seen that before that was just about the worst case scenario for zelda right yeah <laughs> it's so true and they got him washed away oh they were expecting the land down in that uh ferrari's wind would actually take it up in the elevator but not to be able to find anything that sucks Ooh, and there oh. we go. yeah oh, oh not gonna so actually hard. take it yeah no rage yet either that Kind of sucks too. Roll once again. Oh, oh it doesn't place. take it up. <laughs> Unfortunate for didn't pants believe. here. Oh my god. There it is. Yeah. Din's fire always gets stronger for those of you guys who don't know. Din's fire gets stronger the further you send it. So uh going from all the way from one side of the stage to the other, that's gonna be a pretty big fireball. And that is going to be pants only losing one stock here, uh, but advancing on into the next round. All right, that was uh, that was so rough to watch. Like the <laughs> yeah. Gordo stuck in the wall and the dash mm -hmm. attack just looming in the distance. But man, Miami University of Ohio, not from Florida, by the way. <laughs> they are in the Midwest. Yeah, that reason. was a little trippy for me too. I was like, wait, Miami, Ohio. Okay, yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Let's ride with it. When I first heard about that school, I was also very confused. But um, hey, putting up a big dub here, two zero and uh multi just soloing the second time around oh wait no sorry there's one player left uh and it is going to be kyoka with the wolf again my bad yes. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here that was just <laughs> such an impressive performance um and oh and you know what pants is still alive sorry guys i'm just, just you're out of it anything. it's I, okay look it's getting dark outside i'm it old, is dark know, outside I'm, might be sundowning <laughs> a little bit all right well time gear is coming in now uh, versus Zelda, Min Min is the preferred character. I would like to see who else Time Gear does play because, you know, a lot of us did have mains before DLC comes out. Uh, but Min Min really runs Wi-Fi. So once again, the Min Min that we all know and we love is here to play. And I got to see how uh, Pants is going to be going to be able to handle this because Min Min has a reflect. And if it's timed perfectly, that Phantom is going right back at you and it's going to KO you pretty early. Yeah, that would be really unfortunate to see. And also, it does require a good deal of precision to hit Min Min's up smash reflector on something like that. But I don't know. I, if we witness that in the course of this match, I'll be very impressed. Oh, by the way, uh, not only does Min Min rule Wi-Fi, but I think she particularly rules Wi-Fi collegiate. We, uh, really? Me and Rod 
commentated uh, a Philly Esports collegiate circuit uh, that was like mostly teams from Pennsylvania and a player named Ice on Deck, nine stop, oh. three crews with Min Min. Yes, very true. Ice does attend locals here in Pennsylvania as well. That is very not surprising. They made Min Min and Toon Link, so yeah, I know, uh, right? Zoner main. Uh, but this is exactly how I saw this match going to go. Justin, aka Pants, is going to just run back to the platform, set up Phantom, because that is the only safe place to go versus Min Min. But unfortunately for Justin, it's just that Time Gear has no fear right now. And there's that reflect that I was talking about, Max. And the thing is, you can like drift with the dragon as well, and that could really like punish you right out of teleport. So Time Gear looking really good on their on their still first stock here, but we know that Pants can hit the Ferrari's win confirmed, so I'm wondering if they're going to bait out Time Gear to land on the shield a little bit more so they can get that punish. If I'm being honest, this looks like Zelda's worst match. I cannot think of oh, one thing it she is. can do in, in it, it absolutely is. Dash attack, though, not going to be able to KO. Uh, sends it right up, though, Din's fire. Uh, once again, it travels for a really long time. Gotta watch, though. See, that was one of those times where you could easily catch Min Min with the four A's win, uh, especially on dash attack. But yeah, this is brutal. It hurts. Yeah, oh Megawatt, it's God. over. GG. Yeah. Yeah, can't, <laughs> can't reflect that, even though nope. it kind of looks like a projectile. It is not one. So, wow, Time Gear showing why he has a reputation as an extremely strong player um not just online but i would guess in general so miami university of ohio one player away from taking this 2-0 it's going to be min, yep. min versus wolf you're gonna have kyoka step back up to the plate here this is a, a roster with only three players on it by the way almost every other school i believe does have alts um but saint ambrose just rocking three they're stuck with these guys and they're just gonna ride or die with them yeah, for sure. Uh, that's the best type of brotherhood when you think about it, right? Like, it's it's just the three amigos from St. Ambrose. Right, like, right, right. Somebody get a picture of them, Photoshop some sombreros on, like, on their head or something. Uh, <laughs> Wolf Min Min, just... <sighs> Min Min for me as a character, yes, of course we... Not, you know, the fan favorite Min Min, but... It's just so hard to fight against. You can't deny that. I mean, Min Min really commands not only just the ground space, but also the air space because she can just keep extending herself out. So it's really going to be up to Kyoka to see how they're going to want to approach that. You know what, Bowser? Honestly, I've heard that Bowser does well versus Min Min, and that is like not a meme at all. Very interesting. Okay, I would have expected quite the opposite, but we'll see how it goes. Um, Min Min, I think it has something to do with command grab. I think. Interesting. Oh, but going to going to battlefield too. This one's gonna be interesting. All right, Kyoka, let's see exactly what the, what the deal is going to be here. Uh, but a lot of falling fair so far. But I can't say that I'm not at least entertained by the thought that Bowser could potentially win this matchup. I mean, time here though with the grabs. Here we go. Yeah, I feel like this could get so ugly for Bowser if he can't find a way in. But. Uh, if you do manage to block at relatively close range, I guess you get the up the out of shield and then just juggle Min Min from there. Gonna knock down in the corner. Ooh, the stare down and shield, but it's gonna be time here. Blessing himself out of trouble and just continuing this onslaught. Ooh, I really enjoyed the boost from stage up into the dragon laser. That was so, so cool. Bowser, though, uh, that nair really does hurt. I've gotten hit with the. Uh... Oh. <laughs> What if oh, they and Min Min almost lived! Yeah, yeah. Min Min almost lived. <laughs> you know what? You might as well have a little bit of fun with it and get that first stock out of there. Unfortunately, uh, Kyoka gonna land on the platform, and this is, you know, what Time Gear is really known for, this really pressing offense on Wi-Fi, and it just is so, so strong. Once again, looking for anything, though. Not gonna be able to find much, but it's just keeping Kyoka on this left side of the stage. This is the first time we're actually gonna be able to see them land, at least. Yeah, Time Gear despite playing Min Min, is pretty aggro. I mean, he has not let up the pressure on Kyoka whatsoever, and it's looking like this match might oh! just go down right there! Oh, Lord! <laughs> the suicide down air from Time Gear are gonna close it out in an emphatic two-stock fashion. Put another W on the board for Miami University of Ohio. That was a really solid performance, and this is the team that I have my eyes on to yeah. take on MSU, for sure. Mm-hmm. I definitely, I definitely want to see how they're going to do once again. But that is, once again, the power of the captain of uh, MSU. And that's, or 
totally blanking. There it is. Miami University of Ohio, and that's Time Gear. And Time Gear, once again, coming out with a super strong showing. I, I want to see the twins versus Time Gear. Both of them. I want to see both of them versus Time Gear. That's going to be a good one. Yeah, agreed. Mm. All right. So, guys, this is just the beginning. Of course, you know, only the second crew battle for the day. And we've got more coming up for you tomorrow as well. So... We're going to see more of MSU. We're going to see more of Miami University of Ohio. We're going to see more of um, St. Ambrose as well. But, of course, you guys are going to need to keep it locked right here because we're going to a quick break. Don't go anywhere because we'll be back very soon. swing and so upon learning that they're like okay i'm gonna put some fear in you and what do you, you do when you're scared? i mean scared me too and what do you do when you're scared you fall back on what makes you feel safe and what makes Ro rosalina feel safe apparently is getting off stage and swinging let me but, let me say this mm -hmm. i as a spectator really enjoyed kevin's play style in that he was a very aggressive Rosalina, even when he didn't have moves. That was really fun to watch. However, um, Rosalina, you don't see that very often because that's not her ideal game plan. And mm -hmm. even when Kevin would have the lead, because he was so aggro, a small mistake from Pete, or excuse me, a small mistake from JLB uh, was just a stock anywhere around 80%. Rosa never hit triple digits. Like he would go in a little, he would be, he would overextend a little bit and then get like down tilt F smashed, or he would get hard charge D smashed. Like, uh, I think moving forward, and again, this is a best of three, so you know, Kevin has another chance at this. I think they should play again. I think Kevin's just gonna have to slow down the pace just a little bit. I know aggro Rosalina is probably really fun, it was very entertaining to watch, but uh, against a character with the knockback of K rule and considering how light Rosalina is. I don't think that's the play you want. I don't think that's the game you want to play. Yeah, I. Listen, I thought it was going to be the edge guards. I thought it was going to be the edge guards. But on mm -hmm. stage, they were slowly able to find the way in on cave. I, like, again, think back to that first stock. That first stock is how you need to play it the whole time. I love to see you not play it like that, but. Just stuffing out K Rule. Don't let K Rule interact with you. Let him play with your little kid. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's really. Send the child. Yep. Boy, you're like, you know, send, send him off. Send him off to do his job. Because when they were full screen, the, I could not fathom an answer when they were full screen. I did not know what K Rule was supposed to do from that distance. But Kevin closed the gap, and I mean, ooh, took a gamble, didn't have to take. I don't know. You're right, though. When they were. When they were when he was playing that matchup appropriately, it literally looked like 100 to 0. I did not know what he was supposed to do with it. I think the game was won when JBL took that first stock. You remember that? Like, we were almost, like, like it felt like it was unwinnable. You were saying if you had to counterpick an unwinnable matchup, and then what happened? They got, like, that crazy combo on the left side of the stage and then followed up with a down tilt forward smash, and then it was, like, 
the mentality was broken and you just wanted to make up that deficit <laughs> you wanted to bring it back you kept trying to again and again and again but kevin couldn't find the way to do it they're grasping at sand and well jbl and that you're, you're right and that's gotta that's gotta that's gotta hurt psychologically too because you're like yo the first minute of this i'm about to put this on twitter like i have an infallible game plan nothing can stop me and you get down to the f smash you're like all right, nah, that wasn't real. <laughs> like you, you almost don't even want to believe. It. You're like, nah, that was, you know, what stuff happens, stuff happens. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I, if they do play again, I just, I, I would say, I don't know if anyone on uh, their crew is watching or listening to the stream just for funsies while they're waiting in between. And I don't want to coach, but running in against K rule was not the wave. It's not the wave. Yeah, it's sad. It's a big heavy character. You want to combo them. That's what so you hear all the time. Oh, heavies are so easy to combo. I. Mm. You just gotta say no. Say no to K rule. Say no. You know, and even the kills he was getting were like pretty solid because like he was dying from one forty five off the top, uh, and it wasn't even Luma hitting. It was actually just like the actual Rosalina hitbox hitting. It wasn't even Luma, so it was just mm-hmm. like that looks consistent. That looks pretty good. I feel like K rule landing against Rosa would be really tough. And then Kevin was just like, "What if I just step on your face, bro?" I'm like, yeah. Like, or uh, uh, JLB was like, "What if I just step on you? Like, what do you do about it?" Mm-hmm. Like JLB, they throw out a crown. Kevin says, "No, you don't have a crown. It's gone. <laughs> throw out a cannonball. It's gone. <laughs> you try to fight me. It's gone. It's just done. You get hit by the most disjointed up air in the game. Well, no, but close One to of. it. And in in the you know in a in a BP before Pyra." Yeah, in that time frame. Yeah, it probably would have been. Um, yep. Or Palu. BP. Forget it. You know, both of those. Uh, but, yeah. So, I wonder what they're going to do now. All right, welcome on back. So we actually are going to be jumping into the middle of one of our crew battles going on right now. So uh, you got myself and Max getting hype on the other screen. Uh, I believe it's going to be Northward versus Kentucky, which is already in process as well. So we're jumping in mid-set. So I'm excited to see uh, Northwood once again. Uh, But apparently this may be the only chance we get to see Kentucky. I don't have a roster for them. Um, so I'm interested to see who is going to be on the back end for that one. Ooh, okay, we're going in mid-game. Okay, so we got Thor on the Falco and Higgs on Jigglytuff as well. So I really want to see how that one's going to be able to go, because I do feel like Falco definitely wins this matchup, but, uh, Jigglypuff is still such a pain for Falco to juggle sometimes. Right, here we go. Higgs gonna be able to get the grab. We know that we know that Higgs uh, is very good at getting the combo when they need to. All right, up there is not gonna be able to come out. Almost comes down with the downer. Not gonna be able to find it either. Ooh, okay, but the F smash though, not going to trade Higgs. Actually gonna be able to live that one, even though it looks like Falco actually got it. But here comes that little bit of you know pain train from Jigs. Already at 37 percent, and we're looking for something else. All right, yeah. I, I would offer the lasers too. All right. Yep. <laughs> All right. Jigglypuff got in there. Oh, okay. Air dodge. Higgs looking really good right now. Base out the air dodge. Looking for anything else. Not going to be able to find anything. Okay. All right. And they're in. Into the fair. Once again, there's so many good. There's so many good things coming up from Higgs right now. And I don't think that Thor can catch it. So the Falco up smash is going to be able to take it. Is there anything else though? All right, down air once again. Ooh, okay, leads into the fair, tries to find a way off stage, not gonna be able to. 
Uh, Thor has to watch the air in, because once again, here comes Jigglypuff off stage, looking a little scary. Thor gonna back up. I do agree with the decision here, but Higgs is gonna get a free grab. Looking for the edge guard and the F smash all the way in, and Higgs only gonna lose one stock. Uh, and Northwood is up currently in the set. Uh, one game to nil, so we have no idea where uh, KU is in terms of players right now, but this is looking really good for Higgs. Oh, production? Yeah. Okay, so this was the first match of the second series, so Higgs leading two, uh, two stocks to zero. Uh, Thor is gonna, and Kentucky is going to send in their next player. Okay, totally fine. And yeah, once again, we're working through some technical difficulties with Max, but that's totally okay. I'll hold it down for as long as I can here, of course. And yeah, once again, I'm not quite sure on the Kentucky roster, uh, but having Falco in the roster, Falco is one of those characters that has been coming up in terms of hype in the meta too. And there's Max, we can hear you now. I think, pretty sure. Totally fine. Once again, we are just waiting for Kentucky. We are just waiting for Kentucky to come on out now. Their next player. <laughs> totally fine. Keep working through it. But yeah, we're waiting for their next player. I'm interested to see who they're going to bring out versus the Puff. Because once again, Jigglypuff, while I do think Falco is a great character for Jigglypuff, I do think that Jigs does have the advantage off stage as well. We know that Falco is very limited. And we saw that in that match. So let's see who exactly is going to come out next. All righty, here we go. Stepping up to bat. And we'll probably get a stage change. Uh, one more time production. Buttery. All right. Buttery. <laughs> Buttery is the next one going. I'm not quite sure of the player. I don't know who they play. But let's see what exactly is going to be the correct pick and stage. But let's see. I want to see who they're going to throw in versus Jigglypuff. That's, that's kind of the big flashing red lights for me. Is who is going to come up against Jigglypuff. Because Jigglypuff really... Uh, one of those super, super, like, mid-tier characters, but we know their players can do really well with them. So, once again, Higgs really proving themselves in this second uh, second match that we've seen them in today. Uh, playing really, really well for Northwood so far. And we're just waiting up right now. I think we're probably just getting some more stages in. And then we'll be on our way. Okay, so we're seeing so much Terry today. Uh, Buttery gonna bring out the Terry uh, versus Jigglypuff. And this is kind of the same thing that I feel like is going on with Falco as well. Uh, I do feel like Terry can have the onstage advantage, but I do feel like if Higgs were to able, were able to bring Buttery off the stage, that it's gonna be big trouble. Oh, wait, I think they did forget to uh, lose stocks here, so I think they are just going to reset. Yeah, they're just gonna reset. So I do believe Higgs has two stocks. Uh, Buttery does have all three. So once again, let's see how exactly this one's gonna go. FD is the pick. I can't say I disagree with FD, especially for a character like Terry. Um, FD is a little bit bigger though than um, FD is a little bit bigger though than a lot of our normal stages. Uh, so while I think Jigglypuff may die a little bit quicker, we have to keep that in mind. So no platforms as well, which will definitely help the movement. Alrighty, here we go once again. Shouldn't be no issues unless there was a um, unless there was a mispress in characters. Doesn't look like there was. So let's see how this one's gonna go on FD. Higgs does have to uh, SD first before they go in. I know Buttery was really keen on going in first. Um, so let's see if that aggression keeps up inside of the second game, inside of this series. All right, here we go. Starting off with the power wave once again. Can't say I disagree with it either. I like the way that they're going in uh, both on the ground and in the air as well. Crack shoot gonna go in. Ooh, okay, finds the up B as well. No punish though from Higgs. That does send Terry into free fall as well. Gets the trip though, not gonna be able to read with the pound. Keep going. 
into the <laughs> into the lovely uh, Jab Jab Power Dunk. And this is what we were worried about before. Once again, everybody, this is the one thing that Jigglypuff does have over Terry. One big confirm can lead into the next, and that is the stock essentially gone after Buttery did all of that work in the beginning. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of pound fares come out from Higgs as well. Down. Oh, goes for the rest. Not going to be able to wake up in time. Oh, but they are. Unfortunately, the uh, Punish from Buttery was not there. Go Meter is online, though. But great avoid out of the Go Meter because, geez, you don't want to lose another stock. Jigglypuff, jab, jab, power dunk. You're going to seal it. Buttery, two stocks. Pigs, one stock. Honestly, it's pretty even if you can take this stock right now. But you have a Jigglypuff versus an entire Go Meter and a lot of good reads so far. So, gotta be careful. Buttery can easily make this a lot easier for them. Find the Power Geyser. That is going to be it. Buttery only losing one stock. Northwood needs to send in their next player. Now, if I go back into Northwood's uh, Northwood's uh, roster that I have pulled up here, we also have Rage Link. I would love to see the Terry Ditto. Uh, that is maximum chaos, but we'll see who exactly they are going to bring out. Well, we could be potentially seeing Rage Link. We could potentially be seeing uh, Seth Sational as well. Uh, Max was hyping up Seth a lot a little bit earlier. Uh, we see that Captain Falcon, Sephiroth, and uh, that would be definitely very interesting to play into Terry. Uh, but once again, I'm all here for the madness. So I would really love to, uh, I would really love to uh, see the Terry ditto because once again, you never see two Terrys in the same spot. And Max, once again, Wait. struggling to get the audio, but that's totally hey. okay. Hey! I, got I have been sitting in the call waiting the whole time, and I heard absolutely nothing. Oh. <laughs> I was like, All wow, right. this is a long button check. No, that was that was real. Um, so, from what you saw, it was Buttery coming in from Kentucky, taking out Higgs. Uh, welcome back, Max. Uh, welcome back to the, to the broadcast. Uh, I'm thinking that they're going to bring out the Rage Link. And we're going to see the Terry Ditto. And that would just be Maximum Chaos. Oh my god. If we have to watch two Terrys duking it out. <laughs> at least uh, the offstage game won't be as one-sided, right? Because the Terry mm -hmm. doing the edge guarding won't have to... Um, or won't want to take as many risks off the stage as somebody mm -hmm. like Rob, for example. But yeah, also yeah. shout out to Discord. Because I did nothing. <laughs> I literally didn't touch any dials, any settings. And then I left and came back into the call and suddenly it works. So, you know. Today's just that's, cursed. It's I'm going to blame the weather. Yeah, honestly, that's fair. And we have a whole nother day tomorrow, too. So we could get out the kinks today and then tomorrow will be absolutely perfect. So once yeah. again, we got Kentucky. Uh, we don't have a roster for Kentucky, unfortunately, on our side. Uh, it wasn't in the sheet that Kilo Miles did provide for us, but that's OK. Uh, but once again, we know Northwood and we know that they have been playing uh, decently well. Just waiting on Seth to come out. I would love to see Seth versus uh, you know, buttery Terry, but I once again, I'm all for Terry Ditto. Is it the Terry Ditto production? All right, it we is. are gonna get the all Terry. Right. <laughs> We're gonna get this Terry Ditto. I'm so excited. Um, uh, once again, oh God, Terry. Terry's one of those characters. I feel like you know was what they'd like to call like a niche pick for dlc like if you played king of fighters you were absolutely hyped and if you did not play king of fighters growing up if you don't know what king of fighters were you were just like uh okay i guess just another shoto so i don't know we'll see how this one goes yeah i feel like um this is gonna rewrite the book on what's considered a slobber knocker right like this is a character <laughs> who hits super hard all of his moves cancel into his specials and you're just going to see the damage rack up very quickly. Of course, then there's the go meter to worry about. So when he does have his supers online, that'll just be more stock erasure. So here it is. Buttery <laughs> going up against Rage Link. Yep. Same thing that we're going to see. Honestly, I think it's the same skin too. 
It is. Oh, wait, no, one's the Neo Geo. Okay, I was so scared oh for a second. I was like, wait. All right, well, yeah, no, they look exactly alike. So um, we're just going to have to look really carefully. But Buttery, Rage Link, oh, jeez. This is going to be this is going to be definitely very interesting, especially because this is basically a fresh game. Um, just one stock down for the side of Kentucky. So let's see how this one's going to go, though. Yeah, so far, nothing too chaotic. And of course, uh, Buttery is the one whose tag is Nikio, and for M Pots is Rage Link. Just for those of you guys who are confused by the two red Terries on the screen, uh, and also for me, so I can reiterate that and not forget it. Go. I love the up B out of shield there. Uh, Rage Link does have go meter though, so that could definitely prove helpful. And that power guys are almost landing once again. Uh, that hitbox is so insanely big. So when you punish it, especially with Buster Wolf, you know, it'll do a lot of damage. They're sitting practically at the same percent though. It's really about in character dittos. Uh, it's really just about like knowing a preferred option, but geez, here we go. Buster Wolf, so good. Oh, and the power dunk, yeah, right over the power wave. Yeah. Party with a, a lot of ways around his own moves. Oh, what? The Yay. combo dropped. He stuck a jab out and just got whip punished. So, all right, a little bit of an abridged combo right there, or uh, an adaptation of what you normally see, which is that. Let's get a jab. Answered the power dunk. Ooh, okay. Jab, jab in into the dash attack. Pretty smart. Oh, okay. Links it up with the up air. Oh, almost finds the F-Smash. Not going to be able to find anything else, though. So. I like the nares across the stage, though. Looking for anything here. They both look so similar. I I'm struggling to see who is who, too, Max, with being 100% honest. The jab, jab once again. Here we go, though. Buttery has to make something work. They are on the verge of losing their stock here to Rage Link. And the Terry Ditto will be decided. The Jab Jab Power Dunk ends up working out for Rage Link here. All they need is a good edge guard, and this could potentially be it. Ooh, okay. And Rage Link just with the stock advantage, game advantage as well for his team. And yeah, all right, we're going to see Northwood continue on on the right path here. Yep. And they do only have one player left on the side of Kentucky as well. Once again, we were thrown in. Uh, into the center of this one. We want to make sure that uh, Kentucky did get some screen time. So uh, Northwood is up 1-0 in the set, and they are now up another player in the game. So uh, this is going to be the last uh, player coming on out uh, for Kentucky as well. I want to see who they have. Once again, Terry. Terry's an interesting character. I've never seen so many Terrys, and we've only seen two. Right, yeah, it's just that one of them has appeared on the screen a couple times, so. Yeah, that's true. It's Definitely very getting very your true. your daily dose here. Mm -hmm. All, All right, guys. This is approaching the end of the road. for. The okay, so we have Hyde. All right, so we have Hyde coming out from Kentucky. No idea who they play. Um, Midwest is so interesting with their Smash scene because I feel like they're kind of like Tri-State where they have a lot of sub-regions within their one kind of full region here. So you have yep. like Ohio, you have Indiana, you know what I mean? Indiana is being ran by probably still Mysterica, you know, Palu, Zelda, a um, couple other like really good Indiana players in there as well. And you also have, you know, like St. Louis and Chicago. I feel like when people see Midwest, they're only thinking of like Ned and like maybe Apollo Kage. And you have so many regions split up into just this very like small name it's very hard to tell who comes from where inside of the midwest yeah well i mean depending on who you ask it's anywhere between like 12 and 14 or 15 states that comprise the region so yeah tri-state uh, even with just three we have a bunch of subdivisions to north jersey central jersey south jersey all the parts of new york um all the parts of pa of course and PA not even being part of Tri-State in real life. It's actually Connecticut. So, yeah, you know, it's actually Smash Connecticut. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It, it's so weird how, like, Smash is divided across, like, the U.S., especially in Japan as well. The geography is just divided by, like, province. And, like, that works out pretty well for them. But here it's, like, so, so different. Like, is, is South... Like, there's no real, like, South, right? It's, like, the three different versions of Florida. And then you have, like, Georgia and Texas. And, like, they're all very separate. So, right. okay. So, we're going to see Hyde play Cloud. Ooh. Uh, personally, one of my... Yeah, one of my favorite DLCs ever to come into this game. Uh, big Final Fantasy fan. On Kalos. 
Uh, this stage is definitely very interesting. Can't say that I'm a huge fan of Kalos normally, but uh, definitely for a cloud, I think the wall jump definitely does work here. So this, let's see how this one's gonna go. I would guess that this is Cloud's best or second best stage behind Battlefield. I think it really does work out for him. And like you said, the wall, but also the addition of the platforms gives him some interesting ways out of the corner and just off of the ledge. So yeah, I think Cloud really thrives here. Smart pick by Hyde and it's paying off. So far, just almost no damage on Rage Link's end whatsoever. And is that the first stock already? Yeah, it is. Linda Cross Slash, even the likes of Terry, who is crazy heavy, heavier than Snake, heavier than Ridley, heavier than Wario, still gonna fold for that. All right, well, looking for anything. Rage Link has to watch them uh, going right into the shields as well. Getting a little scary there. Oh, unfortunately, Limit Cross Slash is going to miss here. I like the way how Hive is playing so aggressive. Too. You can't really let Terry like land and get too comfortable. Ooh, reads the down smash there. This potentially be last stock max. Let's see Rage Link really kind of bleeding out here. The match has only been going on for about a minute, and it's just been all about hide so far. Really showing to be a strong anchor for Kentucky. All right, off stage. Yep, in the back air. Okay, cleaning it up. There we go. Hide, putting hey you on the back here. Yeah, for sure. Um, and now it's going to come down to last player versus last player here. And it's all even up as well. So we're going to see Seth come out now. Um, who I, Steph, if you're watching, play Sephiroth for the lore and like take him to Northern Cave or something. Like, do it for the lore. But I totally understand if the Falcon's going to be it. Uh, but so far, Hyde, really good on the cloud. Very fluid movement. Nothing, you know, to complain about yet. I mean, everything, you know, worked out pretty well. Yeah, I gotta agree. I was a fan of what I was seeing there. And you're saying you're a big Final Fantasy fan. You like Cloud as one of your favorite DLCs of all time. I have to co-sign that. Cloud and Sephiroth. Yeah, the definitely two the, the best. two that hit the hardest for me. Yeah. Yeah. Like Sora, I hate to say it. Like for the last spot, I felt like it was kind of ridiculous. But Cloud. I, like... I felt that too. Like everybody was screaming and crying, and I was just like, I kind of knew this was coming. You know what I mean? Like we we're just like, yeah, Sora's gonna be in it. Yeah. And like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just felt like the right way to end it all but you cannot beat the sephiroth like trailer that was right. insane that was the best reveal the best character not maybe not in terms of tier list but like the best reveal was definitely sephiroth Easy. agreed and before that it was it was cloud all right yeah oh, seth, on seth falcon. On falcon coming in okay come on seth <laughs> yeah i know man right like the, <laughs> come on the man do it for right the fans do it for the fans seth um, Cloud is one of the characters that Sephiroth answers the best, right? We were talking yeah. about how his matchup spread among good or meta-relevant characters is not necessarily so great. But I think against other sword characters, especially one with as limited of a recovery as Cloud, and, like, he doesn't have that fast forward air like Lucina does, for example, to kind of just, like, rush Sephiroth down. I think that matchup does work out quite well for him, and, I mean, poor Cloud really can't catch a break from this guy in any universe, even Smash. But, um, Seth... He's just going to go straight to the Falcon. I mean, this has been his character since Smash 4 came out. And okay. the name pun is nice and all that, but at the end of the day, it's about winning. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And especially because Northwood is up 1-0 in the series so far. Sure, they don't want to see this go any further. So this has got to come down to business. We're going on PS2, which I think is a great stage for both characters as well. Let's see, let's see if Seth can show us some Falcon stuff, because I feel like we've kind of gotten robbed of Falcon hype uh, just a little bit. I feel like some unfortunate things have happened to Seth, and we know how good this guy is. Hits the Nair, unable to hit the up smash. So let's see how exactly these are going to extend. All right, the cross slash stuffing out that jump in. Cloud, one of the best characters at anti-airing in the entire game. And it's all thanks to that move, right? It's most good. Ooh, and just swings the back air, whiffs, and then puts the limit cross slash out after that. Seth gonna run into it, looking for a punish, but not there, and suddenly this is Hyde's advantage here. Yeah, for sure. Commanding a lot of stage here, Hyde. I love the way that they charge limit, just automatically grab the ledge, going probably looking for that back air. Speaking of back air, Seth not gonna be able to find strong hit, but reads the up smash here. Could potentially be first stock for Northwood. Ooh, Ooh. The, or doesn't win, rather hits the shield with jab. And yeah, that's going to be just enough time for Hyde to drop shield down smash, whisking him away to the opposite direction. And here we go. Hey, you up a stock right now. Yeah, and Limit uh, doesn't get wasted there. At least put some percent on Seth here. <clears throat> Looking for the down tilt, but of course the up B right in. 
Seth only sitting at 18%. It still practically is even. It's all about this first string here, Max. Who's going to be able to take the first string the furthest? All right, here we go. But you have Falcon on the ledge here. Kind of hard to get up sometimes, especially versus a character like Cloud. This is rough. Crazy to just cut through the Raptor Boost start of a beat. But then the Raptor Boost armor cutting through Cross Slash at the beginning right there. And we have these two just trading blows. Falcon and Cloud, two characters kind of encapsulate that same energy. Very momentum based, aggressive characters. I mean, you could play them bait and punish heavy if you want as well, but they're huge hitboxes, strong power, high speed. It all kind of lends itself to this rushdown style. All right, here we go. And there it comes out. Ooh, okay, goes to the Raptor Boost in. Hyde going to use the limit there. I thought he had a pretty uh, stable punish too. Not exactly going to work out either, but the up smash red again, unfortunately not going to take the stock for Seth here. Oh, I thought he was jumping over him looking for a back there. Not going to be able to find it though. Down tilt. Okay, tries to go for one once again. Gotta watch oh. it though. Hyde, yeah, that was a little scary. Yeah, not committing to the second hit of his cross slash. Maybe just not recognizing it in time. It's actually kind of a small window to input that and actually get it. But we're going to see Falcons up B taking another stock here. Such a good move in this game. Alright, looking for it. Tolt off. Ooh, Seth. Ooh. This is going to be rough to come back. Hyde just can't let this go. Unfortunately, going to let him come back on. Falcon kick onto the stage. And now Seth, a, a fully angry Falcon here. And potentially one string away from sealing this out for Northwood. Still on notice here on the second stock, though. Almost 130%. Got a lot of ways to get rid of the stock here, but that's not going to be one of them. The cross slash into blind space. Maybe some nerves coming up from Hyde here. Starting to hit that panic button. Like, all right, I got to take the stock right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Especially with Falcon, you're going to do a lot of damage. Hyde really just needs, like, a back air from, like, center stage, but probably you can do it. You can't find it, though. If Tilt comes out once again, gonna charge the limit as much as possible. I mean, going into last stock with full limit, um, with a little bit of rage on you isn't the worst thing in the world, but not with the kind of momentum that Seth has right now. Oh, and he's so quick to pull the trigger on all hits of the cross slash right there. Seth not actually punishing, though, of course. A little harder to punish stuff on Wi-Fi, even if it's a huge miss like that. All right, use okay. this blade beam to get back on stage and add some damage and avoid the up B. Okay, things are starting to look a lot better for Hyde here. Now only down 25%, but that's starting to rack up with every hit that Seth gets. Falcon so menacing at these percents. Oh my God, forward smash definitely want to kill them. Yeah, you, smart use of the up B to get out as well. Gotta look for it. Uh, Hyde is really great on the ledge here, knows exactly how to get back, but it's so scary versus a character like Falcon. Forward throw is going to be the option here. Looking for the down air, Seth not going to be able to find it. He had the right idea with the up smash. I think he just let it fly a little too early, and that's a cloud with full rage and with full limits. So if I'm Seth, while I'm confident, you better watch oh, out. Oh, no! Oh, no! That's oh. so sad, Max. That's so sad for Hyde. Living in Spain without the S right there. <laughs> oh my God, that was that was just the power of Falcon's up B drift, right? It is a little trickier to punish than it looks like, just because of course he can drift so far left or right on the way down and hide, not recognizing that he needs to go a little bit further forward. And my Lord, uh, sensational. Uh, it's certainly a name that he lives up to. Yeah, for sure. Also sealing it out for Northwood once again. Uh, 2 -0. We've only seen 2 0 so far. We, I mean, both. I mean, we saw Northwood fall to Michigan State earlier today, and now we're seeing them 2 0 other schools too. So, you know, it's still looking really, really close. I can't wait to see who we got next because, once again, there's a lot of talent here in the Midwest, and uh, that match just proves it. Like, Hyde was. Hyde was just going in. If they had just walked forward, maybe like two or three pixels, I think that uh, I think that move at the end would have hit. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the fact that Northwood is able to put up such a good fight against other schools and then you still see MSU stomping them is really a testament to that school's dominance, just period. I mean, not even just in the Midwest. I, ha I have faith that they could potentially win a national championship as well. So, um, yeah. Looks like we're actually just going to jump right into the next match, though. It's going to be Tennessee versus St. Ambrose. So St. Ambrose, we already saw. They have Kyoka the Wolf, Pants the Zelda, and Yagi the Diddy. So uh, pretty uh, diverse spread of characters here, right? Yeah, Not... for sure. All right, and we're already in the lobby. 
And the player's are already in the lobby, so they might already be tuking it out. Yeah. All right, so we'll be jumping in and seeing them for the next match, which, once again, I'm pretty excited for. Um, Kyoka, really solid player. I've really enjoyed their wolf play so far. The only wolf that we've seen so far today, once again, the the tier list, the amount of uh, characters that we see offline versus online is so completely different. And Wolf is such a consistent character offline and looking pretty good online as well. Yagi definitely uh, kind of earned their Diddy stripes back um, during the second uh, game of their set uh, with, uh, who was it? Oh, Miami University being able to conquer multi the DDD. So I want to see... Uh, them kind of step up to play it again. I think they're definitely not done with uh, what they have to do. So let's see what exactly we have in store, especially because we don't know uh, Tennessee's roster. Um, but if we can go to break, I guess we are going to go to break. So we will be right back with the next game. See you in a few. All right, All and, right we're and we're back. back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I see an Ike. Oh, God. And it's so fitting with Frosties going on as well. Raven King doing so well over at Frosties. And this this character on Wi-Fi, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, casting Bamboo Battles, Max, uh, a couple days ago. And we saw an Ike player there just absolutely decimate our mate, um, who's like one of the oh, best yeah, yeah. Wi-Fi Ikes. And geez, this character is so brutal. It hurts. And uh, is this player's name Spawn Man for real? Is that is that his actual name? No clue, but you know what? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. There have been some pretty goofy tags in, in Smash. Yagi, though, we know Yagi yeah. already. Um, what do you think about this matchup, Diddy Ike? 
So I used to think this was like close to unwinnable for Ike, uh, but then I started playing the character. And uh, for those of you guys who know or remember Angel Cortez, uh, one of my most <laughs> consistent Classic. practice partners. I think it's actually way less bad than I thought originally. Um, Ike has a lot of stuff to deal with with E. Namely the up B, I think it's really good if he does like a rising forward air, you can punish it with that. Wow, the quick draw auto cancel slides in with down tilt, makes an up air kill off it. Yeah, and when Diddy is down a stock in this matchup, it starts to really bite for him. Same with the DD stuff that we were talking about before, right? Like on paper, this should be free for Diddy Kong, but it just does not always play out that way. There we go though, banana into up smash kill the whole time, and we've got even stocks in a virtually even game here. By the way, uh, Tennessee, Already is up 1-0, correct? Believe um, so. Yep. Yeah, so we missed the entire first uh, game between these two teams just because the players are fiends and they're mash and start. I can't blame them. Alright, looking for something though. Once again, we see this before. Did, I feel like Diddy and Ike have like the same goal. They really just want to nair in and combo, but man, oh god, F tilt may have actually taken that. Looking for something. Yep, the key difference. Key difference is that Diddy can throw a neutral air at you with a banana, right? Yeah, so, very true. Ooh, okay. I guess to be very careful. Like the roll in from Spawn Man as well. So it's looking pretty close. Yeah, that dash attack may actually take it. Up throw into the back air. Jeez, Ooh. that's definitely gonna be it. Love that setup right there. I mean, when you're fighting Ike and he throws you, whether it's up throw or down throw, you know that that up air is exactly what he's looking for, right? So you might be quick to press a defensive action gonna happen to yagi right there but he gets caught in the landing of his air dodge and the back air from ike comes in cleans it up and we've got spawn man question mark <laughs> of one now one your tag is team. spawn man <laughs> like now right. you get to change it that one's gonna be interesting once again uh ike for me is one of those characters that we barely see but i hate fighting uh once again the juggle potential is so crazy um especially if uh they're now going to send in pants. This is going to be really rough. I I think Ike Zelda is one of those matchups where you can't really like get in well and every Zelda says, oh, well, you know, off stage, it's one thing. And it's just like, well, what if you can't get Ike off stage? I mean, really, this character will juggle you from the center of stage and just take you up. So let's see who they're going to send in. I would actually suggest sending in the wolf for this because uh, the wolf would probably do a lot better than the Zelda would. All right, they're going right, to send so pants. It is going to be pants. <laughs> All right, pants, you can do it. This one's just going to be a little bit rough. You got to, once again, kind of keep that rotation of uh, Zelda projectiles just at your feet. Don't go in if you don't feel like you can get a hit because, lesson one Ike Nair will lead into three or four up airs, and then your stock's gone. Yeah, I think people might look at this matchup and say, oh, Zelda, she's a, a projectile character, right? Zoner, keep away. That's typically strong against Ike. But what she doesn't have is normals that can contend with Ragnell, Ike's giant two-handed sword that he's enough of a Chad to wield with one. So um, I don't know. I, I personally do favor Ike in this matchup. I probably also would have sent the wolf in. But maybe what they're looking to do is just close out this one stock, you know, cool the jets a little bit and stop spawn man's momentum here very true also you know what oh uh, no never mind i was gonna say um this if it's tennessee and there's a fire emblem sortie it could be gummy playing oh it could but, be um, oh i like the logo i think he uses chrome i love the logo can i just say that tennessee that tennessee uh logo is actually sick i love that i love Esports like nothing but a hound dog, you know. Yeah, man's just gaming. Look, that's that's how it's... some Smash players look when they play Wi Fi, man. Like, look at that, look at <laughs> no, that me, snarl. Me included. All right, town uh, and city. Jeez. That logo is an Elvis reference, though. Then they're, they're killing it for Tennessee right now. <laughs> you win the, the graphics points. I do think right. town and city was the correct choice in this matchup, just because once again, Ike will kill you off the talk really easy. Um, the sides do favor Ike just a little bit, though. So I'm interested to see how Spawn Man's going to be able to get around everything. Uh, but so far, looking pretty even in percent. Spawn Man to one. And this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier, Max. Zelda has so many end frames when she throws out her Phantom that it's so easy for you to just get run off like DDD fair, run off Ike uh, fair. It's just way too easy. So you got to let Phantom do a lot of the work on stage. You got to just get back to stage as soon as possible, you know, off stage. 
And it's looking like Pants' game plan is working out significantly better against Ike than it was against DVD. Like, at least with DVD, Ooh. you do have a long-range option wow. in the Gordos. Wow, the Charge Phantom taking it. All right, there we go. Balloon Pants puts the set count, or rather the stock count, to even for the second crew battle here between these two. However, his team is trailing by a game. Yeah. So you're going to need to see himself and Kyoka carry the torch at least as well as they possibly can to try to even this up. And maybe we'll get our first game three of the stream. Yeah, for sure. Once again, it's I'm so happy that they just stayed grounded. They didn't try and do anything, you know, crazy off stage and just let Phantom do all the work. Because once again, Ike off versus Zelda is just not a good matchup. So I want to see who else Tennessee has kind of in the back pocket here. If that's the first time we've seen Ike, I want to see like another character like who plays Dr. Mario anymore? Like ever, you know? Oh, well, actually, one of our next teams coming up does have a Dr. Mario on it. Really? I, I just kind of yeah. like pulled that out of my head. So I guess I'm a psychic or something. Yeah. Very good call, though. Thank it's going to, um, spoilers, it'll be on the University of Mountain Union team, Dr. Steven. Dr. Steven, Dr. What, a, what a good tag. <laughs> I know, I like it. I like it a lot. Very right. meme tag, but also mm -hmm. he plays Doc, so it's perfect. I wonder if he's going for his doctorate. That would also be very cool. So he could be a doctor in the game and in real life. Yeah. That'd be so and funny. What if, like, everybody played their characters according to, like, what they do in real life? Uh, I was trying to think of some kind of self joke. Yeah, no, there's no, I, I there's have a no meme. Or <laughs> there's no meme on that one. Yeah. Oh, God. This one's just... It's the team of heavies. Poor Zelda, man. Uh, this could work just as well, too. Uh, Bowser Zelda, definitely not as bad, but oh man, this character. Oh, I love that tag, love. What a, what a nice tag. Good tag. This is definitely a good stage for this, though, because Zelda does have a lot of free range to just kind of run back. Um, those up tilts are going to come into handy a lot, but it's all about love being able to uh, figure out how it's to get love. around. Yeah, it's all about love here. going to stop right there. Yeah, true. Very true. But it's alright, good city. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, that was really it. That was just my thought. It was really just about like space here. But once again, Zelda on ledge is just miserable. Yeah, it's a tough life for the Princess of Hyrule, for sure. And uh, we want to be king of the Mushroom Kingdom. I'm gonna eat her lunch potentially if he can get in. Yeah, and really. Obviously, Zelda's strongest suit is preventing her opponents from doing that at all. We've seen a pretty good job of that from Balloon Pants, not just in this game, but in the one before this, where the Ike just was not able to get in there. So, um, Love starting to bring this one back a little bit. Oh, okay, I like the parry on the up air, and managed to recover, even though he didn't snap the ledge immediately. Still catch it. Yeah, very true. I feel like Love has not played against too many Zeldas before, just because of the hesitation. I feel like they're getting hit by Phantom just a lot. Um, Looking for something, goes for the, the good old smack in the face, but unfortunately, Pants doesn't follow through with the uh, up B. Can actually angle the second one, um, but I feel like a Bowser Bomb may actually, like, kill Pants at this percent. I mean, 96 Bowser 101 on, especially a stage like PS2, would definitely be it. Yeah, I'm on notice for basically every move in Bowser's at this point okay the flying slam just not enough to do it right there zelda light but not long enough for that just right. the ledge yeah the teleport right on okay catching love pressing the button Ooh, okay got some locked up in the in the uh f smash there too so looking pretty good oh yeah that's the tricky thing about phantom phantom can actually hit you from the bottom of the stage as well um, I don't know why they did that, but I'm still very convinced that Smash Ultimate was programmed by a group of hamsters and, like, not actual people. <laughs> so, here we go. Up throw, though, from Love. Ooh, okay, tries to read the uh, DI with the up air. Not gonna be able to find anything, though. Throwing out every move on the ledge, why not? Yeah, just trying to see what will hit. I'm kind of surprised the up he didn't catch, actually. Maybe characters with higher ledge hangs can be hit by that, but either way, it's so back and forth between these two love finally going to take a bit of a percent lead here but it's quickly stolen away by the up air through the ledge he was ready for the first one and not yeah. the second up tilt though bowser up air could take this right now it really kind of depends once again the thing the tricky thing about bowser is yeah you're doing percent but you're also adding a lot of rage to that turtle and bowser does not hit lightly so this one definitely won't actually take it but maybe the next one will if it actually land, lands on the platform Right, definitely Ooh. gonna need that assist. There we go, finally. Forward tilt, angle downward, actually does hit the ledge for love. And it, that's really Bowser's go-to two-frame option and, and punishing long ledge hangs option. 
All right, jab, jab there. Looking for anything, though. But nice on pants to actually throw out a jab of their own. Uh, Zelda jab actually has a pretty far, like, knockback hit, so... Um, here we are. This is gonna be rough for love. Yeah, you're stuck between a phantom, a princess, and an up air. There's just no way you can make it right back. And pants! Playing really, really well and evening this really just right back up. Yeah, for real. This is a new pair of pants compared to the first time we saw them on the sticks. <laughs> Looking a lot cleaner here in the Bowser and Ike matchups than against Rob, for example. But that said, stuck to the ledge once again. And yeah, oh my god, the up tilts, the up smashes from love at the ledge are so effective. This time, side B on the platform. Yeah, again, we've seen Zelda survive that at around that percent range. So next one should do it. But will you have that opportunity or will you even need it? No, the up tilt is going to close it out. Okay, and now we have uh, four stocks to three, I believe, between these two teams. Yeah. And it is down to the last player for St. Ambrose once more. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Kiyoka, got to come in. Once again, we know the Wolf. I do think Wolf Bowser isn't too terrible. Um, I do think any heavy versus wolf, sometimes it's a little bit of a juggle fest on both sides, really. I mean, Bowser can just, you know, kind of take you with a lot of those nair hits and the up air hits as well. So I want to see, Ki I really want to see uh, Kyoka really thrive here, but it'll definitely be rough. You you got got four stocks to really go through. You know what? Actually, we saw Kyoka play Bowser earlier, right? So that would oh, probably yeah, explain true. why Pants seemed better versed in the matchup. Um, but if I'm Kyoka, I'm probably not going for the Ditto here, right? Dittos are just kind of a wild card. You know, it, it's always up in the air of whether, you know, the better player will win yeah, or just the player who's better at the matchup will win. I personally think Dittos are a pretty true test of skill, right? I, I hear a lot of propaganda against that, but um, I don't know. I, I think knowing how to fight your own character is very important. Obviously, secondary to knowing how to use them. But um, that said, we have... Potentially a Bowser Ditto, but more likely Wolf versus uh, Bowser coming up. By the way, just got confirmation. Dr. Steven, not a doctor. Not even a doctorate student. He is a marketing major. He's a marketing major. Definitely going hey, into... Oh, hey. <laughs> that De makes sense. He knows how to market himself. Definitely going into uh, pharmaceutical sales. Then that'll be the only way we can bring that back. <laughs> oh, God. All right, let's see what this is going to be. Pokemon Trainer. Okay, I think PT actually struggles in this matchup. If, I, if I'm being 100% honest, I do think Ivysaur does have like the up air and the down air trains on Love or on Bowser, but I don't know. This is a little rough for me. I I just can't see it. I don't know. I feel like uh, Squirtle can be really annoying for Bowser, but also gets completely murdered. <laughs> he is so really, lucky that really fair percent. missed. He is so insanely lucky that fair Oh, missed. yeah, true. Yeah, a little false start right there. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, so it's gonna be the big turtle versus the little one, and let's see how this one's gonna go. I mean, I've seen a lot of Leon Beast in my day, and I, I've seen what one side can do to the other, but once again, Squirtle is that combo character, and kind of small, and if you can avoid getting grabbed by Bowser, it could be a nice time, but not if you get Sid on there. And uh, not just Leon versus Beast, but also Leon versus Quid. Grand oh, finals of, of Cross Up last summer. We did see Leon take the tournament after dropping the set in winner's bracket, I believe. And yeah, that kind of backs up what you were saying, that Bowser might have a handle on this matchup. We'll see though, it is of course a totally different ball game, two totally different players. You got the switch to Ivysaur, maybe looking for an edge guard, but a little late on that. Oh, oh, very lucky by Love. Able yeah. to squeeze his way to the ledge before the downer hitbox. Yeah, and Kyoga's uh, back throw didn't even come out either, so double, double luck on that one. But once again, you just can't hang out too long on the ledge versus, versus Bowser. It's just, it's just a little rough there. But Kyoka just has to hit one, just really just has to hit uh, like one thing on Bowser, and then the problem's essentially gone. But let's see. Oh, unfortunately. Tries to hit the Zard grab, but back air is going to send him all the way to the other side. Playing out a little passive on the ledge. Can't play too passive versus Bowser, though. Love already accomplishing his mission here, just making it a little bit easier for the final player on Tennessee's side to come in and tie this one up. We'll only need to take two spots in the process. Yes. And oh my! All right, the forward throw from Charizard, of course, just enough to do it. Oh, this character blessed with so many kill throws. How many kill throws does PT have? I think it's six. In total? Yeah, it's a squirrel back throw, Ivysaur yep. back throw, Ivysaur down throw, Charizard forward throw, Charizard back throw, and Char Charizard up Charizard throw. forward throw doesn't kill that reliably. You you think it? No, no, no it does. 
Yeah, like 140 by the ledge? That's a kill throw for my money. I mean, I suppose so. I, I've never seen a Charizard purpose. Oh, you know what? Charizard forward throw. I don't know why I was thinking down throw for some reason. I was like, no, oh, no way. No. Forward throw, yes, where it like taught where it like sends you in the loop de loop and like sends you in like in a toss, like one of those like baseball machines like throwing a baseball. Yeah, no, that's definitely kill throw. Back throw, a little interesting. Yeah, I don't it's, think it's late. It's yeah, late. Yeah, it's a little but late. But it can do it does the job. Kill. I have uh I've sank many hours into Charizard and found <laughs> a surprising amount of back throw kills. Me. Yeah, six kill throws on one character. That's more throws than most characters have. Yeah, very, very true. All right. So it's going to be PT on one side. Let's see who's going to be on the other side as well. Once again, we have not seen too much of Tennessee uh, today, so we don't really know what we're working with. But um, I'm excited to see what we could potentially see. I, once again, PT is a character that's coming up in the meta really hard. Uh, Quid being the spear leader of the character right now. I mean, really, this kid uh, just came out of nowhere, won a major. I mean, Westchester knew how good he was, but did the rest of the world even know who he was at that point i don't think so no i'm i mean we were talking about linus and hawk winning let's make big moves doubles quid one let's make big moves singles as the 32nd seed of the event yeah. that has actually never happened in north american smash period yeah not ultimate not smash four yeah but the whole damn thing <laughs> yeah that is the lowest seed to ever win in an na tournament and the only reason it's not the first time anyone has ever done it is because of japan where, yeah like you know the the seeds are made up and the brackets don't matter yeah very true palutena right. is going to be interesting here i do think uh squirtle palu is even i do think ivysaur palu is winning and then who knows but one thing that palutena can do is juggle and she can juggle really well yeah, of course, neutral air, up air, two really hard pools for most characters to get around with. And then uh, even back air, you might not think of that as a juggling pool since it's not a vertical move, but man, it can keep people in disadvantage for a really long time. If they decide to swing on the way down, you just uh, pop the back air out and then suddenly it's up their move and they're gone. So we got Mocha versus Kyoka. Oh, I Mars. like that. Mocha's a good tag. I, I love one word tags. Very, very easy. Like, there's at some point you have like too many syllables in your tag. Um, one word tags are usually pretty good. All right. Withdrawal is going to come all the way in. Pretty even so far from both characters. But once again, that Palatino nares, it cheats, in my opinion. That back hit is insanely so good. There's no reason why that back hit should send you as far as possible, but uh, Kyoka right now doing a pretty good job of chasing Kalu around the stage pretty successfully. Yeah, a good amount of ground to make up here, but like you said, Squirtle fares pretty well against Palutena. Ivysaur, I'd say, yeah, has a pretty solid shot as well. So maybe just playing to the strengths of the character, you can see Kyoka wear Mocha down here. I feel like I'm rapping every time I say they're <laughs> kind of both in the same sentence, but... Uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good for Kyoka so far. Again, has to fight to keep St. Ambrose in this. Yeah. We might see our first game three of the day, we might not. Alright, here we go. Changing nares both sides. I feel like Mocha has to play it a little bit more aggressive. I mean, the, the nair train is, is a real thing, and once you get one hit, you're good. But I don't see any side B explosive flames coming out either. Back throw is going to be the option here um, from Mocha. So I want to see them play a little bit more aggressively. All right, yeah, there's the explosive flame. We're going to have Kyoka switch to Zard, just looking to chip away that last stock find any stray hit and charizard's good for it yeah the forward air all the way across the stage okay now mocha only two stocks left looking a little shaky at the beginning of this match i'm not gonna lie there were some hesitations on punishes and just some general moments of looking a little bit unsure but maybe now that they've had some time to warm up it's gonna be a different story yeah that said kyoka is still getting in there with the combos looking pretty good so far yeah for sure it just doesn't seem like kyoka knows that uh palatina down tilt will also uh do a pretty good job on square unfortunate no that's cringe so plus ratio <laughs> oh my god add the you're bald in there too max that <laughs> sucks squirtle is literally <laughs> bald <laughs> Alright, jeez, that is such a bummer, especially because Kyoka was playing so well too in the matchup, and that seemed to have given Mocha a lot of confidence. Playing much more aggressive now, Explosive Flame is going to actually hit now, and I like the way that they're always backing up from Ivysaur because that up air will probably take it at this percent now. Alright, Mocha only has to take one more stock 
to lead their team to victory at this point. <gasps> oh my god! Oh, no that's way! it! What a no trade! Way! That was so messy! Oh, they supposed to flame normally with way too much end lag to get a follow up like that, but because Yoka hit Mocha during their explosive flame, there's actually enough action ability to just go up there for the chase with up air. Oh, that was so tragic, but also incredibly cool to see at the same time. <laughs> And that'll be Tennessee, I believe, taking the set 2-0. Well. We were so close to that to that game three, but oh my god. That's so unfortunate for the side of uh, Kiyoka there because that up smash definitely would have KO'd on Charizard at that percent. And just Explosive Flame coming in, being a little bit of a, of a jerk. And then, you know, proper punishes coming out from Mocha right where they needed it, and that was it. That was such a great ending. Yeah. Not not exactly a once in a lifetime type of ending, but yeah, <laughs> probably the only one that will catch on stream in 2022. Uh, I don't know, maybe though, because if you go projectile for projectile, maybe that could happen more frequently. Either way, it was still cool to watch. Great job to Mocha carrying uh, Tennessee to a 2-0 victory here, and we have still yet to catch a game three series lyric. I'm waiting for it to happen. If I had a guess. It would be Miami University versus MSU. I really hope but... we see them tomorrow, too, because remember, we have two whole days of Smash action going on here at the CENC uh, Midwest Invitational, of course. And just so you all know, uh, the winner of this will actually uh, be flown out to, I want to say Atlanta, if I'm correct. It is Atlanta. It is Atlanta um, in May for the grand finale as well. So uh, it's all going to be leading up to the big stuff all the way a couple months from now. Believe it or not, we're only like three months away from May, Max. It's already almost February. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's basically 2023 at this point. Yeah, time. honestly. Time always with just how, speeds up. Yeah, with how fast the last two years have gone, I mean, I would believe it. But guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to cut to a quick break. We'll have some more of these teams coming right up for you. I believe it is Northwood versus Miami University of Ohio next. Or sorry, versus uh, University of Mountain Union next. But don't quote me on that. Catch you in a sec. percent he nearly died off the right and here's and the ledge trap here's the ledge trap we've seen over and over again but you break the cypher and you're not able to get a c4 out in time and it's going to be jake a clean three stuff I... it was scuffed at the beginning but oh my word jake brought it back so the same ledge trap that we have seen work the same ledge trap that we've seen work without fail already now he's throwing the anchor in there, so he's forcing a panic option. And again, if you even do pick the right panic option, you have to go into the the Steve zone with the TNT and like try to force another panic option just to get back to the stage. Like, again, I don't know what you do there. Uh, he could have theoretically tried to like drift out a little bit, which easier said than done because Snake doesn't really have a little drift. But he could have tried to drift out a little bit and try to, like, air dodge into the ledge, but that's really tough. And then, and here's other things. Jake is setting up this this TNT ledge trap, but there's so many other layers he can add. He can start throwing blocks over the ledge and, like, forcing it so that you can't grab it. Uh, the anchor is just, or excuse me, the anvil is really strong. We've seen the uh, dirt block anvil trap, too, that, like, automatically breaks shields. There's just, it feels like there's a thousand things Steve can do to you in that position. And Jake is just really good at forcing his opponent to play his game. Yes, now. The thing is, that was Jake discipline too. Like mm -hmm. that was Jake preparing for the long war, and then realizing it was just a skirmish. And they're like, "Okay, so I can burn everything." As Bowser, I have no idea mm -hmm. who this is. 
But um, let's Bowser see. Bowser versus Bowser. Steve. I mean, Bowser, amazing aerial versus his kiddos. Um, let's see. Tails versus Tails. Let's see. Tails. What you got, Tails? Let's find out. Yeah. Okay. Some immediate. Oh, this is what happens when you play heavy mm. against Steve. Forty-five percent on the board, and you only had wooden tools. Now you refresh the durability with some iron. And now. even though you get the up throw, there's not much you can do. No real problem. Mm. There is the detonate the TFT with the lava too. Yeah, taking no damage for that setup either, and doing a crap ton of damage to Talos. All right, here's the trap. Let's see if he has an answer. All right, he rolls in, survives. That's smart stuff, going for the up you out of shield, trying to force the explosion to happen on Jake and kind of reverse the situation, but still gets tagged. Um, now, again, this is a character, ton of knockback, you know, essentially kind of reverse this. Oh, but he loses that stock to that forward, or to that up smash. Uh, even a move as active and with as many hits as Bowser Neutral Air just doesn't matter against anything like that. Oh. Yeah, that's... Oh. We talked about oh. disjointed moves earlier, that oh. and so is that back air too, setting all the way off, no way you can get back. As the Elytra rocket speeds take and sound back to the stage, back inside your home, your abode, where you don't have to worry about anything except how you're going to start your next combo. Can we talk about minecart to OL minecart and it like fully like solving that situation? Bowser Neutral B is like a really good move and it totally didn't matter. It was definitely um, fully out there in Jake's favor. Uh, this is the one that we stop. Oh gosh. If you remember, Jake's Twitter is Jake F Smash. And if you're wondering why Jake goes by Jake F Smash, it's because Jake is really good at F Smashing, I guess. Yes. That's the only thing I can think of. University of Central F Smash right there. As yes, <laughs> UCF. University of C-Stick F Smash, that's what that is. But, yeah. uh, yeah. The triple F Smash. Sometimes, though, all that is is saying you're going to mess up. I have the resources where I can mess up as much as I want, and you still need to punish me like eight times for you to make this up. All you need to do is mess up once. Let's see. Man, One, he... you dodged it. Two, you dodged it. Three, that's game. <laughs> and here's the thing. Bowser technically is a more mobile character than others, but he's not the kind of character to like weave in and out and get a quick punish. He just moves quickly when he does commit to that direction. I think what he needed there was like the ability to kind of weave in and out or maybe just reset neutral and just hope for like flame breath. But I think he got a little discouraged from flame breath because minecart clanking with flame breath and then a new minecart coming out right when it got destroyed. Your head's not ready for that. I'm not dealing with that. You know, my flame breath is just such a universally strong move on so much of the cast. It shuts out so many options. It does a ton of damage. Like it does a lot, but if you can, die for like successfully landing a good neutral tool that throws you off your game that throw me off my game at least yeah as i don't know where fau blue goes from here it's always a scary thing when it starts out even and then it ends and you forget that it started out even like mm -hmm. it didn't even it start like... out even reich knee got the lead that's and, true and then it was gone it was gone out of there as now i i think we're going to have psychic back to open it up to just sort of poke at the bear that is Rashni. i think maybe mm -hmm. you save Rashni too but who else do we send in yeah and again they haven't even made it to hobby on earth yet i don't know if they will or maybe um hobby might start just for funsies but uh mm -hmm. i don't know what their jake answer is hobby can if Hobby's on Earth, just go on vacation. Like, <laughs> right, I, I, think, yeah. I think you probably got this covered. And they've also got someone else in the bank. Um, they've got SLK, who is a very, very good offline player, but they mm -hmm. also play FGC characters. And, well, you can see the attitude that they have there. Wi-Fi law, you don't want to deal with that. And right, 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 right. It is going to be, I think, uh, Talos, this was, coming in uh, on the Bowser. Hopefully, against Psychic, they can get a little bit more done, but... Kali 2. Against Kali 2, that's, that's a tough one. All right, let's see what he can do. I feel like the main thing here is uh, worrying about getting Nair. I have seen this matchup a lot, just because 
Lunik is one of our PR players in my region, and again, missed. She's only one state over, so I've seen a decent amount of Bowser Palu. Um, it's not as polarizing as you think, but I think one of the big key things here is one, uh, getting off, getting on the stage against Palu feels impossible because of down tilt. Like even right there, like Talos nearly made it back, but Bowser has very few options to deal with it. And then two, of course, the combo game is going to be strong. But speaking of edge guarding, of course, Bowser does have that neutral B, which is very good against the recovery like uh, Palu's, and great two frame with that F tilt. I feel like they both have a pretty similar ledge trap game actually at this point. Yeah, and well, Talos is getting the better end of it. It's like just they try to punish that landing on the platform, but it's not going to connect. Instead, they just beat them out with another Nair. Mm -hmm. But even so, it's still a very even game. Like, if you factor in the weight, arguably, Taylor's is ahead in percent right now. They're even able to climb their up correctly to get around the down turn. Ooh, but the up air. Again, we were talking about crazy aerials earlier. Palutena up air. All right, guys, welcome back. We are at the end of the road. Just one crew battle remains for tonight's CENC Midwest Invitational. I'm Max Ketchum. I'm joined here by Lyric, who I finally have gotten to cast with after like way too long. Honestly, we've spent like so much time, time together today. Yeah, we've spent so much time casting together today. I think you've been like the longest caster I've ever like spent to block <laughs> with. So all those years have like cultivated into this entire weekend because we also have the same block tomorrow. So it's like eight six seven eight hours of casting together so like <laughs> i guess i'm like kicking out koopa for like longest <laughs> commentary duo and now it's you uh but we're gonna head right on in now uh two teams that we haven't seen or actually one team that we haven't seen uh we have a uh, university of mount union on one side with dr one, steven who is playing go. dr mario uh thank you for that we talked about this a little bit earlier uh, and we have woods playing both Yes, Dr. Steven, also not a doctor, nor a medical student. He is a marketing major. And you know what? I think that's the second best answer because the marketing is on point with that tag. And then we've got Woods, who has yet to actually make his debut in a crew battle yet for Northwood. And so far, this is a pretty even game. Dr. Steven, though, uh, word on the street is that this guy is cracked. Apparently, he used is to be he? PR'd in Chicago for Smash 4 when he was like 14 with Dr. Mario. So, uh... You know, the expectation is definitely there from, from what their coach Derek has told me. But Woods also should... Oh my god! Jeez! <laughs> Yo, okay. uh, can I just say he's moving? Like, he's really moving. Like, these pills into back airs are like really kind of nutty. On a stage like Town and City where the, the sides are a little bit smaller, I'm also expecting some back throws at like some insanely early percents. But Dr. Steven, like, these... These like carries across the oh stage. Oh my god! Insane. He's crazy. Get out of here! <laughs> He's crazy. I thought we were supposed to save life. Oh my god! What are you watching? My man is out here violating the Hippocratic Oath. Oh, oh yeah, no jump. I, dude, Doctor Steven, he is simply built different. He has a ranged alternative. All right, forward throw is going to be the option here. I thought he would go for the back throw, but here we go. Will's going to finally be able to grab him. Oh my god, I know we're riding the Dr. Steven train, but like, can you blame us? This guy is crazy. Yeah, yo, this this is exceeding expectations for sure. And by the way, I wanted to point out, I know it's like 30, 40 seconds ago at this point, but there was a point at which Wood's forward smash Dr. Steven's shield. Normally, that's fine for Wolf. Almost no moves in the game punish that due to the shield push and the relative safety on block. I think it's minus 10. But Doc's up B, reached and killed. And obviously hit within the time window. I think it's a frame three hitbox. So pretty insane stuff. Dr. Steven knowing his matchups for sure. Oh, rolling just into the up smash, but shielding just in time as well. We'll see the back throw kill. All right, Woods 
Manages to stave off the wound just a little bit here, but of course his team's already down two stocks and it does not look like Dr. Steven's giving up another one. Yeah, no, for sure. I feel like on that last interaction, I feel like the punish was actually, I wouldn't say wrong, but definitely different. Ooh, okay, up smash, gonna send all the way. Yeah, that, Dr. Mario literally like leans all the way back and rocks with it, like all the way forward. Like that, that up smash is insane. Dr. Steven, only one stock lost, but uh, can't help but to think that there was definitely a way to save that first stock too. Damn, the lean with it, rock with it. Yeah, the lean with it, rock That's with it. It's been years. It's been years. <laughs> we're old. That's how you know we're ancient? Yeah, yeah we're yeah. old. Oh my God. Well, us boomers commentating for these young kids, <laughs> these collegiate rising stars here. Doctor Steven, man, that that was just what a way to come out the gate yep. and make your debut on the stream here at the CNC Midwest Invitational. Um, wow. We'll see what's coming up next, though. Of course, we still have uh, the potential goon debut. He is yet to show up. And then Rage Link and Seth waiting in the wings for Northwood. All right, we got Higgs coming in, I believe, from what I could hear. Uh, Dr. Oh, yeah, Mario sorry, versus Jigglypuff. Over. After what we just—is this just, a low tier tournament? I don't know, but after what we just saw from Dr. Steven, I can't say that I'm. You know what? I get it. You know what I mean? We've. We saw this a little bit earlier the last time I saw Northwood play. Higgs is really good at gimping off the side. Dr. Mario doesn't have a real recovery. So I totally get the pick, but y y the up smash, the back throw, there's a lot of things that could go wrong here, Max. Yeah, I feel like Doc is probably the character with the second worst recovery in the game, number one. Gotta give that one to Mac, but True. Uh, Docs is, is god awful, and Puff is insane at edge guarding. Really, her strongest suit as a character, but she's also paper thin. Second lightest in the game, only ahead of Pichu. And I don't know, man. <laughs> I think that up B, the back air, the down B, so many moves from Doc are gonna erase Jigglypuff from existence. So we'll see if this one stock lead that um, Big Higgs is gonna have coming into this match will help. Obviously. It's not the end of the world, but I don't know. I don't know. It's still a significant stock advantage here. Yeah, for sure. Um, looking for anything, go, go and go for the fair. Once again, Dr. Mario is one of those characters that if you're not ready for, you're you're really just not ready for. So once again, uh, we can see Higgs' plan from like a mile away. See how he's just hanging out on the ledge? You know what he's looking for. Uh, it's pretty smart counterplay. It's exactly what they mean. Take him off stage, hit him with the back air, that's it. But Doc, I don't know if Dr. Steven's going to give it to him, Max. Boys only want one thing, and it's disgusting. <laughs> True. And it's a, an edge guard against <laughs> Dr. Mario. Oh, oh my, my god! god! <laughs> that almost killed! That almost like, killed! I can't believe that almost killed! Six more percent or something, and that was a dead pop. Yeah, Doc, they really did the trade kind of well for this character, right? Like, what Mario lacks in power, if you could even say that, Doc certainly compensates. But he loses a lot of that mobility. And of course, the off stage game. I love how save he drifted away at the end of that tornado. Yeah, save the jump as well. That was really smart from Dr. Steven. Man, marketing major really once again going to medical field. The up smash. Did that shield poke? I, I think it did. I really think it did. There's no way that he had dropped shield. Right. And plus, if you're puffed, you might be a little quick to release your shield. Because you. Sure, it's one thing to die, but dying by getting your shield broken. Like, stream ain't gonna forget that, man. Oh my god. Just gonna remember. The the down air, too. That was nutty. Just the movement with Dr. Steven right now. The the pill movement into the placement of the fair. Mm. That's a dead puff 98. Two stocks down the drain already. It's been like a minute and a half and plus the SD timing. So, I, I don't know, man. Dr. Steven looking like a force to be reckoned with here. Might be about to put up a huge solo player victory for his team here yeah really and looking so, so good so far dr steven can't find the back air there doc with full rage though so honestly jigglypuff at 70 could potentially be the ko that they need to seal this set already all right there it comes out okay great recovery by dr steven just waiting it out as long as possible eggs though can find something but everything is a kill move max everything's scary Exactly. Oh, and so is Jigglypuff's back here. Okay, Big Higgs puts one on the board. And is he good for another one? I don't know. You're going to have to find some really <gasps> dirty setup. And instead, it's Dr. Steven just mashing on the tornado to get the rise there. You <laughs> thought you could jump over that tornado? Hell no. 
Dr. Steven taking six stocks for the price of two already. What a bargain. Oh my God. That was now that's so, marketing. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe just the aggression that came out from him. Like also just saving, always saving your jump is one, a very smart decision to do, but he did it every single time without fail. Um, we got to see who uh, Northwood is going to send out now. I'm going to assume it's Seth, right? At, at this point, it's got to be Seth. Uh, yep, yep. Of course, they do have a couple players in reserves, but when it's time to anchor, they're going to be putting <laughs> big Seth Sational in. And this is, of course, only the first game, right? The players will field three players until they go down and then play that best of three. So we could see some adaptations coming into the next one for Northwood, but I don't know, man. Uh, Dr. Steven is looking like probably the most impressive player. Not not just like, oh, I think he's like the best player to step on the sticks today, but because he's doing it with Dr. Mario, because of his play style specifically, I, I think he's definitely the one who will turn the most heads by the end of the day. Oh, for sure. Definitely the most hype person that I've seen so far next to the twins, of course, from how absolutely dominant they were in their game. Captain right. Falcon, Dr. Mario. This is going to be a weird one. Yeah, you might think, if you've read a tier list before, that this should be in the bag for Seth Sational, but no. Tier lists do tell an incomplete story. Of course, matchups are really what what drives the head-to-heads in Smash, right? And often the tier list is decided based on which characters' matchups are strong across the board, but there's always going to be these little holes in the armor and for captain falcon it's short guys who have good combo games particularly like dr mario and of course regular mario has a, quite a good time against falcon as well so we'll see if his slower but stronger variant is enough to hold up as well it's the first doctor between these two just kicking things off and dr steven is racking it up with the pills a couple chip aerials in there and Seth finally going to get a hit. Yeah, I feel like Dr. Steven is really ready for some of these Raptor boosts on shield, though. I, I saw some preemptive shields coming out before. I, I just don't think that Seth is ready for how quickly this guy moves. I mean, really, like, he has a plan for everything. Up smash, not going to be able to take it quite yet, but geez, the pill, the gimp. Oh, my God, that's so scary. Chill, dude. <laughs> that was oh terrifying. God. Jeez. Seth, once again, I just don't think he knows what's coming for him. And really, Dr. Steven is not in danger of losing the stock quite yet, like at all on that. Yeah, unless he gets knocked off stage, of course, that is really the liability that Dr. Mario brings with him everywhere. But so far, just winning neutral is seeming like a chore for Seth. This character's tiny and naturally low profiles. A lot of Falcons landing aerials, which is such an important part of the character's game. Scoops him with the up air, though, catching Steven's jump. Oh, oh, okay, oh. they're both gonna swing and miss a couple times in the up tilt hits. Yeah, you can't up tilt too much on Falcon Shield, though. We know that Seth really likes the up B onto Shield. Going for it again, though, this gives Steven a chance to punish, but I don't think the DI agreed there. Oh my god, he almost ate an up smash. That definitely would have been it, but good on Dr. Steven to mash out with all the best that he can. Bravest doctor I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, really. This, this doctor like throws himself on the front lines. Yeah, he's looking like a military medic or something. Ooh, okay. Oh my god, oh the cape! Oh, and he's dead! <laughs> Two stocks already? Could Dr. Steven actually seal this entire crew battle with Dr. Mario? Max, do you believe in miracles? I, I kind of do, yeah. I mean, like, at this point, is it even a miracle? He's taking eight stocks. Ooh, but oh, that's gonna okay, be there it is. <laughs> Threading the needle between the kill and Dr. Mario snatches him up there with the Falcon Dive. And wow, what an insane crew battle this has been so far, though. Eight stocks gone at the hands of Dr. Mario. Seth Sational left with just one to put a cap on it. I mean, can he do it? I, I do think he can. Just depends how strong the rest of the UMU roster is. Right, very true. Um, since you're talking with the coach, since you know the coach of uh, Union of Mount University of Mount Union, uh, who do you think they're sending out next? And do you know their character? Well, I can probably tell you just based on knowing my matchups in this game and being a former Captain Falcon man in Smash 4, not not much has changed in terms of what characters mm -hmm. give him a hard time. They've got too many toasters with Pac-Man and they've got air with Pikachu. Okay. So I think that's who we're going to see. Falcon's worst matchup now in two games in a row. Yeah, God. Uh, Pac-Man Pikachu is definitely one of those like interesting, like, wow, what an interesting crew. Two characters that people would write off as absolutely awful and then 
contender for one of the best characters in the game. Meanwhile, the the mid tier, the low tier, depending on how you define low and mid tier these days, because there are some people that say there are no low tiers in this game. Everybody has something. Um, Not true. Yeah, there are some low tiers in this game that, and then there are just people that play low tiers really well and just make them look good. Um, I can agree with the Pikachu going out, but Pac-Man would be such a pain as well. But I think if uh, University of Mount Union wants to just bring this on over into the next game, game two, let's just get out the Pikachu. Let's get it all started and going. Yeah, because there's no further advantage that you can yeah. create for yourself here, right? It's not like Seth even had two stocks, right? Then maybe I could see send in the Pac-Man. You'll guarantee or you'll probably guarantee to get one stock. And then you just have air clean it up. But no, it looks like air is going to come straight in here. Three stocks to one against Captain Falcon in what I would guess has to be his worst matchup still. I can't think of another character that's come out in Ultimate that gives Falcon a harder time than Pikachu. Maybe like Ampling, maybe uh, Joker. I, I don't even think Joker is, is a contender for that spot. He's, he's too tall. It's, it's all about the size in this matchup. Like the smaller you are, the harder of a time Falcon's going to have. Yeah, Pikachu in general is just one of those characters where if you don't want, if you don't have one in the region, it's so hard to learn this matchup in general. Uh, just so many things that Pikachu can just pick pancake under, and then you see it there. The quick attack in is just so annoying to deal with, especially for a character like Falcon. Uh, Seth's doing a pretty good job so far of at least throwing on the offense jets, not just lying in submission to Pikachu. Uh, but you know, percentages are pretty even between both characters. Up, oh, stomp, no need. Yeah, and of course, Air can afford to make a ton of mistakes here, right? As long as he's keeping the pace and keeping the percents close between these two, then I think his odds are quite good. He does just have to go through the trouble of landing one of those kill moves once he racks up all the damage. So far, Seth looking in pretty firm control of the match, despite the relatively close percents, though. Yeah, very true. Really, it just takes one confirm from Pikachu, maybe like a lightning confirm. That's going to be it. I'm looking for something, though. The F-Tilt offstage. Seth doing a good job recovering high, but oh, okay. Air really just couldn't follow the uh, kind of the wind of the hitbox there. Finds it there a little bit better with back air, but still nothing left. Down smash. This could be the end of Northwood for this game. Oh, oh he almost made it, Max. This close. This close. Looks like a bit of a, an intimidation kill there by Air, actually. I think Seth did have enough drift if he fully held toward the ledge that he would have caught it, but of course, wanting to avoid the back air. Wow, that was a that was something, man. That, that was a and that was a game. I don't want to take anything away from Air because he did a great job putting a cap on that for his team. But let's be real, that was the <laughs> Doctor Steven show. That kid is cracked, bro. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, um, I'm very very convinced that they're just gonna do it all over again and just send Doctor Steven out first. But if I'm Northwood, I would send out Seth now. Like, I would have Seth take care of that problem now because that's a problem. Yeah, I think so. I think what we're seeing is that the Northwood team is a little bit front-loaded, right? Like, Seth is definitely the strongest player and, like, it's pretty pretty noticeable. Um, and it puts him in a weird spot because it's either like, all right, you got to anchor and all the pressure's on you or you come out early and there's still a lot of pressure on you because if you go down early, then the rest of the team is going to struggle to catch up. Yeah, totally makes sense. Alrighty, well, that was game one of the set going on over to University of Mount Union. Uh, Dr. Steven and Friends show, really. I mean, come on, the guy is crazy. He's insane. Uh, so let's see how exactly the rest of it's going to go to. All right, this is, uh, I don't know, man. It's it's a weird situation because technically Dr. Mario just loses so many matchups that like who is the wrong answer to throw into Doc? But then when you have an elite class Dr. Mario, like Dr. Steven, who like, no elite. joke, is is possibly the best doc that I have ever seen in this game. Bacon um, 2 does exist in MTVA. He may be the true. only one with with results, though. I, I want to see this guy travel. He's crazy. He's absolutely insane. Yeah, and again, he, he did it against a player like Seth Stational, who is battle-tested and has yeah. been around the block for sure. Uh, it looks like Higgs is actually going to be the first player up, though. So Puff versus question mark. I'm not sure if they're going to lead with Dr. Steven. Okay, so they're going to switch up the order just a little bit. We're going to get the Pac-Man out to start off, which I can totally understand. Uh, Pac-Man versus Jigglypuff definitely sounds a little bit better than Pac-Man um, Dr. Mario right now, just because of the, or uh, Dr. Mario Jigglypuff, 
just because of the way the recoveries may work here. Uh, Pac-Man a little bit more versatile off stage. You can drop uh, drop the Hydrant into recovery. So let's see how this one's going to go. I haven't seen a Pac-Man play in God knows how long. Uh, PA ran out of Pac-Mans a long time ago. So this Pac-Man is a character that I feel like is so rare these days. I know Kiwi still plays Pac-Man up in New England, but I'm sure she's also working on the Sora as well, correct? Uh, yes, yes, for sure. Not sure if that's still a thing, but, you know, everybody had a different story with Sora when he came out. It's like, yeah, am I going to... Like, everyone was like, oh, I'm so going to make this character. I love Kingdom Hearts. Oh, and then... he... did you see my tweet? <laughs> I... No. Uh, fe... I oh, I did. Said... I did. How yeah, many yeah, people yeah. do you know that said on their entire life that they would main Sora and then yep. drop them the week after? Literally so many people message me are like, oh my God, thank you for tweeting about this. Like, my friend's so mad that you said this. I'm like, <laughs> oh... Those facts. I liked I Sora mean, for like two days and I was just like, okay, that's it. Like, he's okay, I guess. Yeah, not for me. Yeah, not for me. He's too floaty. I feel like if he was like a normal weight, everybody would have played him, but he's just so, so, so floaty. Yeah, agreed. Like, if he controlled like Cloud, oh my God. Oh, that true. Would be so, so true. fun. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Either way, we've got too many toasters versus Big Higgs. Yeah. Two relatively unconventional characters but at least pac-man is a known high tier character right like pretty yeah. much everyone has changed their tune on pac-man coming out of smash 4 he was like i'd say right in the middle of the game maybe slightly above average but uh here in ultimate i think this character's really got some sauce they significantly improved his grab too which i think was his biggest weakness yeah for sure i like the way that um Posters threw out the bell and Higgs went for it. So I feel like Higgs does know how to play against this character as well. Uh, this is going to be interesting. On Smashville 2, this could be a lot better in terms of like match pacing here. Because I do feel like they're going to at least die a little bit earlier. So I've seen a lot of dash attacks come out from Toasters so far. So it looks good. Ooh, okay. All right. I, I enjoyed the, uh, the potential down air of the uh, Hydrant there. From what I've heard... Too Many Toasters is also quite good at this game as well. Uh, Coach Darren putting in the good word for all his boys. But apparently <laughs> Toasters course. is one of those guys who just picks like the weirdest character in every game. I could definitely see Pac-Man being a good fit for someone like that. Maybe Duck Hunt, Game & Watch, I don't know, Ice Climbers. But definitely like a you know classic, the, the classic games fan. It's like, oh, my soul main, Duck Hunt Dog. Like <laughs> Right. <laughs> all right, but still neutral in the middle, just a little bit of projectile throw. All right, here we go, back throw. Oh my God, that was almost it. I think maybe one more like pummel may have actually done it. Uh, but so far, Toaster is doing a great job doing what Pac-Man does and just zoning on one side of the stage. Yeah, definitely a character who can kind of sit back when he has the lead, no reason to press forward. And especially against a character like Puff, whose approach game is pretty Ooh, much- Oh, what? what? Okay, Ooh. crazy taxi. The aim on that was nuts. That was nutty. All right, Galaga gonna come out. Unfortunately, doesn't get the startup that Toasters wants, but Toaster's sitting at 105. I think Jigglypuff Fair off stage could potentially see off the stock. Looking for something, not gonna be able to find it. I like the way that Toasters is also kind of taking it easy on the stage as well. Ooh, but that's one mm. that's gonna be it. Not the trade you wanna take. Puff's back air, insanely strong move. When trying to land with the down air, not exactly the most, uh, Assuming hitbox out there, yeah, Pac-Man, but it is a pretty good move overall. Back throw is going to be the option. Gets hit with some vitamin C in the face. Oh no, mm. tech! All right, gonna hit up, prop him up this time. Goes for the up smash a little too early. Definitely would have fallen if you had just given him the chance. He is out the oh. down smash. Yeah, perfect coverage. Great stock by Toasters. Not one flaw I could find. Puff literally never touched the ground throughout all of that. Jabbing out of the air dodge prevented her from getting all her jumps back. And yeah, it's looking like this guy's got just the right amount of toasters, to be honest. Yeah, but He's... really, what does the tag mean? Too many toasters. How many toasters is too many toasters? I'm not sure. All right, we're looking for anything here. F Smash gonna take it, looking for something else. Once again, these hits are trading. It's just unfortunate because it's just not in Higgs' favor here. All right, a couple rolls coming out in the bakery here. Looking for something. All right, here comes the bell. Not going to extend. F Smash doesn't take it quite yet. This could potentially be it. The apple going for it, the loop-de-loop. -loop. Not gonna be able to find it. 
Okay, tries to hit the hydrant away with back air, but it's actually gonna be Puff sending it back. And I don't know, Puff at 91%. Oh, oh okay. Oh no, Scott. Puff at 91 ping, maybe. Oh no. no. <laughs> we have been kicked out. We were so close. Okay. Yeah, hopefully, again, that the players were not affected. I know Ultimate does prioritize kicking spectators out first, which is probably like the one good attribute that the online functionality has in this yeah. game. At least it's respectful enough to uh, <laughs> your players before uh, the players, or respectful to the players before the spectators. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that was looking in favor of Toasters there. Uh, once again, the team looked like they really commanded the stage really well. I mean, really, two low tiers, like doing as well as they're doing who's, is insane who's the second low tier pac-man uh, i i mean you would say it's dr mario but not in the hands Wait. of dr steven not but if it it's pikachu pac-man those those are high tiers i mean yeah but still i mean i guess like dr steve like you have like a line of dr mario's and it's like out of the out of the dr mario's here dr steven's uh Oh, players also did Ooh. disconnect, so we'll probably have to start that over from two stocks to one fresh, I would say. That's probably the correct TO call. That's just my yeah. brain going. I'd agree with that. They were both around that 90% mark, so yeah. probably the fairest way to do it. But at the end of the day, it'll be up to the staff to make that call. And the players, you know, depending on if anyone has to pipe up and be like, no, it should actually be. But, um, I mean, Puff at 90, you might as well just take the stock away. Yeah, really, say, right. On to the next. No, just kidding. We're not super big puff haters here. We don't have we don't really have puffs in Tri-State now, do we? I can't really think of one. Nope. I don't think so. I don't think we have like a dedicated puff here. But I mean we have seen base mage, right? And, oh well uh, that's Arizona. Yeah, of, of course. I just mean like, you know, on the on the yeah. global level, Puff oh, yeah. is actually starting to make a bit of a, a comeback and Arika from Japan is really good. Oh as yeah, well. true. Um I casted an Arizona tournament not too long ago and um I was made aware that there are multiple Isabels on the Arizona PR. <laughs> multiple. <laughs> Googling Arizona Smash Ultimate <laughs> PR, PR right now. Yeah, no, I there's there's a couple that are pretty good. <laughs> That's what I was told. You don't mean they're melee PR. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, I mean they're ultimate PR. <laughs> okay, B Rice yep. is ranked eighth with Isabel and <laughs> Is that the uh, only one this season? Maybe the other one fell off. Yeah, yeah, probably. But there were multiple at that tournament that I casted. Um, and wow. PR to Isabel is such a funny thing to think about. I mean, Jersey has its own PR to Isabel in Mr. Zircon, and Mr. Zircon knows how to make an upset. Like, all these players coming off of Wi Fi, especially like D Dog, for example, when he just went to Fusion and beat Tweak twice, like, where, yeah, where did that? <laughs> Worst part is everyone's just like, oh, Tweak just needs to switch to Wolf or Sephiroth or Diddy. It's over. Tweak tried all of them. Yeah. I mean, D-Dog is definitely a beast. And I, I think that's the coolest part about this Wi-Fi yeah. era, right? Like, a lot of people are just kind of like, oh, like, you got to play online. But it also kind of, like, opened up the door for so many players to catch up. All right. Okay. Looks like Northwood um, is going to just put in... Rage Link, and I believe that means that somehow the last stock from um, Big Higgs was was gone. So, all right, looks like we're going to get Pac-Man versus Terry. That one's going to be a little bit difficult, too. I feel like I don't really know, like, a Terry matchup chart off the top of my head. I just think Terry struggles versus Zoners. I mean, what, like, how do I say this? Reliable option does Terry really have getting in? especially on pac-man you have a hydrant you have uh fruit as well that could just be really rough yeah and also pac-man is one of those zoners who is gifted with some amazing normals right frame three neutral air uh frame three jab as well i believe just really quick scrappy moves forward tilt down tilt dash stack all stuff that doesn't make him feel like he's designed to be played from far away mm -hmm. and i think you know the other one people point to is rob but yeah compare the frame data on rob's aerials to pac-man's aerials and we're totally in two different ball games, so yeah, I would guess that Pac-Man probably works Terry, um, especially on Kalos. Oh my God, I actually think this is a oh Pac-Man stage. I think this is a Pac-Man stage more than it is a Terry stage. I'll be honest. I'd say you are absolutely co uh, correct. You have the platforms to land on with side B or even up B, but then really what you have is the wall. 
which not only gives Pac-Man access to wall jump, but it lets him throw the fruit into the stage and catch it. You know, when I say fruit, I mean keys and galaxians and, and bells included. So that's like the best way for Pac-Man to get the item in hand. Oh god, jeez, toasters! Having a blast so far. I love the strings that they do. Uh, but once again, Rage Link, we've seen Rage Link play a lot today. They definitely know how to combo some stuff into other stuff. I mean, really, it's Terry. It's part of the fundamentals of the character. Uh, but I just see Toaster just waiting on the ledge, waiting on the waiting on the platform, just waiting. And once again, this is why I super disagreed uh, with this stage pick coming out from Northwood. I mean, it, it's it's a little too rough, I think, for Terry to get in at all. Yeah, and it seems like they are gonna yet again anchor Seth here. So you're not really afforded that opportunity to blow away the zoner with a character like Captain Falcon who can really rush down Pac-Man and maybe even up the stock count a little bit here. Poster's hanging on to two stocks still. And Rage Link, obviously he's got three, but we saw three lost for Northwood beforehand. Ooh, okay. Gonna get the up smash out on Rage Link's side. Looking good so far on this first stock. I know it may be a little bit frustrating, but so far things are looking A-OK. -okay. And really, I mean, Terry, we know that Terry gets more explosive at 100%. So, I mean, they could definitely take this stock now and then cheese out their last stock on too many toasters. But it's really all up to kind of the way that the match is gonna flow. Once again, we're just going to see this kind of stale neutral. And here we go. Here's that go meter all the way up. Yep, and the first stock being taken with the burn knuckle. I was going to say when, when you were asking what answers Terry might have to projectile games, that's really the only one. That and I guess jumping over with power dunk. But, oh, okay, I thought we were going to see a smash attack. But um, yeah, burn knuckle can just kind of blast through stuff, especially Pac-Man's hydrant. I think that's really Terry's X factor in this matchup. Hydrant gonna come down here. Let's see exactly how this one's gonna play out. All right, I like the aggressive like aerials on Rage Link Shield, but really, uh, I mean, here we go. The Power Geyser is gonna hit all the way from above, so it seems like Toasters is gonna have to find a new way in. Gets the grab. If I'm Toasters, I really gotta get this out right away. And wow, I cannot believe that almost saved it. This matchup is just silly. <laughs> Pac-Man has so many things that he can throw at you. Terry does not appreciate any of them. But of course, once he gets in, the character just does so much damage, kills you so early. So we can still see Rage Link take this one. I mean, he's got a comfortable stock lead here, but needs to put in overtime. You don't want to be two stocks down when the next player comes out for um, University of Mount Union, especially because Dr. Steven is waiting in the wings. Yeah, true. Dr. Steven, definitely the anchor, funny enough, uh, during today, uh, especially with Seth on the, on the run too. So let's see how this one's gonna kind of turn out here. Range length though, and too many toasters, both sitting around that 50, 60%. One's gotta take, one's gotta take the other out like right now. Once again, Terry um, at 100, a little bit more reliable to KO, but not if you're sent all the way off the stage like that. Oh no! Oh! <laughs> that was crazy, Max. Bruh. We saw the same thing. We wanted the same thing to happen. We wanted him to get hit and then the Pac-Man side beat come in and launch. Oh my God, that would have been insane. That would have been so cool. Unfortunately, the power guys are not gonna be able to take it. Toaster's still hanging out. Gets hit by their own hydrant though. This could potentially be it for Toaster's. Oh, bonks off the side of the stage, but Rage Link still playing it pretty passive. They could potentially lose their stock here. Okay, throws the key, goes back to an orange, doesn't manage to connect, and we yet again have Rage Link back on the stage. I think he's been playing around the Hydra almost better than Toaster's has. For yeah. Point. Completely real. Yeah. Definitely matchup experience things. Definitely not pressing his advantage in too far, like, gone to. He isn't going in with uh, the powered up Buster Wolf either. Like, he's not like, going for too much, but still, Toaster's. It, it's so hard to break around a Pac-Man wall, especially on this stage. It's, it's just so polarizing to play against. I think the way that Rage Link has been dealing with Hydra is really smart. Chip away at it with the power waves and then go for whatever hit you think is going to send it at the proper angle to hit Pac-Man afterward, but it just takes so much time. He parried oh! it! He parried it! Did you see that? He parried that! That was game. <laughs> game All right. Oh my Let's god! Let's go, Rage Link. Oh my god, he parried that! Some true FGC fundamentals here. Let's go block just at the right time. Jab, jab, Buster Wolf to close the door on that game. 
All right. And I believe that was still two stocks intact for Rage Link here. So um, really far from being out of the woods for his team. Uh, no pun intended. As Northwood is, uh, yeah, they're, they're clinging to life here. Toasters goes down. It's going to be either Air or Dr. Steven coming in to deal with this Terry. Honestly, I kind of don't like Pikachu versus Terry. No, if I'm, I, it doesn't if I'm look Pikachu good player, either. I'm scared, bro. I'm scared. Yeah, it's definitely a little small. Um, once again, the, the little uh, wave that travels along the stage, that's definitely going to prop Pikachu up. I, I want to see Dr. Steven. I want to see Dr. Steven, like do what he did again because i'm a believer but I, I i gotta see it again i think seeing is believing twice i think it's also just straight up the correct play because yeah. theoretically you have dr steven you know even if he trades stocks and he takes two for two and then as one stock goes into seth maybe takes one maybe doesn't but then you have pikachu versus falcon as the closing matchup oh never mind looks like it's actually going to be air so um you know when I was saying that I'd be scared as Pikachu against Terry, it's one of those on paper versus in practice things yet again. I would yep. say Pikachu is probably massively favored in this matchup on paper. You can edge guard the hell out of this character. Uh, you can do some really mean things to him. It's very hard to hit the tiny guys, but Terry has the kill button. Yeah, and very true. By that I mean like a lot of buttons are the kill button. Yep, very very true stage came into such a big play last game max that i gotta i gotta call it out now it has to be a better stage for pikachu i mean anywhere i think i don't think P does pikachu have a bad stage if we're being honest that's a good question um i don't know i think the place that pikachu would be least comfortable is somewhere with small blast zones so mm -hmm. small battlefield smashville those might be the slightly problematic stages for him but I wouldn't say that it's it's straight up a bad stage for the character. He's mm -hmm. very versatile, ton of options, ton of different play styles he can go with. So, um, yeah, it, it's definitely hard to counterpick Pikachu in terms of stages. All righty. Well, let's see what Air can do. Uh, Rageling did lose a stock. Oh, we're going back to Kalos, which, once again, and maybe it's a personal choice. Maybe Rageling really just loves Kalos. Yeah, maybe he does. I don't know. Um, Terry being able to kill so reliably might not even make him really feel the, the penalty of having big glass in his gear. Yeah, very true. All right, Rage Link, though, going to start off with the jab, jab, power down. Do it again as well. It's proving to be pretty reliable versus Pikachu, like you said. Maybe matchup not working out as well as they'd like to here. Comes the forward air, trying to find something not going to be able to, though. Uh, Rage Link playing so, so safe, not really approaching for anything. And I mean, I wouldn't approach Pikachu either. These lightning loops can really hurt a character like Terry. Yeah, he's so heavy that they'll just work consistently into pretty decent percent ranges. But also, yeah, I, I think I agree with that. Rage Link, possibly the campiest Terry I've ever seen. He <laughs> does love his power waves. Wow, the parry in between hits back air. Terry's jab being, I believe, frame two is fast enough to guarantee the punish on any parry. Yeah, for sure. All right, here we go, though. Here we go. Air has the grab, but here we go. Rage Link also does have the have the rage here. And Pikachu's small, Max, so, I mean, probably a power, power geyser may actually kill at 104. Oh, with ease, <laughs> for sure. I think Burn Knuckle anywhere near the corner is a death sentence at this point as well. Oh, but yo, wow. Pikachu's dash attack, for some reason, that move is minus 11 on shield. It can only be hit with shield grab or like an aerial that's frame eight or less and will hit Pikachu's tiny body like that. So we saw Rageling kind of get mixed up by that. He went for something that wasn't one of those options and then I hit by the down smash right after. Yeah, very, very true. All right, looking for something though. Air having a good time on the stage, not gonna be approaching for anything though. I don't blame them. There's something, not gonna be able to find anything though. Jab, jab, power dunk. Once again, the old reliable, as I like to call it. Right. Still neutral between both these players. Doing it so well so far, like uh, Max was saying earlier. Definitely the most passive carry that I've seen ever in this game. Uh, so far, though, Air not having too much trouble. Uh, can't really find the proper follow up either. I feel like they're just. Uh, they haven't been able to get like a lightning loop out. Uh, but fair though, here comes Rage Link's potential last stop, but gonna be able to recover the stage. Bro, did you just see Quick Attack clank out Power Wave? <laughs> yeah. There's no way. That's that's not fair. What is this character doing in this game? <laughs> I don't know. Going for the side B? 
That was... Right, no, it was AB smash. It was it had to be AB smash and he messed up, right? Please tell me. No, Please that me. was definitely the BM side B. Had to be. Ooh, okay, no miss tech. Oh jeez. No. Going way too high for the up smash. No thunder, oh! but finds the turnaround F smash and air. Gonna overcome the the demon Terry himself and still chilling. Dr. Steven doesn't even need to come in and we got Sensational now coming in. Uh, Falcon Pikachu, once again, as you said this earlier, Max, not a good time. No, definitely not. And Air still with two stocks, ready to go here. I mean, last time he only had to close one out. On yeah. Seth, right? So it wasn't the biggest ask. And now Seth has also had a little bit of time to adjust to not just play against Air, but also watch him play other people. So maybe we'll see a bit of a different story. And of course, three full stocks is going to make a world of difference. Um, then you got to take on the dock. So <laughs> I, I, I would like to say this is still possible for Northwood. But the odds are certainly stacked against him. Five stocks to three now at this point. And yeah, we'll see just how hard Seth can anchor his team. Oh, Ooh. I was just about to ask you this, Max. Do you think we're going to see the, si the switch to Sephiroth instead of Falcon? And production just let me know in my ear that we are going to see Sephiroth versus Pikachu. What do you think about think about this matchup in comparison to Falcon? I'll be honest. I think they both suffer from the same exact <laughs> problems against Pikachu. And uh, if you guys ever run into a Falcon Seth co-main in bracket, like Dr. Seth over here, um, you might want to just pick Pikachu um it, it answers both of his characters extremely well just the natural low profiling of pikachu against characters who have to space those landing aerials man it's it's just really tough for them to deal with and i would say that it might even be worse for sephiroth than it is for falcon because at least falcon's back air is kind of angled downward and you can hit those low profile guys but like if you picture sephiroth's forward air for instance it just goes straight horizontally right and yeah. some characters like crouching sheep I believe Crouching Pikachu as well just cannot be hit by that. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Very, very true. All right. Well, we talked about this a little bit earlier. We haven't seen too many Sephiroths. I want to see the Sensational Sephiroth too. Uh, pretty even right now. Once again, what is with Kalos today? I mean, I guess this is a great stage for Sephiroth. The walls are pretty consistent that he can pin onto. Oh my god, did you see that? If you land on ledge just in time, the orbs won't actually blow you up, but... This is looking a very comfortable for Air right now. I'm seeing them move a lot faster than they did uh, versus uh, the last player they played against. Yeah, even though Pikachu's tiny, stubby hitboxes never contend with Sephiroth, what you can do is just get him to whiff, sneak underneath him, and then go for a punish. But Seth, starting to show that he's got some tech for this matchup, right? You have to kind of use only like 30, 40% of your moves against the big characters like this, rather than playing the style you normally would. Seth not having too much trouble adjusting. Now that he's stuck off stage, or never mind, now that Air is stuck off stage after getting Trump, we can see the tide of battle start to shift. It is completely even so far, though. Yeah, definitely for sure. Down Air not going to be able to take anything. Got the full flare almost charged up there. He's got to watch it, though, because once again, uh, the Pikachu can just take. But here comes that, here comes the wing. The wing is going to definitely do a number on Pikachu. Pikachu's very light. Uh, so let's see how this one's going to go out. I think Air knows it, too, because of the way that they were backing up and shooting at the uh, T-Jolts, but unfortunately gonna eat a back air straight to the face. And here we go, Seth, looking pretty good. Yeah, Wing Sephiroth is just so terrifying. 30% damage increase. That's basically a whole life orb from Pokemon. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of value, but now it is gone. He took the stock and has done some damage, so Wing's gonna expire. Oh, and he's up two stocks. That's why it's gone already. Yeah, very true. Through battles, yeah. So I guess Sephiroth can actually work against you in through battles as well, right? We were talking about how he gets the wing earlier when he's down stocks, and can start the match by uh, being down stocks. Oh. Cruise. Oh. Unfortunate. Yeah, Octo Slash not even going to bring up as mu like as much as it could here. And still neutral between both these characters coming in with the back air, double back air. But honestly. I feel like Air has done their job here. They already got themselves up uh, for Dr. Steven to come in and really close this out if they can. But Seth going to get mm. hopefully wings soon. But geez, oh god. I feel like reflection onto a Pikachu neutral V may actually like do it. Oh, oh my god, no. what a genius. <laughs> An apparent SD, oh, but no. it's not. 
Wow, the, the tail end of Ginkasaur's tapping right there. And the angle down forward tilt just to ensure it hits a low profile. Yes, yeah, Sephiroth does have some tech in some low profile characters, right? So there's angle down forward tilt. Uh, going for back air to space instead of forward air because it has a wider hitbox. Landing up airs. And then, um, of course, like you said, the counter is actually yeah. really good against Thunderjolt spam. But, you know, it just clicked for me in the end of that match why Seth went with Sephiroth here. And that's because now he doesn't have to play Doc Falcon. He can play Sephiroth Falcon. And we were saying tiny characters give Sephiroth a problem. But you know who Sephiroth gives problems to? Tiny Plumbers. characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Stub Plumbers, stubby characters. Tiny Plumbers characters, that yeah. went back to school and got their doctorate degree. Right. I think... All Both right. Marios have a decently hard time against pretty much every sword character in the game. Sephiroth, a little bit of a break from the traditional sword style, mm -hmm. right? I, we brought up that um, arcing forward air like Lucina has, right? Where it's nice and mm -hmm. fast, it covers a wide amount of space. Like, that's really good against characters like Mario right. and Doc. But okay. Sephiroth, he, he is much more like purely horizontal with his range. So we'll see if that comes into play at all. Maybe Dr. Steven ends up kind of low profiling some moves naturally as well, like Pikachu would. Yep, very, very true. All right, here we go. Seth is down one stock though, to be fair. I do believe these are the last players on uh, each of their perspective sides. Now, if Seth wins, we could potentially see our first game three of the day. But if Dr. Steven wins, it's over. Uh, University of Mount Union will be taking it, but on Town and City once again, which I don't know if I agree with versus Sephiroth especially. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like a lot of players just make their stage picks and ultimate based on comfort. Like in Melee, you see it's much more structured and ordered, like which characters should be going to which stages and yeah. stuff. But in this game, it seems a lot more freeform. And that's also because, you know, there's so many more interactions in ultimate, whereas like in Melee, stocks are decided a little bit more quickly or off fewer neutral uh, wins. Very true. This is a great uh, calculation pick also from Northwood. I really actually feel like they, they really did counter Dr. Steven here. They knew the problem, they figured it out. Down smash, not gonna be able to KO, but geez, Dr. Mario going really high in the blast zone there. Looking a little scary. All right, jab, jab comes out. So as rough as this matchup may be for Dr. Mario, he does still have a ton of kill power, uh, kind of referencing that DD versus Diddy matchup from before. Mm -hmm. What happens in practice is a lot different from what should happen. So maybe we'll see Seth dying a little bit early here, but so far it just looks so impossible for Doc to even get his hands on Seth off in the first place. That mm -hmm. range is, is nuts. All right, here we go. Seth, though, going to be able to even up stock count once again. This is the first time I've actually think we've seen an even game this entire day. Oh, Octo Slash not going to be able to come out. The kill does come and interrupt everything. So looking a little scary for both sides here. That shield getting whittled away by the Shadow Flares, reapplying them to Seth. Looking really strong here. He has yet to drop his first stock, and he's working his way through Dr. Steven's second. Are we getting this fabled oh. game three? Okay, back there, not going to be able to take it. Oh, Tornado doesn't clip. Oh, okay, sends him off with the cape, goes for something up there, not going to be able to find it. Back there, though, from Seth. I like the way that they tried to read um, the up air instead of going for the standard typical, like, Sephiroth back air with it. Um, looks a little bit better, but the Mario Tornado going to come in. Dr. Steven at 104. This could potentially be it, but unfortunately for him, we're going to last stock, Max. Fire mix-ups from both of these players. Dr. Steven going for a multi-hit on Seth's shield, and then Seth going for the up smash to cover behind him and eat up the spot dodge. Oh, oh, how did both of those shadow players miss? That could have been huge for Seth. Yeah, that's so unfortunate coming in. Up air is going to be the option here. Looking for anything, though. Oh, you see that cape? That was such yeah, a ballsy crazy. cape. Pill into cape? Who, who does that? Oh, no, he's holding shield for so long. Doesn't get his shield broken. I think Giga Flare would have killed him, though. Seth down smashing the wrong way. Yo, the spaghetti is here. Yes. I know Mario's on the screen, but it's not time for your time. No, definitely not. Looking for anything, though. This could be it. Great grab from Steven. Oh, my God. The fair definitely would have done it, Max. And the up smash is not going to take it. We are on Town and City. Once again, this is why I said I wasn't sure about the pick. Seth going to be able to recover, oh! but rolls right into the up smash. And University of Mount Union is going to be able to clutch this set 2-0. But man, did we go down to the last, last stock, Max. Oh my god. 
Dr. Mother Father Steven <laughs> in the building. What is going on? I literally jumped out of my seat. I'm sitting on my ankles right now because of that that ending. That was so intense, man. I was ready for anything uh, in the, the tail end of that match. But man, uh, it really looked like Seth just started to lose composure to some degree. I'm not going to lie. Like uh, He was playing so well at the beginning. Started off down a stock, but able to just... Um, or almost able to pull it all the way back. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Steven, at the tail end of that game, man, he just clutched up. Yeah, and I think, production, if you could back us up, that is actually going to be the last of us today. Um, I think that was our indeed our last set. Uh, we do have a whole day two going on tomorrow as well. So I'm super excited to see who's actually going to win it for our uh, Midwest uh, friends. Once again, uh, my... I am so excited to see Dr. Steven versus the twins. Let me tell you, like, that's going to be like my main want out of tomorrow. Yeah. And against time gears team. At oh, Miami true. University true. Ohio. Yeah. We have a lot of exciting matchups coming up. And actually I believe that match was a pool decider yes. for um, Mount union. So they have qualified and, and they're going to be in it tomorrow. So congratulations to them. And of course, all the other teams who managed to make it on through to the other side. Um, we will be seeing you guys tomorrow and we'll be seeing all of you in the chat as well hopefully please guys drop a follow on the cnc channel and um you can stay plugged in you'll get that little alert on your phone or in your email when it goes live tomorrow and man um this is this is so fun like yeah i love collegiate events every time you know um because it used to be like my my main full-time job yeah. running this kind of stuff every time i get looped back in i'm just like oh man this is why i did this this is why i loved it mm -hmm. so much all righty and i think that'll be it for us thank you so much max where can they find you you can find me on twitter at max Ketchum underscore um they can find me on metify at max dash ketchum so metify.gg slash max or slash at max dash ketchum i just started yep, coaching that's it. um and if you guys want to learn how to commentate to or play the game better i got you covered Yep, you guys can find me on all platforms at lyric of wisdom um twitch twitter instagram uh TikTok. um yeah you TikTok. Can find all right let's oh, yeah, go I love it. get that bad girl, girl. Let's I'm trying, go. I'm <laughs> i don't do the dances though it's just clips from my stream so i i refuse to do one of those so. no no that's fine i i would embarrass myself too. yeah same all right and we'll see you guys uh right here back here tomorrow on uh twitch.tv slash esports you we can't wait to see you there
to the CENC Southeast Invitational where we're getting into our last crew battle of the night. It's going to be Veery from USF taking on FAU Blues. Uh, I don't remember who this is, but Veery, you <laughs> might know, has some very good wins, has won a regional, pretty much a major, and they are oh. showing this amazing punish game already. If you want to know how, check that last 92% because, dear lord, I don't know what the plan was right there. Uh, yeah, getting trapped by those uh, down tilts next to the gyro is just really tough um, for any character to navigate, especially a character as big as Ganon. Um, only 14% on Beery. It's going to take a miracle to uh, bring the stock back. It, really by a miracle, I mean one or two good reads, but uh, Rob, Rob is just really scary. Rob will just kill you dead like that. Whenever. And so, yeah, literally every percent is kill confirmed percent. As we're seeing here, you have Ganon off stage. You have the gyro right there, side no. B, and you're dead. Oh my god. Dude, what is the play there? Like, I know you don't want to neutral get up into side B, but you know, you're like 15. You expect some kind of punish. Not death at 15, though. That was really there... smart for him to go straight into side B and just like, you know, set up the strongest punish he can, but Jesus. Again? I know okay. you know we're off we're, we're behind schedule. I know this very, but you don't have to speed run. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to get punished for that super high recovery right here. With that uh, up beat, I mean, that's honestly great. I wasn't, honestly, the way things have been going. Are you kidding me, Viri? That was your pinned Twitter clip right there. Like, I have watched Rob do that all day today. Because I was watching Frosties before I hopped on. I think it was Zamba. And I was like, it was like Zamba against Color Color Nato. I can't pronounce the name right. And I was like, oh, this this should be a pretty good match. And then it said go. And before the letters were off the screen, homeboys get inside beat and blast them. Like it's just so incredibly powerful. Uh, that that move is just so incredibly powerful in this character's kit. And like he gets it off everything. He gets it off one of the best projectiles in the game. 
uh, whether he's throwing it at you, whether he's just leaving it at the ledge, like whether he's Z dropping it, like it's just it's this character is just a force of nature. And I think it's really funny that people are like, I don't know if he's top five. I'm like, look at any results, bro. He's there. <laughs> like, Rob is crazy. My beloved Smashers in the audience, I want you to take a minute to realize Viri ended that game before we got the the UI up. We didn't even switch over. <laughs> we didn't even <laughs> switch over yet. Viri is on a rampage. And now you're up against another strong combo game character. I think this will be Rai Shni coming in. All right. Can Rai Shni on the peach hold up against Viri? Remains to be seen. I think if anyone could, they can. Now, I will say the upbeat kill that did come through was very clutch because he was certainly, you know, on the bullet train, you know, the three stock town. Uh, so that was clutch. Uh, Raishni, I saw some very impressive play earlier, so I'm excited to see this match go down. Uh, I feel like both these players have, like, extraordinary combo games, so I don't think this match will be going on for very long. I know that much, no matter what happens. Oh, some nice shield pressure right there, right out of the down air, into the back air. Oh, look at this perfect movement right there, perfect pressure. As you throw the turn up right into Viri, you have a slight lead, but you gotta remember, every percent is kill percent. You can't get caught by that it nair, because you'd be sent off the side, not quite close to the blast zone, but they still go for the back air anyway. Remember, if you drop something, keep swinging, keep going for that <laughs> punish. That's the sign of a good player. Especially with a move as enormous and powerful as Rob's back air. Mm -hmm. As the up smash will put... Raishni in disadvantage. They lost their lead, but now they're without a jump right here, trying to get back. That side be going to be punished with the forward air. Beer's doing a really good job of controlling space right now. Not even just with the projectiles, but like those back airs at the ledge making it so Woo! she can't jump up and like, or even like, you know, land with like a, a, a nair and like try to get a combo started. It's making it really tough for Rai. Um, Rai's not out of this just yet, but these gyro combos. Oh, yeah, you definitely want to catch that gyro. <laughs> these gyro combos are terrifying. Yep, as, oh, Viri's just going all the way out to get time to get their gyro back, and then there's right back into the fray. Gonna get caught by the flow cancel back air, but regardless, a lot of good pressure. Find this kill? A lot of good oh, pressure no. from Rai. Uh, Viri actually was running out of gas and had to just kind of like float his way there. Um, but despite that, 112, already laughing percent, narrowly avoiding that back air. Here's the thing he didn't get hit by that back air by like a wish and a skittle, like it just barely didn't touch him. But then, where's the punish? Like, there's no punish for a move that is that powerful and that devastating at the ledge. And now you have to win neutral again to finish off Viri. They're going all the way up, and they shield both you with down Great smash. Man. Look at that turn up flying in from <laughs> off screen. I've never seen that. But either way, you get rough mm. right into the gyro. That's the same way they got the first kill. All right. Now, I don't think we, ha we haven't seen a full OCV yet, right? No one's taken all nine today yet, right? No, they haven't. All right. Viri making a strong argument for it. If you're able to beat Raishni like this, I think you might just be able to finish off FAU Blue. As right now, Raishni looking to not let that happen, looking to give their team a fighting chance against USF. But how do you do it? Where do you find the kill? Where do you get in against this constant maze of projectiles? And look how tough that is. Even being right, even knowing the spacing of the laser, the angle he's going to pick and when he was going to do it, he doesn't get a punish because that forward air comes out right after. That's the thing that makes his character so scary is that even when he's not zoning you, he has insane boxing tools. Gyro's popping into Jimmy Pinkett. Oh, 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 and 170 was that a kill? The side means certainly will. No, it won't. As Raishni is able to survive hanging on by the skin of their team. Just a thread between them and losing this. That was a... Dirty side B, by the way. Oh, right now. Just trying to space with that up there on the platform. You're out of there, son. As now, Raichmi is out of there. Beauty still has two stocks to their name. And, well. 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 What do well. we. Where do we go from here? What are we going to do now? You know, I don't know. Um, now Vanage really good too. I do really like the way I was. Uh, I, I do enjoy his snake. It was really uh, fun to watch. Um, but Veery's on a tear right now. Like if I had to guess the anchor, I would assume it would be Rice Knee. That would, um, from what I've seen, that's who has looked like the strongest player so far. I don't want to necessarily like you know assume who's best on their team. I don't you know I don't know these guys. Uh, but Rice Knee definitely was. He was the most threatening to me and didn't take a stock just now.
Like, you know, he played well, but, you know, you call it like it is. He did not take a sock off uh, Veery, who is extraordinarily good. So, yeah, Van has got to really clutch up. Like, this is a lot of work. That was brutal. The only way they were able to take a stock of Veery was the Ganon in game one with, <laughs> frankly, the most overcommittal read I think I've ever seen. <laughs> and it worked. You got it. <laughs> It worked. I was just like, all right, that's that is a wild punish. But I mean he he got it, but yeah, Rob would have super killed him if he was wrong. Like back here. Yeah, exactly. Right like if you have to go for reads that will kill you if you are wrong. And where how do you deal with that? How do you plan around that? I don't think you do. And um even on that ex- in that exact same vein, you saw Veery go for that side beat out of nowhere, just that grounded one. Uh oh, we got a Bowser versus Rob. Um let me think. Let me. Th- how's this? I don't really know. I don't know the play here. A good out of that. shield option. Some heavy punishes. And some very heavy punishes. Right but, here. Okay. Was... Best case scenario, uh, forward air actually can probably contest a lot of Rob's aerials just because it's so disjointed. So there is that. Um, off stage, next question. Uh, combo game, next question. You're able to get the jump out. Good job saving yourself for just the right time to avoid the kill move. Yes. But now, look at this. Kill moves. Can we, talk about how the, can we talk about how the punish for not dying from that zero death was another 40%? Like, and now oh it's dead. My God. All right. Viri is going to be the first player to OCV tonight. <laughs> yeah, I can't argue with you there, Sai. Look at this. Landing there right there. The gyro falling back down for just additional shield pressure. As at this point, yeah, Taylor, just hold that center stage. It's where you might be safe, but it also just gives them more stage to combo you with. Wow, I almost never see Bowser get like straight up shield poked, but he's actually been tacking his tacking away to shield with these projectiles for so long. Which is really good because like if he goes in up close and tries to like get his shield with like fairs or like down to whatever, whirling fortress is an option that can like come through and reverse the momentum. But the fact that he's getting his shield so low with these lasers and gyros and then going in with those aerials, uh, is gonna kinda force Telos to try to like run in and play an even closer game. But still, even that even that still looks pretty tough. There. Gosh, it's just impossible to land. It's impossible to survive. Mm. But the get that does well, get them off here. Yep, Sash out of shield will do something good. Maybe you can get a stock off there for pride's sake. That last stock, last stock though, you're going to need a miracle. Yeah, this is uh, they might as well just start veering on the next one, honestly. Why not? <laughs> you know, like, uh, which is crazy because they were down um, a set because um. What happened? Because FAU you was coming in up on a game. Like, Maybe he didn't. He's playing right okay. now. Okay. Game. Because look at this. OCV. Not only that, Whoa. only dropping a single stock. One stock to nine is crazy. The most dominant performance we've seen all night from Viri's Rob. Uh, th- what, what better plan do you have? Than starting Veery again. Homeboy took nine stocks. Um, took nine stocks comfortably, too. Like, there was no point in that match that we just saw where he was in any real danger of losing just a second stock. Um, I could see if it came down to last stock and they had to, you know, move on forward, maybe over to Riolu or Grapefruit, but like, no, Veery just said, I got it. I got yeah, this. I, I think Rob, too is a character that when you are a better player than someone, it shows so well. Like, think about, like, top players who get upset. Like, Tweak plays a very neutral-based character. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you can lose neutral a lot. And even if you're just losing neutral, okay, you're fine. Against a good punish game, you can be taken down. But with a ga- character with a good punish game, when you're just a better player, there's, like, five neutral interactions that happen in the entire game. And each of them lead to either death or almost death. And that's and that's the thing. This character just shines in that regard so hard because, like, if he wants to, let's say Rob wanted to play like a cautious neutral, like Viddy might, he has all the tools to do that. So it's just it's just insane. It's like you have the zero death threat of like fighting like a Luigi or a Steve. You have crazy zoning tools, a la like Young Link at this point, or 
or Diddy, and you have like a solid neutral with like crazy boxing options like his Little Mac, and you have a fantastic recovery. And they're like, oh, Rob is big. It's like, Ant? <laughs> like, who cares? Um, all right, so we're starting off. This is going to be game three of the set. Uh, um, I'm so sorry. I don't want to mispronounce it. Okay, Van is going to come in, start us off. Snake versus Rob. Um, honestly, I feel like this is a relatively even matchup until Snake gets back here a single time. Yeah, um, how do you feel about, like, grenades to break up Rob combos? Uh, they're life-saving. They're life-changing. Uh, if Beery's on the ball, it d d not always, it doesn't always amount to much, like, if he's aware of when it's gonna happen. Just because, like, if he decides to keep chasing you with, like, up air or, like, neutral air, like, you still have to kind of hold it. Being able to armor through up air is really important, too, but, uh, offstage it's rough. As soon as Snake is sent high into either direction and is forced to, like, kind of very slowly drift back into the stage or even with up B, Rob is getting a free back air no matter what. It doesn't matter. Like, you have years to land the back air punish. So you have to play a really careful ground in neutral against him. And we've seen Beery land a ton of those back airs against not even Snake. That was a nice recovery though. That, that was really up. smart. Yeah. Always do what is not expected. That was not the safest thing Beery could have done, or Vanny could have done, but either way. He's still gonna get caught by the back air. Then off and Ooh, yeah, just obliterated it. Yeah, and, and you only do a recovery like that when you know all the other options are going to get you killed. Like, that worked as a surprise element, and he's probably been bared to death plenty of times to know that it is that crucial to get back to the stage that quickly. Look at this perfect option cover. Oh my gosh! It's just... You need to find a way through. The dash tech will actually be it. And you forgot about that C4, didn't you, Viri? Maybe a chance for Bannon to get some mileage going, but the gyro throw out of shield is going to open you up to a massive punish. POV, you have to fight Rob in neutral and you want the stage. <laughs> like, yep. That could have been on a loop for years. The thing about this, even though Snake has the tools to escape Rob combos, it doesn't matter. Because even though it forces Viri to play neutral more, they're still winning it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, that's the thing too. Is like Snake does have the tools for this, but he's been trapped in the corner the entire game. And normally Snake isn't even bad in that position. You know, he's zoning you. He's got great projectiles he's throwing at you that, that you have to respect. He's got, you know, a frame six kill option if you're wrong about something. But, like, Beery's just got so much momentum on his side. He's covering every defensive option. He's baiting out all these air dodges. Like, he's just way, way ahead right now. As far as oh, my gosh. It looked like for a second at the beginning of this, the Vannon might be able to get some momentum. But it's been snatched away by Beery and Rob. Look at this. They're just trying anything, anything to find a way in. And the gyro. I like that. The Cypher actually knocks the Pyro away from lead, but it doesn't matter. You're still gonna get up smashed. Yo, let's talk conditioning. So Viri goes for like five back airs at the ledge, which again is a really strong option period, especially on a character as tall as Snake. So he's like, all right, I'll crouch so that the back air will whiff. And out of crouch, you can buffer up tilt and get like a lot of free cheesy kills. And he's like, oh, cool. I'm gonna scoop you up with up smash as punishment for not getting hit by the one of the, by probably top three back airs in the game like theory's on point how many stocks did he lose any one no. zero no. zero stocks i think Viri's going for the nine stock it i think is. they are they have the potential to they got the eight stock without dropping one they definitely have the potential to uh okay i don't even want to speak it into existence but i think it's almost inevitable at this point Viri just started hot and just keeps getting hotter did Beery not play in the like we didn't get to catch the first round did Beery not play in the first round like what happened look at this <laughs> it had to be Beery not playing no offense to the other members i know they're good like mm -hmm, i know mm -hmm. jeff is good i know grapefruit is good but very very is different is, like very very is, feels different right now yeah like again this is a person who has won IRL, arguable majors, more regionals, but still. They yes. are a serious threat offline, and they're proving that they are online. Why should you fight out the Zelda? All right, you know what? Going for the Zelda again. Um, I don't blame him. I mean, the Peach was not able to take a stop, so, you know, logistically, no reason not to switch it up if you have the opportunity to. Yeah, and I do like Raishni's option coverage as Zelda. But do you remember what destroyed their Zelda when they were playing Hobby on Earth? When Hobby suddenly decided to go from a slower playstyle to just stuffing Zelda out, overwhelming mm -hmm. her. That is how Viri has been playing this entire time. 
That's true. Yeah, Barry's been really aggressive, which I love. I'm, I'm, I'm I always love to see you some good aggro play. Uh, Raishni cannot. There's not a lot of ground and neutral that's coming out in their favor. And even right there, that could have potentially like started a combo, but I think the up tilt got extended on the gyro and kind of like robbed him of that. Ooh. Yeah, I'm getting robbed in the air too. Look at that. Man, Finally able to everywhere. land thanks to that up air. It's actually crazy how much pressure that uh, Raishni has put out against Viri for him only to be at 36%. Because he's doing a lot. Like, he really is putting in a ton of work trying to like throw Viri off his game. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just the Viri movie right now. I think Viri stays very grounded, so they always have options. They always have access to the defensive options. Mm -hmm. And then they land an aerial, so they might get catch an aerial out of shield, but they're not really getting followed up on. Zelda doesn't have the craziest combos, or really that many at all. As you can see, you're only yeah. getting stray hits in neutral. Yeah, her combo trees, they they extended a little bit with the most recent patch because she got some buffs. I've heard some cool stuff that happens from like jab one now, and I think, I could be wrong, I think down throw is like a different angle or something now. Um, but yeah, she's definitely not the most combo heavy character. She's way more about like neutral and just a lot of knockback. Um, but Viri's not really losing neutral. Oh, but a great read from Rai, recognizing that Viri wanted to keep zoning with that laser, coming in hot with that up as a punish. Yeah, Raishni has done that before, and they always go a little bit uh, in front of Viri, trying to, like as Ooh. if they're trying to read a roll, but the gyro bounces Raishni straight into the forward smash. Oof, God. Viri's just mad good. That's the only way I can put it at this point. This dude is just delighted. Yeah, Viri is someone to watch out for. I talked about uh, Central Florida, UCF, mm -hmm. but USF, definitely someone to keep your eye on. Yeah, I'm as... really excited to see that match tomorrow. Sorry, that's, you know what, let me not say that, because that assumes that they won. <laughs> I don't want to do that while they're in the middle of the fight. Um, but if they do win and they play tomorrow, I'm going to be really happy to watch it. Oh, God. I mean, if Raishni gets another stock, there's a definite chance. Mm -hmm. But, oh, they're just barely able to survive right there. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I really I really think that Raishni can get a little bit overwhelmed by, like, faster play styles, and Beery has only sped up the pace at this point. Like, how do you have the stamina to keep this up? They have not relented once, even under the face of all this Zelda pressure. They have oh, not let up. No. And they're going to get the side B at center stage. The finisher with the laser, not quite the gyro, not quite what is going to be the finisher. I'm just Every trying to find out. Everything just looks so covered. The ledge, the roll. Okay. All right. Uh, Viri went a little bit too far to the right and did not get that roll punish. Oh, but that down smash and that scramble situation is also going to do it. And once again, that's what I'm saying. This character's frame data is bananas to be able to have all the tools they have. Like, like, Rob, if Rob had, like, mediocre frame data, he'd still be really good. But he doesn't. The thing about, the thing about Rob is that he, all, all top two do this, but I think Rob and Pikachu are the best examples of when you throw out a move and whiff and you got to punish it, there's already another move out to contest you. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. there's, like, a third projectile falling down and just in case you thought you could punish that. Like, it's never Ooh. ending. Like it you really win, is. you win neutral. You get a counter hit, and they're already back on top of you. And it was well fought by Rai. Like you can see Rai like trying to like peel the layers back and like find those gaps. But Viri just as soon as you get past you know options A and B, Viri's already on E somewhere. Like just there's always more. And um, I, I think you even saw Rai get tripped up because Viri started like throwing the gyro up top and like covering low and just like really making the screen just very chaotic. And just making it really tough for Zelda to just play neutral because her neutral it, her neutral's pretty good, but it is a much slower, much more controlled neutral than what Rob needs to do. Um, and yeah, I just don't think Rai was able to take the momentum back at any point because of it. Yeah, this at this point, three stocks. Don't let yourself be the first person to get nine stocked on twice. stream. Don't that get OCD. Don't that get OCD twice. Lies, and he's still got two, right? Okay. He's got I... two stocks, right? Did Viri lose a stock? I didn't think Viri lost a stock. Okay, Viri did lose a stock. Okay. Okay, so you're fighting for that OCD. Yeah, I remember now. I recall. Sorry. It's so hard to imagine Viri losing after seeing all of this. <laughs> like, I mean, just you look at spin. this. Yeah, Barry, Barry is playing to be in that same territory we saw earlier with, like, Jake and, like, um, 
a hobby owner, like, you know, that separate caliber of, like, really solid players. Like, everyone's been pretty good from what I've seen. You know, if anything, it's been, like, some small mistakes here and there. But this is this is a big gap. Now, Polar, again, Polar's really good. We saw some really cool stuff from Polar earlier in the bracket. Um, maybe they can take the momentum back from Beery. Who knows? Um, and I, again, still don't know what happened on the first match. I'm just assuming... I, you can't tell me otherwise that Beery just didn't play the first match. Or maybe he SD'd and back with a vengeance. I don't know. But, uh, I'm actually, I'm actually not sure either because I think Polar didn't play in the other FAU three matches and I'm not sure why. But either way, Polar was stupendous when we saw them previously. Mm -hmm. Maybe Polar was the answer to Beery. However, it looks like Beery has figured out an alternate solution. <laughs> that back air looks like an answer to her face. Oh. Ah. And the socks are even. Yeah, 40 seconds. All right. Oh, wow. So that actually was a combo opportunity, but sometimes you drop projectiles when you get hit and it actually saves them. No way. All right, she is going to make it. Yes, oh, my back God. Back. It's never over. You think it's over, but it's not. Never think you're safe against Rob. This is a clinic. This is literally, if someone didn't know how Smash worked, they were like, well, how good is this character? You just show them this match. And this is on Apollotina, who's another character very worthy of being in top five. Yeah. Wow. That was how, one how minute and passed? 16 seconds. Yeah. One, one minute, minute, minute and 16, 16 seconds. seconds. Against one of the better players we've seen here. Polar is no slouch. When I saw them, when I saw them for the first time, I wrote down next to Polar's name, very good. And look at them. Look how, look what they've done to them. Viri is unstoppable. They might meet some uh, immovable objects going into the bracket tomorrow, but right now, Viri cannot be touched. Uh, I don't want to fight Viri. Um, <laughs> the fact that there is... Here's the thing. The fact that there is a whole team plus Viri <laughs> feels really overwhelming because we just watched Viri take um, 17 stocks in, two, <laughs> in those two games. Uh, and there's other people that could be there. That's crazy. Like, he just, oh my gosh. Well, uh, I think that's going to wrap us for the night. Um, to my knowledge, I think that was the last match we had on deck. So shout out to, uh, the people advancing. Uh, I'm very excited to see where this team goes tomorrow and also see the rest of it, I guess. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah. But for now. This has been the CENC Southeast Invitational for Smash. I've been Keela Miles. This has been Sai. You can check out both our social medias right below. But for now, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, it's not going to be us. It's going to be Pauly Hype to close out the night. It's been real, guys. Follow my social media. Follow me on Twitter at SaiPVOK. And also, if you like anime, we've got a fantastic, very funny uh, anime podcast called Shonen Chumps. You can follow that on Twitter as well. Uh, it's in my bio. Other than that, thanks for uh, rocking out with us, you guys. I'm excited to be back tomorrow, and y'all have a great day. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back as we're rounding out the day. Day one is finally complete here at the Collegiate Esports National Competition Valorant Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Qualifier. 
So just a recap, we saw what happened in Valorant earlier earlier on in the day. Well, let's take a look now at what happened to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Coming out of the Midwest here at our regional pool A is going to be Michigan State and Mount Union. Congratulations for you guys. You'll be moving on to day two, which will be tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. Pool B, the two advancers are Miami, Ohio, and Buckeyes. So those two colleges are advancing in the Midwest region. Those four colleges, excuse me. Pool A and Pool B to play tomorrow. That'll start at 4 p.m. EST. Now to go over to the Southeast for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We have Pool A advancing from that pool is Clemson and FAU Red. And then over to Pool B, we have University of Central Florida. They're advancing in two games here today. And USF University of South Florida. Florida, they will be playing once again tomorrow, starting at 4 p.m. EST on twitch.tv slash esports you and twitch.tv slash esports you too. Well, that's going to do it from everybody here at the Collegiate Sports Management Group and the CENC. Thank you all so much for tuning in. My name is Paulie Hype. I was your host for day one. I'll see you tomorrow with some more action right here for day number two and the grand finals as we look to crown a winner in each game and each region. Don't go anywhere. Tomorrow we'll see you bright and early for a 10 a.m. EST start right here on Twitch. See you guys next time.